Dang, man. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk for that long. All right, here we are at IEM Chengdu, and we've got a couple of fellas to talk to, a couple of guys that are maybe not too far from home, at least in comparison to where you guys usually travel. It is, of course, Inns and Liaz from FlyQuest. So I guess we should get stuck into maybe an easy topic to start things off, obviously, as mentioned, Chengdu. Um, not too far to travel for you guys, so that must be feeling a little bit nicer than some of the usual suspects as far as locations are concerned. Yeah, I mean, it was like 10 hours compared to the usual like 25 to 30. So mm. for us, it's good. And the time zone is not a big deal as well. It's only three hours behind. Yep. So it's good for us. Yep. Feeling happy? Yep. Yeah. I'm fucking wrecked, bro. Jet lag. It's rough. So you, well, I mean, you flew overnight. You didn't fly overnight, did you or did you? Yeah, I did. It was yep. 11 tough hours. 11 tough hours. Yeah. No sleep at all on the plane? Nah, I slept the whole time. Oh. So how come you're jet lag then? I don't know, bro. He's just a sook. Just tired. Yeah. All right. Look, I tell you what, the elephant in the room, obviously, we have to talk about is this whole FlyQuest situation, the Greyhound situation. Um, I guess we should get stuck into that because most people are probably wondering, like, how did FlyQuest come about? First of all, how did Greyhound sort of come about and how did that all sort of fall apart, I guess? So we'll go from uh, maybe back at the Asia RMR. Obviously, we can talk about that in a little bit more depth. But just as far as focusing on Greyhound is concerned, um, you know, we from the outside, I guess, understand that Greyhound more or less closed its doors as a result of the fact that you guys were unable to qualify for the major. Is that the case? Was it a conversation that happened? Did you guys know prior to the fact that, you know, that you were going into that RMR that if you didn't make it to the major that maybe the, the Greyhound organization was gonna sort of fall apart a bit? I think it was that among a, a lot of other things mm. that probably can't go into detail about, but um, I, don't, I think it was definitely on the back of some of our minds. Um, yeah. But I don't think it played a part in the results at the Asian RMR. Um, yeah, it's, it's just not like financially sustainable yeah. for an Australian, like especially when it's just Will just running it all with no sponsors or anything. Mm. So, mm. I mean, it was tough, but we've we found a good place at FlyQuest, so that's a good thing. How did you guys like get told that it was all happening? You know, how how was there a conversation around like after the RMR? Okay, Greyhound is no more. How did that conversation go? I actually can't remember. I don't Do you know. remember? I, I think we just got him like a call or something. Mm. And yeah. He just told us. He, he's always been, Will was always like super upfront with everything. Yeah. He didn't really want to hide shit from us. So yep. yeah, he just let us know like as soon as he was like sure it was happening. What was like your initial sort of reaction to that? Was it kind of like, oh shit, you know, we're not going to have an org? Or were you sort of fairly comfortable still sort of in the knowledge that you were going to be okay? I was okay. Like I didn't mm. think it was a big deal, especially with like the because we kind of knew that Mongols had a good chance of making the um, next stage at the major. So it was like a good thing for us, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew we ha would have a few options. Okay. As far as uh, then finding a new org was concerned, I remember uh, initially when Greyhound made, made that initial tweet that said, okay, we're not, we're not um, going to continue anymore. Uh, I think there was either a tweet from Will or, or from the Greyhound account that said, basically, if anyone's interested in the, the players and the team, 
reach out to Will, uh, send him an email and, you know, he can sort of facilitate. But very quickly after that, maybe a couple of weeks or a month after that, then it shifted over to reach out to Dexter. So what was that sort of timeline like? Did you guys eventually sort of have to go out on your own? And was there like a lot of initial offers, a, little, a lot of initial interest in you guys? Or did it sort of take a little bit longer to get to that point? I think like once we put, like Chris put out the tweet, there was a bit more interest than when Greyhound first tweeted. Right. Uh, and then... Yeah, after that point, we just kind of started talking to a couple a couple organizations and mm. just kind of toss in, like, turning between a couple of them. Yeah. I know, obviously, you know, one of the rumors that was around was obviously Talon, um, and we've heard the conversations around that, but you ultimately ended up opting to go with FlyQuest. Was there, like, a particular reason why FlyQuest was the, the one that you guys wanted to go with? Because, obviously, you know, when we look at FlyQuest as an organization, we know, obviously, Bibby's there. Um, you know, she's an Australian player, so maybe there's that tie Papa Smithy, obviously, an Australian as well. So was that like any sort of contributing factor as far as why FlyQuest, FlyQuest was where you guys ended up? Or did you guys just think sure. they were the best offer? All yours, mate. Um, we obviously love both organizations very much. But um, I don't know now. When we talked to FlyQuest, I had a bit of a shoe in with Papa Smithy because I was 100 Thieves with him. Oh, yes. Um, and so I think the convos just went better. You know, it was smoother because, mm. you know, just Aussie bloke and he was just shooting the shit like when we were having the, the mm. talk as a team and we just got along well. Everything sort of just fell into our lap with it. And, sure. um, you know, we definitely had to think about it, but, you know, FlyQuest made a lot more sense for us, especially because, you know, fucking, I think they have fighting game player Australians and they've got Bibian, obviously. Mm. And so, you know, it's becoming a bit of an Aussie, Aussie organization. Are you a fan of the jersey? I actually like it, yeah. Like the color? I think it's clean. Clean? All right. Um, I mean, I know it's only still sort of early days with you guys and, and FlyQuest, but how has that been as far as an organization is concerned? Are you happy with how things are sort of playing out? Because I've, I've saw, obviously, I mean, for context for everyone that's watching, I shared quite a long travel day with Alistair yesterday and I was sort of talking to him about how things are going and he was sort of indicating that, you know, maybe you guys have a bit of a better, better opportunity for boot camps in the future and stuff like that. So has that been a conversation that you have been sort of uh, having a bit of a look at? Are they um, amenable, I guess, to these sorts of things? Yeah, for sure. We're it's definitely there are a couple of options in the future before Dallas and mm. before Pro League and stuff like that. We'll be trying to spend as much as as much as we can overseas while mm. also playing the Australian games because mm. we kind of have to. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting future for sure. Is there ever, you know, because again, every time we talk uh, about an Aussie team and how you guys can go further and how you guys can play better and this and that, there's obviously always that conversation around the Australian practice not being good enough and there's not enough teams to scrim and even if there are, they're just not at that level that they need to be. Is there any kind of thought at the moment with FlyQuest of potentially a move overseas, not necessarily near term, but long term? Uh, not even from FlyQuest, but even from yourselves. Like, are you thinking about that in any way, shape or form? Um, I think everyone is, but there is a lot of stuff like we have to consider, like mm. going, um, playing qualifiers and stuff from Australia is mm. obviously a big advantage advantage to us, like compared to playing them in Europe. So we want to continue doing that. And mm. if we're playing the Asian RMRs and the qualifiers for them, then we have to be in Australia. So it's like not super feasible. It might be something in the future, like, who knows, like you can't really say no to it, but. I think like everyone individually wants to make that move. Mm. No one wants to continue playing in Australia, but it's just about doing like what makes the most sense. Yeah, I guess best case scenario would be, you know, maybe multi-month boot camp type situations yeah. overseas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. like three, yeah. But two still, to three months at a time, but still it's so hard to find that time in the calendar. Yep, correct. With Especially, and, 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 and even going into 2025, I think it might even be more difficult with if oh, you've yeah. seen yeah, yeah, it's right. going to be a packed year. potential yeah. upcoming calendar there. So that's the factor as well. But I guess we should talk a bit about the RMR itself because that's kind of what's led to, um, you know, where you guys are at now with FlyQuest. And, and obviously that's sort of the, the most recent result I think that people are going to have in their minds about how you guys are performing and how you're looking going into Chengdu and potentially Pro League and, and further on and stuff like that so you know look I mean I guess we can't necessarily sugarcoat it it wasn't um, the result that you guys were looking for and I think for um, you guys and even for the Australian fans it might have been a bit of a rude awakening in a way because I don't even remember the last time there wasn't an Australian team at a major um, you know, and obviously Mongols, we all expected to do very, very well. Um, they were very much a favorite going into that event, but between yourselves and Linvision, at least for me personally, I actually felt like you guys had the, the upper hand in that matchup, which didn't end up being the case, but, um, talk me through, you know, that experience and, and sort of what's that, what that has meant for the team. Has there been any kind of like, um, fallout for that, or is it really just a, okay, we maybe did 
take a little bit too much of a backseat and now we kind of need to kick things into gear. How is the team feeling about that result and how has it sort of affected you guys going forward? Uh, I mean, it's pretty hard, obviously, because mm. the major is such a big thing. But like we we're all, all very upset after, but kind of like looking back at it, it was still early days from yep. when we picked up Dexter. It's like a completely different system and everything, mm -hmm. bringing a different IGL into the team and stuff like that. Honestly, against that Lin Vision, like the grand final or whatever it was, the qualifying game, we just didn't play ourselves at all. It was like mm. we just all went into a, a shell when we lost a couple of rounds. So I honestly probably could say we choked a little bit, but I think like since then we've improved a ton as well. Did, did you feel as though the quality of the Asia RMR was stronger than previously? Uh, I'd say so, yeah. I think just in general, Mongols looked incredible. Mm. Like, And they showed that at the major as well. Like... They've been grinding very hard, so I think it definitely improved in the top, like the sense of the top four teams at the Asian RMR, but yeah. maybe the bottom four is kind of similar. I mean, even Atox, right? Like they were a bit of a threat in a sense because you guys even had, I think it was the lower bracket final, obviously, against Lin Vision, and then there was the lower bracket, whatever game before that, the game against Atox. But you guys played a very, uh, I guess, long map in that game against Atox. Was that even a factor in the, like, was the day even in itself just like a really long day? Did that have any implications as to, how that Linvision game played out, do you think, having that longer series against Atox prior? Oh, maybe. I don't know. You can't really say. I mm. think what Josh said before, like we just didn't really have enough time to repair. Like, we can throw any excuse into the ring, but um, I think that's a big one. Yeah, I think there's no point making excuses like that. Like ev everyone would have had to play, anyone in our shoes mm. would have had to play that same BO3 before as well. So yeah, I think we just like put too much pressure on ourselves as well. Yep. It's like obviously there's a lot of pressure at RMRs compared to other events, so we just didn't play well under it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess obviously the good news is Mongols did pretty well at the Major, so now there's a bit of a better chance of making it through <laughs> at Shanghai, which is obviously good for you guys as well. And I can imagine that might have been potentially a bit of a motivating factor as to why some orgs would have looked to, to pick you guys up, because there is that extra opportunity. But, um, you know, moving forward, obviously, uh, you talked about how Dex has come into this roster, and, and I guess even to an extent, like how Urkas came in, I think that was sort of in the works around IEM Sydney last year. So that's been a, maybe a little bit of a longer term thing, but how have the additions of Urkas and Dexter um, shaped the team you talked about, you know, new roles, new system, whatever. Um, has it really been a major shakeup? And, and I, I would actually be interested to hear from, I think you, Lee, has never played with Dexter prior. I had. Had you? Yeah, I played with him in 2017 in Tainted Minds. Oh yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. So, but Inns, you were under Dexter. In Greyhound, prior, yeah. in Greyhound. but everyone left. else I don't think had maybe played with Dexter. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. correct. Because yeah. like you look at it and you think, oh, Dexter back to Greyhound, that makes so much sense. They've all played together before, but actually when you really think about it, it's not necessarily it, the case. It's, so, it's completely it different as well. Curve? Like it's a completely different era as well. Mm. And Chris had spent so long in Europe, mm. so it's like a changing our play style completely um, to suit, I don't know, suit the team better, I guess. It's also like getting to know each other as well as people. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of different factors. What about uh, Urkast and how he's kind of come into the roster? Like, what is he actually doing? Because I haven't actually been able to speak to Urkast at all about it. You know, is he actually coaching you in the sense of okay, he's making strats or deciding what you should be doing, or is he working individually with players, or is he like an analyst more so? Like, what is actually his role within the team? It's a bit of everything, mm -hmm. mostly. Um, definitely, definitely coaching the team. I think he's very good for us, like during games mm -hmm. as well, and taking like tactical pauses which is something we probably didn't do in the past before Chris and Irk. Um, but I think he's just really good mentally and even in preparation for games, he's always having a joke and like getting people in the mood to play mm. and like be happy. I think there's a lot, a lot of things that he brings to the team. Yeah, good. All right. Well, it'll be interesting to see what you, know, you guys are going to be able to do here in Chengdu. And I guess we should sort of get into that as far as your first game, I believe, is Cloud9. Um, what are the expectations around that? How are you sort of feeling about Cloud9? There's a big storyline about how they don't necessarily have a primary AWPA. I was talking to Ali yesterday about that and he said he's feeling pretty good about it, you know, it's not something that he necessarily has to kind of concern himself with as much. But, um, you know, how are we feeling about that first matchup? BO1, you know, again, winnable, question mark? How, how's the confidence levels in the camp? You know, BO1, CS2, anything can happen. Mm, I think yeah. we feel pretty solid. We've had some good practice coming into this event, but, um, I mean, you can't really underplay like how good cloud nine is as a team like even if they don't have a north they made quarterfinals the last major they still mm. perform very well mm. it's just like not like top two in the world which is what people have ex expected of them right so mm. yeah i don't know I, I think we feel pretty good but it is 
it, it's CS two day one. It's like literally anything can happen. I yeah. mean, this is like the most upsets you're going to see for a while in CS. Yeah. Win both pistols, you're cheering. Yeah. Uh, what's the I guess expectation level for you guys at this event? I mean, what's uh, something that you'd be happy with as far as a result is concerned? Because again, no one's necessarily expecting FlyQuest to go and win Chengdu, but you know, when we're talking about from the Australian fans' perspective, and I'm sure from yourselves as well, you don't want to just be that team that comes, plays two series, and then goes home. So where's the level that we're kind of looking for um, for for you guys as a team at the moment? Is it just to, I guess, at this point, make it maybe out of groups into playoffs? Is that kind of the goal? Yeah, I think playoffs is always a good goal to set for yourself, um, especially at the start of a tournament. I'd say, yeah, playoffs and anything more than that is a bonus. All right, sweet. I guess we might wrap it up there. Thank you very much, Liaz and Inns, for the chat. And no uh, hopefully you guys do well. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Like after the major, if I would need to change the map tool, I would uh, remove uh, Anubis and put Train. Train is my favorite, so I would really like to see it back in CS2. I think I would remove Inferno from the from the map pool. Uh, we don't play it, so it would be nice with a, with another map instead of that. Maybe that uh, fits us a little more. And when we tried to play it uh, in CS2, it was just so uh, complicated, and you had to put so much time into it. And uh, for us, it was at least a mess, uh, so we haven't really played it. I I actually think Cobble would be pretty fun to have back. Uh, I liked it at least uh, in the old, old map. And Dragon Ball Drops as well. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I still have the same thoughts as I had before that MR15 suited better CS, in my opinion. Also, I think you lose the pistol, you lose the first Byron, and it can be 5 0. You play almost 50% of your half already, and you just lost one gun run. You know, it's, it can be really tough and challenging to come back. But uh, obviously, on the other side, if you play good, then it's really beneficial, obviously. It's, it's a hard opinion for me on uh, the MR12. Uh, I think the biggest thing wrong with it is the economy and the momentum you can like switch with, with the economy. The economy has so much to say now, and you really have to think about. It. You have to maximize your buys uh, much more and of course you also had to do that earlier but now it just has a, a bigger consequence if you actually die this one person too much. Okay, if I would uh, need to change one thing in CS2 at the moment, I would change the grenades back that it doesn't bloom the smoke. It's not like I don't like it, I think it's a great uh, future in CS2 but I feel like Counter-Strike was, was without this with, for like 20 years or 18 years. Changing this was a big thing in CS2 in my opinion and I would like to see how CS2 plays out with, uh, with just the same concept. When people has, have a MP9 or Mac 10 and stuff and they like strafe and just keep running and shooting, it's impossible to get that kill. I feel it's way too hard and uh, like it's when you completely strafe and just run, I don't know how to make that better, but that's at least uh, way tougher than in CSGO.就是分数就接近了就是感觉需要适应吧其实一开始会感觉非常的不好因为容错率太低了就是对于手枪局包括第一个长枪局对比整个比赛的结果走向影响太大了是这么感觉就是还有可能如果是 you know, you can use that later to get two more players. I just napped for 30 minutes for mindfulness. <laughs> Here we have Heroic in your fresh new jerseys. Can we get a little bit of Tess's, huh? Yeah, man. To take the jersey off, take everything off. These look slick, man. You happy with them? Yeah, better than the old one. Better than the old one. Yeah, better material. Not as sweaty. I think it's. Uh, I think it's quite comfortable. Yeah. All right. Where's Where's Nikodos? He's uh, He's coming soon. Maybe he's a little bit late. Ah, oh, a little bit delayed. Okay. We had a uh, a couple of teams had to deal with that. All right. So how are you feeling coming into China? When was the last time you were here? Were you ever in China? 
I have never been in China, so uh, very excited to travel here and try a lot of new stuff and see how it is here. I think that's pretty exciting for me at least. So, but yeah, of course, we're here for the tournament for, uh, first and all, uh, so focus on, focusing on that. Well, you don't look nearly as excited as this guy over here. <laughs> hey, nerds. Hello, hello. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing amazing. Um, Intel Extreme Masters Shangdu is brought to you in part by Intel. Acer Predator, DHL, Kadia, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, 1X Bet, and White Market. Only day two of the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu and already plenty of surprises going down. A positive surprise, Liquid making it through to the playoffs alongside Maus, the latter of which causing Furia to fall down into that lower bracket to take on Heroic later on today. But 2019 fans rejoice because we get a rematch of what was the semi-final in Beijing five years ago, Astralis versus FaZe, albeit with quite the different face, which makes me think of a famous Chinese proverb. Water can wear away the hardest stone, not down to its strength, but its persistence, which makes me think of one team in particular. Like West Freya, the Australians have been marinating in their own region for years, but yesterday they showed that they are silent but deadly. When it comes to the Chinese warriors, Tai Lu had to face Lin Vision in the lower bracket. Lin Vision ended up being victorious, which means Tai Lu is not going to play on the big stage in their home city. Now, another thing that comes into my mind is another proverb. You can give a man an op and he'll eat for a day, or you can teach a man how to op and he'll eat for a lifetime. Maybe that's the lesson that Cloud9 will learn throughout this tournament, but in the case of G2, we can see that you can have one of the best fishermen in the world, but it will not be enough to feed a whole village. Everybody, welcome to Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu 2024. Yeah, fishing rod and all, I'm gonna be honest, Cloud9 having either probably wouldn't have made a difference to the result yesterday. That was uh, quite the way to be opening Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu for Cloud9. But uh, yeah, Yanko, you wanna say something? Yeah, give Perfecto an op and no one's eating. Yeah. We're all starving, <laughs> it's, it's all over, right? So hopefully not, 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 not nothing anymore of that for Cloud9. Maybe they've just taught him to fish. I think Perfecto actually likes fishing, weirdly. I think that's one of his favorite hobby. Yeah. Uh, Let's just move on from that topic. Elfish, welcome. I haven't never worked with you on a desk before, so well, uh, this yeah. is First starts time for to be everything. great. It, it's kind of weird, isn't it? You wouldn't necessarily expect that to be the case in China of all places, but sometimes I'm sitting on a plane and I'm wondering, how did I get here in my life? Uh, what am I doing with my life? I'm nearly 30 years old, you know, and yet here I am flying to China to talk about video games. But hey, I mean, you can't complain, can you? Another question I got, how did we get here? And mm. what does that mean for today's schedule? Yanko, you're going to be very happy because best of ones, gone. Just best of threes from here on out. we got some great ones coming up on the stream. Yeah, absolutely. We have VP taking on FlyQuest, right? The surprise package so far taking down Cloud9. That's for a playoff spot, by the way. Phase Astralis, same thing uh, for a spot 
in the playoffs in the arena and then the last game of the day it's, it's the elimination game between heroic and furia that's going to be tough furia so close to making the playoffs yesterday B stream games as well going to be going down simultaneously alpha you got any takes on any of these matters going on do lin vision take anything off of G2. I don't know about that one, to be quite honest with you. Look, I love Envision, I love Chinese CS, I love Asian CS just in general. Everyone knows that's, you know, kind of my forte, but uh, have to say, I don't know that I have a huge amount of faith that is going to be able to take too much off of G2. I think Monacy may be just going to be a little bit too strong there. So we'll see. I'll cross my fingers, but I'm really? not holding out hope. You love Asian CS? Yeah, I do. So I you're do. just condemned to I feel like it's like a bit it. of Stockholm Syndrome a little bit, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's the Counter-Strike that I can watch on my time zone. So it's really the only Counter-Strike that I do get to to watch on a there consistent basis. So, <laughs> and to be fair, someone in the English broadcast in China has to say they love Asian CS, and I think that's my job. So, Great. you've hit the bingo card for today. Well done, Elfish. Mm. Um, we had a lot of action going down yesterday, so I think we should split it up into the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good we start off with uh, Mao's and Liquid, nonetheless, making it through to the playoffs. I love to see that from Liquid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I think uh, Mao's was definitely very much the expectation. I don't know that they got through there quite as cleanly as we thought, but Team Liquid, we didn't really know what we were going to get from them, and you could really tell that they came into IEM Chengdu with something to prove that opening best of one that they played they looked solid there and then we sort of went into that next game with the expectation I guess that we've seen them do it once we know that they can do it but can they do it again and then they did it again but it was on the same map and then we still had our questions we still had those conversations and then they did it again on another map and now they're really starting to kind of convince us a little bit so I think that's great to see obviously you can see what it means to them but it is only the first step on a very long road for this liquid roster. I mean, it's it's a start, but if it's going to be just a start, that's where, again, we're going to have to start having some question marks. I think it was really important for liquid, right? Like to, to show some promise, mm. you know, even if it, things are going good in the camp and the atmosphere is fine and everyone still believes in the project you know if the losses just start racking up and racking up at some point you're like hey i mean doesn't matter how we feel about this thing we're not getting it done so great uh, for them to be in the playoffs we've seen some glimpses of what uh, they can be capable of and it's going to be exciting to see them in the arena yeah and of course they're going to be going up against Mao's uh, to see who's going to be going through straight to the semi-final on saturday here in chengdu uh let's move on to the bad because i kind of highlighted heroic and cloud nine as being a uh, not the best starts on day one, particularly Cloud9, because uh, guess who managed to sneak up and get a W? You're yeah, smiling I, from ear to ear. I, I don't know if that's necessarily something that I would put in the bad category as an Australian, so maybe there's something else going on there. But yeah, look, as far as Cloud9 was concerned, I think you can see it on their faces, um, what on earth really happened yesterday for them. Um, bit of a surprising result. Obviously, they can bounce back today. I, I don't think we saw the best of C9 at all. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I don't really know what there is to say. It, it is a best of one, you know, so you can't really dive too deep into it, but definitely need to be seeing them step up Aim old Cloud9, reliably unreliable, right? I mean, they managed to lose 12 rounds in a row to FlyQuest. So uh, they were up 6-1, it ended 13-6. So I think it's just having to figure things out, how to find some consistency. Heroic wasn't as bad because they at least managed to beat 9Z, you know, uh, in their second game of the day, which wasn't easy, right? It was a long day for them and they stay alive in the tournament and still have a chance in that lower bracket. I was kind of umming and ahhing about putting Heroic in that bad category because I don't know whether I just expected the level of Liquid to be so much Who lower Who slighted than you them? on that team, Freya? Uh, Who slighted you? Let's, let's Tell let's us now. Let's talk about, talk about personal grievances up here. But yeah, I, I think maybe I was expecting a little bit more just because of what we saw at the Major, right? Elfish, like uh, yeah. the opening stage was really great from Heroic, and then they were basically silenced. In that yeah, I mean, I, I think really it's the context of the fact that they went up against Liquid, and that was where that whole sort of conversation came from. So I don't know that it was necessarily an awful day uh, as far as Heroic is concerned, but we had more questions about Liquid and Heroic wasn't able to sort of answer any of those on their behalf and that's where things started to sort of fall apart a little yeah, bit. Yeah, of course, an opportunity for Heroic to be turning the tides, moving on forward. Um, I've got to talk about the ugly and this is in the context of we are in China, the first Chinese IEM in five years and the... Uh, Hero hometown heroes aren't able to really do anything. Yeah, look, I don't think it's necessarily too much of a surprise. I guess if we talk about Linvision, they were, in my opinion at least, the one hope for the Asian teams. I guess if you're including FlyQuest in there, maybe they're another part of that discussion. But certainly as far as China's concerned, Linvision really, for me, was the only hope when it came to uh, a Chinese team not even necessarily making it to the playoffs, but potentially even just winning a game. I thought maybe there was a chance in that BO1 against Furia based on what we saw at the Major, but I don't think Linvision looked at their best yesterday. Didn't expect anything at all, to be honest, out of Tyloo or out of Steel Helmet, which again, people probably weren't even expecting to see Steel Helmet here. But um, yeah, for me, Linvision, 
getting drawn against G2 today, that's going to be a tough one to come back from. And yeah, I just, yeah, it is what it is. But this is just what happens when you're from an underdeveloped region. What did we learn about the Tyloo, if anything, Yanko? It needs more time, Freya. You know, like it, it, they only started cooking. You need to stir the pot. You need to add different ingredients and spices, right? Maybe tweak with the temperature a little bit or maybe just eventually admit it's a failed dish and move on. So we'll see. Still early days, but I think them and, and, and still Helmet are kind of leveled behind even the other uh, Asian teams we have in the tournament. And yeah, Lin Vision might have had a chance, but G2 feels like, you know, too big of an obstacle. But hey, let's wait and see. Now, speaking of ugly, Anko, um, not Thanks. you. Yeah, well, so, actually, right. Ouch, it great. is you. What uh, did I do? 2019. <laughs> do you want to talk about the ugliness that oh, you experienced yes, of in course. 2019? That's actually less. That's actually more painful than you just personally insulting me. But yeah, why not? That was a fun time. Do you want to have the players just talk had a about great it time instead? Coaching. Maybe we should uh, check in with Nico yes, and Ray please. to throw it back to 2019. That was a fun roster, I think. Um, it is with uh, Colzera, Brookie, Olaf, and Nico, right? Different mood and uh, different environment that we have now, for sure. But uh, it was a fun roster. Right? We had a lot of skill in the team. Always wanted to play with Colzera, and it was in the start of him joining the team, I think. Uh, we came in pretty hard for the tournament, and we lost 16-0, uh, 16-1, I think, to Australia. It's so pretty rough. My first uh, tournament in China was actually I am um, Beijing. I think it was in 2019, if I remember correctly, yeah. It was uh, in, in November or something like that, right before COVID. Yeah, it was a good event. I, th I think we won one map, 16-0. Uh, I mean, it's not weird to think about it. I've been on failure, just weird to think about it. I got destroyed. <laughs> we had no chance, literally. I think it was not 16 I think it was 16-2. So that's double the round, okay? The Australis was just uh, insane, that event. Uh, like, Glei was playing insane. He was the MVP as well. I don't even remember, like, what happened and how it was. Everything happened too fast. I was the in-game leader. That's yeah. why we lost 16-0. <laughs> I think it was the first time uh, Olaf and uh, Coursera got 6 and 0 in their career. They were just laughing and uh, we didn't know what really to do. We just got outplayed and out aimed and everything, so we couldn't really do anything. I just I think that was, we, we kind of forget about that loss pretty quickly because it was just so fast. I can't even remember who we played in the final, but I think the final was against Renegades. Yeah, one on Thieves, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a good tournament. We went to see the Great Wall of China and Glee was the MVP. It was one of the first events I remember him like playing a lot of deathmatch and then he won the MVP. First time I came to China. I think that's be Shanghai. I think I went to Starletter Shanghai before that tournament and that was my first time in China. Baking duck is actually one of my favorite foods. So with pancakes and everything like that. So I had that one where in Beijing last time. I'm quite a big fan of Asian food in overall. Well, I like spicy, but yeah, everyone's just saying that you cannot keep up with the spices here. So uh, yeah, we heard some recommendations, obviously the hot pots, but everyone says just don't take spicy hot pot because it's already spicy. So uh, <laughs> we will see how it goes. We already went to the world's biggest building, I think, or something like that. Yeah, it's a big mall. It was crazy. We didn't even see 10%, I think. So uh, other than that, there's the Panda Reserve, where all of the pandas in the world are apparently from. Even the pandas we have in the Copenhagen Zoo are from uh, from that uh, reserve. So yeah, I want to go there. I think it would be really funny. I think we have maybe talked about going to like some dumpling restaurant, which is supposedly really famous here. We have uh, our performance manager, Yen. He played badminton professionally and he, they played a lot in China. So he knows a lot about the, the place. The fans have gotten way crazier over the years. Now it's like you get swarmed when you go outside uh, the hotel. So uh, it's a fun experience, but sometimes uh, it gets a little bit overwhelming. It was still huge back then in 2019 when the last time I played, but I felt like they were not as big as they are now and as passionate. I even on the way from Beijing to Chengdu took a picture with like pilot and the cabin crew as well. That was also super cool experience like when you see and when you feel how they feel about you it just it makes you happy so uh, i really hope that you're gonna go to the playoffs and uh, we will show some good uh, counter strike for them i think the crowd is, is was pretty wild if i remember correctly having been to china now for some tournaments i think that the fan base is like they're really devoted and they even like camp outside the hotel 
I think I've changed a lot. I think uh, back in the day, I was more of a heavy entry fragger and kind of just always first in. I think with the iterations of Fizz we have now, I have a little bit more freedom, uh, a little bit more supportive roles. I think Nico's overall is it still the same player. I think he has gone for more for entry uh, role now compared to he was before. He's definitely become more aggressive over the years, for sure. I think even back then, I think he, I knew he was going to stay in face like forever. Like he's just very stable player, uh, very consistent. I think he has even improved uh, throughout some of the last years. He's just a guy that like any team could wish to have. So uh, I'm not su I'm not surprised that he's still on the other team and uh, that he will stay for even longer. I'm happy for him and uh, his success as well. Uh, we are still pretty close. So uh, yeah, I hope uh, he will continue grinding still. It is kind of wild to think about how many changes have gone down since then. Uh, Yanko, you look like you've still got a bit of PTSD <laughs> from reliving that moment. But I want to ask about that team, because it's just wild to think about Nico in-game leading, Olaf cold on there, Rain in his early tenure of phase. What was it like actually standing behind them? Stressful, <laughs> I think, but it was cool. Like we we had our ups and downs. Unfortunately, I think I think we figured it out, and then COVID happened, and that just you know completely killed uh, the team. When you have so many veterans and having to play online, Cold Zero is living abroad, and then curfew and all of that stuff. But in that particular tournament, I mean, that was just prime Astralis on steroids. Like there was nothing. Uh, to be done like in that tournament you know when you say when you get crushed so i remember after the first map like we're going behind it's like it's fine guys like going to the set they just crushed us it was just their map like <laughs> it it can get better and then we go to nuke and they even had like a counter to our smoke wall with a molly that they haven't used like they knew a counter to the smoke wall and they haven't used it for like five months like magus just found it they were waiting to like use it in an important game like when they need to use it at the, and that was in that it led to a 13-2 CT side for them. They won pistol, it was 16-2. Like, I think it's probably one of the most one-sided playoff series in CSGO. Yeah, that's just Astralis things, right? They're always going to have those tricks up their sleeves. Well, they did. You know what, Yanko? We'll move on from this. We're not going to talk about it Everyone anymore. Is, everyone's Last in a better place, time. Freya. Yep. Rain, Nico. Well, Devices in game leading. Yeah, I guess exactly. that's coming up later, though. But before that, we have got another qualification series. FlyQuest versus VP after this. At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes, it's yeah, double smokes in the same place there. Simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
The lads from Down Under now on top after taking down Cloud9 yesterday. Now just one more best of three would mean qualification to the playoffs for FlyQuest. But today, they're going to have to summit quite the mountain because, Janko, if you think you've been tested, try playing against these guys. You're going to have to be patient, persistent, and above all else, uh, enjoy that horrifically passive nature that we know Jane likes to deploy. Absolutely. You need all your focus. And I like how you said just one best of three away as if this, the core of this team has been winning many best of threes against European opposition. But yes, I think they, they surprised us uh, yesterday and perhaps uh, they have a little bit more left in the tank, but VP are a completely different beast to Cloud9. I think we should do a little pastiche of VP to kind of summarize exactly what they did yesterday and keep it short and sweet because that series that they played yesterday versus Wildcard uh, was incredibly fast, Selfish. Yeah, I mean, what is there really to say about it? They kind of dominated it. You look at the numbers across the board, obviously you have to talk about Flit. I think he got 20 frags in 14 rounds so he was consistent across the board Jane was in there doing his work as well you don't really have a bad thing to say about Virtus Pro from this matchup but the thing is and, and is as is the similar case for a lot of the other matchups that we saw yesterday it's kind of like what can you actually really take away from this one for Virtus Pro right wildcard just didn't really show up I think what we can take away though they're pretty good on the map when they don't have any tech problems it's, That's fair. it's very true. Right? It's very true. Right, but yeah, I agree. No, not, not much to, to look at for, for this series. I mean, Wildcard, even with a full roster, mm -hmm. would have had a tough time against VP. They were playing with a stand-in as well, so they just got the job done uh, in that one. VP and it doesn't get much harder in, in this game for them, so they'll take Fightable. it. Okay, analysis about VP done and dusted. Tick that off the list. Uh, FlyQuest, this is where things get really, really interesting, don't they? Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to be that guy that comes in here with like the hopium, you know, because I've been in that situation yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've looked at Greyhound. Sell FlyQuest to me. Back in the day, and I thought, man, these guys are actually kind of good. Look, to, to, the way you would sell this is, I think, obviously, Dexter coming back, we sort of had a lot of like, expectations around that. Yes. We were excited about that. We thought, okay, he's been playing over in Europe for a while. We've got a lot of good players in this FlyQuest roster. We know Inns, we know Vexite, everyone's excited about those two as far as Riflers are concerned. Liaz, very experienced, and Alistair, he's a very flamboyant AWPA when he's on his day. So you've got the pieces of the puzzle there, but the question was, where's the leadership for this Rossa? And Dexter coming back was that piece of the puzzle. Now we were expecting that he was going to be able to do great things with this Rossa going into the RMR, and that was not the case. So it was a crash back to reality for FlyQuest, but I think that's kind of good for them in the long term. You talked a little bit about, uh, you know, FlyQuest's issues when they face up against the international opposition mm. because uh, numbers haven't been looking so great for them as of recent times, right? Yeah, definitely. I think you have to go back and take a look at some of the big events that they have played and you'd have to look at the results that they've had at those events and say, well, they haven't really been up to scratch, right? There's been conversations around, why are these guys even there? Are they even deserving a spot? Do they, you know, deserve to be at an event like this if they're going to go ahead, play one best of one, one best of three, and then go home. And that's been the case at every IEM throughout 2023, even going into 2024. Things haven't been looking so great for them, but hopefully things are going to turn around here. This is their best performance at an IEM event in the last 12 months, off the basis of one best of one win. That's kind of wild. What I will say, though, is, look, I'm not necessarily expecting them to beat Virtus Pro today, but looking at the lower bracket match that they would potentially have to face, I think they can go even deeper than they have already done in this event thus far. I just love how we're basically saying they're terrible when they play in Europe and against European opposition, opposition, and there's still a win against NIP in there. Like, there's still a win against NIP. I love it. But yeah, possibly the turn of the tide for FlyQuest. And always confidence helps. I mean, CS is obviously a confidence game, and beating a team like Cloud9 doesn't matter. Like, there, there's some big names on there, so maybe that gives them a boost coming into the series. And as there well. is quite an obvious lack of something. Uh, going to be using this word quite a lot. No AWP, obviously, on Cloud9. No real AWP on Cloud9, which today, um, quite the different story facing up against VP. Yeah, one of the peskier AWPers in Jane, right? Like, can be so annoying to play against someone so passive, but that's why he can also be so punishing, right? It's all about playing the percentages, knowing your angles, uh, forcing the rotations and all of that stuff. And I think also the VP in theory should rarely get upset by it because their style is very default based. It, it's not too gambling on the T side with, you know, oh, we're going with a momentum call or we're trying to have a good read and we're just going to risk something. Sure, on the CT side, they do that a little bit. I think it's timed very well, though. So, yeah, it's going to be difficult for FlyQuest to find a way in here. Well, speaking of the opening situation, let's go ahead and check in with Alistair from FlyQuest. Alistair, when it comes to Australian teams in general, uh, there's usually like ups and downs and felt like 
you know, the teams were pretty like unstable. Would you say that maybe Dexter is something that is kind of will bring in that stability? Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope so, especially for us, it'll bring in stability. Um, uh, do you mean for the rest of the region? Yes. Yeah, for the rest of the region, I'd like to think so. Um, I think it will help raise like the level of other teams and hopefully, I guess, their team play and the way they approach games as well. So, yeah. So you maybe say that his time like in Europe was really useful because he got to like maybe observe that meta and come back and now like spread the word? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And obviously with us going overseas to boot camp, hopefully we can come back and spread that, I guess, level of play uh, a little bit more in practice. Well, yesterday you managed to destroy Cloud9, but we know like right now like, they're like opening situation is a bit like uh, there's like a big question mark to it. But when it comes to VP, well, they have Jame and like even if the whole team doesn't have the money, they'll still have like an open somehow in a way. For you as an opera, how different is it to play against a team that doesn't really have like a dedicated opera to having someone like Jame? Uh, I think obviously it's more comfortable versing no opera because you just feel like you can take lines uh, like more mm -hmm. and easier. Um, but a player like Jame, obviously, he's very good and always has a really strong economy on his side, so he's always going to have an op. So you kind of have to approach the game a little bit different and a little bit more careful. But I mean, all in all, not going to change too much, I don't think. And what about the pace that the VP like usually plays? So the fact that like, they're so like, slow and so methodic? Yeah, it's very slow. Um, I guess you just have to not waste util and, and not be silly, and you know, that's it. That's true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Inferno, Vertigo, Ancient, if we do so need it. Elfish, give me your takes on this map pool. Look, I don't want to brag, but I actually thought this is exactly what the veto was going to be, so I'll give myself a tick in the book for that one. I, I feel like it makes a lot of sense, right? Overpass, perma veto for FlyQuest. It's kind of two birds with one stone, actually, because that's the map that Virtus Pro like to go towards as a first pick. What's the alternative for Virtus Pro? It tends to often be Inferno. So I think you put that in there. Vertigo as well. Uh, I mean, I think for me, for FlyQuest, it's really been between Vertigo, Mirage, and Ancient oftentimes as what that first pick is concerned. Again, domestically, they can do whatever they want, right? They're the best team. They can choose amongst many, many maps. But Vertigo tends to be one of those that they go towards. And Virtus Pro tend not to play too much on Vertigo. So I think it's a, a good couple of picks. And Ancient, it feels like a nice middle ground between those two teams. So I'm happy with the veto, actually, as far as FlyQuest is concerned. And I'm happy with the veto as well, for as far as VP is concerned. I don't yeah, think there's any shockers. I don't think there's any shockers here. Uh, the name of the game for FlyQuest is Remain Calm, right? And be patient. I think their individuals will put be put under a lot of pressure with the play style of VP and considering the level of opposition they're used to, right, that may be an issue. And you can talk it through to death in your prep and in your theory, but you need to be able to execute on the server. Yeah, Cloud9 was one beast. VP are a whole nother level of opposition. We're going to be starting off on their map pick of Inferno with Chad and Alex. Alrighty then. Thank you very much. It's time to get this party started. How are you doing today, Chaddy B? I am uh, sprightly. I'd say so. You've been up early, walking around, getting some sun, and now we're ready to talk about some video games live from Chengdu, China. I'm excited to see what the boys have, have got in them. You know, we, we got to bring you that FlyQuest uh, best of one, taking down Cloud9, 12 consecutive rounds from the Aussies in their new jerseys. But I think VP is going to be a magnificent test, just to see if, you know, how much of this is real. Dexter giving an interview to HLTV, saying he doesn't want to get ahead of himself. He's hoping it's a confidence booster. I can I notice a little bit of hesitance to get overly excited with one best of one win. But it did give us a little bit of signs of life and some signs of hope, not for the bookmakers that's for sure still very much keeping their eyes on vp i'm glad they're being modest yeah silent entrance in towards apps to start us off and uh, this t side from vp gonna be tough to tussle with a map like inferno Ooh. late rotations late executes alistair pointing out gonna need to try and hold on to their util so Make sure they're hitting their shots early fly quest if they're tested and pressured and that's going to be the case liaz on the jiggle towards apps Rushley and Jraz on the ones and twos. So there's absolutely not a single kill going to be missed. That's what Rushley was saying today. The story will be told. That's exactly what he it's said. It's not yeah. about the kills, it's about the context. This is going to be an A play. Four up the guts of mid, one through the apartments, and here they go. Oh, Liaz, gosh, head has to be on a swivel. Got pushing pressure from both sides, but he's done well there. Alistair, that is. Only the one. Flip runs him down. Glock successful into the site. There's two smoke. Full team exec into A, and it's a very uncomfortable retake. You've got two players with armored dual Berettas and no kit. Hang around, see if you can find anything. Vexite can actually search for a couple of kills, but if I'm Inns and Dexter, I want to hold on to the Julies and the armor in a retake like this. You'd think. And oh, how frustrating. James got the info for They're free. They're giving it a go. Yeah, yeah. and it's going to cost him. Not the play. 
That's that uh, child virtual thumbs down. That's, what are we talking about? You know, Inferno retake, number disadvantage, no defuse kit, smoked off, and no way back into the round. Hold on to the Kevlar. You get some cheaper upgrades into the next. You don't take any damage. You can have MP9s with head armor and have a little bit of util around it. It's not the way that you really want to find yourself. You already had Julies as well. You could have dropped those across to a couple of your teammates. So could have had a potent looking second, but they still will force. And Mind this quest, is a, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, this is just such a perfect map for VP to uh, be at their best. Overpass and Inferno, I think, lends itself to this style of play more than the others. Oh, spots the knee, doesn't hit the shot, but the flash has Dexter doing the dance, completely blinded and executed. Vexite forced to recover that MP9, and oh, look at this, it's like Groundhog Day for the both of them. Flash comes over, Fane collects, a nice little double kill to start off the fragging proceedings. Rotating in, Inns got an awful lot on his plate here. There's probably gonna be a molly right onto his position. God, this is just textbook, isn't it? In the anti-force buy what you want to see. Good utility usage from VP, and that's going to be the 2-0. Oh. Alistair's going to get hunted down. James already starting to have a bit of a look here, so behind the truck. Oh, God. Spotted out, and not removed for now. Come on, Ali. What you got for us? Fame for running at him. Caught. Nice shot. Converts off the damage that Vexite did earlier, so he's held on to his Blitz low. scout. Flit's got to get out of there. They are actually flanking them. How cruel. So Norbert hits the brakes. Rotation to keep them in spawn. So still want to remove everything. Oi! Gets another. It's a nice work from Alistair on the scout. Liaz, has he got it in him? Oh, significant damage. Alistair would have loved that one. Can't get out the pistol in time. Look at their health. Some significant fragging, but not able to preserve anything. Yeah, and have to go for the full eco now. Do fly quest. So it's going to be likely their 3-0 start for VP. A good util usage for this top banana control, and I guess this uh, next round of play allows us to establish a couple of uh, conditions that the viewer can be looking for okay. in this game. So for the banana control on the T side, you're going to have Flit and Fame in combination with James supporting. Over towards second mid, you're going to have Norbert uh, getting the boiler slash second mid control with Mir working over towards apps. On the CT side, Liaz to anchor things down in apartments, Dexter and Vexite in combination for defending B. Alistair all over the shot with the AWP and Inns is the A rifle rotate. Walking down mid, a bit of a gap. Well, there was. Shame to deal with that. And Norbert, the mop and bucket comes out. A nice little double. Knows where another resides. Whoa. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. Respect. He forces Norbert down. Puts a first death in the column for Norbert, but yeah, VP. So far, it's going swimmingly. It's time to see what FlyQuest can do. You've already set the uh, the precedent for what we can expect from the CT setup. Well, uh, Flit's not going to be messing about and holding on to UMP. He's uh, upgraded into an AK-47. We'll see if Jame actually scoops that UMP up from spawn. He'll take it. And he will. Okay, well, as I mentioned, some more supportive, right? He's going to be throwing you too early, so Jame will be able to pick a gun up if it gets scattered onto the ground. But Ali with those scout kills, a little bit of extra cash. Can get out the AWP and armor. Be more cautious, won't they? Flit and fame don't want to be caught by any of those early orb lines. This is the flash that's been working for them, and this time they've learned their lesson. Conceding top banana. Flash in. Oh, it's happened again to Dexter. So far, the util from Jame has been flawless. Jame spotted on the cross. I think they just have such a good understanding of the type of pressure they can apply top B. Definitely. Once they have control, they're very confident. Fame and Flit are fantastic aimers. So if they take those jewels, it'll force you through that U-tilt. And it's forced out that rotation of Vexite. Top mid control being vied for and no information to be garnered for FlyQuest. The U-tilt is telling that they have lost brackets. Yeah, this is such a, a difficult team to put away. VP, they're just going through the motions right now and it looks like it's just overwhelming the FlyQuest boys on B. Now you've got two smokes on B. Do you rotate? Do you wait? You can see they're lining up for a little bit of a re-aggress. Inns pushing into mid. The angle is supreme. Actually started to move away, but still Think gets it. Yeah, well, they've got a lot of space. It's Liaz, the only man left on the site, spotted out. Oh, this is so difficult to stomach from a CT perspective. They're getting the info. You know there's pressure coming in. They're not giving fights willy-nilly. Smoke on library limits. The support from Vexite cut down. 
lets the whole squad arrive on the A side for a safe plant. Wow, this is, yeah, this is perfect. Picture perfect so far from VP. Vexite on the exit gets caught as well. He'll upgrade his Galil. And we always talk about the economy for VP always having something up their sleeve, but they're fantastic of wiping the slate. And you can see this immediately. Look at this, charging up Banana with three. They know where Alistair is. CT's cut off. And he's going to try and hold on to this AWP. Noted towards Ruins under so much pressure. Bomb halfway gone. And they are going to remove absolutely everything unless Alistair can hit more of those. Oh, no. Oh, he's just boxed in. The boy is a dead man scoping. Another quick scope. He's done his best there. One left. Unable to convert 4-0, loses the AWP, slate wiped clean, as you predicted. That looks like a nice, pristine mouse pad from Jay. What a new one. Yeah, look at it. Fresh out of the box. And this is the problem. Ali has seven kills, but all of them have been exits. Yeah. Actually, no, we got one on the pistol. So the rest of them have good been catch, exits. Good catch, good So the context is going to be key, but a 4-0 start for VP. And a tactical timeout, giving the opportunity for Urkas, the coach, of FlyQuest to chip in alongside of Dexter. And well, Dexter, you know, this is a familiar foe for him. Now sports fanatic, tenure in Europe, mm. had to tussle with VP. But this is it to uh, experience going up against the VP playstyle is a, a whole different kettle of fish as the saying goes. Oh yeah. I think one of the issues as well, VP, we, we know they can turn the screws and close, uh, play slow and, and force you to feel quite, I guess, squirmish in the approach. You don't feel like you can play your normal game. But once they smell blood in the water, they have some very strong individuals and they'll just eat you alive. And what I love about it as well is it could not be, there is probably no team, I'd go out on a limb and say, no team in Australia, you know, that has, they talk about scrimming against uh, Australian teams and how it kind of just limits their options. You're never going to play against a team that plays like VP. Not even just in the approach, never mind in the... You tried to copy it. Yeah, you, you can't you, do it. it it's it's no, not even going to be anywhere near so the same. So this is just completely, you know, quote-unquote foreign until you get to these tournaments. Let's see what they've got for us into this half by MP9s, 5.7s, a couple of Digs, and Alistair's going a little bit more of a forward stance. You can see he's concerned about a potential jump up as well, hoping to catch them off guard, but not interested is me. Wow. Just as Alistair poked his butt out of apps, he's got taken down. Cloud9 Wildcard B stream update for you. This is going to be a full BXQ. If Wildcard leave this tournament, Alex, without winning any rounds, they won one yesterday. It's one. That's going to be quite miserable considering the circumstances, but they can go for a full B execute everything. Get your mollies, your smokes, your flashes, use it all. Yeah, give us the context cam on this one. I just want to see the not? whole site. Yeah, oh yes. Molly, smoke, double molly. So you can't be oranges, you can't be new box. And if you are in front of them, you're blind. And TK. A TK. And now, ooh, nearly lined up for, go on Dexter. He hasn't got another in him. Norbert through the smoke, but this is a threatening round. It could still go wrong. Re-smoke. Re-smoke? God, they've got everything they need, haven't they? James, sticking to this elevated position on second. Ooh, not far off with a spam through the smoke. Norbert's caught ins, though, and now they know where Liaz is. Yeah, limited options for Liaz with just the 5-7. Oh, got the dink. Gave it a look in. That's probably a round that even though VP win, they wouldn't be too content. Not best, please. We gave away an awful lot. Yeah. But uh, still got cash money for the rebuys. So no dramas. 5-0 start. FlyQuest max loss bonus in play. And they'll be going into their second rifle round. Uh, I know you probably remember my bold prediction, but I'm going to re-predict it just so everyone at home. In the event. VP win the event. I got Astralis. Okay. Ooh, VP Astralis final. All right. All right. Why not? Yeah. Anything's possible. So let's see how they get this one going. Will they get off the goose egg? I love how they just brave straight through the smoke and they're lining you to love. They're so not worried about being kicked. Oh, well, they are running at them. And again, oh, and again, <laughs> flip, double entry on banana. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. No, certainly not. Do not envy the CTs up against VP in this shape, in this form. They've got some a point to prove, I think, after coming falling short, you know, controversially. Well, Jane was double-checking his computer today, stress-testing it. He was throwing it around the room, kicking yep. it a couple he times. He reinstalled the drivers. Yep. 
So probably save. But Norbert won't allow it, and as we mentioned, VP are going to rip all the guns away. So how long do they get to hold on oh, to their guns this round? Game. This isn't Counter-Strike. This is like the uh, zombie survival. Ooh, nice one through the smoke. Zombie survival. Yeah, zombie survival. So when you're playing against VP, there's two levels of the game. You Who's play Counter-Strike first. The zombies are, are the VP, VP. boys. Yeah. Okay, all right. And now you're kind of like, you know, you're, you're setting up your, your walls, your barriers. Okay. You're putting the little wood blocks in. I don't know. How, how this is a game it. mode in Counter-Strike, isn't it? Yeah. Zombie escape? Zombie, yeah, zombie, zombie escape. escape. But this is more like zombie save your guns. Uh, save your they're guns. Well, actually, they're not coming for them. Well, they're just, just Norbert. They're, not, they're still worried about a retake. Are they? No, Jane, they're Jane was, Yeah, Jane was just re-smoking over towards B. Okay, fair. He was worried about something. Wow, respect. But that actually means so they're the going to get away. So the zombies lost this time. They did, yeah. Wow. That's one point to the survivors. Damn. Like, it, it, it's, it's six zero, but... One point in the survival game oh, mode. Well, I yeah. guess when the world is completely taken over by zombies just yeah. surviving is winning. He's getting nervous. He's like, wait, man. I've been here before. Like, we've been winning on Inferno before. Um, oh, Dustin's one of my favorites. He's such a legend, I isn't love he? Dustin. But yeah, um... Just as we were talking about it, Dastan, cross Dastan mind too. <laughs> yeah, so if something does happen, can we just be really quick on the yeah. pause? Yeah, like, there it is, something did happen. Oh. Really quick, guys. Bang. What's going on with and you? And we split? saw the, the hot swap yesterday. Shout out to the admin team. It was a 20 second monitor swap out for oh, yeah, Brolin. Yeah. Boys are quick. Oh, they're not messing about. Pop it in, pop it out. Yeah, and display port cables are finicky. Yeah. They are a bit of a faff sometimes, but yeah, I'd rather have a cable that was tight than loosey goosey. That's true. And that's my cable review segment completed. Thank you for tuning in. Quick reset. The match medic. I just like saying it. Sounds cool, doesn't it? Which match medic? It just sounds good. Match medic. What a great name. I'd be proud of myself if I came up with that. Steve is here. I think I saw him. Yeah. Steve from Steve Bot Fame. Steve Bot. Well, that's that's the name of the bot. Steve well, Bot. Yeah, but I think match medic sounds cooler than Steve Bot. Well, Steve's not. A, he's not a bot. He's not. No, he's a human but being. But Steve made the bot. He made the bot. So it's called Steve Bob. I wonder how much he had to recode for CS2. Probably all of it. Liaz is going to do the mid-smoke. I can tell you that much. He's done his research here. And it's sailing through the sky. Alps team didn't catch that. No, but I can see up. on the mini-map, you see? Wow. Boop. Context, baby. Guess they could have used that because the orb was just carrying this whole operation yeah. like always. Well, Rush is... Yeah. Sleep at the wheel, then. a bit big for his boots. So they've gone for some softening utility. Here we go. Uh, They're going to contest early banana. Yep. Yeah, I do. That's a Molotov. And that's a Skedaddle. Well, so... Mm. So you don't have brackets control. You don't have top banana control. Yes. You've got, uh, three, sp you've got uh, three smokes. A couple of incendiaries. A few flashes. So banana control is VPs. Still being diligent, aren't they? Flash and a clear, pressure towards top B. They're going to have to try and use some retake util. That seems good. This seems like they may have curtailed the initial aggress. This is what you want to hope for, though, if you're VP, because you need to be extremely diligent in calling out the util. He's holding onto his smoke. He's not falling for this little coffin smoke bait, hoping you throw out your CT smoke. He's actually Dexter showed restraint here. Oof. Let's throw it now. Yeah, definitely. No, the AWP is over that was towards B. We could sure, but the AWP's over towards B. So if you want to try and go over towards this A site, you can go long. Uh, right? Knowing you don't have to deal with the AWP, then you just have to break the pit site setup. They've had three here this whole time. There's something to be said about that. Arch smoke from Norbert. Norbert. Write that one down. Ooh, that's lovely. Ollie from Jame can get this in towards pit. Okay, I like their setup. As long as Liaz can keep the short side. Oh, I'm an issue now. Good 15 volley. seconds. Really good. They're body. in trouble. They have to extinguish. Liaz gets fra one frag here. He can win the round. Two is even better. Combines with Vexite. Stands and bangs. Ins as well. In for it. In it to win it. And we see FlyQuest convert there first. And you could feel that coming. Just through the way in which they, I don't know, showed the AWP early. Could stop the early VP dominance towards Banana. Can you put words in better than I can, obviously, into what, why that felt better immediately? What you pointed out towards B is one of the keys, right? The fact that Dexter didn't just throw away his right. smoke. The AWP was able to hold onto the line. And then once Ali felt pressure, then they blocked. Uh, and also holding onto a bit of late utility. You still had Liaz over towards Pit with a molly until the last 20 seconds. Right. He dropped that. He gets a seven-second delay on that porch push. They had to extinguish and push up short. So they put VP under pressure. That was the different look.
look. The rest of the rounds, VP haven't been under pressure. They've been able to get map control for free, go for whatever finish that looked like. This time, they had to find solutions when the clock was low. And we heard Dexter talking about how we need to be holding on to our util. The first round they win, they held on to their util and rewarded for it. There's definitely some correlations here. But that's the thing. Once you feel the pressure, you have to use your nades. Of course. So that, that's the difference, is the way that FlyQuest were able to mitigate that. And they started the round a little bit more aggressively with their nades, right? They did the deep mid smoke. They tried to boost over Banana. They naded down the guts of middle to try and do some damage T-stairs. And uh, Darstan wants to chip in before the finances are bottomed out. This is an important round going forward for VP. If they lose this, or if they lose their opening gambit, it is likely to see them go for a save because going into the next round of play, finance is going to be low, only 1,900 schmackaroos. Have I said the likes of today, Alex? Or? I think they confused me with someone else. Reddit have lost the bloody plot, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at breakfast. Rush, do I ever say the likes of? The likes of. No, I can't even I put it in a sentence. I, can't, I, can't. I would love it if people could go through all of my previous casts. I need at least five examples of me saying the likes of. There is Leon throwing the mid smoke, the likes of G2. Face <laughs> I, plan. Mean, I think they confused me with someone else, but I don't know how many other Aussie casters. Oh, bloody hell, anyway. Interesting volley they've been throwing. Behind that deep mid smoke. And Inz is actually going for an aggress here. Oh, HE blows it open. They've kind of fumbled that, so they're not going to be able to see Inz on the push. Blitz holding for this. Still gets it. Touch of aggression, maybe an overstep. It's been punished. And Flit, he's so dangerous. He's found Alistair as well, so just taking down the AWPer on the mid-peak, trying to find vengeance. I did like the idea, because they opened the round in the same way, FlyQuest as the previous, but this time threw in a nice. little spice of aggression. He's gotten away with murder there. Gets away with it. Leon's not an equalizer, but certainly closing the gap. Just a one-man discrepancy is... He's not giving up short easily. Vexite smoked off. A look at the problem right now. Going up banana is flit. So Jamie, even though he's still applying pressure, top middle, it's all about this banana control. And you can see Leaz is calling this out. Everybody's had to rotate over to deal with this. Oh, flit has done. had absolutely no resistance. He's, dr he's dry jiggling. He's dry jiggling and seeing nothing. They're just going to contact in. It's feeling a bit too quiet, isn't it? Wow, well played by VP again. They just immediately are cooking so well. Crosses before the smoke, confirmed CT didn't have any resistance. You've already got the sight. And you, you had to gamble if you were FlyQuest yeah. there. After losing two openings, you, you had to operate. But you either needed to be more aggressive to try and catch them off in the choke point, which they kept uh, under their control with the smokes and mollies and the pressure. And now FlyQuest will have to save. And that one there just came with dealing with FlyQuest's aggression. Yeah, and also just that like two waves of pressure on A. Like you'd had you had Mir in the apartments, then you had James sticking around after his teammates had thrown you till started heading back to B, and it just reaffirmed the the uh, stack, the gamble. You know, you didn't have time to kind of say, mm, "It's quiet, let's get over to B and be there in time." It was all very well coordinated from VP. No surprises there. I don't it's... think any surprises to see the scoreline like this. I think yeah. if people were uh, thinking FlyQuest had turned over a new leaf. Not bad, not bad, 10 points. Uh, they you know, really need to understand that this team has still only been practicing in Australia. So in terms of form of individual, it is very low. And that's mm. not me having a dig, that's just me from somebody with the extreme experience in that position telling you how it is. Yeah. And even Dexter noted that it was just uh, preparation, but it's hard to prepare for this type of a match. Yeah, I mean, especially when you can you can prep all you want for VP. In theory until the cows come home. Yeah, especially when this team is going to hit as hard as they have. Like, Flit has found two double entries uh, in, back in different rounds. And that's just a guarantee. They're going to happen. He's walking up Banana now with a molly in his hand. That's how safe he feels. Good util usage. They've gone for an early retake combo. Thank you, Ben. Mr. Yesio, we call him. Yes, yes, yes. One yo. opening kill. That is uh, definitely a difference maker. Let's see if they can find one here. But you're being dictated to in a lot of these rounds. The one where they tried to set the tempo on the tone in the previous, Inza's push got snuffed out. So to manufacture openings, not easy. Oh, I find this position so terrifying. Oh, for that exact reason. Well, that's the end of Dexter. You feel like a bit of a tit, don't you? But, I mean, everything you've tried previously has just been a flash and a swing or losing your sight over rotating. And now you try something a bit more aggressive and two people start spamming you through the boards. Did you do something wrong? Did they see you? Did they smell you? I think, yeah, that's the that's the qualm, right? VP are the type of team to... 
be extremely their, diligent. Yeah. All of their util usage, like, I suppose in a future gun round we can talk through it and, and why it's so restrictive. But Alistair swings out, and this is where you need him to show a little bit of that flair. You need a repeak or two against VP. Yeah, that's just it's terrifying. You man. can get punished, sure, but is there he's a flash? Going. Oh, he's going. I think there might be a flash with this. Oh, oh no. fame's done him. No flash. No. And with 20 seconds left, unless Vexite can win the round on his own, which he might actually take it them both down in combination. They've done it. They've actually done it. Mir, can you get there in time? 10. I'm not sure you can. Hey. Vexite has won the round as the lone holder, the anchor on B, delivers. Get out of there, mate. Take the AWP and get out of there. He's actually gone for the repeat. You <laughs> crazy cat. He's, yeah, yeah. My <laughs> face went. What is he doing? <laughs> What's he, Why is he doing that? Well, because he's not expecting that. Yeah, no, one, see, no one would be doing that. Logic does not dictate you run away with the AWP and come back. Just clothesline the it poor guy. It doesn't make sense. That's really mean. Yeah, but it's, yeah, that double up. That's the difference maker, isn't it? And you can see fights on either side of the server. I really, don't want to see Vexite's face again. Yeah. Nice work. But Alistair's repeak, you know, it definitely threw a bit of a spanner into the works. Flit is slightly confused of how that one all unfolded. <laughs> He's probably going, Mia, what are you doing? Alex, here we go. Feed there it himself. is. Take Second opening pick, flip. Alex. Yeah, we know what that means. Around. That's what SEO told us. He promised us that FlyQuest win this round. The stats don't lie. And I'm starting to feel you, boy. You take five if you FlyQuest. The Chad Birch will guarantee. Oh, I'm not oh, saying cool, they man. get no, five. I'm five just saying. Guys, guarantee you, you, can you take it if it's on offer. The sponge, that's S P U N J. Oh, and here's Dexter into the play, catching another onto fame. It was a late recovery yesterday against Cloud9. It was. They kind of uh, fell asleep at the wheel for the first six and came back with 12. Would you have started to sleep at the wheel? Yeah, that'd be very hard to do, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on. I'm Maybe on the car wasn't there. started. That looks a bit foolish, as long as Inns gets it. Yeah, it's fine. James Saban. They should know. They should know deep down in their bones. Yeah, but I don't think they're going for it, are they? You don't want to be that the guys that got 1v4 by James. But, yeah, no, you're right. But this is the qualm, is they're going to have to deal with it next round. So would you rather deal with it now? Yeah. Or would you rather deal with it next round? I think I'd rather deal with it next round, to be honest. Really? No. Like, I, I mean, you, you, you can see the... Well, they're going to deal with the next round. They're going to deal with the next round. Loving that from Alistair. More impact from him. I feel like this is the, the one team that Alistair's unbridled aggression that we usually see is necessary yes. in pockets. Pockets of aggression. Uh, pockets of hot air. Mm. I've never had a hot pocket. They're microwavable, I believe. Yeah, I don't know m much about them, but everyone talks about them. They're kind of gamer adjacent, aren't they? They're like a very American thing. A pizza roll. Is it just essentially like cheese and tomato sauce in a yeah. like a dough ball? Yeah. Sounds quite nice, actually. You'd enjoy it. Yeah. Why don't? Why have they never come across to Europe? What, what's stopping Hot Pockets sure expanding into the European market? Maybe they have market? a different name. Yeah. Cheese and tomato balls. We're very matter of fact in mm. this part of the world. It's Vexai and Dexter giving it the full oh, no. beans. And Jane repelled by the flame. He stuck around to try and take a pot shot. Missed it. Look at them all group T stairs. No space for VP. This is great. Yeah, don't have to rush it that smoke. You know how valuable they are against VP. He's thrown another one down. So hurry up and wait, I guess. And they should do, right? Because you can see the type of investment. There's an AK in the mix alongside of this James saved AWP. Going into the final round of the half, if they lose this one, they're only looking at a 2,400 loss bonus. So it might have to be a bit more of a set piece in the next round if they can't get anything done now. So you know you're up against a saved orb. That's a cheeky way to do it. Well, they're so clearing just... out logs and broom. Yeah, full banana control. I like the half wall boost as well. Jump spot from Vexite. And that might lull fame into not clearing this. But then again, it's fame, you know. 
If anything, he probably is uh, cool the whole squad. James going to be trying to catch the jump spotter. Yo! K baits the shot. Oh, and down goes Dexter empty handed. This could go wrong. It's going wrong. Holds it. Dinks him. Controls it. Beautiful from Vexite. But now the AK's fallen into Flit's hands. Oh. He's already put it into good use. Oh, Here no. comes Ali. Charging through with the AWP. Whoa. Takes down James. That's that threat aggression. A pocket of it from Alistair. Putting James in his. And now we've got a 3v2 post plant. They're going to boost. He's already ready for it. Doesn't matter. Slipping into the water. And Alistair, yeah, you should pop off because that is ridiculous. His reaction to losing the B site, he knows how hard a retake can be, is let's get ahead of the play. Yeah, that's, that's one of those rounds where you have to, right? Because if you just allow them in and they can fortify, they can set up, that's going to get extremely dangerous. Vexite does so well to get the double. He was under a lot of pressure. Sure, they were pushing through the gray screen, but a lot of players would have just dropped back and waited for the rotation. Inns on the boost was great. Good thinking on their toes. But yesterday, we didn't see them getting fired up a lot until they were getting close to that victory point against Cloud9. And that's an important round because now that five that was on offer... Yeah, it's, it's there. Right there for the taking. It's Galil's, it's AK's, and there's certainly a lot of util, but FlyQuest have started to play their game. Can't believe I'm saying it sincerely now. The bomb going... Oh, look at this. This could get overrun. Oh, damn. Yeah, back that off, yeah, back nope, that nope, off. Nope, nope, cancel. The bomb going down, though, has actually allowed them a proper buy. If VP didn't oh, get that man. C4 down, could have been some oh, issues. Based off of the sound cues, he's found a little gap, and... I say that. Oh, Dexter punished. They're running him. Alistair needs a second, needs to double up, hits the quick scope. This is spicy orping from the Aussie. Flit finds a lovely little pocket in the smoke, slips the arch. They may not be expecting this. Flit is behind enemy lines. Vexite does not know. Alistair does not know. Surely they must be aware it was a possibility. No, because I think just the way the way he positioned around the smoke, Alistair assumed he'd have spotted Got it. Him. Oh Ooh, no, dead man walking. Alistair cut down, finds the upgrade ins though. Oh, he hears this. He just has to nail this shot. And he has. Perfect. Clean headshot. Jane going to punish as well. Nice work from him. Action on Liaz. Near in the apartments. 45. He knows James wrapping in. Oh, lovely angle. Look, good damage. Mir's going to force him wide. James does not swing upon it. Instead, it's a smoke. A reposition available for Liaz here. And Mir's not ready. Dink hit. Beautiful restraint as well on the taps. Nails the headshot. It's James in the clutch in our final round. Half health, a couple of bullets to the body will do it. Liaz converts and fly quest, understandably popping off a full recovery on the half. It was looking like absolute VP one way traffic, but they turn it around four on the trot. The Aussies are in this game.
Hey future pros, back with another classic smoke you should know for Inferno. And that is the Coffin Smoke. There are a few ways to throw this, but I like this one. To throw the smoke, get into the corner of the half wall. Aim at the top right corner of the wood. Then jump through the smoke. If you did line it up correctly, you'll be gifted with a coffin smoke that will make it quite difficult for the CTs to play around. Have fun pushing B. If you thought this map was Chung done, you are wrong, wrong, wrong. The Aussies are back in it in a big way. Oh, what a day. That's your limit. You've used it now. You've used what it. What do you mean? It wasn't, you, it wasn't Chung Do or Chung Don. No, but that, it was Chung that, too. That, that was your one. That's gone. God damn it. VP7, FlyQuest 5, a recovered half, takes us into our second. This is VP's pick, and it did look like it was all going swimmingly to plan until FlyQuest, they started to not only hold on to their nades, but they also took control of the game, bringing in some aggression, some of that signature pockets, Alistair aggression. aggression pockets, to pockets. be specific. Hot pockets. And I'm not talking about pizza rolls. However, see if they can stay on a roll. FlyQuest, can they get the pistol? We might need to bring, if the Aussies are around a bit more, some, you know, 90s cricket terminology with the stashes in play. Yeah. Some more how's that? I, I would love to have, like, a long, like, three-man spray down where you just get a how's that? That'd be great. That'd be so sick. I wouldn't mind that at all. Yeah. For all of you who don't know cricket, unlucky. Yeah. But that's what they say when, uh, when they're out. So Flit's about to get a full five-man execute in his face. Yeah, but I reckon How's he, that? he wins this. How's that? Watch this. One smoke. He's just won the round. You see that? And then throws the nade, right? Bang. Oof. Dexter and Inns. Destabilized. They nade, and he actually hits that quick shot to Dexter through the boards. And he'll play retake with his gang, who are actually all coming for a three banana push. Alistair's going to have an opportunity here. It's the flash. Alistair, this is going to be perfect. Oh, nails the first. Clean with it. Now jiggling in. Takes another head. Alistair's fragging up a storm. He's trying to jump peak. Maybe pushing it the limits of the uh, jump burst. But Norbert with a smoke and a kit. And he's opted to smoke CT. Could have perhaps been more threatening. Elsewhere. And yeah, there was a chance. There was a very real chance there. But they know how important that pistol was. We're going to the uh, umpire for review on that one. The flash that was highlighted by the commentary team missed Norbert. But a bit too much top spin on that one. She's hit the roof and hasn't landed past the half wall. Alistair profited off the leg. Oh dear. VAR on that one, please. Yeah, here it is. So the, the flash. It, it bounced off the wall. It bounced off the top wall to the left with a light swerve. <sighs> well, Norbert, Norbert doesn't normally do those. It's Jame who does those. You should have it in your repertoire, though. That's no doubt about it. Well, this is the tough one. These are the type of rounds that the Quest boys normally. Oh, they're over most the terrifying round. Shoelaces. 100%. So has Dexter, with a bit of extra time, been able to take them through the protocols necessary on the anti-eeks or the anti-force? Yeah, the Maus and Fnatic times, he's had plenty of time losing these rounds, so I'm sure he's got some ideas as to how to approach it. What's your kind of IGL philosophy on these rounds? Well, first you need to kind of probe out where this stack is, right? right. You need to apply pressure across the map to force out the util, because on a map like Inferno, uh, there is always going to be smoke spot up by the CTs to corral you try and force you into one of the two sites of preference. Now, there's a bit of smoke and mirrors that goes on. Are they using the smokes and stacking that site? Are they using the smokes to send you to the other? And, well, this is that control we were talking about. Team Flash doesn't make it easy for Vexite, but him and Dexter have been able to grab this control. If they execute in towards oh. A up short, Alex, I don't like their chances against this stack. Yeah, it's a brutal stack. MP9, 5-7s, Dexter. Oh, he's already spotted two. I think he's got enough of a whiff. That, that was suspicious. Already, knowing there was one towards long side, now he's seen Norbert and Mir. They are, however, sticking around. Inns needs to find them a way out, right? So he's working up banana now. There is more utility for that of Flit to deny. 30 seconds, real trouble. Oh, this gets awkward now. They can still pivot back to B, but they're going long side. Yeah, with Mir taking down Lias, finding a Galil. This really spells trouble. B. It has to be the B rap. They have to find Flit. Vexite dead, immediate just deletion. He nearly found Alistair. He could have won the round right there. Yeah, now, however, it gets interesting for FlyQuest. Have they gotten away with murder here? Another... Flank is fast, SMG. boys. Oh, he's just about around the corner. Dexter needs a multi-kill here. With a couple of seconds. Jumping peak. Only the one. It's all on to Alistair. He's got the bomb down, but loses his head. And that is why those rounds are so... 
terrifying. Norbert's got some choice words for the Aussies. And yeah, that's a fumble. That's a FlyQuest fumble. These second rounds can be brutal. And they did kind of walk into the lion's den. Was it just the fact that there was 30 seconds when they started to realize it's a stack? Was that the... the... Enough pressure early enough in the round, right? They started right. taking the top mid control at, what, about a minute? Yeah. And then by the time they veered up short, it probably 50 to 40 seconds. Uh, and they had no other options. They didn't have banana control. So there was never going to be a pivot back available uh, that wasn't blind. Right. But the fact that they did plant the bomb, I, I will say that's a positive for FlyQuest to try and have this tug of war, this arm wrestle of the finances. It gives them actually a decent looking follow-up round. Some Galils, some Util, Tech Nines, Deagles. Oh, Ince could be a dead man walking here. He's been burned by the flame. Spotted out. His support nade as well onto Dexter and Vexite. They did a very good job with the layering of Util. So they extinguished that threat, the flash worked well, and then a little bit of tickle damage. They will just have to go in towards this B execute. This. They're gonna have to just go. Oh, nice shot, nice find onto Faye. Flint's down as well. Inns has just won them the round, or at least won them the site. The bomb is trapped behind a molly right now. It should be the round. I, I don't see how VP can risk giving everything away. Oh, look at this as well. With Leon's on only a deagle, he's in the perfect position to try and find himself an upgrade on the way out. I even heard Norbert dropping a pit. Yeah, ooh, yeah, spotted out. So they're aware of the apartment occupation. That is great. Really good banana pr pressure. And they showed the good layering of utility and banana on the T side to get that control. It looked like Fame didn't have a helmet there, didn't it? Like the way in which he just he melted. Oh, I might be able to catch that one in I'd, the replay. I would like to check, yeah, because it just felt like it came so easy through the wall as well. But this pressure from Liaz as well, it means that the VP players kind of need ooh. to stay quite tucked and... I don't know how much you want to give away if you're FlyQuest. An offering of one or two is probably at the most. You know that they're saving. You know that you're essentially dealing with a gun round into the next again, just based off the nature of these back and forth. So they will get to retain three rifles. But that is very important. And and they did a you know just Sorry. a simple... No, I was just laughing at the, the, the juxtaposition between Norbert celebrate. Here we go. Look at that. Straight through the boards. It must have been just a dink and a body shot. But from the high highs to the low lows, you know, it's a raspberry out of his lips from the, the previous round. It's just, this is Counter-Strike. You go. normal to see Norbert popping off like no, that either. That's true. So maybe he's not liking being yelled at by Alistair on no, the other side. No, I think side. so. You can see he was very clearly like looking up as in he's trying to make sure they can hear him. And under his skin. Well, Jame can drop an M4 and Fame can also buy. So th there is a, another full buy round available, essentially, for VP. Dustan taking the second of the three tactical timeouts in regulation. Well, FlyQuest one round away from tying things up. Yeah, admirable, really. That bomb plant from Alistair is, is give, gave them a way to convert here in the third. So back into control. It's the little details, especially when you put VP under the microscope, but FlyQuest... Being able to do the same. And those investments that I prefaced, are they coming through? They are. So James has dropped an M4 for Flit. Fame's been able to get in with a Famous. I think that was facilitated thanks to Norbert. So we're straight into the gun rounds. It didn't really feel like we needed to skip a beat with Ecos. Yeah, not, no complaints from me. This battle for Banana begins once more. Dexter through the flames. No flash. And, ooh, but a good headshot from Flit. And he's nearly caught in as well on the jump log. Ahead of the util flip retreats, Inns just hoovers up that additional space. Trying to force an early smoke, and he'll do so. Good pressure. Mia has rotated okay. to Mission try and accomplished. assist in case of a fast B execute. And Vexite and Liaz have been able to get their default space on their own. So they had boiler and halls, but being called back into the B play. James loves a gamble. Oh, he has immaculate reads time and time again on this map. They're both, I reckon. Norbert tucked in pit, Jame on the long side and mollied out now. Oh, this kill. Flit gets some revenge from the previous. Inns in the grave and now it's a 3v5. Now look is bleak for this one for FlyQuest. Liaz throws out the smoke. They are going to give it a go. Good chip damage as well. This additional util is delivered by Mir. Just hit the mark. Forced into the open by their Molotovs, but not committing at the right time. Flit should catch that nade. Oh. Yeah, just deleted. A little bonus. Now they could be under threat here. If Vexite ooh, goes down to Mir, Alistair in a 1v2. Goes for a safe plant. 
Finds himself an M4. And they're coming in from two different directions. How's he going to approach this one? He's going to have to adjust into James. He's actually going back to line up Util here. Ah, that flash has th thrown them off. They think he's gone ruins. Norbert's clearing for it. Oh, he can isolate these jewels. James loud about this. Perfect timing. Not needs another. Spots out Norbert. Norbert capitulating now through the nade. Oh, he finds him. Alistair forced wide. Norbert will close in just enough time for the defuse. Still made a round out of it. That was yeah. a three on five execute that comes down to a one on one. So very good attempt there from Alistair. Up to 17 kills. And a bunch of those that we mentioned were exits in that first half of play. But now finding some real impact. And sure, they, they couldn't convert it. But this is still good bang for the buck of what was left. And you're right, that flash. I, I thought it was going to give away his position, but it acted the complete opposite. And if it wasn't for that nade, maybe, just maybe, Alistair could have picked up a huge one on two. But the bomb goes down again. The finances are there. He can bring out that AWP before Ooh, James. Okay, this gets interesting. Let's see how they approach it. Half wall smoke from the T's. Oh, yeah, forced to respect the uh, Molotov. Throws out one of his own. Ali's searching. Had his moment, his opportunity, and what is this aggression? Look at Fame's HP. Lucky to get away with his life on that one. That was nearly the double on the spray. He's just doing a very good job with the banana control, whether it's the kills or the space. Okay, being completely caught out. Rare a good to CS see again, FlyQuest. They really are. And this is this is pacey now. Like they know they've got Norbert kind of cornered in the pit. They've taken him down with five alive. So we continue to go back and forth. We haven't had consecutive rounds in this second half of play. So some real positive signs for FlyQuest. Yeah, which, I mean... It's essentially the sentiment we had yesterday against Cloud9. Precisely, it's happening again. Like they've got the fundamental sound, the individuals are firing. Because the biggest thing that you're going to be lacking from practicing in Australia is, I, I guess... Well, being punished for your mistakes, wouldn't yes, you but, say? But that's where the theory comes in is right making sure that everybody understands that this is the util patterns we need to use we can't be overstepping these marks yeah. it's more i want to say that the time to kill on the frags right so make like being sharp enough mm -hmm. and they're even going to look to hunt admirable because normally i would be bang on agreeing with there in the sense that oh, i can't believe it they wiped the board with all five staying alive it's huge, it's huge. That, that is a massive round. It has to be an eco for VP. Well, actually, they have not, they have to go for the, the hodgepodge force. Which is, you know, a position VP are rarely put in. Normally, they can hold on to their guns. This is an interesting aggression. Like, I think Inns, by being in front of that smoke, really uh, kind of subverted the expectation. Well, it's because they were playing three banana and there was a bit of pressure top mid. Norbert yeah, losing his cool. cool. And they're not ooh, actually ooh, ooh. Ooh, really losing his cool. They have gotten under Norbert's skin today. That's impressive. That's uh, they, They've actually taken the eco. Oh, yeah. They, they second-guessed it. They're so next, for next buy round is, is going to be pretty mid to use Zoomalinga. Yeah, mid AF. Now, you don't trip up on your shoelaces here. Double flash for that porch. Oh, it really... It, it can't go wrong unless... Unless, unless you get double dinks off the... Oof, yeah, there's one. That's enough to get you a little scared, isn't it? P250, Norbert puts Ali on notice. Oh, no. And they're not going to be immediately dissuaded. No, they're you should have a look. Yeah, they're going to continue to investigate. Dexter having a quick jiggle in. Off isolate Mir. Good play from him. Down goes the AWP. Norbert continuously finding impact, even on the Ecos. Ooh, this is Dexter's chance. Norbert on the reposition, slipping out of boiler. Dexter can't find him, so... Good positioning and play from VP. Norbert on a re-aggress. Vexite could be caught off by this. and He's keeping him on their toes. He's getting info as well. So we're doing a lot with a little as Norbert. Fame just launching down banana. Yeah, this is good as well from Fame. He'll be able to get early warning. Vexite's watching this. He was. Oh, he was. He was. Oh, Inns. He covers the gap. And now B's open. They're going to start charging. Vexite's got a nade in his hands. Norbert can't find him. Oh, that's a tilter. Oh, he felt like he had a freebie there. Instead, it's going to be a nice ninth converted, albeit scary. It's definitely scary. But consecutive rounds to be posted in the second half, and the ones to draw that first blood will be FlyQuest. We're all tied up. Digits to be punched in now. 40 seconds thrust on the clock. 
Jame and Co are going to say, hey, where the hell did this orb go? I'm sure Jay knows where it is. This is the third mini game. Hey, where is it? Yeah. Oh, they it found is. it. I wasn't that far away at all. I thought they threw it over the fence. I think they did too. Well, that would be quite the find. This it would not be possible. Oh, actually, Flit has. Wait, yeah, no, they're looking for him. Oh, I think he's gone away with it here. Good positioning. Oh, they may have heard the scope. Should I have. Yeah. Oh, Flit not known to be an orb, but and he's lost it. They they know how good that one feels. Alistair happy to hear the orb is removed. Yeah, because if there is to be an orb, Flit would have to drop it. And he's only got five point hits. Oh dear. Flit's about to operate with no armor. He's got Sanji. Flit's just been Sanji. 2024. Flit shouldn't be Sanji. You should never Sanji Flit. Flit is one of the players that I would not Sanji. Well, I wouldn't Sanji Sanji, to be honest. They well, do. Sanji's like Dobby. Yeah. Just give him sock. He's happy with a sock. I can't believe Flit's <laughs> been Sanji live in front of our screens. Damn. Because so just so everyone's up to up to scale, he had five point one. Yeah. So he's dropped the orb, doesn't have enough for armor. So he, what does he get? Well, he a deagle. Oh, they're not buying. Oh, that's okay. Well, he had. Well, I, he still feels like he's been sand. Oh, he definitely. The, it's, the point stands. It's just that this is James' master plan in the sense that he can hopefully make this costly, maybe win the round, and if they don't, he'll save it. Well, he'll have an orb next round again. Yeah. Whereas Flit will have to. <laughs> I don't well, know what whatever Flit's going to have. Let's Maybe Flit will get a drop from James going for something aggy, right? Here we go. Just listening. Trying to catch any early mid-steps. Let's see what FlyQuest, FlyQuest's game plan is here. So a smoke arch. Bracket control. And at quite an early spot there. He spots out the balcony player. Dexter making no secret of this... I think that was meant to land on the balcony. I do believe so, yeah. Not easy to do. They love this line. This is like the VPCT line. They've done this twice now. Going into the orb. Penny's about to drop. Yeah, so are the FlyQuest players. Jame. Takes down the rival Orpa, and that's going to be already ringing the alarm bell. Do you really want to peek into him again? Oh, you spies retreat to library. Knowing you've isolated him. He wraps Arch. Oof. Dexter with a bomb. Playing upon the front of the, the smoke. Vexite hitting some headies. Beautiful. Into the stack, but nailing their shots. It's still sketchy with James Flank. He's nailed it. Takes down Dexter. Could find another. Vexite swivels into another. A triple kill from Vexite. This is a high impact round. Inns combines. Takes down the AWP, and they can get the bomb down. Or can they? No, they can't. From behind, flip the glass cannon deeg in the 1v2. Oh. Oh, he's timed it to perfection. Inns doesn't expect this. Spots him out. Okay the frag and they'll feel very good about that one vexite and ins with five between the two of them and vexite right coming around that arch side just popping off Oof. massive impact to be found under so much pressure and the fact that they didn't lose their cool once the orb was noted a couple of nice shots here from vexite important onto the second the third necessary and ins coming in oh, to lovely. save the day in the one-on-one -on -one. fakes it out had time to work with and steals another away. FlyQuest up to the double digits. It's Fame that has to work with an SMG. Flit, given the gift of a rifle. Well, makes sense. Flit's going to be the point man in Banana. But this mid control again. FlyQuest very straightforward. Walking up the guts. Vexite and Dexter in combination. Long smoke lands. Have to get Jame off the line. Long orb noted again. And Vexite with the entry. Massive back-to-back -back Vexite impact. Ties with Ali now at 17 each. Liaz. Oh, swung on by Norbert. Just drives into the site. Whoa, caught with his knife out there. Dexter was heading into CT spawn. Thought he had space. And oh, a nice tag there. Ali actually puts Norbert down to 37. Want to keep the pressure on. And it is most definitely on. Inns, a single bullet could do it. Molotov forces his hand in towards mini pit. The util seems pretty good here from FlyQuest. Mir in a power position though on Cold Zera. Another molly limits Norbert's options. 
Staying through the smoke as well to provide support. A three-man defensive unit here. Flashes are good. Frag is better. It's Mir's turn. And a missed shot from Alistair in the clutch. He's not going to get anything with that one. So tied up. 10-10. Double kills from Fame and Mir, respectively, preserving an AWP for Jame. Need to take stock. The echoes of that 1v1 against the bogey AWP and upgraded pistols. They're going to have some ramifications for FlyQuest. Be interested to see if they want to take a bit of a timeout to discuss their options. They're currently letting freeze time tick all the way down. Good shooting. And there it is. So they've called the, the tactical timeout as late as they can. They talked through the whole freeze time 20 seconds, and now they've brought Urkast in. Third and final tactical timeout. Urkast not doing an awful lot of talking, so it feels to me like Dexter has quite a plan ahead of them. Because this is where this is where VP get the edge, right? Is that they've been that AWP half by around it, leading to that 1v1 as you highlighted. It puts you in this position where you are kind of at 10-10, forced to have this kind of higgledy-piggledy setup. They're actually donating you to, to Liaz, so he can now focus a little bit more on firepower. Everybody else had enough to buy. Okay. So Alistair, with no util, because that's been donated across, he's been able to get the AWP out again. Backside 18, 17 for Alistair. I've been enjoying the banana control from Inza. I'll be interested to see if they don't just return to something a little bit more banana-centric like they had earlier on in the piece. Looks like they've just thrown out the half wall smoke towards banana. So exchanging util. James actually brought his weapon of choice to the party. It's tough staying in that position, especially if you're considering they have a lot of nades on the other side, but they're not being so liberal. In previous rounds, we've seen them just lob the Molotovs up towards car, but with the smokes restricting the vision, we might have another orb head to head. We've had quite a few of these. We have. Oh, and Alistair has beheaded Jame. He could get another one here. He's looking like he's hunting. Look how quick he is on the fight. Ends in support. A panic incendiary to delay. The onslaught's coming. The flashes too. Fame rotates through. Flip, cooking, spraying, connecting. Gets himself one. Can't track Dexter. Good movement from the Aussie there. And now comes Fame straight into the They've Alistair's AWP. They've done it. An 11th secured by FlyQuest in their campaign up Banana. And great work, right? The, the alley head-to-head -head against Jame in the previous, right, when it was the, the lighter purchase. With just that Jame AWP, he pipped him at the post. But yeah. this time round... Can't be stopped. That's a huge opener from Ali. I'd love to see it again from his POV because from James, it, he couldn't see much. He couldn't see diddly squat. So good angle management. Alistair further away from the angle. James too close to the wall. Takes down the AWP with a lovely headshot as well. That's always rubbing salt in the wound. At one point, right, it was one-way traffic as far as opening jewels were concerned. That's definitely been tipped on its head. Alistair has now been successful in three. Inns has been able to find two. They're hunting as well. They can take it all away. They know the CT economy is fragile. But so is the T side. I, I, this is the type of round where you're down the home stretch. I, I think that you may as well let them keep Don't it. Don't push the smoke, do you? You Maybe you, you boost. You see if Vexite can get himself a cheeky one. Oh, which he won't. Whoa, that's enough. That's enough. They've seen enough. But they're playing considered Counter-Strike. And, and, and this is one of the keys with FlyQuest under Dexter. I, I think I mentioned this yesterday. I think one of the issues for them was, here it is. Whoa, bang. It looks easy from that POV, doesn't it? Flit, I, I think, somewhat overzealous with that swing after the first, just knowing he had to do it on his own. So that b site falls once he takes that fight. And Dastan, he hits the big red button. Jame, with 30 seconds to confer where their finances are at. Yeah, it is an emergency meeting. This is your pick. And you're forced to VP to most definitely respect you. I mean, using all of their timeouts, feeling the scrutiny and pressure of the economy thanks to your considered Counter-Strike. It's been a good tussle. This has been a good game of CS. Yeah. It's had its moments, some individual plays from both sides. I'm glad it's a BO3. I'm going to be interested to see if this keeps something to Vertigo. And then Ancient. Oh, yes, please. Yesterday's favorite map. As far as the A stream, best of ones were we had, we had some good reps. www.ancient.com. Yeah. Forever and ever. Sponge, machine, and ancient. 100 days, 100 years. They've actually uh, given the M4 to Flit, so Norbert's with some form of a donation. And no, I, uh, VP definitely don't play Finders Keepers. Well, they're not in their rulebook.
Well, the type of default spread we see from FlyQuest, it's telling they're not certain of what type of maneuver VP are opening with. You can see that passive net. Now that there hasn't been an aggressive maneuver out the gates in the first 40 seconds, they're starting to try and grab back some control. So Alistair wants to uh, leave his util behind. I think someone dropped him a second smoke. He's trying to make sure he has both at his feet. Okay, so if that's the case, likely just to see an A set piece. And if Dexter out calls another one of these gamble stacks from Jame, he will have done very well. That looks to be the case. Arch smoke, library smoke, just the one player of Norbert. He restricts movements. Rotation on its way, 40 seconds. Going long side. Going long side. Fame down, Norbert good for one. The second covered by Vexite, an important trade. It gets them into the site. That library smoke could be pushed. It's great cover. It's team play. Inns keeps Vexite alive. Oh, oh, Jame. Jame and Mir. Swing on him together. They are. They're going to have Inns cooked here. Oh, he does well. Takes down Jame. Will go down to Mir, but the job is done. The round is won. And that's 12. Out calling. I mean, I love the way you framed it because that's exactly what Dexter's done there. He's called the bluff. He's called the gamble correctly. Essentially a blind execute. Yeah. Because they didn't have any information. No they've just gone with it. And they've even, right, I, I, the Three Little Bears book is what the Valve devs have written, right? Because with the smokes, if you can't go under them, can't go over them, well, you got to go through them. Now we can do that with the HE. Yeah. <laughs> is that the Three Little Bears? Yeah, Goldilocks. That's but the too hot, too cold, just right. I don't know about the uh, three bears going over or not. No, I think that's no. with the tunnel. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's I've never heard that. It might have been from play school. Yeah, you, I think. I'm not sure where that came from. You can't go. Over. I've heard of it. You have heard it though, haven't you? Can't go over. Can't go. Yeah, over it's, it. we're go going on a bear it. hunt. Ah, there was bears There's involved. Bears involved. Yeah. There's a bear in there. Look at this cover, man. It just feels like every time it looks like VP are about to find a gap, which used to be this kind of tired narrative around surrounding the Aussies where it's like, oh, they're, they're looking good, they've got some good ideas, but they're always, there's just like a gap that good players will find. But so far, those gaps, they haven't been there. It's good cover. Some real indecision in spawn from VP there. Oh, yeah? Dropping Util across, looking at each other, a little bit late. FlyQuest, one round away from the upset on map number one. VP on Inferno, that is a proper feather for your cap. No timeouts from Jame this time. Yeah, got no, yeah. The Time Lords run, out, run dry. All right then, Dexter. What'll it be? I think Inz has done a phenomenal job with the banana control, so sending him forward yet again. Top banana U2, quite telling. VP feeling the pressure. Norbert and Jame in combination, staying staunch. If these two just get bowled over, sight gone. Likely round done. If. Norbert. 19 frags. He's got a good opportunity here. Two backs turned and he's going to surely get them both. Beautiful control of the M4. No, it's B now. They certainly will. There's three players here. There's a smoke for them to go through. Tough. This gets really difficult now for FlyQuest. It's not a guarantee. But this is not going to go OT. Pushing through his Vex site. In should go down here. Beautiful work. Fame. Flip. Five alive for VP. You're getting out of this one, Alistair. A perfect defense. Yeah, Alistair's going to be hard pressed to get away with the AWP. It's Norbert looking for another one already. The double kill. This could be the triple. Alistair. Has he done enough? Look at this train. Four CTs just barreling down Banana in pursuit of the AWP. Alistair's got to play the survival game. Be given the good graces. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. VP want to hold on to their goodies as well. And again, we just have to return to taking a look at what drops are possible. Might have been a better opportunity for FlyQuest to save instead of forcing into a 3 on 5 situation because a few of their players are below that 4K mark. See you. So this was great. And that setup, unpressured, undaunted towards Boiler and Halls. And by hanging around, by lingering, Norbert profits massively. So huge impact from him. Hasn't been with the yells, but has been with the frags. Yeah, cast a curse there about talking about gaps and then two of them not ready for Norbert and Boiler. But they've managed to cobble something together pretty respectable. Just the Tech-9 and a Galil. You'd love to get it done in regulation. OT is going to favor oh, VP. Oh, he tried his luck as someone aggressive, but the biggest gun for the T side falls first. An opening kill for Jame. Next against the AWP. See what he can do with it. Retake Util lined up.
You want to get it done right here, right now, and I understand that you're down a man. But this is still the best opportunity for FlyQuest. Looks like... Missed the Molly. Yes, yeah, missed. Free space. It, it Maybe just a BXQ call. It's not the worst idea. Flint throws down that smoke. It's well-timed. Oh, hey, G to blow this one open. Yeah, that limits their options significantly. James even rotated over. A and it looks like the way they're posturing, they might want to try and take some space back. They will. Oh, that's this could go so wrong or this. really right. Yeah, here we go. Is it OT? Or do they finish in regulation? Already the man advantage. Flip got a lot on his plate. Missed shot from Jame. Little bit of an opportunity. Two misses from him. And Liaz losing his head. Fame sharp with it. Good on the AK. They're locked in. 2v4. Miz push down mid. It's going to have to be B. Dexter with your AWP. Vexite. Oh, actually, Dexter nailed one, but Vexite plucked on the jump. Dexter oh. gives him a no scope to the face. Has he got anything more to say? 20 seconds. Trying to retrieve that bomb. Smoke might facilitate that. Yeah, he's going to hear him. Trying to hit the no scope through the smoke. He's in such a dire position. What's he supposed to do? Trying to find a plant spot. Jane will take him down. And we go OT. Lovely sequence from the last two rounds there from the VP boys. They stabilize and they show that. Uh, Constant, hard to put away nature. So the, I don't want to call it desperation, but trying to find this opener. You can see it from James' perspective. Alistair has been getting a few head-to-heads against James, so worth a crack at the Zywu, I think we call that one. Yeah. And Dexter giving it a go, but the AWP, not the weapon for the job. And we find ourselves in OT number one. And this is where I think VP can really take control. Fought hard to get to this position for that quest. Not done yet. It's probably going to feel like a squandered chance in regulation, but they can still get things done. VP. Opportunity to screw their head back on tight. Second wave of banana util flushing them back, spamming forward. It's under pressure. Damage done to Flit. We'll have to relinquish control. So FlyQuest win out the war. Oh, not pushing that one, are you? Deep half wall smoke. We're coming out of that grey screen straight into fame. So I don't have the top banana control or brackets. 55 seconds remaining on the clock, so one of the two is going to have to be scooped. Alistair looking to line up Util again. And look at this rotation from VP. Sacking four players towards the A site. James AWP towards Moto. Oh, Flint's Ooh. aggression. I love it. Yeah, it's perfectly timed. Liaz can... Oh, was unprepared for it, but he has just missed the... going to force them in. The opportunity. Now they are on their way in. Good timing on that incendiary. Vexite goes back instead of forward. With only 20 seconds left. Now the nade onto Norbert's face. He's done well to delay them. Flash as well. 20 seconds. It's five alive on both sides. 90. Dexter tips the scales in their favor. Only for a moment. Looking good from Norbert and Mir. This crossfire is potent. And they're making it work. No time for Alistair. Gets caught on the way in. It's only ins. Maybe actually can get the bomb down. Oh, the molly forced him wide. It just about gets the bomb down. But run down Norbert. This beautiful anchor work from him. It was a trying time. Gets three and gets the round. Damn, I, I love that maneuver from Flit. After taking so much damage in Banana, the first thing he does is rotate all the way around A and then pushes apartments. And even though he didn't get the kill on Liaz, it was still the trigger point for them to be thrust in towards A because they probably assumed that was Norbert. Right. Right, and they're thinking, well, if the pit anchor is being aggressive in apartments, let's go. There shouldn't be anybody locking it down. And they've pushed in towards the den. It almost worked out in his favor that Precisely. he didn't get the kill. Yeah. yeah, absolutely wild scenes. Well, this is the extra timeout you get once you make it into overtime. I don't know how many more events we have to keep doing that before people are, you know, up Most to people snuff. are starting to get up, yeah. get up to speed. But uh, in case you missed it, in the change to MR12, you get three tactical timeouts in regulation for each team. And then every set of overtime, one extra timeout that do not accrue. You either use it or lose it. After another pretty stressful round, Dustin has opted to use it. Oh, 
Archers being left at spawn. So, spending their money. Putting pressure on James, haven't they? Only oh, this is real fast. Oh, that is very fast. Yeah, and the incendiary is perfectly timed to slow him. I think the conversation for a fly quest is probably, hey, we can't keep letting them linger in boiler and halls. We we need to harass them out of these positions. And Dexter invigorated quite quickly up the guts. Oh, he's gonna make an in-game leader play. Watch this. Only in-game leaders can get away with these boys. Don't try this at home. Oh, he's played the fade. Mir spotted him, unfortunately, so the uh, the jig is up. Also, Seeds of Doubt in Arch with that smoke, so that gets uh, Jame locked in on the position. And that does mean that the gap in the B defense right now is open. Flame and fit. Flame and fit? Fit and flame. Flip. Fame and flip. There we go. Gap. Yeah, he's threading the needle. But Mir just looked away. Can still fall back. Forty seconds. Forty seconds, indeed. It's pandemonium over coming there, back. and they are trying to sell this out. James still buying it. They have no nades left to execute. Eh? They're really hoping Dexter can find this gap. Mir's ready for it. Nice angle from him. Stampeding into A now. Mir and Norbert. Can they pass this test? It's a huge headshot from Dexter. They know where you are, Norbert. But it doesn't matter if he can control the spray onto Liaz. The pressure mounting. Liaz delivers a necessary frag. And they have got the A plant. Interesting one, though. Can they go for the retake? James interested. Fame and Flick coming in from different angles as well. It's up to Fame here. And gets the orb. The shadow betrays him. Great shots. Dexter builds around. And they've managed to pivot into A last minute. That's impressive to tie us up 13 each. It might give this a look. Alistair might even overstep the mark, starting to search further forward in middle of timing. On to Flit, spotted now, shot taken. Oh. And he even leaps forward, wants to take everything away from Flit. Chill your beans. Has to be careful about this one, but might have done that. Oh. Flit will get away. But that right there, I said it's an in-game leader play, and it didn't kick off the way I thought. No, but it, it worked it's out. It's still it's Dexter having to get creative. Think about all the space, right? The in-game leader pushing forward, applying so much pressure towards A, finding the gap. So he essentially was the lurker in that round, but him being alive as the loose piece, right? Feeling that he's the one that can understand the rotations and in this forward position and then call them back in. Without that kill, there is no way in the world FlyQuest win this round. So Dexter, whoa, whoa, whoa. he's having a bloody tantrum. Yeah, he's not happy with that. I he's mean having such a great game, still spitting the dummy. Yeah, I, I can understand the frustrations when you feel like... Uh, you're doing it all. You've done everything. It's going to be a very telling round. It's going to set the, the standard for what is required of VP on their attack. If they can find a second T round here. 66%. Recurring, of course. Flit, seeing if Dexter wants to edge. Inviting him to edge. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Hexite's throwing util boiler at the same time as this, this fight and Banana's going down. Oh, forced wide into the flames. Flit gets away with murder onto Dexter. The molly forced him in, oh. and Flit, with a nade on his face, he still gets away. Tough round now. Yeah, very tough, because you're going to have to dry peek Jame. Oh, no! Jame, an uncharacteristic miss. That nade might find him. It does! One hell of a bowling from Liaz. How's that? And Norbert, he's crossing back. He's re-aggressing as they try and test Mir. Hello? Good shot from Mir. Vexite returns the favor. They surely are going to... Oh, they're going to kiss in the smoke on B. Wait, 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 wait. What is that? Fame! Not ready for the angle. Now another one through the smoke. Smokey plays. Vexite just looked away. Gets it onto Norbert. Sight, pick your poison. 20 seconds left. Just choose a sight, boys. Choose a sight. This can't go wrong. Well, the no flits a B defender. HP. Do you see him? No. I think he saw him. Oh, Alistair with the bomb. If he goes down, never mind. Oh, he definitely He's saw him. He's ready. Definitely saw him. Boys, the bar is set high. FlyQuest, they set the standard. Two required out of VP on their T side. And the misses from Jame are starting to come back to cost them now. Only 11 kills, and he's had a few opportunities. That was a mare, wasn't it? Yeah, he's just had some that haven't quite landed. 
Some sharp shooting, some fortunate finding. Like that one as well. Some great awareness. Puts them now two rounds away. Difficult to have that teammate next to you, isn't it? Like you're just in the peripheral vision, you can see Norbert. He's down the end. Yeah, wouldn't want him in the middle. Damn, FlyQuest, they're playing solid Counter-Strike if you just joined us. FlyQuest already taking down Cloud9 in the best of one. Upper bracket semi here. Started slow, but so did that best of one. Recovering the half, 7-5 and taking us to OT now. VP with two on the trot to take us here. Slower start from VP. Going back to spawn fame, seeing what he can find. Flash for his troubles. Here they go. Flash forced away. This was some of the problems that FlyQuest encountered in the regulation at the start. Was this pressure from Flit on to be early? Dexter throws out the smoke, plays in the off angle so as to not go down to any preemptive spray. Five on five with 50 seconds. They're staring at the smokes. Inza's come over and donated some util. He's been told to get on it. Oh, spotted, oh. spotted. I don't think Vexite caught the whiff the other way. Forced to respect the util. He's got a nade as well. 30 seconds. They're going to finish B. This is going to be on Vexite. He's playing anti. Good nade damage. Flit's really the walking wounded at 29. Here comes the util, here comes the x -Sec. Flustered is Jane dropping his nades and a bit more than that. Spam, empty-handed Dexter, but there's something from Vexite. It needed to be more ins. What have you got for us? Nothing on his smoke spam. Alistair and Liaz, a country mile away. A redeploy of a smoke available. Make it to Mia and Fame. Both with walls to erect. Oh, you're just smoked out. Alistair could land some good utility, but still, you're going to have to wait quite a while. They're sticking around, Chad. They are sticking around. Pushing in last second. It's very last second. And Jame will clean house with a nice double spray. With the AK-47, Alistair maintaining his AWP would be nice. Trying to take one out on the way out. Jame. Good damage from him. They all, A lot of them go down with the bomb. Fame and Jame taken down. Flit, however, he maintains that AWP. Just less of a factor into OT. VP14, flight quest the same. Yeah, Vexite playing on top of uh, First Oranges. He dropped off with the rally of Util and then only managed to get one. It was always going to be a tough round. They tried to deal with them in the choke point as opposed to playing crossfire from the site. So the setup not conducive as VP level things out again. And this is where we said getting into overtime is going to start to favor them. Oh, Dexter this time's actually bested them and a missed shot from Jay on the flash. Looks to the tech. No, no bullets! Oh, Dexter's had a tough one there. It's Vexite to at least find the trade. They maintain the advantage. You put pressure on A. They know there were three towards Banana. Yeah, Norbert's playing the smoke. He's actually just burrowed inside of it. Th thinks twice about taking the fight head on. Good blocking from A for now, but the rotation's still coming. It's a 2-2 split. Ooh, this can go wrong. This could be a 3v4. High stakes round as well. 14 each. Diaz and Alistair, what's your setup? They have to work it out. Orp. Go, go investigating. It's not a bad idea. It's held by Mir. Perfect angle, angle, isn't it? Perfect angle for that. That's dirty. Yeah. It's an equalizing frag. Alistair's going to be forced to watch now through his fingers as to whether that's going to cost him. Fame this time catches Vexite on the walkthrough, trying to find answers, but he only gets a bullet between the eyes. Inns is boosted. There's certainly grounds for Inns to do some damage here. Vexite. Deployed. They redeployed a CT smoke. I think I missed. Oh, dear. Now, they're the ones that are actually potentially going to get flustered. Nice angle management from Inns. He still has some degree of vision. Backs are turned. He gets the first. A second could have won the round. Instead, it's Norbert quick to it, hitting shots he needs to. 26 and counting. What have you got, Liaz? Oh, he just walked straight through. He just walked straight through the smoke and dancing with death. It's Norbert. Very dangerous man. 27.
And yeah, I think it ends if he gets a second. It's a very different round. He knows it. We know it. But Norbert just too quick with it. This one as well. Yeah, a couple of opportunities slipping through the fingers of FlyQuest. But both teams being on the good fortunes of just using that patience for the re aggressors. We see two, the top banana push as well as Alistair's top yeah. mid push. Both of them being caught. So great job from VP. It's FlyQuest under pressure now. Use their tactical timeout. They were dropping AWPs to Alistair so to make sure he could keep the AWP in his hands for all three of these overtime rounds. And they yep. need one to take us to double overtime. Yeah, or bust. Hard fought first map in this best of three. The upper bracket semi winner advancing to the playoffs of IEM Chengdu. So one diffuse kit on Dexter. Keep that in mind. Okay. Doesn't look like there's going to be any difference out of VP in this round. That mid smoke didn't land correctly, did it? Ray from Ali. Oh, jeez. Ray from Backside. He wants to stick around here. He leaves his util, doesn't want to be lost, losing that on his aggression. I remember one of the stat lines SEO brought us early on in the piece. Mm, uh, when kills. VP had quite the lead, the opening kills were a big issue for FlyQuest with converting CT rounds. Even though VP have been contained, look at their restraint of utility thus far. To end the round... Mm. Oh, Vexai's going to have to go for a huge play. Dex is going to flash for him. This is madness. This is the end of Vexai. Tries his luck at something. They know Dexter was the one to I throw the flash. With. They're just charging at him. They're just charging at him. Oh, James made the call. This is proactive, reactive... Fumbles the jump, commits to the spam. They've lost the sight already. Is this where it ends? Is this how it ends? Oh, brutal. Dexter's had his bell rung. 10 HP. Can't deny. Norbert finds him through the smoke. It's a problem for FlyQuest now. What a luxury for VP, given that entry. Near impossible retake. Needs to take shape. Util might catch one. James caught by the spread. Jumping behind the pillar. Oh, and Liaz can't finish him. A frustrating end to our first map in this series. FlyQuest, so close, yet so far. Five alive, ends alone. A cacophony of AK spray. VP happy with that one. Solid finish. Converting their map pick in a full 30 round extravaganza. Tested for sure, but if you've got them in the corner, you have to put the polar bear away. VP. They live to fight another day. Vertigo up next.
the old saying goes, if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is. That's probably how FlyQuest are feeling right now, being inches away from pulling off another poetic comeback. But then VP happened. And Yanko, we all know what happens when you get VP in OT. Then Norbert happened. Freya, that's what happened. I think you know, we all forgot VP all the rounds. They're still in that MR15 mindset, right? We have to make it 16-14 uh, in the end. But uh, yeah, very, very close game, a good game uh, for, for both of the teams. They had their opportunities, but in the end, FlyQuest just couldn't get it done. Yeah, I mean, what is there really to say about this one? I feel like it's a little bit like a bit of a tough relationship where you're hoping something's going to change. That's how I feel about um, FlyQuest or Greyhound when I'm watching them. You know, you see them go to an event and you think, oh, they're going to do better here. And they start to do better. They beat Cloud9. They almost beat Virtus Pro, And you're hoping that that change is going to be real. But unfortunately, it's not. Jordan, and they lose map. In one. my experience, you know, relationships like that can be really toxic you know you just need to think about yourself buddy and move True. on and, yeah, and, and let it go you maybe know? But even though this is an l on paper for flyquest this was some really good showing for them right uh, yeah. there's stuff to take away from this and definitely. go there are obviously improvements because vp they're a big beast of a boy to take down definitely definitely i don't disagree i mean i think there's definitely some positives to take away for flyquest obviously we still have to see them on their own map pick as well so if they can take it this close against a vp on inferno who had a couple of members doing some pretty good work then i think you know there's still some hope in my mind that maybe we do go to map three and to be honest with you vertigo and ancient still two good maps for fly quest so i'm still keeping the dream alive yeah should we take a look at some examples of you know where fly quest were really coming out and showing some skill on the server particularly on that t side of things yeah i think it was towards the end of the game got really close and this is where you think vp is going to edge them out right the uh, fly quest is going to mess something up but here's a round where they're just defaulting alistair is being a little bit more aggressive towards b being flamboyant with the op in banana right he's gonna punish jame i think maybe jame doesn't expect an op in this round because the economy is a bit weird so flit starts falling back they're chasing down he calls for help right this is fame right here he's going to start rotating soon so what's going to be important is as Flitz is throwing some counter utility in these situations if you're a rotator this is your biggest weapon the flashes right because there's a lot of powerful flashes you can throw to help your player they're all coming through that narrow corridor in pool so it's very easy to flash your opponents and he even has an incendiary to buy a little bit more time so you're going to see that flash coming here bang fully blind flit kind of readjusts moves to the second player and here you know it's about the details it's about the small things so flit here there's still another flash on fame and an incendiary he doesn't need to go for this wide swing right you're just taking a straight up fight you lose it to Dex, you can see that the incendiary is there, then Fame swings all the way from CT, so just lacking a little bit of extra coordination there for VP, which is something they're usually really good at in crunch time in these tight uh, rounds, and that gives FlyQuest the round, and they were going back and forth, it seemed like this whole second half in the end in OT, VP closes it up. Yeah, I mean, I want to say as well, I think on the behalf of FlyQuest, we are starting to see those little things as well starting to get improved. I think it was one of the big issues that they had as a roster prior to Dexter coming in was that team coordination, that utility usage. And, and domestically speaking, it's looked really good for them. And I'm starting to see a little bit of that as well internationally here in some of those games as well. So it's good signs from them too. We're talking about against VP, you need to be calm, you need to be patient, you need to be focused in late trial situations. We saw all of that from FlyQuest. I mean, a couple of rounds, we saw them out VP, VP in a way. I think it was unfortunately another slow start that killed them in this game. They were able to bounce back and, you know, steamroll over Cloud9, but they just didn't do enough early on in this game to be able to close out Inferno. Yeah, you're totally right. It's kind of been the tale of, unfortunately, for FlyQuest not having those hot starts to every map we've seen so far. Um, just going back to one of the themes that we were kind of embellishing coming into this, the key difference is the orping situation, right? What was your takeaway from how the orper on the side of FlyQuest was kind of acting in this I particular mean, map? Again, we talked about it and we've been bringing up this word flamboyant quite a bit. It's kind of like the word of the uh, word of the series at the moment. But uh, I tell you what, Alistair, I feel like he kind of delivered on that map. He was, he was looking quite good. He was looking quite solid. And the question was, was he going to be able to convert yesterday's form against the quote-unquote Orpolis Cloud9 into a game here against Jame. Uh, and I think he did that. I think he had a pretty good game. I think he had a lot of impact. And there were a couple of instances where maybe you could say he regressed back to his usual mean where he goes a little bit too eager, gets a bit of a rush of blood to the head once he's played well. But uh, I think in general, I'm pretty happy with the output that Alice is bringing at this event so far, which is a really positive sign because he's always been, I would say, in this FlyQuest roster, the player that has dropped off the most from his domestic performance to his international performance. I think him and Vexite definitely, you know, in that first half, the two guys that started bringing it back from uh, 
FlyQuest. Dexter didn't have as many frags, but had some really good plays, like creating space and then mid-round calling as well. But has to be said, Norbert on the side of VP, probably the MVP, flit in the first yeah. half. Norbert probably on the CT side, right? Doing work from pit, staying alive, being a nuisance, you know, smoking the molly, throwing counter utility, flashing, like just buying time. Uh, and yeah, he's been stepping up lately a lot. Well, before we do jump into FlyQuest map pick, which will be on the grounds of Vertigo, let's go ahead and check in with them, courtesy of Heku. Oh, all right, so I got the little update from FlyQuest. So they explained like, yes, the situation that was right now was similar to what we saw with Cloud9, where they, they had like a slow start and then they like start popping. Here is the same situation, but the difference is VP actually managed to adapt to it. And maybe if FlyQuest got a little bit more rounds in the beginning, we would not go to OT. Right, right now, it's going to be Vertigo and it's their pick. Doing work on banana and game and enjoying some bananas in the break. Uh, you guys were happy with the map pools for both sides of the equation, so become salesmen for a minute. Elfish, why are FlyQuest going to win this map? Well, it's their go-to. It is their go-to domestically, and we see them oftentimes like to lean in the direction of Vertigo as a first pick, and obviously they have a lot of success on that. I think if you look on HLTV, it might even be a 100% win rate for them, which, again, is a little bit of a lie when you're just playing against Australian opposition, but it is still a very good map for them as far as the map pool is concerned. I'm impressed by what I saw on Inferno. I think a map that maybe isn't quite as high up in the pool for them. We've got good individuals firing. I thought Vexite looked great. Inns had a lot of work done on the entries. Alistair seems to be orping quite nicely. So if we get a little bit of a rise out of Liaz and Dexter in particular, who was really good yesterday, I still think that there's a win in this one for FlyQuest and potentially Ancient, a uh, whole different discussion, but we'll get there when we get there, I guess. Hey, Yanko, why are VP going to win it then? Norbert. Just one word, nor believers over here. Join them in the chat. But we've got questions and it's time to get some answers. It's going to be FlyQuest map pick off Vertigo. 100% win rate, but not exactly against the opposition like Virtus Pro. Join us after the break to see how it goes down. Double smokes in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL, this is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. The party won't stop. It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead this late in the game? And overall, how do you feel like preparing for the tournament? Preparing for the tournament? Well, we've been playing from Australia. Scrims haven't been the like, greatest to be able to book and, and practice against Oz teams. So hopefully we can uh, get some European practice in while we can over here. But other than that, we've focused on ourselves and I think we've worked on ourselves in the right direction. So we should be good. Would you say kind of like maybe overall, it's kind of refreshing that you you don't really get to fly away super far away. You don't have that, that huge jet lag. Yeah, it's nice being able to travel and not worry about like your sleeping pattern or going earlier. Like for us, we just come and then it's like three hours difference, so we don't have to worry too hard. It's good. And can that be like maybe like an advantage that you have like over like the European, European teams? Um, yeah, if they've arrived around the same time as us, then definitely they'll feel the jet lag a little bit. Um, it's up to them how they prepared for it and if they at all switched their patterns beforehand. Yeah. Because I feel like overall, I don't have an impression that they try to switch anything. Yeah, I think a lot of the time they're used to just going to European tournaments and then they probably would just carry the same mindset and preparation, I guess, into like these events. So I doubt they've like 
switch their patterns. I think it's pretty hard to do it as well. Definitely, definitely. How do you feel about your new org? Have they been taking a good care of you? Uh, yeah, they've been pretty amazing, but uh, I think we're going to get started way more in the next uh, couple of weeks, I think. Like, just, I don't know, it's only like literally the first week and we haven't really done anything too much, but then after this tournament, it really kicks off for us, move to Europe a little bit more, maybe play from there, see all the European players way more, so it'd be nice for us. Wait, so like you're saying like you might go to Europe, like to boot camp and all this stuff? Yeah, but for way longer periods of time and yeah, just basically that's going to be our second home from, yeah, from next week on. Yeah, it's actually pretty sad, like, but you, you, like, you don't fear that you might have at some point like a situation where like, you know, like American players that were kind of like missing home and all this stuff or you just feel like it's what needed? Uh, if we want to improve... Um the way we want to improve like then that's what we got to do um and i think people are all pretty much on the same page as long as we are getting our family time i think everyone's going to be fine i don't think we're going to be away for like three months in a row sort of thing so we definitely have enough time to spend it with family friends and all that and then when it's time for business and and practice and we go to europe because you're gonna avoid like a lot of things you're gonna avoid the jet lag every time you go to a tournament you're gonna get actually good practice because what's the state right now in australia because probably besides you there's Maybe a half of a team? There's no actual organizations really in Australia right now. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty grim. There's, it's just us practicing two, three other teams on repeat and doing more like theory-sided stuff and yeah, focusing on ourselves rather than like trying to improve based off of our opponents, I guess, like you would be able to in Europe. Music goes so hard, man. We've had liquid drum and bass. We're coming in with a cyberpunk. I'm seeing Alistair on a motorcycle driving through the city on his way to Vertigo. He's in the elevator. He's going 51 floors up, and he's looking to take us to map three. We've got one side FlyQuest, the other Virtus Pro. They've managed to convert in overtime. The desk has discussed it. They've set the scene. I'm joined by Chaddy B, and we're about to get this one started. It's a party on Vertigo. Do we see three, Chad? That's my question to you. The desk seems to think so this is a map that we can saw the stats FlyQuest very comfortable on VP perhaps not yeah look we have to make sure we take those results with a grain of salt considering the opponents something that I want to reflect on is previous Greyhound roster after they'd have a close first map with a loss even turning into their territory occasionally they'd be gassed out so let's see if Alistair's motorbikes need to be pushed to Vertigo if he's been able to drive here in style doing a wheelie Two mollies, two smokes. What's the go? VP have opted to start on the T side of FlyQuest's map choice, so they want to set the tempo and quite slow out the gates. Here oh. comes some aggression. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Four players. 4v4. 4v4. We're just fighting on ramp. We're going for it. Jill Barretas should be good for it. Vexite one. Ali gone. Mir nails it with the Glock, and it's going to be a slowdown. They're not interested in fully rushing into this. That's a flash, though. Set up for success, and it's another Norbert frag. He's been such a problem for FlyQuest. He's not done. He's not done, but neither's Dexter. One more click could do it. He does finish oh, off the round. Dang. They'll take the fight to them. You can see the vibe still at an all-time high. It's FlyQuest off to a flyer. Yeah, you should be celebrating that because it gets so awkward on ramp. When that aggression comes in with the first fight, everybody's stalled. And it's this awkward limbo position. The follow-through with the flash to initiate the Oi. fight was beautiful. Uh, but Inns goes down immediately. All eyes on Dexter. The in-game leader returning down under. and uh, <laughs> Uncertain how that one went down, but we'll take the dub. You got to see a little bit of yourself with Alistair with the with his passion. How he gets fired up, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, that used to be you. I love it. Oh my! Well, that's a bit of harassment on Flit. He was looking to be naughty. Seeing if he can use the Zeus close range on Gap. He side Zeus. You Might don't get see, a chance. You don't see these all too often. Ah! He's like, oh, he's done them. Okay, that's going straight in my playbook. And now he's kind of. Oh my god. Oh my god. Vexite's actually. Cack in his drawers. But no, he was say. here because of the spam. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're not going to be feeling particularly confident about this now. Um, obviously, you should be, given that you've only really lost an MP9 and the rest have got P250s. Hey, guys, they know I'm here. I can't move no. a muscle. Yeah, so all I can really do is 
pretend I'm a sandbag. Sit here, yeah, do a, your best sandbag impression. You can't shoot their toes through it, can you? I, I've never seen anyone do that. Under, yeah. You can? Yeah. I think it needs like a little bit bigger than a P250, though. Like, his toes are not there for the shooting. Clock's probably not going to get it done. Vexite continues to play sandbag. Acting like a sandbag. A7. <laughs> they, st <laughs> they still think I'm one of them. <laughs> Well, VP, what are they doing now? I mean... Waiting to die. Yeah. Trying to make it as costly as possible. Trying to hope another incendiary gets thrown. Trying to hope that... <laughs> oh, they got what they were looking there for. There you go. They got an extra frag. Vexite finally goes down. Inz is going to try and pick up that M4, or Liaz is. Let's see who can get it. It's a race. Man. Who? Inz, is he going to make it? Fine. Yes. Okay. All right. Famous and the M4 save. So that's okay. Not well, the end of the world. No, and they know that Virtus Pro will be buying into round number three. Oh, but uh, that Zeus on the eco, I'm, I'm putting that one in my pocket. Yoink. Does it still make the the, the death noise? Ah. Oh, it's a bit... Well, no, we slowed down. We slowed there. down, yeah. It sounded just a little bit more disturbing, actually. Early presence. Flit just charging up. He wants a bit from Dexter's the one to receive the Might not heavy away. brawl. 17 HP left on him. Alistair throwing some bullets through the tarpaulin. Nade's about to land square on his quiff. Ouch. And now a molly for good measure. He had the smoke prepped. And yeah, he's going to go down to fame on that spray. This is a late boost. They could, ooh, they could have caught fame. But that's early info at least. Hey, they're not committing up ramp. And it's sure, silently dismount though. You're worried about gap. This in, is big from Inns. But the problem is, because they know that A was relatively clear off of that boost, he, he shouldn't go down the ladder. You'd expect it to be watched, or maybe he gets caught in transition. Yeah, but he he is moving in that direction. Yeah. And, oh, dear. Nah, 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 Unless he just pauses here. He was dead. He's not going to do that. So it is a 3v5. He was the one searching for info, right? They'd given up B. It was the only way that they could get any information. But with this boost and nothing spotted, there were plenty of places they could have been paused. But right now, Norbert could run in towards the site. Looks like he's going to do exactly that. They know that Liaz is the B defender. Very smart counter-strike from, from VP. Does he investigate, though? He should. If he... No, he hasn't. They might go into the stack. Okay. Well, we, you need some trigger discipline on this boost. He'd need at least two. Yeah, it can't just be one here from Vexite. One and get away. You do have a smoke. Oh, that molly. Okay, headshot spotted. Vexite, that smoke could be really doing a lot of favours for you. Throwing it out onto the site itself. Jane will use it. Fakes out. Vexite Fine. will spam. Eight seconds. If you can just deny the plant, you can win the round. And instead, it's VP taking a convincing gun round. And that had such a unique VP flavor to it, didn't it? Mm. You go charging up early. Flit takes his spawn, takes his fights. You isolate the sandbag player with a molly HE. Or HE molly. And then they still walk into and the stack. You, and then you, but then you wait. You all recede. You go down ramp and cut noise for 30 seconds. Then finish A. Yeah, look, I, I, I think that it wasn't a classic seesaw because Norbert didn't try and take any space, so it could have gone wrong. Yes. It could have really gone wrong. Certainly. But I mean, I just... just oh, we're back in play, everybody. Uh, Vexite's pushed ladder and we've got a kill onto Norbert. Observers would have been screaming there. <laughs> so is Norbert, probably. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 oh, no. He's, he's bailed himself out there. Three body shots to flip. Three body problem. <laughs> yeah. Jane the alien. Ooh, double swing. Alistair gets away with one onto James. So good trade. Vexite now watching from the sidelines. They have rifles, Jeez. they have armor, and they have aggression. It's huge from Inns. Puts Mir on 20 HP, recovers a rifle. It's in a 1v2 early. Get the bomb. And he's got 60 seconds to try and solve this problem. That sound cube betrays him. Beautiful from Inns and great from FlyQuest. Straight back on the board. Call it 3-1. Those of you who missed it, it was an aggressive middle play where they pushed across towards the ladder room and found the opening kill. Okay. That's what threw the round into disrepute. Here it is from Dex... Uh, sorry, Vexite. It was uh, Dexter on the <laughs> Deagle that almost made a meal of things, but then uh, some good proactive counter-strike from FlyQuest. Another good round. I think overall, and I know this sounds... 
slightly condescending, but it's not meant to. Okay. They're, they're playing good Counter Strike, like solid Counter Strike. They're, yeah. they're, it's team based off of each other, good reactions. So all in all, hard to find too many complaints. Even though they got uh, pipped at the post on Inferno, a map that they definitely could have won, it's up against a tougher opponent. I don't know if the expectation was victory today. Well, also, I think it's uh, kind of a shared sentiment by the majority that uh, Virtus Pro are one of those teams that are the hardest to, to put away. When you've got those match points, when you're into the overtimes, you know, that's that's where VP can tend to just, they have this extra level of focus and of diligence. They're like bamboo in search of glory, Alex. Yeah, yeah, like a bamboo on the rocks. Did you, you, know. did you write down the saying? I did, actually. Okay. I took a picture of it. Hang okay. on. Okay. But uh, here we go. We're going into some AKs and Galils, and it looks like a little bit of a B flavor, at least taking B stairs. So who's going to be tested? Who's our Aussie B anchor? It's As. Liazzi. It's a tough job. I don't envy him. No, no thank you very much. Dexter out. Oh, on the top rope. That team flash doesn't do him any favors. They harass James. No, they won't. They're actually focusing. Oh, never mind. Dexter just swings with a hard clear. He's not shy. He's, okay, he's he's hyper aggressive. That's crazy. Dexter's got right under their skin, right into their grill. And now ends off. He takes first contact. It's great if he gets away because now the quad player is baiting in and he gets them both. Liaz, the V anchor delivers. Only one left. It's Norbert up against the world. No chance here unless you fumble. Vexite's giving it a go. Looking for answers. Spots him out, loses his oh, head. Oh. It could have gone wrong. Alistair closes. Dex are the one with a lot to do, and there's Liaz double as well to close. Albert has been hot, so if he gets that kill under Alistair, anything becomes possible. But stifling Virtus Pro and stuffing them as far as the finances are concerned, what a great. I don't even know what, what to call that, but I suppose they isolated the left side when traditionally the CTs want to try and flush the player out of the right. So that's the prep. Dex has been talking about being prep heavy. He's just swung straight into that fight. Laser beams. Right now, I would say the VP, they need to still stay tenacious, like a bamboo deeply rooted in the rocks. Yes. Keep their feet on the ground while they pursue their goals. Well, the, well, their goal right now is to run down ins. Lazy clear, Dexter. You're going to be deep on that one, don't you? That's what I've been hearing. And Flit has taken so much space. Living his best life right now. Staying in his lane. They only have flashes to execute. They have mollies left over to dissuade the plant on Vexite as well this as Ali. This is impossible without smokes, isn't it? Well, you say that. Yeah. Nothing's what? impossible if you're bamboo on the rocks and they've actually managed to get up the the bomb's going down the bomb is down he's done it Mir gets it in no smoke necessary now they're setting up a post plant this can still go horribly wrong fly quest have got a heavy advantage use that util use those bullets it's alistair with a double ins gets caught out no he doesn't covered by vexite perfectly pinpoint precise and it's gonna be a defuse it's a fifth round baby fly quest flying through this ct side Recovering a very early number disadvantage due to a overzealous Dexter. Can get away with it with an SMG. Didn't give him too much. Okay, well, a four-round advantage for FlyQuest. This is a different test. Far. So far, Chad, we've watched them start slow on Ancient against Cloud9, True. on Inferno against VP. We haven't seen what happens when FlyQuest get an, a strong start. Mm. Let's see if they can hold on to it, convert it, build upon it. Well, on this quest, do they get a flying mount? Uh, only at level 60. Okay. Come on! It doesn't hit the shot. He's re-peeking. He's hunting. Of now. Alistair! Yeah, he's going to be punished for that. Overstays his welcome. Uh, what, what was... Uh... Jordan saying, blood rushing to his head. Yeah, which one? I'm standing to attention to VP right now. Have himself another number advantage. Can they settle the score? Wildcard eliminated. They won a total of seven rounds over three maps. They also had a stand-in scenario. So unfortunate scenes for one of the wild cards, known as wild card here in I am Chengdu. What a geeky flash. He's thrown it like the molly lineup so as to blind the headshot player. It might keep the boost planted. They're setting up a boost here. Double boost perhaps. 
No, not with the orb. Just going to get Fame up right next to this smoke. Oh. It has to be a miss smoke. Yeah, it has to be. Liaz, you are in jeopardy. Great nade. Oh, and a great headshot. He's building a whole round out of this. If he could find Norbert, that could have been different. But two different trajectories implies the util of two players towards the B stairs. The mid in flit. Wards off, ends off Guardian. And he's going to go down. Great shot from Norbert. He's dangerous. But this position is perfect from Inns. Most down two. They line up for him. James next victim if he peeks. I'm smoke. Perfect. Inns just needs to live. It's hard shot to hit through the smoke with 10 seconds left. It's not going to be easy, especially now they've lost their heads. It's Inns with four. Dominant defense. And call it six for FlyQuest. Both Liaz and Inns doing exactly what they had to do in that round. The stubbornness there from Liaz not to just give up the angle and play passive. I loved it. The fact that he was backing his aim. I know he only got one kill, but it was very important that he didn't just rel uh, relinquish Sitting full control. Yeah. And this is huge from Inns. Right, he was under so much pressure from middle. He took the majority of the damage in this round from that mid exchange with Flit. And he grabs four. It's one of the Aussies that there's a... Bit of hype around Inns and Vexite are meant to be the, the rifling duo of the team that are meant to pack a bit of a punch. And right now... They are. Yeah, knock down a peg. Ah, uh, VP. Second tactical timeout expended. Feeling the heat. Damn, that was such a sick round from Inns. That's one you want to be... Taking to the bank. Watching that one on repeat. Yeah, big smile on his face. Got to feel good about that. These mustachioed fraggers. Kicking ass, taking names, making VP sweat. G you Jane with his hand on his head, trying to work out how you're going to make a half investment potent. They've got full loss. Tech nines. And the singular AK. Norbert facilitating that one. Where are you going with this? What are you doing with that? Clearing the smoke. Dexter wants to punish this progression, and the rifle gets cut down. That's dreamy. Perfect awareness. His best map, Dexter. Yeah, makes sense. Ten frags so far. Very comfortable on this one, and you can see that that European boot camp is... They're reaping the rewards. That, uh... I, I realize I just have, need to be more specific. The Dexter time in Europe. Okay. Translating <laughs> okay. into uh, this... Incredible start, like uh, elevated Counter Strike we're seeing from the whole team. Missed some nades there, VP. They can do it again. Same play. They have the same result. Controls the spray, takes down Norbert. The rest have got nothing here. They were hoping for a plant. They were dreaming of a plant, but they get nothing. Vexite quick with it. 7 1. Yeah, I, I think just to elaborate on the Dexter point, it's one thing to have a player like JKS go over and be like a star player of a, a team, yeah. right? Or to be a contributing factor of a team, mm -hmm. like a G2 being a solid anchor and and doing the job that he needs to do and winning the titles. The other is having an in-game leader go over and play international Counter-Strike and get to learn from a lot of different schools of Counter-Strike, right? And then be able to build on top of your already understanding right. and then bring that back to your countrymen. Now, Very the thing cool. is, it will become outdated at a certain point, so they need to spend more time in Europe and, and constantly keeping up with the meta, but it's a great way for them to get into a much better position. Inns is getting this gap all the time. This is huge. It can be a late flank. It could be something a bit quicker. He got caught off and punished last time, but this time no one's home. It's Norbert Bridge, the close to react. Oh, boy. He's coming, but that was an audible, and it's a dead Norbert. Wow, Inns, that's early impact. And because it's Norbert watching it, right, you know the rest of them are all secured over towards A. Right, that's a good observation, and that's a good pick over Crane. Dexter's just relentless in his aggression. They have to re-clear him. Inns is holding for it. This is fantastic work from Inns, but fame. A nice crouch clear, good crosshair placement, and they're pivoting. Lee has to be tested. He's passed his first. He's already got a perfect molly to limit their options. The smoke up. They can use the railing to elevate over the smoke. Util's dumb. He's delayed them. That smoke was there. It was already there. Niaz is going to have to be forced to move or extinguish. Vexite's here. Ops for the latter. Oh. Dead, but covered. It's Vexite onto Fame. Alistair spotting out Mir, who's trying to take some A-space back, but he's out of there. Oh, 
Oh, Mir can do something with this. If he finds Alistair, game on. Bomb's late. Space taken. Spiking. James should get the plant for free. Uncontested. Dexter needs to be careful. He needs to let Dexter play. He draws attention to facilitate Dexter taking space. He knows it's likely elevators occupied. He's worried about that as well. Dexter cooking up trouble. Smoking a kit as well. Oh, Jay might oh, catch Dexter, him on a timing. Yeah, he might be able to find Mir before he goes down. This is it. That's their face. That's the headshot. Now you surely you think gap. It's Jay around the world. Smoking a kit. Smoking a kit. Dexter's getting it down, but they're lining up for him. It's good cover. It's Vexite with the frag and a great eighth round found. It was the closest we've seen from VP in some time. Oof. That one got dicey for a moment. That shot from Miron to Alistair was beautiful. Enabled the chance for the bomb to go down, and now they can continue to be threatening. But yeah, these uh, flanks, these jarring plays. Uh, Madger, when we were talking to him at the Major, had him on multiple podcasts talking about Remember, we got to cast it. There was those two flanks from Madger, one with the Deagle, one with the rifle, and they were both impactful. Right. And he's talking about you know potentially finding timings, knowing that Norbert's going to be watching behind. If there's early trades out ramp, Norbert has to help the defense. And Norbert's frustrations have carried over from Inferno, where he had a beast of a performance. Oh, I've forgotten all about that, but you're right, those Magic flanks. There was a clear gap in this T side from VP, and it's being punished by different teams. Oh, Alistair, this is a brazen overextension. He'll take the frag. I could get one, doesn't yeah. he? Ooh, oh. and there's a double from Mir. That could change the tides of battle. Look at this. They're not shy, Chad. They're not shy at all. They know VP's game. They just got all this like all this uncertainty gone. Liaz knows they're not committing mid. His team can now, I assume, take some sort of gamble. Dexter's there now in mid, so he can back up Liaz quickly. They need to group up and clear something out or gamble stack a site. Right? Because I don't think Vexai can push A. He's just, just going to have to hunker down towards Sandbag. Is that Liaz smoke? I think he's throwing that himself. Yeah. Gives him different angles to work with. Fame. Oh, nearly gets them both. He'll surely go down. No! Liaz stands his ground. Two rotation coming, but it's miles away. Has to delay. Throws out the incendiary. Repositioning. Trying to play the fade as well. This is good counter strike from Liaz. This B anchor continues to be a problem. Plant default. Can't really stop it. Jane will get it down. Liaz pushing. Flick can't really cover. Oh, hit one on the wire out. James trying to slip away. Ooh, 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 close, but no cigar. Can Liaz and Vexite piece together the 2v2? Liaz with seven bullets. Needs to play first. White box, double up. PP. Holding both of the options here. It's good from Vexite. Not going to overlook Flint. Oh, they are. 1v1. Liaz walking in. The dink. Now the time against him. He has to run him down. Flint tries to hide out. I think he's done enough. And a ninth round for, Fl for FlyQuest. Just, I think. I think they've done enough. It was close. You can see Flit was just trying to rot the clock for a second longer, but Liaz has done enough. A triple kill, high impact B anchor work. Did Liaz get a reload, reload in there? I don't think Before. he did. I think that was just a full. The what, last... did, didn't I say it's seven bullets? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see that one again. <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, I didn't process it, but we weren't always on his PO. Oh, that, maybe it's... he reloaded after no, that. Then he was spamming it. He only had to, he had three bullets left to find that kill. Oh he only had three God. bullets and, and he left didn't because get yeah. Whoa. By hitting that first dink, he get made it a little more accessible, but still very That's impressive. That's insane. Very impressive. Want a triple boost? Oh, oh yeah. Still do it. Still do it. Still do it. Hate to see it. Oh, oh, oh! Ugh. Ugh. Sorry, just making sound effects for that one. You got the picture. You saw what I saw. This is a lot more control early. For VP! Oh, turning the flash eats another. Team flash, I think. One and a half. Alistair standing his ground. It's Vexite activating. Just flips around through the smoke. Takes down Mir and Jame in a clutch. Hang on, Ali's not ready for this. Jame in a 1v3 situation. Gonna slink away, disappear off into the night. Because they can just clear together. That's the plan. If they stick together, they just clear out this ramp. It's okay if Jame returns to B. Now they're acknowledging the potential gaps. Liaz very noisy on this. I think Jame will have noted a couple of steps as he's gone up the ladder. Looking to pip the gap through middle. Oof. Crouch jumps. Problematic. 
the timing on the peak from Vexite. Jame averts his gaze. Down he goes. 10 on the board. Well, they may have flubbed the triple boost, but they stuck the landing. They had so many bodies there to deal with that. Uh, VP tried to take it. Once that triple boost is in play, you know, three players are stuck towards that short position. So you want to try and box them in. And they fought their way out. Vexite with a magnificent double finding Mir through the smoke. And then they just had to put the cherry on top with the final find onto Jame. This is going to be another damning result to the VP Vertigo. Yeah, it is a pretty miserable map for the VP lads. And they've got a different permaban, so they're in a bit of a pickle now. This is going to become problematic for VP's campaign. That's nice from Jame. Oh, commits to the spray. It's going to be punished. Second on the half. It will have to do. be hard to recover. Anister has to make a play. He knows that. Ins to draw fire. Alistair. Oh, he can catch him and does. Mir down on the mantle. Ins on the spam. They've managed to make it a 3v3. Fame's got the bomb. He's playing a dangerous game as Flit. Excuse me, Fame. Got to get that bomb down. Does so. Could still be a recovered round. I mean, this has to be VPs. You got the double entry. Inswar in a walk straight into fame. Sticking around. Good snap on just his fifth frag. Liaz, however, with the late trade. No smoke, but a big headshot. They've done it. That's madness. How have they gotten away with that? A 3v5 flip of the script as FlyQuest just two rounds away from forcing a third map. Hey Future Pros, I have a really cool nade set you can throw to help you advance onto the A side on Vertigo. You will need a smoke, molly and a flash for this one. For the left side smoke, get into this corner of the sandbags. Aim at this point on the scaffolding. Then jump through the smoke. For the short molly, look to the corner of the black rectangle. Crouch down and jump through the molly. Finally, a flash to help your teammates take short. Aim along this line just below this horizontal section. Run forward and jump through the flash. 
a very nifty nade set here, and a fairly simple one on top of that. Hey future pros, do you want to win 11-1 in the first half of Vertigo? We'll send your in-game leader over to Europe for three years, then bring him back and lock and load. That's not Rush's accent, but I'm here with Alex Machine Richardson. Hello. While we witness some of the best Counter-Strike Australia has played in years. Yeah, honestly, it's got us all, um, especially Mr. Virtual. We are going into our second half and a third map feels imminent. It could have been a 2-0. Bit of a fumble on some of the last Inferno rounds, but here we find ourselves slicing the odds in half, if not more so. The Counter-Strike they've delivered, it's, it's surpassing all of our expectations. That's a big aggress. Beautiful start to VP. Trying to claw themselves back into contention with a very convincing pistol. Is it spotless? Yes, it is. Five alive, VP. They're here and ready to jive. Okay, well, they uh, opted for some confidence of their own right there, meeting FlyQuest head-on with that A-Rush, and that was one of the key words, I think, for FlyQuest in the first half. They had a clear game plan. They were taking a lot of fights. They were setting the tone. And now it appears VP want to do the same ahead of Dexter's U-Tilt. And have a tough half ahead of them. It is going to be the full eco from FlyQuest. No plant, no chance. I just learned a nifty new util set. We'll see if they can uh, implement that into their play. I reckon that was from Yimpat. Yimmy! I reckon that was a Yimpat nade set. Rush can confirm or deny it. But I just saw him throw that molly the other day. So I now have decided. Ooh, was, that a con oh. was that a shake of the head? It was a shake. Uh. I think, oh, so four. Yeah, okay. So what happened is I should know where all of them are from because... Um, should I expose Rush? Are you going to expose him? No, I'm going to expose him. No, right he's now. a. I'm going to expose him. Okay. So for the pro tips, the which I, made. Okay. I, I love the re the reskin. It looks of great. The pro huh? tips really nice. Uh, but Rush has all these type of rounds that he wants to make the pro tips of. Yeah. But to collect the data, he comes to one man. Ah, okay. I see. So he goes to J Raz. He comes to me. Oh. And he said, Chad, I need you to find these, because I'm that's his, a lot of he work. calls me his minion. You are his minion. Yeah, so I have to do work for Rushley. So that's a lot of that's So a lot of I work. should have known. You, do you know? I don't know. Oh. No. But you have to do all of that legwork for Rushley, and he gets to get all the credit. Yeah, I get none of the glory. Wow. Well, I, I liked that, and well done, Chad, for finding it. Thank you. Let's get into our first gun round, shall we? How, let's see how much of a, a half VP are going to make out of this. Now, sure, there may be some gaps in their T side, but... CT side typically where VP can really lock things down. Flash in. Dexter out. And yeah, already pressure applied. Ah, that's a very cheeky repeat from Norbert. Yeah, but Norbert's been confident as well. Was loving his performance. Ooh. On Inferno. Yeah, Flit's got a good angle for this though. You go hunt for James. And now you get the second Vex site. It comes alive into the A site. Mechanically gifted. Definitely. And they're going to hit pause, I would imagine. No, they're going to start throwing nades. Here we go. Bring out short. Miz, ready for this. Swinging through. Oh. Oh, didn't spot him. Just the tip of his head. It's Alistair. Good to make him dead. 3v2. Lots of damage. Norbert, though, needs to stop that plant. The molly would do just that. Alistair. Perfect angle. Norbert quick to adjust, but there's a punish. Fame's gone down on heaven, and it's only Norbert. He's done an awful lot so far, and he's going for a quick cheeky reposition towards heaven. Good for the for the molly. He just swings through, picks up an incendiary as well. Niaz in the clutch. Oh. Norbert, a ridiculous round, stone faced as he takes the quad. Or in the round, Norbert has been a bit of a monster today. Woke up on the right side of the bed. China agrees with him. This is some great Counter Strike. His impact being felt immediately. Gun round number one. Dexter, you were talking about gaps on the. Uh, T side, well, trying to find one in middle for Dexter not to be the case. And Norbert. Just wide swing king. Wide swing king. Feeling sharp. That is a great clutch. Well, we are going to see a partial investment for FlyQuest. And James with the AWP strikes out. Double naded it. Straight off the rip. It's a good find. 
Next has got so much room. Oh, hard range for the Tech 9. Oh, and he dear. has been unable to convert that. That was a, a window of opportunity now slammed shut. And they're going to be all over him. All stacking into the right spot. Liaz, however, has got himself the AK-47. There's grounds for a little bit of excitement if... A kill or two would be great. Yeah. Considering it was a 1v1 in the last, you're going to look for damage for sure. Nice. Find. Norbert's going to swing out, and Norbert's going to do what Norbert does best. Find another headshot. Double kill from him up to 13. James started that round. Norbert finishes it. All right. Well, that was a partial investment from FlyQuest. The guns will come back into their hands. Let's see what we've got. What are we going for? What's the Dexter call to try and uh, post your 12th before things get a little too sticky-icky? It's going to get sweaty quickly. Yeah. Semi my 12th, baby. These gaps can close rapidly. This time B seems to be the preference. Smoke to negate the molly from the CTs and also to help buy you a bit of space at the back of a flash. Speaking of that, there it is. So out and about, I'm going to give the AWP a shout, is Alistair, a young Merv Hughes. Yeah, he's going to try and test his luck here. They've already started 2B, though. Norbert's already here, ready to support. And with the AWP showing up on B, it's, yeah, their suspicions are right, rewarded. Such a privilege to allow two players to hold B, right? Being able to cover off the stairs, slash, slash the rail boost as well as have somebody watch wood. You remove the annoyance of the T's once they have that lobby control. So well handled from Fame and Norbert. Dex is going to take this opportunity from the CT smoke to at least just be a little late component. Tuck in. It does give them seesaw potential, but without any ramp control. And look, with the X-ray, it's well highlighting exactly the setup Flit and Jame have. If they don't push them back, we can't even have that conversation about playing between the sites. Cheeky angle here. Time's a problem too. Alistair's in trouble if he peeks this. Hard, hard clear. Oh, well. Oh, it's so good. So calculated from Jame. He can crouch the flash and have the peek. I want to save, boys. T-side saves. It's not in the Oceanic playbook. It, this would show development. It would, but he's Dexter's going to put his fishing rod in the water on B. He's not going to clear quad. He's not good. He is. He takes him down. Okay, they're in. He's got a smoke. B is open, and he's going to go over and make a play. Oh, fame. Dead. Dexter has saved them. He's pulled this round out of his... Lab. Lab, thank you. Okay. How has he done this? James? Clears him out. Hang on a second. He has a Vex site to try and close where he started and it's fallen apart. It's Vex site though. We know how sharp he's been. He's worried about a non-existent flank. They're all coming in from the front. And he takes down the first, isolating these jewels if he can find Flit. It's Oh, it would have been on. Just enough time with a 10 second defuse. Jane will take it. Valid attempt. You know, you, like, you can't fault that one instead of the save, but Dexter made that happen out of nowhere. Yeah, taking a few more of these in-game leader play liberties is Dexter. Very fortunate that he went for that late quad clear. This was the opener. And then there was the Jame denial of ramp space. So sick. Well ducked. Dexter overstaying his welcome. They could have reset. But wanting to try and finish it right there and then. First time out for FlyQuest. That pressure mounting. Oh, yeah. And I mean, especially when Dexter catches fame, I think at that point he's like, okay, I've done enough. I've done enough. We'll close this. And it just didn't quite manifest. So timeout called. If anything, just to, to cool off a little bit, not let uh, emotions run high, just kind of reset, return to a baseline. It's a streak of five. Yeah. But it's, it's... again, the finances have been kept brittle. So that's what I'd be discussing in the timeout. Boys, close. Yeah. One more of those that we can break through and win this map. Ancient up next. You remember how that went against Cloud9 yesterday? Let's okay. just do that one more time Let's because go. the playoffs are waiting. Playoffs. Wow, that would be huge for your like debut under a new organization against big EU competition. It's Vexite with an opening. Jame overstepping. FlyQuest now set up for success. The CT's trying to find an equalizer. You can see they're giving it a look in. Mir on the reposition, very audibly rotating off. The ramp players will have heard that. Well, they're actually rotating back. That's 
going on here? Maybe they're expecting a heavier start towards A. So hearing that one individual dropping back, or maybe they didn't hear it at all. Because congregating now towards B lobby, they'll have to get past Fame and Norbert. This is another strong setup from these two. And Norbert's just been having a game. Nice. Oh dear. Well, the jig is up. They're pushing the molly. They're pushing the molly. Oh dear. Inns and Dexter. Uh, a little bit of a shade of... Old. Old, yeah. Could have been comms going on as that rotation from Mir above them. Mm. A lot of factors that play into Absolutely. these matches. But still, just to see them, they rotated back and instantly went for a full execute. But you have to stick the landing. And they missed some basic util that definitely flustered things. Yeah, and Look at Fame! That is absurd. He knows what's up. And he's not even slowing down. But he's been loud about this. He's like, yo, what's up? He's taking him down. Oh, dear. Liaz and Vexite. With 18 seconds. Go into the site. He's daring you at this point. Yeah, go on, Vex. What have you got for us? Needs to be some crazy headshots. They're all here. Ducks his head. Oh, my God. He's taking them down. It's a 1v1. It's winnable. It was winnable. But Flit too strong. <laughs> VP find their seventh. My God. They managed to make something out of that, didn't they? Vex absolutely snappy with it. Damn. Close again. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a rope a dope right I now. I can't quite but remember how that round just went. That's the same round where this Molly was missed and they ran through a Molly to try and get through. Look how comfortable this was for fame. It's just Oh, I've got a double kill. I the think. thing is that they they didn't have to go, right? You never have to do anything. But the reason that they had the full commit is because that was all their U2 it's on the their air. execute. Right. So it's like, ah, we've committed to this. We're hoping we forced the rotation, which was the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. VP have they've got those rotations tight, and now they're going to try it. a bit more pace. Flit's got the molly to stop them. Jame, oof, nade on his face. They'll keep replacing them, replenishing that Molotov nade combo. Dexter flashed. Nice work from Jame. He's setting his team up for success here from the sandbag position. Vexite immediately takes this place. Yeah, not relinquishing, and uh, this is huge. No, not for James. He's ready. He receives. Oh my God! What is he cooking? He's cooking. They're not ready for this at all. James, insane. Pushes for the double. Triple in total. Madness from James. Loving that. With 25 HP. Never see James doing that. No, that's so out of character, but also so gangster. You get the orb kill. I'll tell you what you're not expecting is him to drop his orb, pick up an AK, and push a smoke. I don't think the VP liked how confident FlyQuest were in the first half. They're giving them a taste of their own <laughs> medicine here. Let me see here. this again. This is unbelievably anti James And it's so cool to watch. I almost wish he got the third on the spray just for the extra gangster points, but wow. We're talking seven consecutive rounds for VP, yeah, not a pissed. single round just yet on the T side for FlyQuest. And sure, there have been some moments, but if they end up losing this map, imagine how hollow they'll be feeling. They lost that clutch to Norbert. That's what's running through their heads right now, is they're just they're playing not to lose. Well, the quality to close... Yeah. It doesn't come easy. No, that's an extra something. That's something VP have got in buckets and spades. The theory doesn't help you get across the line as far as that's concerned. Players need to step up. Yeah, well, Dexter did. Norbert always seems to be stepping up when it matters most. He's gone and found a nice multi-kill there. And it's a clean sheet, folks. Five alive. VP be cooking. <laughs> How quick this went from 11-1 to 11-9, a two-round game. Yeah, dude, it's like it's almost like the uh, was it pain in the major where? Oh yeah, the 12-0 on the 12-0, and you yep. just immediately saw them like, oh god, we get we, we we don't want to beat the guys that lost at a 12-0. Well, how about losing 11-1? Same kind of invasive thoughts now. Yeah, VP going into FlyQuest map choice decided to start on the T side. So I think they just wanted to get that out of the way initially. Now, Urkast is really still having his medal tested as a coach, right? Former player, but new in the coaching role. Has an sure. opportunity. Let's see if he's cooking up trouble. It's not even about a strategy at this point. It's just about kind of cooling their jets and not just... For Playing, playing this round as if it was the first round of the game. It's the finish that seems to be the problem, yeah. right? There's been a couple of times that they've given away the openers, but then they've been able to bounce back in. There's a few rounds where 
It's been level, but it's just getting across the line in the final moments. Yeah, I mean, Vexite's on one. I, if anything, I just want to facilitate him. Just say, can you can you go up ramp and get some kills? That would be cool. Like Wicardia at the moment, yeah. right? With the flash over the top from Spawn. This time, not going to use pace as the answer. And that might be exactly what VP were hoping for. They've taken the wind out of your sails. Flashing Alistair. They had confirmation of his presence there. And now James looking for him. Confirmation. Orp fires a shot. No connection. Inns with Dexter in tow are going to try and apply pressure towards this B side of the map. VP are already planning for the A hit. Right, they're setting up util. Case of that worst case scenario, you can see Hechi's left either for Jame or Flit to deny the plant. In terms of utility for the finish, it's more than enough. If they throw a HE towards headshot, they might be able to throw the nades away or That's blow true. them away. Oh, they use that nade very well, just chunking them. That's brutal. Double nade from Flit. A oh, third oh, on top. The Grenadier. Yeah. Bombardment. And then aggression. Flit jumps up. He's not done. He's running at you. He's got Liaz as well. Huge play from VP. Just turning up the heat. So aggressive. Vexite going to give a plant a go. Molly at his toes. Burning Sun. down. His fate is sealed. At least he gets it in. As in's got anything for us here. No sorry. VP are in this to win this. And they can even do it in regulation. A comeback or collapse. Doesn't matter which way you frame it. Both can be true. But that VP game plan as well, it's like it's so obviously disruptive. Weren't for, weren't for the plan at all. Just bang. to harass. So smoke lands and so do the nades. Bang, bang, bang. A rally of hey cheese. They even threw a flash in unison with the hey cheese. So when the second came, you've probably just got your vision back. You haven't got any sound cues. Really naughty. Really nice. Okay, VP, you are gaming. There's no doubt about it. Your T side needs work. But this CT side is polished. You've got four AKs and an AWP. You've got the Royal Flush. FlyQuest, you mentioned they got the bomb down. They can get a buy. This was the first gun round. This was literally the first oh. gun round. And this time it's Jane waiting in mid. The yeah, orb. Didn't, didn't have to reswing like Norbert did. That time he just does it with his eyes closed. Well, we've been entertained. I think I'd uh, definitely classify this as an entertaining game. But in terms of what form of entertainment, is this really going to be the FlyQuest tragedy? An 11-1 half on your map pick, fresh off of a hard-fought 16-14 on your opponents. It, 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 look, it doesn't feel like they're going to win this, does it? But maybe no, it they can force an overtime. Here they are. Gathering their thoughts and gathering their forces, all just hiding out on ramp, hoping for an overstep from the CTs. But with the man advantage already, the job is done. The setup is locked. Well, Dexter dead. Is it the blind leading the blind right now? Obviously, the puppet master can call from the grave. But Jesus already has the wheel with the opener. Yeah, he's already here to support them. He's got another one, James. He's not done. It's a good one from Liaz, but hiding in plain sight was Flick. Gets just the one before Liaz gets to him. Get another plant. Nade. Oh, he gets away with just 8 HP. He's got the bomb down. Gonna burn. Crouch Crab walks into the flames. Ali's been quiet, only nine in this map. Yeah, but he has got a clutch available seven to him. Seven bullets, though, Alex. Not seven again. It was enough for Liaz, but not against three. James trying to jump for the info, didn't spot him out. Smoke for the bomb. Impossible. Yeah, absolutely. Forced to reload and hunt it. Norbert will close. VP, they've tied up the game, folks, from 11-1. They come into the CT side with 10 on the trot. Just as easy as that. Everybody fragging up. There is no weak link here for VP. 
the same first gun round. Astute observation, a nasty death for Liaz. There's no denying that. Just moonwalking into the Molotov and yeah, face palm from Dexter. Norbert might need a raise after that clutch he won earlier. Yeah, right. That, that could have been 12 for FlyQuest early on in this half. They're just going to go for something a bit more brazen up B, and Fame doesn't have his support system yet. Doesn't matter if he can just catch ins alone. Now the flashes come in. Now he's hitting his scroll wheel jump. He's surely going to go down. Oh, hang on, Norbert. What have you got for us? A fumbled nade. He's flustered. He's getting swung on. He's down as well. A 2v4. FlyQuest can secure OT at a minimum, and they've done so with just a brute force B hit. Sometimes the simplest option is the best. They've charged into B. They weren't prepared for it. VP. We'll have to take it to OT. We've got the bonus round secure. And VP, the same to be said as far as a buy to fight for their honor. To bring the game back all this way. Well, they won't know he's here. Well, no, actually, he made a jump noise as the AWP falls 51 floors. Dead. Whoa. Well, Leah should have had the jump on him there. James just seeing what damage he can do. Trying to force them to hang around towards the bomb. Vexat coming back to consider this late defuse. Isn't the case, but there's 12. Finally. Their first round on the T side of Vertigo. <laughs> Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Cut round 23. Nice headshot as well from Liaz. Didn't catch that initially. Woof. <laughs> Dreamy. Little frustrating, I'm sure, for Norbert. Not being there on B to support. But OT. VP. They just need to do what they've been doing for 10 rounds straight. And that's win. And they're like on B again. Yeah, that's cheeky. It's just fame here. Norbert and Mir immediately charging over because they can tell. Blood in the water. And drive by Dink. Dex are low. Problematic. Another HE square on the jaw of fame, forced away. Calling cancel on B. Look at the type of rotation. There's of a lurk smoke, yeah, exactly. So they are going to start searching A ramp. It's only Jame here. Surely that barrage of util tells you something. Will they go and try and reclear the stairs? That's kind of what they're waiting for here. CTs now, this cut of noise has got them a little concerned. They're actually rotating off, so this is actually working out in the favor of FlyQuest just by cutting noise. They're going to go for that BX cube they tried earlier, where they flubbed some of the util. Let's see if they can stick the landing this time round. Well, this time it's only Norbert. So here's the full exec. You boost up. Molly's sail. Norbert spotted out on the deep. Big rotation coming. It's definitely coming. They need to be quick about this. More damage. Good Molotov as well. Limits his options. Good smoke, Norbert. So seeds of doubt. 30 seconds. Can the Aussies take us to map three now? It doesn't look good. 5v4. Mir and Jane. Good for it. Bomb on Ali. Jane is fragging. 2v3. Inns can do a lot with this. Power position, swings out, isolates the first. Flit spotted on towards Guardian. It's Fame that's the last one standing, but they're not ready for him. He gets the first. He's low HP from the double nade. Inns, what have you got? The world at his fingertips. He can do it alone. One man with his control of his own fate. They're holding the defuse. It's exposed, and they're up to map three. FlyQuest hold their nerve. They'll finish in regulation. VP so resilient. But Ancient required to separate these two teams and to secure a spot in the playoffs. Stay tuned.
another incredibly close affair, but this time FlyQuest are able to put this map in the bag, starting off with a great CT side. Sure, things got a little bit hairy, got a little bit scary on that T side, but I just want to open this up with how FlyQuest close that out in terms of a quote. Didn't break a sweat, baby, is what we heard them yelling. Oh. Um, I don't know whether that's true because that was so damn tight. I don't think that's true at all. I mean, you watch their faces while they were playing that game and there were some very nervous looking uh, individuals, I would say, on the behalf of FlyQuest. We were talking about it uh, just behind the, I guess, behind the player booth, Freya, and you were asking me, you know, what, what's your like confidence level? What's more so, what's your fear factor, I suppose? And I was sort of starting off at like a five out of 10. I was like, you know what, I've seen this before, but I'm not too worried yet that it was a- You got up to an eight. Yeah, that was like, a, like, like five, 11. And then it's 11-11 it's and I'm thinking, oh no, like I've watched this movie before. It's like when you go to the cinema and you watch Transformers and it's just like the same thing over and over again. <laughs> um, but at least this time they got it over the line. So that's a fantastic sign for FlyQuest. And Plot keep, twist. Keep my fingers crossed. They actually close it out. Right? Easy. Right? It's also kind of poetic that they don't win a single round until it gets to 11-11 and then win the final two to, to, to win the game. Kind of giving VP a bit of a taste of their own medicine again by making it incredibly close. Um, should we start off in linear fashion? Talk about the CT side. What stood out to you um, from FlyQuest in terms of really starting off this game in great fashion? Because we've seen in the previous couple of maps, um, they weren't really able to get those hot starts that we wanted them to get. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a different story this time around, wasn't it? I mean, the one thing that is really impressing me about this series from FlyQuest so far is Vexai, and I feel like he's been someone that a lot of players have been saying have been, you know, uh, he's been a really good individual. He's been someone that we've sort of been excited about domestically speaking and sometimes when he goes overseas, he's not able to sort of live up to that hype necessarily. But I think he's really finding his feet, especially in this Dexter-led Fly FlyQuest roster. And certainly in this series, what we saw from him was fantastic uh, so far. He was very, very good in that first half and he was very uh, impactful as well as, I would say, Liaz. Uh, his B anchoring was fantastic stuff from that CT side from FlyQuest. So those two guys, big step up for me. And in particular, obviously, Liaz going from map one, not really having much of an impact into map two, looking quite solid is good. If you had to pick out a kind of round highlight from that first half, what you get with Yanko? I think round seven is a good example of what we've been talking about, right? Leah stepping up a little bit. Yes, it's only the one kill, but there's the support. Flash is coming in from the teammates from Enz, who later on, as they're trying to get into the bomb site, gets a nice little 4K on, on, on low HP. And it's just an example of FlyQuest really locking it down on the CT side, right? Like. In some rounds early on, they were finding openings and VP couldn't even get the bomb down potentially. But to be honest, also, there were a couple of rounds uncharacteristic for VP where they're losing 2v2 post plants, 3v3 post plants. The team play just wasn't there. It seemed like the communication was off, right? And then you're thinking, well, I mean, absolutely. With only one round on the T side and so many missed opportunities, that's going to be it. And sure, they did a great job of coming back, but in the end, it just wasn't enough. I was kind of left scratching my head after that first half from a VP perspective, because I think Anko phrased it perfectly. Uncharacteristics in terms of it just seemed like off kilter, a bit less synergized than I'm used to seeing VP. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, right? There was even, I think, a 3v5 win in there for FlyQuest at one point, one of the last rounds of the half where you thought, okay, finally, they're going to get something all over the line. But actually, in the end, again, FlyQuest is winning that round. And that's like almost a role reversal. Like normally those are the rounds where when, when FlyQuest have got five players alive up against three of VP, that's the round that they lose. But actually the thing to sort of turn around in a different direction this time. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what was going on there necessarily for VP, but obviously moving back into that second half, they were able to find their feet, just didn't really give themselves enough runway. Yeah, exactly. And then we come into that tail end section and you mentioned it perfectly. You know, we hit 11-11 and that's exactly where FlyQuest kind of get their shit together, kind of get some stuff on the board um, and are able to close it out. I think the problem is, right, when you only get one round in the first half, there's almost no room for mistakes. Like You, you need a perfect half to win the game, right? And VP was playing really well. Norbert, again, stepped up, especially early on in the half, but eventually, you know, they broke. You, you couldn't like maintain that level until the very end. FlyQuest threw in a little bit of a faster B split, tried to change the pace, uh, found the openings and, and closed out the game. I mean, all it takes really is one round, right? When you're already at 11, you kind of get that one round, then you have that safety net at least of overtime, and that's kind of enough to give you the momentum boost, I suppose, the confidence to go into that final round and close it out. And look, the final round was pretty tight, but in the end, yeah, FlyQuest get the dub. Yeah, a close loss, unfortunately, for VP, which does leave us waiting for the highly anticipated third map. But let's go ahead and check in with Heku and the VP camp. 
I had an opportunity to ask Dustin about the situation, like when it comes to the video, did they expect that most likely this series is going to go to three maps? Because when it comes to FlyQuest, they have a 100% win rate on this map and they played a lot. We saw how unstoppable they were in the first half, but in the end, like Dustin said, like, actually, we were not expecting anything from this video. It could be two maps, it could be three maps, but in the end, we're going to have another one. Yeah, and that one is going to be ancient. And uh, once again, Jordan, you had a pretty decent feeling about this from a FlyQuest perspective. Yeah, again, I don't I don't necessarily mind this one for FlyQuest. Uh, as I said before, it is a map that actually, in a, in a lot of cases, they do opt to first pick. It's obviously a situation-dependent thing, depending on how their opponents are on that map. But I think they'll be more than happy actually going into ancient as a decider. It's one that they have a lot of experience on. They play it a lot, even internationally. And, you know, I guess, again, at the Asia RMR, it was one of those maps that they really liked to go towards. So I have a degree of confidence. For Side, I think looking good. He's always, you know, pretty impactful on this map as well. So if he can maintain it over three maps, again, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Uh, but I, I have the hopium now, which is kind of probably the worst place to be. If, I mean, uh, it's if for good reason, part. right? You didn't get your heart broken, which is what you were setting up as being the consistent story. But for mm. the VP side of things, and we got quite a lot of taper on them on this particular map. Who are you looking out for from VP coming into Ancient? I want to see Fame do a little bit better. I think it might come down to Fame or Lias, whoever steps up a little bit more, as seeing as they're the anchors, right, and deliver a, a, a bit more fragging. I think that can turn the tables, but VP needs to sort of wake up a little bit, you know. As we said, some of those post plan situations, clutches, things that they're very good at, hasn't been there for them so far, and, and they need to step up in that department. Otherwise, FlyQuest has looked pretty solid. I mean, outside of the first seven, eight rounds on Inferno, they're the better team, so uh, going to be an interesting third map. This is your opportunity, Jordan, to sell the Mans at home exactly why FlyQuest are going to be going through to the playoffs. Remember, this is a qualification game, no less. Why is it going to be happening here and now? I mean, this was the storyline that we were really setting up when Dexter was brought back into this roster to begin with, and I think if you were someone who had watched any ANZ CS, which, to be fair, is probably not a lot of you guys watching along at home. What? But no way. We've been saying since the beginning, since Dexter came back into this roster, all the pundits, all the casters in ANZ were all said, man, this roster's actually looking quite good now. Uh, and then they went to that Asia RMR and things kind of fell apart for them a little bit. But with that extra time that they've now had, I mean, maybe in the same vein as teams like Liquid, who didn't make it to the Major, there's that kind of parallel maybe that you can draw. They come into Chengdu, they're powered up, Dex is in, the system seems to be working. The players seem to be fragging. Today's the day. I think the most important difference for me is the fact that FlyQuest players, they're, they're playing with more discipline, and that's why they're finding some success now. This is a Cinderella story. I want to be getting behind, but we need to see exactly what happens on the grounds of Ancient the third and final decider map to see who will be going through to the playoffs at the Intellect Stream Masters Chengdu. At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself.
three. It's a big one. A quest is given. Defeat the polar bear and secure the reward of playoffs at the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu. It is the dream for FlyQuest, looking to make an impact, make a splash up against world-class opposition. Australia always lagging behind, but can this team now, with this roster of five, ascend and surpass all expectations and all previous results? Australia on the map firmly into 2024. VP standing against them, it's Ancient, a map that we've seen FlyQuest up against Cloud9, but can they take down the others from the region? As we start with a T, VP, FlyQuest winning the knife, selecting the defensive side. You know what, Alex, last time we were here in China was the last time an Australian team was any good. 100 Thieves in the grand final against Australis 2019, Beijing Haidan. Nice. Well, Liaz was a member of that very roster. Let's see if he can pick off, pick up where he left off. Yeah. And from 100 Thieves, maybe as FlyQuest, he can steal a spot in the playoffs. Rogue class. Pickpocket. Extra on the jiggle. You two lined up from James outside of B. Molotov for Mip. Double smokes. Double flash, and they go. Ooh, he's actually got vision on those jiggles. Smoke limits his options. They're up, spam both ways, and so a 5v5 takes shape in the post plant. Vexite, he's got smoke. cave, he's got cave, he's got one. Jewel Beretta's unloading, potential flank from Flit. He's aware he's gonna get pincered in. Vexite's gonna be isolated. It's a huge find. Liaz as well in combination, now getting shot in the back is one, and Vexite with impact, it's FlyQuest with a pistol. Yeah, fire up, that is a massive pistol to win, and they're not like, learning out to roar after that. I love well, focus, Look, huh? the fact that Vexite stays alive for so long. The smoke fades on long and Liaz gets that kill. I... So just the delay tactics is the execute does guarantee VP a follow-up by going into round number two. The Galils will be immediately equipped. But Vexite, yeah. the sleeper agent, there it is. The smoke uh -huh. fades. Liaz takes down fame. Vexite wins his other duel. That's, I love their composure. Like, this is a team that's in it to win it. You know, they're not just happy to be winning rounds. <laughs> they're, they're here for the, for the conversion. Quick timeout, looks like it's gonna be a match pause, so a tech, just give us a minute on that one. And they wouldn't have had an easy run, right? Beating Cloud9 and VP, I understand the Cloud9 game is the best of one, so that always is gonna come with an asterisk of its own, but they started that game down in the dumps and then came back. They played good Counter-Strike on Inferno. That was the map pick of VP. That went to overtime, could have secured that one, but didn't. Vertigo, the almost classic fumble, an 11-1 first half looking dominant. Game comes all the way back to 11-11 and then they get it finished before we make it to OT. And now on Ancient, a map they've already shown success on in the tournament. Now, if they drop towards the lower bracket and then lose and they're out, well, this story, not very impressive. However, if they can get things done, a best of one, a best of three, a day or two off, and then, well, actually, they'd have to play one more game to work out semis or yeah. quarters. So I might be getting a bit ahead of myself there. But regardless, I mean, it would be uh, an incredible achievement. There's no denying that. So we've got fame making steps with a donut smoke, hoping to force an over-rotation. And, well, B is open for business. That's a nasty death to concede. Dexter going down. Norba investigating. James not committing with the bomb. Um, this is just a master bait, as it were. Well, Vexite would have had him on a glance from Cave if he continued immediately. And they can still play this round down, even though they are down a man. To clear middle, fame spots two. Surely you're going to assume that that's the A main play. Aim's in now, so Bomb will go down again. Kid on Liaz, same for Inns. Vexite gives up his position of cave. Ooh, overstepped the mark. His teammates were on their way for the flank. You're going to surely be ready for fame after the elbow. And no, you're going to jump across though. So gives up his position. They have to deal with him. Yeah, you they have, have to. to deal with him. He's a problem. Norbert's on the site. And yeah, he's got first their fame. Now Norbert applying pressure elsewhere. They've not got it done. It's really light on time. Fake frag from Norbert. There's an impact round immediately. His first three frags, and it's to steal away the second round. Norbert hasn't been stopping in terms of his contributions without another clutch to his tally. Impactful throughout all three maps for VP thus far. A little bit of a fumble in regards to the uh, awareness perhaps of fame. I think that's why they were jumping past. Right, okay, sure. But sure. then once, I think once Inns was past, 
Ali didn't need to commit to the fight, but also didn't want his teammate to die in the back. Yeah. Right. So, so it was an odd because because scenario. Liaz took down Jame. You kind of had a little bit of a window of opportunity for Liaz as well. Oh, they forced and they're fighting. Too easy. Too easy. You know, sometimes cave can be a problem, but not for Jame and Flit. Jame spot the push. I think he did. Yeah, Amir and him have got perfect setup for this. They're gonna have a clean second round conversion. Look at that. This is where FlyQuest, their economy is gonna be down in the dumps. Not taking anyone down here. No good options for Alistair in this situation. Yeah, and Flit's probably going to be incredibly diligent around that smoke fade. They're not even going to rush the plant. Norbert's going to get it done. Bomb has been planted. <laughs> down he goes. Wow, five alive. A team ace from VP. Every single member contributing. And oh, so, uh, full eco. Yeah, we're going to have to see FlyQuest once again on the back foot to start off proceedings. Wasn't the case on Vertigo. But here on Ancient, similar vein to that game up against C9. It will be on the back foot here, 3-1. A single flash, what's Dexter's plan? Gonna be trying to set his boys up for a couple of kills. I'm gonna go for a late mid clear, it looks like. Yeah, could be able to isolate Mir. A bit late on the jump up. He's, ah, he's got across. So now they can still use this flash towards B, but nobody's in a position just to leak out. Oh, if they get behind the short smoke, could be a flash and go. Could be some chaos. Yeah, this could work. Yeah, he's just managed to find himself one. Flip. Got the perfect weapon for the job. Couple of freebies. Nice work from Liaz to actually get himself an M4. Ooh, some damage inflicted on Tamir. Gonna be hard for Rins to convert that. It would need the headshot jumping SMG to convert. So there's that 3-1. Finding himself an upgrade as well before the end of the round. Flit grabs himself a Galil for his teammate. Tough round for FlyQuest. They're gonna be operating without what I'd consider a full buy. Vexites had to chip in with an MP9. So they will be lacking in certain util elements. And a glass cannon, which, uh, I mean, you were uh, talking a little bit about it with me before we were live, about orbs on Ancient, how options can be quite limited. Alistair did find contributions up against C9. Mir, an extinguish in mid. Is he just posturing or is he going? They're going. Flit and Mir looking to take mid control. Passing glance and backing away. Okay, Dexter thinks twice as the Molly Lut arrives. It just feels like there's so much pressure over towards middle so far, so wanting to try and take a key piece of real estate back on the map. It's difficult to find aggressive picks with the AWP. Hey, straight through. Lands at the doorstep of Vexite. And they're already running out of utility on the CT side, but the same to be said for VP. They have limited nades remaining. James AWP to be, oh, not gonna go oh, for the boost on the top box, to give a different elevation. Oh, is it just a matter of time before Dexter oversteps the mark? Going for a two-man cave setup. Alistair's not on this camp line. He's gonna get in, one, but in. in. Oh, Alistair, he connects onto Norbert. He's done enough. Dexter's here in support. Playing the cubby, strikes well, denies the plant. Huge round from the CTs. Dig themselves out of trouble. Alistair with impact. I thought the ramp was a gap, but he manages to kind of adjust in time. He's going to try and get away with this, but he's already been cut off at the pass. Look at Liaz. He was immediately leaving middle and going straight towards spawn. If Mir just rounds this corner, not worried about the fight, it would have been removed. Great awareness from Mir. I've been able to pick up the AWP to put it back in the hands of Alistair on the CT side, but a huge save. There's still plenty of cash. Look at Miri, he's got 7k remaining. Can drop that AWP. Might even have to contribute with an AK for one of his teammates as well. But there'll be more than enough to get a full strength VP buy. But that is a good response of a round from FlyQuest, and you have to tip your hat to Alistair. 
Good opener. He goes to support Vexite in cave and then, yeah, running out. Didn't look like he was aware of the possibility, but still adjusted in time. And then pouncing our Vexite and Dexter to swarm and stop that bomb going down. Happy now to get the rifles, VP. Need consecutive rounds from FlyQuest to bail themselves out of trouble. Is this quick? Oh, it's direct. They're going to go after the molly start to fade. Oh, so blind. Aren't you two? Dexter still, though, between the flames and the flashes, he manages to draw first blood. Can they convert this? VP, they are in. Make no mistake, that bomb is going to be going down. An interesting smoke thrown out by Dexter. It will give him some options upon the fade of the first. Smoked off on Speedway as well. Oh, this is bleak. It's a tough retake. Playing the fade, spamming the smoke. Oh, flit. He's trying to dance around these smokes. He's going to try and work on some sort of flank. Yeah, catches the timing. Beautiful from Flit. Now it's a three on three. He's behind. A oh. smoke spams away. Knows where Liaz is as well. VP. Direct and successful. Oh, can Liaz get away? He's such a scary player, Flit. Just on the warpath. Yeah, really liked his contributions in this round. Went for the shallow smoke, could have gone for like a deep speedway redeploy, but went shallow, even able to push through it, use it against them, subvert the expectation. And even though FlyQuest held on to Cave, it was their coffin. Yeah, Cave is it's a challenging one. Like, you know, you kind of, you don't want to lose Cave Control, but also very easily can be smoked off and feel helpless on the retake. It's good to have if you're able to push out. Yes. Right, and you're able to fight from lane because then you really box VP in, but they didn't feel boxed at all. Box, box. Lurk smoke to get the B players. Nick is in a twist. Yeah, they're having to boost over it. As Leo's investigates with that saved M4, Dexter... keeps them all so focused. Yeah, no. and... I guess the difference is if Ali can get a couple of absolute bangers on this Deagle towards A, that's the only way. Yeah, that's the only way. Oh, we saw the shadow. We've seen enough. Summons Liaz, Vex, Ike, Dex to get the whole squad hit. Even a scout. Good edging from Liaz. Yeah, he could edge. Uh, it's only the body shot. Wow, that went over quickly. Toppled and flits even behind him. Wasn't in a good position to edge there, was he? No. Suboptimal. Steady stuff from VP. They're used to playing games that go all the rounds. Ooh. As Flip brings out the Glock and Styles on Dexter. They've hit their stride. I think that uh, second half of Vertigo kind of reminded them who they were. They were doing phenomenal work on the CT side, weren't Incredibly. they? And T side, obviously, uh, this worse is got, for wear. This is much more of that VP flavor. You see that? Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, when I say scary, I, I, you can, I think you best understand it when you see them with X-ray off from an enemy POV. These players are dangerous. We're gonna fight for mid. Suspicious smoke, but oh, it's a distraction. It's such a nice response from Vexai. Oh, he has enough bullets with Inz's help to take down both of the mid challengers. Norbert's gonna go through cave. Great understanding of the situation from Norbert. And there's a push out of A main as well from Fame in a moment's time. Fame's cooking up. Bringing the bomb over towards A as Norbert's going to be a little late piece, a little bit of a distraction. Continues his push, finds the gap. Dexter has to acknowledge this. Norbert back turned. But does that give him info? He was alone looking towards ramp. Surely that's some information for the rest to piece it together. Fame out on A. Makes it abundantly clear. James going to be joining him. Alistair will hear those steps. He's not being quiet about it. Smoke on, Jame. <laughs> Gives him the bomb as well. Inz is working on an A main flank. Not going to give a, the AWP anything to work with. Alistair just unwilling to peek into that. Hoping for this one from Jame. Oh, disgraceful. Could get both, but James in it to win it. That's an ooh, potential third on that peak. 
They definitely made something out of that, but it will be a fly quest round. The amount of damage done would have been wild if James lit up there. Remember Inferno, how he was missing a couple of absolute sitters? Would have been great to see him activate with the AWP. Good response from Backside dealing with the leak over towards middle. Inns fortunate to find Mir through, so good understanding. And Norbert, yeah, he's thinking, why are you there, Dexter? That's what he said. Why? Mang. I'd be loving the Norbert frustration cam. Yeah. I mean, it is, he's very animated, isn't he? I wonder if that's like, uh, you know, one of the reasons why he did get kind of okie koki to, you know, in and out in the VP roster. But then you had Chiron and you were like, oh, actually, you know what? I'll take a Rager. We'll take, we'll take a guy who follows the system and doesn't just need a push. Yeah. Plays by the rules a bit more. He can get mad. That's fine. Just and then we'll put him mic. down the end and we'll forget about it. <laughs> yeah, him. just mute your mic if you can. All right, Ali. This is a very powerful angle. The only counter is a flash, like this, actually. Perfect flash. Oh, 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 get out of there. They're coming, eh? They're testing you once more. Alistair does throw out an incendiary his own design. A deep donut smoke as well. This is well-structured from BP, but Alistair hits a cracker. Breaks the skull of Norbert with the AWP. Oh, whoa, so close on the spam from Inns. Mir lucky to be alive, but now VP set up to succeed. Another smoke donut. It's the win condition. A late flank out mid. Liaz is going to be not ready for this if he doesn't go down to flick. Good one back from Inns. He's on his way in. Missed shot from Jame on notice from the dink. And Flit does arrive. Makes that impact known. Jame cut down by Dexter. No kit. No hope. Oh, Nate the smoke! Oh, there was a world. There was a world. And this time, Norbert with a smile on his face as the sixth comes through. Abusing this A site, and it is going to really humble FlyQuest's economy. Yeah, no consecutive rounds for FlyQuest on this CT campaign, and it might stay that way. What a well structured A take as well. Like the deep donut de deviations, quite nice. It is good to do, especially if you're exploding. Right? If you're doing it like as a set piece and you're trying to go fast with it, the deep donut, they're just going to play ahead of. But if you can be close A main as it's landing, then they don't have as much time to make that choice. Yeah, you can So see. I like the use case for VP. Yeah. The galley was in. You could see his kind of brain whirring into action of what, what is the response here. This is a uh, quicker boost and a quicker for result. See you later. Bomb those eeks. Head. Seven. Seven. Oh. oh my! Oh, he's gotten um. away with that. What's happening here? I, 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 it should be okay. Yeah. I think it's okay. But they're kind of ahead of it, actually. But it's only a USP on Liaz. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's a Deagle for Liaz. It's a USP on Alistair. Yeah, but now you've been spotted out. Fame's going to go back. Oh, and they got him. Okay, so they will have two AKs. Well, the push through red from Vexai is inspired because A's called clear. He can be fast on the flank. And, well, speaking of flank, it's not a flank just yet. They're it's not slow. even up lane in towards B. So as Vexai mantles, he's going to be scratching his head. Does he expect them still to be doors? I don't think he does. He doesn't. He doesn't. Ouch, that will hurt. Fame will take him down and the potency lost now despite all of their hard work in this eco. Alistair with no armor and two to find. Fame's just ready to stand and bang. Ali will have to hit a bang up. Not going to get it. Aim punch obscures him. And it will be a seventh. Convincing T side here out of VP. Thrust to start on the T side by FlyQuest and, well, thriving in this environment. Yeah, yeah. if Vexite was aware, right? This is the thing. This is where the patience really sours the mood a little bit. Because you had, didn't have eyes on that territory. Thought they may have played for a little bit more room. They were still just patient as you like. Yeah, this time it's rewarded. You need something to go into halftime fly quest. Three ain't going to cut it. That's especially with the pistol and out the conversions. I want to abuse A again. And understandably so. Look at the full press. They want mid and B lane info and they've gotten it. But he's coming. He's coming a lot. The pennies dropped. Lias is rotating back. Inns is just behind. Alice has rotated over with the AWP, but their util has been very strong. It's the same round. Can I have a different result this time? Alistair, can I try and edge the smoke? What a shot out of Alistair! 
beautiful flick of the wrist. Inns will build upon it. There's another Lias hold on. That's a collateral. Puts Jame into the clutch thanks to Vexite's find. He opts for the AK-47 to finish the job. Alistair low HP and they will convert. Stone face. Alistair hitting a cracking shot there. Reacting to the util, maintains vision, plucks the boosted player. Man, man, oh man. FlyQuest have got a fourth. They're trying to make a full half out of this, and VP's economy's not pretty. Yeah, the damage they did on that eco <laughs> has actually come me. home to roost. <laughs> oh, that was uh, some classic edging. Good work from Alistair. Can they walk away with five? Same situation as Inferno. They're going A again. Aggressive orb in main. Alistair's grabbed one. Under the pressure, the combat orb in. Can't connect the second. Yeah, but Inns is here. Tucked behind default. They will molly him out. This is problematic now. They're boosting as well. He's found the edge. He's riding the edge. Takes down another. Liaz onto Norbert. 3v2. Make it a two on two. The fumble there as the bomb will likely go down. He's holding this HG. Come on now, Jay. You can't rotate back from this, surely. They can't believe it either. Now you smoke the plant. What are you hoping to achieve? There's so much of the map available, but you need to be worried about the sound cues. Vexite yeah, would have been in a position to hear noise main, but they've gotten away silently. By throwing that smoke, is that going to essentially buy them 20 seconds to rotate? Like, is that just going to keep feet planted? Dexter's worried about the flank. You can see him acknowledging the chance that they can slink through Temple, but not through Red. They're yeah. going to get in towards the... Look at this. Fame just sprinting. For his captain. Well, no kits, unless there's, there's, there's one, one on the there. site they yeah, can pick up. Yeah, we saw it. It's just on default. A. Dex needs to pick it up now and get going. Damn, VP out playing the FlyQuest boys with this one. Now you know it's not A, lads. There's the kit. There's some upgrades. Smoking a kit. What's the post plant? It's actually just going to be two individual jewels. Fame backing his aim. Going to go for the... What, try and get one and done, or maybe even both. Turns it, sprays them down. Masterful control of the Galil there. A triple from Fame puts VP in prime position to secure the playoffs. Eight to four. What can FlyQuest do with their second half?
Pistol go a long way for FlyQuest in their pursuit of glory and playoffs here at IEM Chengdu. Day two, VP in the lead, eight to just four. A composed CT start for FlyQuest. However, VP with a tenacious bullying of the A site have managed to secure themselves A coming into our second half. I'm Machine, I'm joined by Chaddy B, otherwise known as Sponge. And we're getting ourselves into this one. As I said, Pistol would go a long way for the T side and it's Dexter's call and he's got his troops charging mid into flip. Dry out middle, when Ooh. do you ever see that? Yeah, you don't. Maybe for good reason, there's but they're just going into the A site stack. There's three of them here hiding behind the boxes. James going to try and bait flit in. And oh, oh, he's had his bell rung. Dexter's nearly caught James as well without knowing it. Fame, however, with the dual Barrettas is set for success. The drive by is brutal. Fame and James, they can do it together. A quad kill on the boost box. 16 frags for Fame. He's having a real comfortable time here on Ancient. This one is going to be going down the gurgler. I think FlyQuest will be spewing with this. Whoa. A fast A split into a stack on the pistol. Can you believe it? I don't think they can. That is going to hollow things out for FlyQuest. No, no bomb plant either, Exactly, oh, exactly. Yo, yo. So double digits all but confirmed. Just one <laughs> flash, some glocks. My Julie's just don't work like that. They missed the door smoke, but the nades have landed. It's an aesthetic smoke. Doesn't it look pretty? A waterfall. Dying to the M4 is better than dying to Norbert's MP9 or Flit's UMP, as the rest are mopped up cleanly. Four SMG frags, so that's a bit uncomfortable. Well, we essentially had all the rounds of Inferno and Vertigo. I'm not sure if we're going to get the same with Ancient. I can this sense your loss of hope, Virgil. I was never huffing or puffing, no, copium you weren't. or hopium. No, that's for Elfish Guy to do. I'm a realist Randy. <laughs> well, I'm still slightly, cautiously optimistic that this could still have a couple of twists and turns. And it hinges off of this round, so let's see what uh, FlyQuest T side has in store for us. They'll send... WD-40 if it hinges off of this one. Yeah. Need to lubricate. Oh. Nice from Inns. Catching the swing out of Flit all the way from Elbow. Excellent. He's just waltzed in. Hello. Do you yeah. want to really tussle with Norbert? Yeah, Norbert's an aimer. He's a gamer. And he's coming for you, Vexi. He wanted to force the issue there. Cautious of Cave, understandably. Now that Molly limits his options, and they're trying to get the bomb up. Alistair spotted out. Confirms Norbert's presence still. James as well. Two speedway, they say. A late flank from Inns oh. could be cooking. He's still lingering. They're just safe. Yeah, but not, not on Inns' watch, right? Well, he can. He has got more to lose than gain. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a frustrating death if he falls to fame. Nice shot. Clears his corners. It only takes a UMP away. It's the rest that have got the prized possession. So, is it is it in their interest to, to throw out a little bit of a hunt? They are. It it is and it isn't. It is if they can cleanly. If they can't, they really need to start building yeah. finances of their own. So they can throw one or two, but that's the most you can definitely put into something like this. That smoke's actually going to help Dexter. Oh. oh. That'll do. That'll do. Close, but no cigar. On Norbert. Yeah, because now Dexter can be dropped, right? If they gave away three, that's bad. I see you. Right? I the see basic you. maths. But uh, this is the opener. Vins. Vins? Inns being given an opportunity to find that frag. All right, we lost the round, guys. Emergency, the second time. emergency <laughs> meeting. Dustin's not happy. Guys, this was, we, 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 this was gone as exactly as we planned. So, again, when the finances are on the brink of total destruction, Dustin wants to make sure I have a meeting of the fiscal variety. So it gives the 30 seconds to fly quest for a conversation. I think we should pump this music into the players' ears. During the timeout, I'd stress them out a little bit. No, I think more. they'd like it. It gives them that uh, game show feel. I think they might be going for a full mid control potentially. What's making you say that? Uh, Alistair might just be doing. He has. He was lining up a smoke. It could have oh, just been the mid lurk okay. smoke again. Just seeing if someone had a red smoke as yeah. well. That they were hoping to lob. Well, it's going to be Dexter throwing out an, a quick one towards Cave or Heaven. Heaven. Okay. 
Limits Mir's jump up potential. You feel like it essentially renders it useless unless he activates second. Deep incendiary down the lane. They want to try and walk up this ramp. It's Norbert's responsibility. Essentially just want to avoid James Orb, which is currently parked in cave. Here on the jiggle, I like this. It's going to allow him to retain his smoke forever longer. That's going to be a red smoke. Inns is going to smoke donuts. They are going for mid control. At the same time, Dexter goes for lane. Still cave is a problem. James hasn't moved, but now he has to worry about the jump up Tetris. Ah, you can see him acknowledge that with the flames. Also gives up the fact he is in cave, but the orb's still here at 50 seconds. Yeah, that might catch him off guard. Inns is actually walking towards this donut smoke. Someone has to make a play. Oh, it looks like Inns is going to be caught out by this fade here. Mir's got a good angle for it. Pressure applied to Norbert. There are up the ramp. Smoke. Commitment. And a good one. What? Norbert was flashed. He doesn't know. He's walked straight past him in the smoke. Oh, no. Bomb lost. Norbert's done enough. Locked out. Shut down. And the bomb under Norbert rule. He's just run away. He's having enough of that. Absolutely none of it. Save the AKs right now. Worst case, they go down after time. Mir could confirm that coming in late. Three, two, one. This is the swing for Mir. Oh, oh cruelty. Takes down Liaz, and Vexai gets away, but only 2.9 for Liaz. Okay. Hope rapidly sucked out of the room for the FlyQuest side. Look, see, let's see this from Norbert's POV, just driving by. That was the jewel we were waiting to see as well. Norbert uh, rarely seems to put a foot wrong. Seems really? to have a lot of good decision-making. Yeah. Oh, frustration bubbling to the surface there on Alistair's POV. The thing is, it's not like FlyQuest didn't get map control. It just there wasn't enough threat. Like, you don't... Sorry, what? He's in B. Yeah, he is. Use their own top ramp smoke. Whoa! Sheesh! Okay, Vexite pops off for a triple. The one-man army, the rest of the team were going A, but the, I think the plans are going to have to change. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, yeah, um, we're we're going to go back to B now. Uh, yeah. B side's clear, lads, by the way. Is that your Australian It accent? was a little bit, yeah. Okay. Well, Alex, there is a moment of... <laughs> there is, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Hearing the water, Miz is going to call this. I think it is likely to see them just save again. So unless FlyQuest make the wrong decision, it's just being quite diligent calls out the position of Mir, and they will just usher themselves in towards the site. But if FlyQuest want to get back in the game, they will need moments of brilliance from individuals just like that. Vexai, again, putting his mechanics on display. Just walk through the smoke. Flip. Shut down. Fame and Norbert to follow. Beautiful sequence out of Vexai, and now Jane trying to hold on to his AWP. It's... Revealed now by Inns in his search. It was only the Desert Eagle. Again, can't give away too much, but if you take it all with you, it's going to feel damn nice. Jame. He loves Alistair. this game. Yeah, he, he even has to smoke. I don't think they're getting to him. All right, well, they retain three AKs. Jame with the AWP. Huge from Vexai. Yeah, I mean, it's not something you can you kind of ask him to do again. Don't think you even asked him to do it the first time. He just walked in. It was the flash, actually, from Alistair that really facilitated that. You see two assists in the feed. And lovely third as well, stabilizing that control. Ooh, okay, another dust on timeout. So if we, to look at the finances in the same way they would right now, James has the AWP. The loss bonus going into the next round of play is only 1,900. James has 3.4, which is the high end, considering it already has a saved gun. So he can drop an M4. We can call it an M4 and the AWP. There's also the possibility that Flit or Mia could drop rifles. Someone would operate with no Kevlar, but par for the course as far as VP are concerned. So James dropped one. It doesn't look like the full investment, however. So still keeping things pretty light. One M4 for Flit. Everybody operating with a smoke-ish. 
and James AWP. Well, these are the type of rounds BP can make work. They haven't shoved all of their pennies into the center of the deck. Edging to stay competitive over the next couple of rounds. Over towards B with four. Flint's M4 into that mix. Boosted up an elevated angle. And he's not just going to hold the line. James also rotating over to bolster any potential issues. As FlyQuest is just going through the paces, they know that there's an AWP in play. Where the hell is it? Yeah, ain't that the question. Oh, they know where it is. They've naded it. Jame has a barrage of HEs and bullets. Down goes the AWP. Problem solved. Good awareness. Good calling. Falls the AWP into Norbert's hands. Nice combo. If they just follow through with the B execute. It would be the right play. Sight laden with flames, long smoke now dotted, and I, this is where Classic VP comes in again. It'll be another save. As long as nobody from FlyQuest runs in with their knife out to give anything over. Starting to piece together this comeback. Seven confirmed, and that's by the dots on the radar, and now our lovely observers with some cams showing them holding on to their goodies. So the M4 retained, the AWP given a second life. Yeah, Norbert's well-trained. He knows what's required of him. Pick it up, get out. But, yeah, you bang on to highlight that from FlyQuest. A little maneuver to use the HEs in One of them I think missed because, yeah, but the idea was super sound. You're like, where would you take an AWP for impact? Yeah, there's, like, you could play Donut maybe. You get smoked off. You could play A Ed with it, but you'd feel off. like you're out of the round. Yeah, A main, as you said. So, yeah, good position and uh, good little move. So it's the details from FlyQuest. See, they've, the big conversation is spending a lot more time doing the theory. And, right. Uh, it's quite clear. And they're all definitely on tensor hooks listening to what Dexter has to say. So there was a swing from Vexite Cave. The nades pushed James out into the spam. And that was enough. James said, huh, I want that next round. Norbert in with an MP9. Rifles for the rest. Saved AWP back in his hands and away we go. Four rounds the difference. Still on the comeback trail. FlyQuest. Oh, I like this. He's not going to uh, respect that Molotov. It's Mir trying to be aggressive, but the Heaven Smoke really limits his options, as we've seen and discussed. Norbert already, though. He's pushed by this oh. door smoke. Yeah, look at this. The flashes are not going to catch him. Oh, it could be two. It is with in combination with Flit. Resmoke smoke limits in his contributions. Alistair's got a lot on his plate here. Oh, but he's... He's actually pipped a bit of a timing here. James just covered ramp. Fame's not ready for it. Opportunity ah. squandered. Well aware of the potential for a ramp re-aggress. Ali has to stay on a swivel. He is tucked in towards cutout. Yeah, Ali got the info there on the AWPA. But is he expecting this? Oh, James, brutal. Hunts down his prey. The jump spot is going to bait in into not clearing Mir. He won't clear me now. And then the problem is less about not having cleared that space. It's how quick the flank can come in once they show themselves towards B. Here comes the flank. And here comes the frags. Oh, they're going to be absolutely punching the desk after this. For sure. Liaz. Actually, manages to catch James. The Molotov could finish the job, and it will. No, oh, he's just going for the plant, though. Oh, fakes it out. Didn't spam. Oh, no! Flit! Down as well! Liaz, this is magical if he can pull this one off. He's anticipating ramp. No, he's not. He's walking into the smoke, and it's fame to collect it. Close. Close to brilliance from Liaz. Denied the final hurdle. Well, that's 12 confirmed now for VP, and that would have been Liaz. That's essentially what he's meant to become in this team, is that late activation element in the clutch. So close, but so far, the bomb does go down. It helps them out a lot, but that clutch would have lit the fire in the belly. He knows it too. You've got to try and just keep a cool head on your shoulders because the comeback, it's, it's going to have to be flawless if you want to have a choice and a voice in this series. And make no mistake, this is FlyQuest up against major champions. You know, the majority of this roster have lifted a major trophy. For FlyQuest, it's 
you know, trying to qualify for the majors, never mind lift <laughs> yeah. the trophy. Well, they, they started off this year essentially with that uh, RMR losing to Lin Vision. Yeah. And uh, since then, have had to kind of sit in their own sour juices. Greyhound capitulated, had to find a new home. FlyQuest happy to back them. Some of the best Counter-Strike they've played in terms of the quality of the game. For sure. Right, not the results, but the, the quality of the Counter-Strike that we're seeing. Well, VP, last round they played a 3-2. This time, James AWP postured early over towards A. Might be a tussling with Dexter early, as we can see. Mid, you two being lined up. Mir's close. This is going to be pesky. Ins making a play. Flip with some spam. It's Jame onto Dexter in a main. And oh, Ins trying his luck into red room. He's not ready, ready for this, this angle. Fame so aware. So ready. And it does put them into dire straits, doesn't it? 3v5. FlyQuest Ancients not gone to plan. Well, if they do drop to the lower bracket, which is just three kills away, they will take on the winner of Steel Helmet or Namiga. Two best of three is going to be required tomorrow. If they want to see the playoffs, that they were oh so close. Let's start with info. Long occupied. Leon's in support. Nice shot from Alistair. Considering his options. Smoke on the site to facilitate a plant, but there's a very fast flank here, Chad. This is going to be problematic for them. They've got pressure from every avenue. Flit to be a destabilizing presence, trying to use that smoke on short to push through. Here comes Mir. Liaz looks away, and it seems the deal is sealed. VP into the IEM Chengdu playoffs. And it's sealed by fame. Beautiful impact from him on Ancient. He's come alive with 19 frags. Virtus Pro. Get it done in three. Get it done convincingly on the third. And for FlyQuest, as you said, a lower bracket run required. Yeah, beautiful stuff. I just want to give uh, more props to Norbert. Strong throughout the series. Some gl great clutches. Really handy player in the VP ranks. But you're bang on. FlyQuest dropped to the lower bracket. They will take on the winner of Namiga versus Steel Helmet. Currently action on that B stream. But for VP, they join the likes of Liquid. They join the likes of Mouse. And uh, they will get a match tomorrow against FaZe or Astralis for a spot in the semis. Certainly what VP likes. FlyQuest not so much. Hard fought game, impressive counter-strike, undeniable improvement and making VP work for it. There was definitely opportunities for a 2-0, there definitely opportunities on Inferno. But instead, Peter's out into the third. VP, very hard team to put away. Down, but not out. I'm wondering about how hollow they would feel, right? Because they've shown good Counter-Strike, but knowing that you could have had the win, that's what usually sticks with you. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, we're seeing improvements in their approach to the game. For me, that is the, the biggest takeaway. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I mean, for sure, you know better than me that for the players, it is those rounds you could have, would have, and should have. But right now, we should go and tune in with Heku. Yeah, Machine, I have Jim here by my side. Congratulations, you're going to play on the big stage. You already qualified to the playoffs. You performed really good on the third map, but we got to talk about the first one and the second one because, you know, like you kind of had like a really good start on the first one and then all of a sudden there was like a little bit down and then like up. It kind of looked like as if you managed to adjust on the moment. Is that what happened? I just lost crucial rounds and it's... Uh... Obviously, it's just yes. We can control all things, and uh, we made stupid mistakes and we lost. Uh, but uh, anyway, our opponent was good. Dexter really experienced Idrel, and it's uh, always hard to play, uh, play against him. And when you went into the series, did you actually expect for it to be like so close, like that you will go like to all three maps? Because this, you know, it is an Australian team that usually don't really have high expectations. Did they surprise you in any way? Uh, they not surprise us because we expect uh, they go, they're really good because they won against C9, mm -hmm. 
uh, not any team can do this. Uh, and anyway, uh, they they got Leas, uh, major semi-final player, and they all very experienced player. They had uh, they got one uh, young superstar, and they really strong team. They they won all qualif qualif qualification on all tier one tournaments. I think they're really good. And are you excited that you're gonna get to play on the big stage again in front of a crowd? Yeah, of course I'm excited. Uh, I think uh, on our earth, uh, I have two places: uh, is Brazil and China, where uh, people very good, very support me, very big uh, supporting our team. Yeah, definitely. We saw that you have a lot of fans here, and they'll be really happy to see you on the big stage. Thank you very much for the interview. Let's go back to Freya. Thank you very much, Heku. Yes, James, aptly excited to be playing in front of the Chinese crowd as VP. Do make it through to the playoffs at the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu 2024, but not without bleeding a few times. Fair play to FlyQuest. They make this one more competitive than I could imagine. James gave some app words and said, yeah, they've got quite experienced players on that team, but I didn't expect FlyQuest to be making this one so close. Oh, neither did I. I think there's two different routes you can take with this one. Obviously, you can be very disappointed in the fact that FlyQuest wasn't able to close that series out when they were. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I would be lying to say that I'm happy with how things have played out, but part of me also wants to sort of think about the positives here. Like, it's obvious that, you know, everyone's going to be disappointed they didn't manage to make that happen, but they're not out of the tournament just yet. They looked actually quite good in this matchup. For the most part, I think yeah, Ancient, they started to slow down a little bit, but going down into that lower bracket, I've still got a degree of faith that FlyQuest can kind of at least make one more win happen here at Chengdu. It's just always painful when you get so close and then miss out. He's not biting that, Yanko. He's a rookie mistakes Freya you know this is not how you fa fanboy right you need to be calling out for people's heads oh, you need to be you need to be blaming people right cutting people from the team you're right, doing it right. all wrong Jordan but it's fine okay. you know we'll you I'll get into the I'll swing of things learn. you need to get more angry and just let the rage out embrace just, the dark side I think I'm just resigned at this point you know like I've seen it all before it's like <laughs> right, so you reach the, the, the last before. step <laughs> I've been happy before I've denied it but now I'm just like whatever this is just what it is tell you what Yanko you were a little bit angry that fame wasn't showing up you know hot on the first couple yeah. of maps but the third map redemption arc for him right absolutely finally VP got all their ducks in a row right on on the decider and fame stepped up I think starting you know with the pistol as well uh, in the second half getting that 4k helped a lot for VP but even in the first half on the T side that early force by when uh, he got a couple of important kills and just had more frags in general, which is always going to help. And we saw VP win some of those rounds that we're used to seeing them, right? Like like that second round, winning a 3v4, sort of just grinding it out. Uh, a couple of more successful clutches for them as well. So this is more of what we expected from VP. Yeah, bottom of the scoreboard for two maps in a row for Fame and then right up to the top for Ancient. And you could maybe look at that as to the reason why Ancient looked uh, so much better for VP than the first couple of maps. So fantastic little reversal from him and something that we'll be hoping to see continue going into the playoffs. I'm very excited to see Vertus Pro actually make it to the playoffs. You know, they were arguably robbed. Uh, we look back at the major. I'm really excited to see what they're going to deliver on this first stage. Absolutely, because as well, their style, you know, puts a lot of pressure on you and you feel more pressure in the playoffs to begin with so that style could probably work even better in that sort of an environment and and yeah it's also a team that no one is like oh yeah we'd really like to play vp you know <laughs> yeah. sure you're not necessarily even looking to avoid them but no one is like super comfortable going into that game um, let's theory craft something, Jordan. Right, so FlyQuest aren't out of the tournament. They're going to fall down to the lower bracket where it's either uh, Namiga or Steel Helmets. That's going on now on the B stream side of things. Um, that's not necessarily too hard of a game, but then we look at the rest of the bracket because you've got to win yeah. another series to make it to playoffs. What are the chances? Give me a percentage of this happening. Uh, to make it to playoffs? Yeah, why not? Oh. I don't know. I don't know if I want to be harsh. I don't know if I want to be realistic or if I want to be excited. I think 25% maybe. Is that realistic? I mean, look, when you're really thinking about it, they have to get through probably Namiga in the, that next matchup. It's Namiga or Steel Helmet, but I mean, look, it's not going to be Steel Helmet. I can tell you that for free. And then it's FaZe, Astralis, or Cloud9. We've seen them already beat Cloud9 once, but then again, FaZe or Astralis as well is going to be a bit of a difficult task. I, I think... Yeah, it will be a tough run. It's doable, but it's definitely a tough run. What's your takeaways then, kind of wrapping up the talking point about FlyQuest, considering, you know, we're not guaranteeing them making it any deeper into the tournament now falling down into that lower bracket? 
playing with Counter-Strike, playing with more discipline individually, playing with more structure as a team, so all good signs. And this is all without them still getting to go to Europe, right, and play against tougher opposition. This is all mostly coming from theory crafting and preparation, playing against weaker teams in their own regions. So, yeah, I think regardless of who they play against, they probably have two best of threes ahead of them. So great to get that extra experience. It will get them more uh, things to work on, right? Like they'll have a little bit more data to work with. So yeah, looking, going in a positive trend for FlyQuest. Well, VP moving on to the playoffs of IEM at Chengdu 2024, but it's time to find out which other team will be joining them and which other team will be joining them in the seeding matchup for the semifinals. And this one is going to be an absolute banger. FaZe versus a new Astralis after this. point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris three flick, oh, they're making one by one sets though, wait! He wants to... Oh, 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 who does it? Hi guys, YNK here with Stare, another edition of warm-up theory. How do you go about your warm-up, let's say on game day? It's pretty easy, we get to the venue, then I just open a CS as usual, then we get to the aimbots, I think that's the best one for now. In CSGO, I used to CSGO hub, but I feel like uh, aimbots is actually like all right when you play CS2, you just get in it, and then you throw some of the walls off, Oi, two of them, so you don't have to do 360s all the time, and then just keep going until like, I, I feel like I'm ready. And this can take 10 minutes and 30 minutes. How do you go about it? Is it, do you just do the AK? Is it just for the aim? Or do you go through pistols? All the guns that you might end up using in the game. I mean, I switch it up a little bit. I feel like the, the AK you have to do because that's the hard, like, hard gun to use. I think M4 is always pretty easy. You, you know how to use it, right? And then also the pistols, just to get a feeling of it. Like it should be the same one time with the AK, but it just feels different with the USB, right? Do you use music or no music? I have to use music. I feel like uh, if I don't use music, I'll just get like uh, bored easily. So either music or like I talk with some, uh, some of the boys, right? When we have hits it off, like just having fun chatting. Another thing that I wanted to ask you, so outside of game days, before the only thing you could even really do was just play deathmatch, right? But now there's a lot of these different tools that, that you can use, right? Uh, programs from pre-firing uh, angles to playing against executes to doing retakes. So do you use? Any of that? In general, like DM a lot, like it's the best uh, thing I feel like. Stuff outside CS, like aim labs or whatever you want to play, I think it's like a little different and I don't like it. I want to play like the in game, the action situations, get actual duels and DM, right? I feel like DM is for sure the best to use. And then you could use some retake, execute, whatever. You have to ready all the time and move the mouse. Like you have to really keep focusing on your aim, right? Because you will never have like, uh, let's say if you play refrag, you can just chill for one minute and it doesn't matter. But on a DM, you have to keep playing until you actually stop because you can't just be AFK, right? And just keep dying. That's not nice when you have to stop warming up, the whole break between the game goes live. Like, do you feel like you lose a little bit of the warm up in that break? Yeah, I feel so. It's like, you just feel like you're so warm on aim, but then you're going on the, on the warm up, you have to join the server before, of course. So everything's ready for the, for the match start. And you have like, like eight to 10 minutes normally, I think. You get a little annoyed about that, I would say. But again, if you, if you played enough, I've, you, you won't like recognize it, right? It's just a feeling you have because you're just uh, running around on the map you're playing. So it doesn't really matter. The mental stage, you're like, okay, I was, uh, I was a little bit on aim, but I feel like. <laughs> Do you have any 
pre-game rituals. There's one thing you always do the same on game day. Perhaps there's one song you need to listen to, like the last one before you finish warming up, anything like that. Not individual actually, like we have the ritual of course doing a, a hurdle talking about what we want to do in the game and then in the warm up it's more like you got your own time to like, we talk of course about the game, but you can also just focus on yourself and like running around on the map. Like we have already talked about the game before that, right? But for me, I just, yeah, like run around, actually like practicing movement, you know, just jumping around on the map feels like better for me. So it's like, uh, just like, I'm, as I'm actually playing, not aiming on warm up sometimes, it's good, but it's not a, a ritual I have. It's just like, uh, just feeling the game. The Intel Extreme Masters, the place to be. That much I can guarantee. Of course, my name's Trey Sarant. This is taking Frey for the rest of the day, and I'm not alone. We've got Maniac in the middle, Elfish Guy down on the end, and arriving now into the arena will be that of FaZe, who are arriving to play that of Astralis. My goodness, a date with destiny, some might even say it, because the winner of this will advance on in to the playoffs. Exciting times, Maniac. Very exciting times, Trace. I've been waiting to see this Astralis being actually tested. Uh, no disrespect to Steel Helmet, wasn't really the case the first time around. We had to be very careful with our conclusions, but not today. So, not today. No, not today at all. Look at these two guys on your screen, right? Between the two of them, there's a couple trophies. Okay, we'll give them that. But also, now they find themselves meeting each other on, the, on a battlefield in a totally different context. Yeah, I mean, in terms of roles, I would argue one of them has slightly more experience. Kerrigan, of course, notorious IGL, uh, putting his name in a hat for greatest IGL of all time with his 2021-2022, whereas Device is basically just starting. He's very green, but hey, undefeated. Is that the, is that I mean, the joke that fair, we're doing now? To be fair, you're not wrong. It is, it is a little bit of a change up, obviously, for Device, but he looked good yesterday. The only thing is, again, as you said, it was against Steel Helmet. Um, his orping was fine, his CT side was fine, but we didn't even really get to see much of the T side. So it's kind of like, where do you even draw any conclusions from that? And based off of that, right, because all we do have is what yesterday gave us uh, for Device and Astralis. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, Device having the pedigree to be able to come in and say, hey, I'm going to lead this team now. Well, I mean, listen, the, the problem is, I don't, the question is not, can he understand the game? Because I think we all agree he does. I, mean, I think for his long tenure as a professional player, he was regarded as an example of like clever Counter-Strike. We would always say, hey, uh, Alpers out there, have a look at Device, see how he moves, see his position, see his lines. That's okay, that's great. But we're talking about being a leader of men and in hard times. And this is definitely where we haven't tested against Steel Hammett. Life was good, you know, the weather Correct. forecast yep. from Brisbane, 30 degrees sunny. Sure. <laughs> but now against Australia, it's going to complicate itself a little. It's a very big step up, isn't it, right? I mean, it's, it's easy, I think, to go into that matchup against Steel Helmet and just win because you are better. There's no real conversation to be had there. They dominated them on the CT side, but I kind of want to see how they're going to go against a team like FaZe. This really does feel like it's actually going to be the first real test for Device as an IGO. So Maniac, let's do this in, in probably a, a simplified fashion, if you don't mind. What did this Astralis look like before when Device wasn't the IGO? Before? Yeah, we're I mean, talking it about the blame of time? Or? It doesn't really come together completely, but what did it look like uh, then versus perhaps what it should look like versus? Oh, well, that's a complicated one. Where to start? Like, how long do we have? It's like an hour, two hours? We do yeah, a we full diagnosis. That. Now, listen, obviously, the, the order of Astralis was dysfunctional very profoundly, and I think everybody could realize that. I didn't expect that they would go as deep as removing blame F completely. I thought he would stay on board and someone else might maybe be the leader. They decided to go a different route. I think, first of all, a couple of individuals didn't show up in that constellation. I think... Stone and Yabi were far, far from delivering the, the promises that were made in the heroic camp. And then from a, just a leadership perspective, it felt like Blamef wasn't exactly the one having the shoulders, metaphorically, because physically he definitely got him. Metaphorically, not really here. You know, when you don't show up in a losing interview, it sends the wrong message. So hopefully with device, different vibes now, someone that actually will take these responsibilities moving forward. But also there was, you know, the players that were promised, which you know, we don't need to go back to refund times and all that, right? Like the t-shirts, oh, Refunds. pretty sure they're sold out. There's no refunds, no receipts. Uh, talk about what these two should be bringing to the table. Yeah, look, I mean, I think obviously at this point, we're kind of still waiting to see what this Astralis roster is really going to look like, isn't it? Because again, we don't know necessarily how they're going to look. The Steel Helmet game doesn't tell us a huge amount. Um, for me, it's about how is this system going to be built? How is, especially for Device, the IGL and the AWP role going to sort of work together? There's a lot of instances where, you know, again, you, you talked about, you see a player that you know is a good mm. player, a smart player, you see them jump into that IGL role and things don't really work. So a lot of that for me actually just comes down to how is he going to work as an IGL? How is that system going to be built for Astralis? And you talk about system, and that is one of the few observations I've made already in that first game. Stare and Bro are now here to make Yabby and Stone the best possible. They are enablers. They're like the ones in the party telling you, 
have another drink. You're What's one more shot going to no, do, one, bud? You know, I'm driving, don't worry about it. They're the enablers. <laughs> That's what they're doing, really. And they're, and they're really valuable as the players for that. But now we are yet to see Yabby and Stone deliver in these positions. A whole lot of movement, a lot of freedom, a lot of resources being devoted to them as well. That was the case on Ancient. But we're yet to discover other maps. I'm hoping that this is a caveat they're going to follow. Because I do think Stare and Bro are both very serviceable in the shadowy roles. Don't get a lot of love, don't get a lot of attention, but I think they can do what they need to in these. But it's a brave new world, right? We, we can start from the ground again. We can forget about everything <laughs> forget that's about happened the rest. prior and start to build from square one and start to try and build something new. You kind of have to. You kind of have to reinvent your own wheel at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Because, yes, you have a guy that's not only new to the IGL idea, but then he has to take over this you know, championship caliber organization, uh, I should say. Oh my god, yeah, listen, um, just <laughs> very hard turn, 90 degree turn, yep, but something it. that we have to address here. If you are FaZe, I know you are professionals, and I know we all like to entertain this incredible idea that every game matters as much as any other game, but there is a possibility for you to not be at full 100% here in Chengdu. It's just a reality. They've had gone to every single final of every event they've gone to. They're fresh off the back of a very long stretch at the Major. They've played 18 maps this month. Now look me in the eye and tell me they are full 200% for this event. I will not believe you. You're exactly right. I mean, we're talking about major successes, or maybe not, but... but I mean, you're looking at what they've done in CS2. You got Sydney, Thunderpick, CAC. You had the spring they groups. The most maps. Like they, they're they, everywhere. They've done it. You know, they they they've got their foot in the door right in early at Counter Strike in uh, two at least. So surely Astralis is more hungry. They've ha they have to be. They well, have to be. Yeah. Okay. I don't necessarily disagree. But, well, that's a good but he doesn't agree either. <laughs> but he doesn't agree no, either. No, no, no. It's not that I don't. It's not that I don't agree. I mean, the thing is, like, obviously, we, we hear the same conversation around Phase all the time, right? They're a team that we know what we're going to get. We're we're excited to watch them. They're so good in Counter Strike too. I mean, obviously, the changes that 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 they, that they made uh, earlier on in their iteration in CS2 have bore fruit. Great I think changes. that's fair that to say good. as well. And then uh, people are always like, okay, when is when is it going to fall apart for Phase? Like it, you, this dream run can't continue forever in theory. But you have to ask yourself, is that dream run going to come? to an end here against Astralis, I have my doubts. Yeah, you know what? I think you're onto something there, Jordan. Perhaps we get a little bit more insight from the phase camp. Not sure that they're going to tell us when in the fairy tale ends, but maybe they do. Heku, what'd they say? All right, Kerrigan, we didn't yet, yet see you on the A-stream. Overall, how is the team feeling here in China? Uh, I think we're feeling better and better. Uh, obviously, uh, been a long month traveling here and everything so yeah i think everybody's feeling ready for the game and just want to play now mm -hmm. and considering that at this point i'm pretty much sure that there's a script for every tournament where you you know like you you like go down you go up or is we should we prepare for that to like again on this tournament i mean if you go through groups and win in the group i would be very surprised um, but we're doing our best to uh, to turn the script around sometimes instead of fighting the long way all the time mm -hmm. so yeah um let's see how the script is written this time Let's see. Well, when it comes to like doing the best, probably Device is gonna also try to do his best in his new role like, as an IGL. You are a person who is like known for being one like one of the greatest IGLs. Do you think like he might have like some difficulties considering he needs to balance both like being a new IGL and also opening? I think for now, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's it's always easier to call when you just get into it. Uh, you're gonna go with a groove. There's no expectations, right? Um, everybody's doing the best in the team to help you constantly uh, moving forward, right? So I think it's uh, harder to be ideal in one year from now than it is uh, today for him. Uh, I think everything is just a learning curve for him right now. And uh, obviously he's a great individual player, one of the greatest players of, uh, of all time, right? So I think he has a great mind for the game. Just have to find a way and and the hardest part, of, hardest part about being leader is always turning up to practice, always turning up for all single games and playing all the time, right? That's where we have to see how the device does in a few months or in a year from now. Mm -hmm. And from your perspective, was how hard it was like to prepare, considering they kind of changed like only one player, but Device is now the IGL. And we had only like one series so far, and it was against a team that was brought in at the last moment. How hard it was to actually prepare for this specific series? I mean, it's very hard, but we have been in a situation before, right? I think changing a device for blame and removing blame and being device agile changed the whole dynamic of the team. Uh, there's a new rifle spot open, which Sound is going to probably fill in like he did in Heroic, right? So uh, for now, it's just been a focus on ourselves, making sure that we're ready for the game and uh, making sure we're ready for the map that's coming up. Um, so yeah, just looking forward to, to see how they do. And, and I always like to be challenged and hopefully uh, it'll be a great game to watch as well. All right then, looking forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll quote, I would like to be challenged. Kerrigan, 2024.
Oh, the challenge is coming, <laughs> bud. It's well, coming your way. It, it's got to at some point, right? I, I just, I feel it's it's brewing. Like, listen, I'm not telling you Fa uh, Astralis is a better team than FaZe. Obviously not. It would be a ludicrous statement. But I feel like in this very specific context of, I don't want to use the term honeymoon. I think it's overused. But as Kerrigan was mentioning, the fact that they're all going to, you know, come in to help device. Everyone is willing to look above the mistakes. They look past it. It's fine. We're going to be all right. We have no expectations. And FaZe are just like, oh, my God, can I stop playing Counter-Strike for one day? <laughs> I, I, I can feel it coming. Yeah. I feel it coming. Okay, what about this as far as the storyline is concerned? Obviously, on one side, you've got FaZe, who have been basically non-stop playing Counter-Strike. And then mm. on the other side, you've got Astralis, who haven't, I guess it's fair to say. We fair. saw that graphic earlier. And when we look at the other teams at this event that have not been playing a lot of CS coming up to this event, it's Liquid, it's FlyQuest. Mm. Both of those teams look like they have gone from zero to hero in the space of a month. Is there something there as well for Astralis? He's coming He's coming to me right now. I'm buying him out slowly but he's surely. Got that. And of course, we'll we had to sprinkle in. a little bit of FlyQuest in there too, because they've got <laughs> a little bit of magic. I just, just love talking about the Aussie team. What just can right I say? on top. Uh, you know, Kerrigan brings up a valid point here. For Device, you know, it, the harder, harder parts also start of very course. well into this this tenure as an IGL. So, you know, trying to maintain that level of play and keep your page on that same, or excuse me, keep your team on that same page, that's a difficult one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The test of time is the truest of test as a leader and also for a team. As I say, when everybody is aware that you are far from being ready, people are willing to look past the shit that's going down on a server and just give that extra 10%. And we see it all the time. That's why we label Honeyman Effect, right? Everyone is happy and all. I think they might be still in that moment. In a few weeks, in a few months, when real problems start creeping in, this is when you have the, the troublesome conversations, the one where you have to be vulnerable a little bit to make it move forward. They're not in that camp quite yet. They're fine. Well, there's also the sentiment like, yes, every team gets figured out eventually, right? So cool, device, you know what? You got it. You got it if we don't know ourselves. Yeah, exactly. There's that tournament. There's the turn where, yeah, you've just got your feet off the ground, maybe found the system that you like. Boom, it's going to be kaput and shut down right there. Tell you what, Jordan, let's look at it this way. With FaZe and Astralis in the server and everything that we've discussed here, are you willing to go against the grain? No. I mean, I think anyone, anyone <laughs> that knows that. me normally will say, okay, he's the guy that will just be the boring pick. He'll just do whatever's safe. And, and for me, that's kind of where I'm going to go with this one as well. I think it's a massive, massive step up for Astralis. They did look fantastic yesterday, but it was against Steel Helmet, which... I don't know. They might as well not even be here at this point. Um, I think they're actually out. They by might now not as well. be here anymore. They're not out. They're not here anymore anyway. <laughs> right so, so you know, you're no, going up against thing. FaZe, and FaZe is one of those teams. I really love watching FaZe. I, I love this team. I think they're, they're they're a team that you can never count out, regardless of the situation. And this is not even a situation where you would count them out. They are coming into this one, no doubt, as the favourites. So for me, very hard to go against FaZe. I think they've got the star power. I think they've got the intelligence. I think they've got the IGL. The only thing really working against them is that fatigue factor, but even that is not enough for me to get over the line. Which is exactly why I was going to point at you, Maniac. I know, and listen, he's making very compelling arguments, uh, but my calendar has been heavy too. I've had to be logical and down to earth for many, many weeks now. So I think it's time my brain takes a vacation too. I'm going to go for Astralis here. I feel like the upset's coming over. I can okay. I can feel it coming against all odds. Oh. And then I'll just act like a peacock when that works out. Yep. So the, the play right there is you say this live on air and then you tweet the opposite and you can't be wrong, right? Listen, so, follow, me, follow, follow me on the social media. Maybe I have another take. <laughs> okay. Okay, shameless plug. We'll leave that one alone. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Let's get into the game. Enough of us yapping. We've got FaZe via Astralis for a spot in the playoffs. And I've got two commentators ready to get this party going. Let's do it. Maniac can feel it coming in the air tonight. We kind of we, oh, we saved it at the end there. We saved it at the yeah, end. Yeah, we did it start strong. <laughs> Oh, Trace is still with us. <laughs> Thank you very much, boys. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of siding with, with uh, the maniac narrative. Well, he uh, is a maniac for a reason. He's a maniac. No, we can't Maniac keep going. on oh, the no. floor. On the Three desk. maps at least, I reckon. It could be a bangeranger. Strap in, tell your friends, wake up your mum, and make sure she's watching as well. Are you having a nap? Probably. I don't know what time it is where you're watching. Why don't you let me know? Uh, and we'll, that we'll do that during a tech pause. Because right now it's Astralis, it's Face Clan. It's a T start, so we're going to see more than three T rounds. I can guarantee you that. Can he keep it spotless? Can Device keep the 100% T side ratio as the in game leader up against his old leader? It could end right here, Virtual. Let's find out. We got Bro in an Astralis jersey as well, cheering him on as he's escaped Monty Jail. We've got ourselves two smokes for Device's call, and he's going to be immediately dropped it by Bro for a little cheeky BX sec. On the receiving end is three of them. Three members of FaZe Clan, favored by 1x bet. Let's see. Rain. Forced wide. Perfect. Util usage. And the Jewel Barretta's empty handed. It's down. 
with a quick double. And a very uncomfortable. Oh, oh, and you've got the late piece instead, dude. This one. Stick a fork in it. 100% continues. For now. Oh, oh, Rops just tapped his S key as he started to click, so lives on. This boost, however, is going to make things very problematic. Nice from Yabby. Stown's already done the heavy lifting. And Stair the mayor. struggling. Oh, dear. They're getting the kills. I don't think they've got the time. They hold on to the armor on Rops, which is the key. Carrigan without any. Got to be happy with that one. I mean, you would have been a little happier if you'd have kept it clean. Rops does get away with his Kev. Yeah. All right, oh, we're, uh, we're, we're rushing A. Hang on, let me just re read my notes. A just, rush. It does say here, round two, after <laughs> win, we rush A. Yeah, did you see that Valorant's all up in arms about notes on the desk? Are they? Yeah, they're, they're saying how it's, uh, it's it redu reduces the skill because they don't have it all in their heads. <laughs> You're not allowed to have them. Oh. They should just be able to remember A rush. Well, yeah, no, <laughs> well, they're... Their game's pretty complex, so... Well, he's doing it. I can't believe it. Let's see how this one works out for them. Because the util's going to land, and Carrigan's going to have an angle around this smoke. Bang. Just like that. Clean with it. Clean with it. The meat cleaver. Chopping away at Yabby. Stare and bro, however. Have hit some shots. This brimstone smoke's going to make things quite difficult. We are going to get the... I don't know any other characters. Uh, Viper. Astra's like a night elf, right? Yes, she's a night elf. She shadow melds. Viper does do the green blobs. The blobs. Yep. Has that ulti that means that if you go in it, you go down to one HP. Yeah, Pretty cool. That's cool. Um, sick game, right? 3v3, now two. Look at you, Brokey. Down to Stout. It was FPS games before Valorant created them. Same as Dota before League. It's wild. Oof. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. The founders of esports. It is, I'm glad that Riot exists. Competition breeds innovation. Doesn't That's what I'll say, Chad Burchill. Yeah, copycat. <laughs> Competition breeds innovation. <clears throat> Hashtag capitalism. Let's go. Hashtags. Where were we Bring before hashtags? <laughs> Nowhere, really. Just a big, empty social media. We use them on IRC as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, gun round. Broke his all. 5v5. Mid skill. It's... Miss smoke. Miss smoke. Oh, same smoke. It's fake a Rooney. Yeah, well, perhaps not. Device has got the bomb on his back, but he is going to be maneuvering towards the B boys as it's uh, Bro catching a heavy blow. They are sneaking up the gap. No one's holding ramp right now. It's, yeah, Carrigan with his knife out, charging to check it. And whoa, whoa, rude shock as he arrives. Nice awareness from Device to be ready for the push from Ray. Now Frozen's blind, and this seems perfect. I think Astralis might be the best team in the world, Chad. Thank you. That's pro this is probably about the time to say I it. Think, I think so. <laughs> okay, wow. New best team in the world. New Astralis era. Here we go. An event where Vitality, Spirit, and of course, Na'Vi, major champions, is not here to voice any concerns. Oh, exactly. How can you doubt it? Now is the time. Well, they've still won the round, but they have given away a couple of casualties. Frozen's close. Oh, they're all going to go down, aren't they? Oh, I like that. Cheeky boost. Oh, love it. Doesn't get Brokey. Brokey will leave with his very nice looking AWP. I'm going to buy me one of them, I think. That was the Danish elbow. That's what they call it. It's not the people's elbow. And Rops hits him with the Estonian double. Actual a few financial woes. Well, after all of these deaths, it's kind of mad, actually. You know, there's a significant amount of phase frags and not a single round to show for it. A device, keeping that 100% record looking pretty. Actually, yeah, phase of two more kills than Astralis do. 
I just did some quick maths. Could but you three less check? rounds. Could you double check that? All right, if we're going to do uh, six plus three, that's going to take us up to nine. nine. You add Brokey's one. That brings us up to the round number of 10 plus Frozen's two oh. would be 12. If we head over to the other side, that's down with five plus Devices two takes us to seven. Then you add one, one, and one. That'll give us a total of 10. So that's 12 kills on the side of FaZe to 10 kills on the side of Astralis. Alex Machine Richardson, that's an A+. Plus. Thank you very much. I watched the count. He helped me. One. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you got a snore out of me. Well no, that's a nice one. What's the device lining up? Is this the donut, Jimmy? Do uh... Something. So spawn something. What are you cooking here? It could be the midler. Mr. Reeds. It depends if there's a... Yeah, I think... Did he tap W? That was like, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. That's cool. It is the met. Oh, oh it's, it's an extinguish. Okay. Eeky. Oh! Oh, yo! Frozen's gone. Stare. Absolute meanie. Yabby, yeah, trying to avoid the spam from Rain, a whole magazine, and no, but dam damage done. They're all just going to congregate through cave. Is this going to... Yeah, no one's holding it. And they're evacuating. Oh, they're walking through. Because, of course, you lost mid-control, Rops. He's called for backup. And now it's just Carrigan here with an SMG. This is working p poetically. Short smoke. Carrigan will have to play in front of that if they want to contest the rounds. Uh, they flubbed their molly. No, Carrigan might have just uh, saved the day. Abby might have actually saved them. Up the ramp. There's a long smoke that can be deployed. Oh. Good flash. That Molly and a flash. It's still not a smoke. It still means that... Oh, an AWP shot could have been hit. Brokey down. Device brings him six feet under. Oh, no issues as far as exits go this time. It's just rain to deal with. So all five staying alive. Yeah. I mean, understandably, phase the underdogs here against the best team in the world. Slow start. Oh, uh, quite clearly the previous champions last time we were in China. Yeah, they got that China buff. Device, the only member of that roster, of course. But now that he's in-game leading, oh. he gets to channel that spirit as Stown. Oh, oh my gosh, they are... He's amped. having fun. Yeah. There'll be a tweet after this game. I am really enjoying myself. That's what it's going to say. I would say hashtag having fun. Yeah, here it is. Device, the fireman. Yeah, that's a really cheeky way of doing it, just so that everyone can be gun on. I like that. I like that a lot. Write that one down. Oh, man. It's so good to see the uh, device leadership backing it up with some results. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting Rounds ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm they won a best of one against Steel Helmet. Yeah, but they're still the, they are the best team in the world, Chad. You just haven't, haven't seen it yet. I'm not putting a leash on you yet, but if you keep making... Look at go! Oh, no. Rain takes down Yabby with an MP9 at range. Hold up. This is a good round to actually... Okay, how do they handle a, a 4v5 how they conversion? Precisely HRTV. against the lower bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stown's going to get at least one here. Oh, it's hard with the tracking. Does nail it. Mollins is out. Frozen's quick to react. Now oh, 3v4. This is a very tough round. It is a tough Australia. round, so but it's not impossible considering Rops' forward position. That if Stair's sharp, which we know he is, oh, cut down. Good work from Rops. He nearly gets both. A couple bullets shy. Still very difficult round to dig yourself out. They haven't shown the bomb. They've got Brokey with just a deagle on A. Device with his signature AWP. Let's see what he can cook up here. So smoke and full belt are util for bro. If they jump up and over, they're going to walk into two. If they go uh, cross middle, they'll deal with Brokey's Deagle. This round, I think FaZe have the upper hand. Frozen, a very strong position. Could be good for both of them here. Frozen eliminates the first with ease. Device on the trade. Now he knows the flank is on. Changes to that AK-47. Carrigan on the chase. Oh, this is so good, brother. He's throwing the smoke. He's got the bomb down. <gasps> Gets away from the spray. This upgrade to the AK is the perfect choice to try and finish this round strong. They're doubling up in cave as well. He can slink away. It's not planted for long. But by clearing out Speedway... Short, though. You're right. Oh, he's played this brilliantly. He can also assume likely no kits. Oh, device! He's cooking up trouble. This would be one hell of a clutch. He's calling the bluff on the fake. Carrigan's got no time. He's done it. Nikolai, device reads has come up clutch for Astralis, 100% win rate on T-Rounds.
Keep it up, and Carrigan might go down to the bomb. He will. Tried to get away with the AWP, loses absolutely everything. Watch out, Carrigan. There's a new Danish IGL on the block. And that was the trade with the Glock. The smoke, the plant in it, and he disappears without a trace. Device. Oh, he's such a gamer. He's having fun. He's, sorry, I got the that was just a light buy, though, everybody. I know Alex is excited. I am. I'm having fun. I'm yeah, having fun, Jeff. This goddamn bias caster. What does he hate FaZe? Uh, what does he hate FaZe? What does he hate FaZe? Yeah, he hates He them. hates FaZe. He hates them. Wait until FaZe win around. Then you'll really... <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see my bias against Astralis. Oh, that's the, this is trouble. This is trouble. This is beautiful. Rops with a double. Brokey there activates as well. A lovely change up. The streak is over. Astralis suck. Yeah. No, honestly, in the bin with him. I was checking out Astralis' talent, see who they can pick up next. Worst team in the world. Just had a good game, what was his name? Crocs or something? Stare the garbage man. Removing a couple of key pieces. Donates the AWP to the Gods of Ancient. Flash in, well placed. Rain will finish this one off, but now it is Stare in a one on five. Yeah, not much fun for Stare here. Rain's going to bop him. Oh, consider yourself bopped. And uh, yeah, no retrievable AWP there. Cash in uh, some questionable positions for Astralis. They should go for the Force. Just did that, yeah. Oh, saying, did? Yeah, the Scare Electrics track. Okay. Oh, what a beautiful little sequence out of rain. This would be a set piece. They've done the mid smoke again to deny the molly. Oh, but he's off his cheat sheet, though. Easy mode. There's actually a huge gap. No, they don't start anyone A. Cheating a third player over to B on the opening. And it has led to, well, a one for one. They got that kill in middle. Yeah, he did. And the bomb's going down on A already. Brokey, he doesn't want to go too, too far ahead of the play, but he has actually pushed the smoke. It's working out well. Brokey destroys. It's two and a half. And there's nothing. What? Stown gets another double on the MAC-10. He's made this slightly winnable. It's not going to work out for Stairs Deagle. Costly, but a full investment from Astralis. Getting the bomb down is something. Double kill from Frozen, sealing the deal that Brokey started. He's not damage, but good response from FaZe. And nice work from Brokey. When yeah, he's let off the chain. That, that's like that's when you tend to see Brokey doing his best work. It's always fun to see Brokey just kind of heat up in a situation when the chaos is in. I haven't looked at the numbers, but is it safe to assume Brokey was one of, if not the highest rated player in Copenhagen for phase? It felt like he was having some seriously good games. In the final, I think he had a tougher time, but in the lead-in, yeah, he, he definitely was. Yeah, fragging up a storm. So this should be where we see phase make it just a two-round gap. Look at Rops just flying, sailing towards the early info on lane, calls it clear. Still threats in the sense that there's deagles in play. Uh, so when you hear those, if you're phased, you know that you, you can't just be taking all of the fights. Speaking of fights, Carrigan wins one over towards A with the Org. Look at that line of CTs on your Razor. It's covering off mid and B lane completely. Well, it really limits your options, doesn't it? The only issue is response time to A, but you know Carrigan's over there. He's just blocked it with a smoke. He has the org in hand. It's a good weapon for him to stand and deliver, and he's even playing confidently. Yeah, I mean, susceptible to the one dig, but he's got that scope to give himself even more of an advantage here. And ooh, there's the dig. Frozen's coming. Rops too. It's down. What have you got for us? A timing is what he's got. Pause right now. Let's try this live. Stown's flanking. Yeah, Rops is holding. Good awareness. Solid from FaZe Clan. Brokey connects onto Device's Crawl. The bomb plant seems like a bit of a pipe dream here. As, yeah, beautiful from Frozen. He's been looking good as well. Over in Copenhagen. I was thinking about one of the woes when you're coming from another part of the world to a part of the world that's very far away. It's, it's a term. We use yes, it. Yeah. But I was thinking about it, and it sounds like a Decepticon. You know, you've got Starscream, Megatron, Jetlag. You see what I mean? It does. Yeah, that's good. Oh, sounds fine to watch that Double one. Double Orps. Dorping. It's all part of their plan. Oh, 
Didn't quite nail the run boost. Or the strafe, rather. Self boost, whatever you want to call it. Skill jump. Skill jump, that's better. And he's down. Both of them are, actually. Stair trying his luck on elbow, goes down. The orb revealed on the rocks aggress. Bro tried to go for it, and he's, oh, this round's gonna end real quick. Carrigan will take two. And there's the end of it. Beautiful. Beautiful from FaZe Clan. They're into it now. They're hitting the swing. And just to note, in the last four rounds of play, I know the finances have been broken, but we're only talking a total of, what, five kills in four rounds? So it hasn't been like they've been making too much of a dent. And a very strong mid hold. Ready for the leak out heaven. Ready for the push through the mid smoke. And Carrigan, all a part of that puzzle. Or I should have said a piece of that puzzle. Five to four, one round difference. No bomb going down. Lost bonus maxed out going into the next four Australis. And Rugger, the coach, newly appointed on the microphone. Looks like they will be limping in again with some pistol upgrades. A smattering of util. And what is the conclusion off of that 30 seconds? Oh, no util from the T's out of the gate. No red smoke, no cave smoke. So they're going to hold on as... Wow, CT's. four mollies. Yeah, double mid, one lane, one ramp. But so I mean, A feels open. You can hold on to your smokes. Carrigan takes a beating through that smoke. Bro, well-placed bullets. Nade, not too much damage to worry about. Completely unconfirmed, though. It's going to be difficult to capitalize on. Astralis had two players run a main noisily, hoping that a donut player would hear it and respect it, and I don't think that really came into fruition. Mm. Now, Bogdan's Law in play. Carrigan will be donated the AWP. And they've actually full rotated back around the world. So with three smokes available, if they wanted to go for a full set piece, we're talking Temple, Donut, and CT, that's possible. You don't often see the Temple smoke. It's normally just the Donut and the CT. And look at all the bodies able to respond to this by phases, full lane press, mid control, and B lane control completely under their remit. What's the cue they're waiting for here? Device gets it going. No, you're going in blind. You have to expect plenty of bodies. Rob's comfortable, receives them. Oh, that's a third for Rob's, just farming him up. And a clean one for FaZe Clan. Call it 5-5. Five, five. Does feel like Astralis have hit a bit of a brick wall now. FaZe is set up. It's constantly taking that lane and having mid control simultaneously. Now we want to see if Astralis can function in a round where it's maybe not just so brawly. Because mm. in the previous game round where they got locked down, it was quite clear they wanted to do the double pronged mid attack to get control. Right? It's not straight out mid. It's a little bit more delayed as your players get B lane space. But they might have to function slower. Or maybe not. They're just going straight in towards A with heavy forces. Stare to harass middle, has done so quite well. Rops is just going to disrespect all of this, playing between the smokes. Yeah, he's feeling himself, Chad. Oof, and he's staring at a flash there. White screen for three seconds. Deep, deep incendiary. And nobody A again, so... Rotation on its way back from Rops now. We've seen that one starting to become more and more popular to clear our tree. It's not a commit. It has drawn the rotate. And smoked out towards B doors again. Uh, Astralis are not getting any map control. None. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Double smokes for device to throw him out in unison. Brokey, he's going to stand and bang, and he's got support. Stair tried to get ahead of the flames. He's lost his life. Why does it feel like face of infinite smokes? Everywhere Astralis go, there's a smoke in their face. No options available to them. Now Yabby has an opportunity to try and leave lane, but it's up against an AWP. Brokey posted. Crossfire established with rain. You're not getting past this. 30 seconds as well. They are up the creek without the paddle. Said five kills when we had four rounds, but still only 
that. Oh, and this is perfect. Frozen takes the first contact, baits them in, then Rain can strike. Brokey as well is there. Device good for it. Would have to nail another clutch. Has he got another 1v3 in him? I say that. I doubt that. Nice Give shot. A plant. He's gotten away with the plant there. Brokey punished. Carrigan, ooh, lives on, but Device is on one. There is a nice headshot from Carrigan, and it will be a sixth. Fate will take the lead after a very slow start. Well, they actually brawled into a round through some good individual shots of device. That plant actually worth its weight in gold. That will facilitate with the max loss bonus a buy. But Astralis haven't just done a standard round where they, you know, sent two towards B lane, one trying to vie for cave and dealing with heaven, and one player going A main, two kind of set up towards middle, playing behind the smokes with flashes at the ready, one dealing with the ramp push. It's been quite together, or they've just been denied the space. Yeah, Bro and Yabby been having a bit of a tough start here as well. Five frags between the two of them. Bro's throwing out that extinguished smoke. Will they fight for mid again? Like it. Frozen and Carrigan to be tested. And, ooh, the flashes connect. The headshots do too, and they don't red room, but it just condemns Carrigan to an early grave. Stan with a lot of impact into this one. 12 frags and counting. Good device immediately reacts and takes all of this red space. So now we can call with a point of information, right? Hearing steps as far as the right. Oh, okay. That's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it might have oh. swiped his mouse. No, it's all it. part of the master plan. Now he's going to use that to draw rain away from the uh, cave fight. You sounded like an Astralis apologist through this, throughout this game. <laughs> Bloody hell. It's all part of his plan, you see. Oh, wow. Brokey. Uncharacteristic fumble. For momentum's sake, it's very positive signs that Astralis will walk away with a sixth. It was five in a row, then six back from phase, and now Rops just to find. And he's going to go down momentarily. Stair runs him down. It's a 6-6 six, six half. We cooking, folks. Stay tuned. This one's only just getting started. It's heated up nicely. Map one. Machine, machine, fresh threads, machine. Yo, thank you, bro. Thank you. I'm loving the fit today. What are you wearing? Uh, um, I've seen these videos, yeah. Um, well, I've got the uh, Hot Rod M4A1S, about 1K. Uh, on this side, yeah, yeah, Fire Serpent. Uh, I think this is the stat track. Uh, really nice, love the AK. Um, what else we got? Oh, yeah, uh, these are nice. Got the Karambit fades on. Uh, partnered that with a nice little vice gloves on the, uh, on the feet. Sunnies, I think they're the Desert Eagle Blaze Edition. Real nice, yeah. classic, you know. Where do you get all this from? Uh, white Market, uh, White Dog Market. I'm glad you asked. Though. Oh, yeah. No, thanks, man. Easy, I really boy. appreciate the time. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Catch Have you a later. good day. Yeah, you too.
A boom, boom, boom. Let me hear you say, whale. Well. Well. And we've got a way to go in this series for one of these two teams to lock themselves a spot in the playoffs of IEM Chengdu 2024. Hey, yo. Let's go. Okay, 6-6 six, six on the half. Just the first map of this Counter-Strike adventure. You're all on it with us. Chad's obviously the healer. I'll be the tank. You guys watching at home, the DPS, as we get this one started. Second half of play on Ancient. It was a swimming start. We even saw a device clutching up, but FaZe, they stabilized as the hot favorite. Of course, as grand finalists in our major, just what well, felt like yesterday. Basically was. Basically was. They've had about four days uh, in the interim. Even practiced, apparently. Yeah. Believe I it or not. Believe it. We've got Rush Lee, one, two, three, four, five, six, and J Raz. That's our potent pairing on the observing deck. Don't confuse it with Rushley one two three four five six seven. No, that's his co his evil cousin. Or J Rez. J Rez different changing man. Changing the vowels around. Yeah. And bro. Don't confuse him with JKS. <laughs> yeah, he's happily just keeping his head popping and moving, getting some info and spots the bomb. That's a lot of info. Molly into donut. There is still not an over rotation or over commitment from Phase. Yeah, they're waiting for a reaction. And they've gotten it. Bro has to assist device. It's down to pick up red. And it's a fake. I promise you that. Well, it's going to be rumbled rather quickly because they've got that frag and Yabby pushed in for this. That's a big death. A problem now. Reigns found the frag. He's into the site. Stair might be ahead of their expectations. He's gotten himself a double. Oh, and a triple from Stair. Miraculous in defense. Bro and Stair making magic as Astralis take the pistol. Oh, Stair's face, and that's going to be both pistols for the Danes. And, well, guess what? The T-side pistol came with the conversions. Beautiful from Stair, under so much pressure. Able to course correct in the second, and the third is a thing of beauty, and Device gets fired up. No plant, no threat from FaZe. I haven't seen these reactions out of Device since his return. It's so clear he's reinvigorated. It feels nice not to get baited every round, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. He's reinvigorated. He's got a passion back for the game. Inspired by Jane, the Orping IGL. Oh, with two completely different styles, I'll tell you that much. That's for sure. And this one... has been pace. Yeah, I mean, this one's going to be a quickie. That before or after the edging? During. Because of. I think sound's seen enough. Oh, bro's definitely seen enough. Oh my god, he's going to be getting flashbacks if they get the bomb plant. Of course they do. Nothing can stop them. Well, that's going to feel a bit silly from bro. Is there anything more to be said? I mean, Rain already two kills. Stare as well is alone. So, depending on the timing of this, a recharged Zeus... Thought your phone just went off. That's down. And now Steph, really susceptible. Thankfully, it's down and device to uh, sweep the rest under the rug. I was looking around. Like that sound freaks <laughs> Yeah, it freaks me out <laughs> as well. We so rarely hear it. When it's on the back of your, your belt. <laughs> still, we haven't seen anyone use it in like a tactical way whereby, you know, you uh, in my mind, you play cave, you use the Zeus on your on your run in, you drop it in the, the other corner of the 50-50 in cave. And then at some point... Sound like a century. Yeah, they'd yep. hear it and clear the wrong corner in the 50 It's starting to sound a bit like Killjoy right now, Alex. Yeah, well, use it. It's there and it's cheap. And it recharges. <laughs> five rifles. Nearly said five M4s. That would have been stupid of me. Five M4s. Oh. <laughs> five rifles for Astralis. Jet lag. Roll out. I've got you now. Late lane control. Carrigan forced into limbo. Susceptible to spam. It's down. Forced to react with a smoke. Rain needed down. Bro, the same. He's not giving up on this. He likes to play a forward position, it seems. As look at this dastardly duo. Stare and Yambi have called A completely clear. Rops was already investigating mid, but he might get flanked. Is he considering this? It's a big push. Oh, he just fired off a shot. They know what's up. Robs, caught out. Not a common occurrence. Bro should block towards B right now. He just did, perfect. They have to go through cave. And they shall. A lot of three members of Astralis are here. Flash. With Robs down already, this is 
starting to take real shape. Oh, and a perfect one from Yabby. Strikes onto Brokey from behind. It's Carrigan clawing his way back into the site. Push. They're stacked. This could be amazing. Finn Anderson. Yep. They're going to know what's up. Oh, and he gets them both. A stunning spray. Carrigan on for a triple. Could be more. Covers his teammate. Stair goes for a wall bang. Actually did some damage with that, but now they know what's up. Good catch from Stair. Good headshot from Frozen. It's all into the 1v1. Yabby spots his retreat out. Playing a wicked mind game here. Going to re -peak. Oh, Yabby not ready. Frustration palpable as Frozen picks up the round for FaZe. They will take that round by force. The third round in our second half, and it comes down to a 1v1. But that should have been Astralis' round every day of the week. Right? The fact that they push through, they kill Rops, that is huge. But check this out from Carrigan, right? Pushing through that oh. short slow, catches two of them with the pants around the ankle. Megna look foolish. Sick. Actually sick. Right, because they not only did they flank T-Spawn, they, they had the mid-flank from Stair that you highlighted. That definitely should have been an Astralis round. That is a mare to lose. Yeah. I mean, and it's not just, it's not Yabby as well. It's this shouldn't Carrigan have been a 1v1. Play. Yeah, it shouldn't have got that far. Well, Device's AWP is on A. They've had to shove all in. FaZe tend to have their best games when Carrigan is fragging, and right now he is. I feel you have to call off this A play. You were so committed. I guess to go back, you don't have mid, you don't have B lane, you don't really have anything. And now you've been blocked. So does Device hang around or does he rotate? That's probably one of the bigger questions. As far as Astralis' knowledge base... You still have Stair dealing with anybody leaking across mid, which has just been joined by Device's AWP. So they might trade places. Makes sense. And he stayed scoped in the entire time, so it will not be heard from a main. A red smoke to apply a little bit of pressure. If they do just A execute, Rops with a CT spawn smoke, Brokey could also Molotov towards the site boxes. Oh, he's got a second smoke for Donut. Device will be locked off. Stare, you're under pressure. He actually smoked Temple. Donut's available. Donut's open for business. Oh, they flashed himself there. Frozen blinded out. Stare's only got a deagle for this and already missing his first shot. It gets a lot more difficult. Molly in. Can't get away. Four on four. Device can contribute. He certainly can. Going to try and take a pot shot. Nice swan onto Frozen. It's down as well, building into the round. It's problematic for FaZe. Can Rops come up clutch? He's already got a double. 17 frags and counting. Rops is isolating Jules. Dips away. It's down to try and come up clutch. Another 1v1 in back-to-back -back rounds. Will it be FaZe Clan again? Fake. Stout oh. nails the shot. Rops goes down, and it will be an Astralis round. Damn, I thought Rops was playing that so well. That jarring kill that he gets onto Yabby to force it into the one-on-one -on -one scenario. But Stown baits him out with the tap of the bomb and back and forth as far as the rounds are concerned. Even snatches away the AWP in the last second there as well. Nice prize. Device gets that as well as a round. Oh, we've got a highly competitive game here. Phase force. Well, oh, there you, Neo wants to be involved in yeah. that conversation. Rops has 4.9. You could get Galils on everybody else. But you will need some util to try and facilitate the round, and that's likely the discussion. What type of opening are they going to look for? What type of nades do they require? That'll dictate the amount of firepower that they can have behind this ROPS AK-47, which, at the moment, is looking like maybe, just maybe, it's the only big investment. 2400 is the loss bonus in the next. It looks like they're banking on that. So keeping the AK in the hands of ROPS that he invested in, they want to limit the finances of Astralis that we can see with the heads-up display is on the ropes. Two MP9s complement the saved AWP and invested rifles. So FaZe will have a threatening round now without shoving all in and will still have a gun round into the next. How threatening will it be, though? Lurk smoke on B, cave smoke as well. So that will indicate towards these B defenders oh, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, he fully braved that. <laughs> Nate could have killed him. He gets around the corner. Happy's completely open. He's oblivious. Could have got obliviated there. Stare. Got a lot to do. And not ready for that run from Rain. He'd already closed the gap. That's sharp. Nice shooting from Yabby. Felt like redemption there for Yabby up yeah. to eight kills. Well, that'll definitely feel good. That's a good. I mean, it's a good time to be finding frags like that as well, just to kind of boost his confidence individually. Carrigan finds himself a rifle. 
They're being a bit naughty as Carrigan. Should go down in the side in a moment's time. Yabby thrust himself one. into this and... Oh, Carrigan oh. even took down Bro. Not bad. Not bad at all. And that was very threatening. That AK investment, three kills. Rops might likely get dropped an AK from Carrigan and have to receive a Galil. Now, isn't Astralis' money kind of poo? Yeah, it's still not good. So that was great damage to find. Considering it could have just been all wrapped up after this Yabby play, he's Precise. done a lot there. Yeah. Arrogant did a very good job of putting a, a big dent. Ow. Looks like Rops uh, is just going to operate with the Galil. Still packs a potent punch. Yeah, it's the new monster flavor. Certainly got their line up. Ooh, uh, and the counter wall bang. This is intense. Through the smoke, through the boards. Carrigan limping, rain watching from the sidelines. Reaggress from the CTs. They swing through. Wow, Carrigan gets away with one. Rops can't find the rebuttal. Not at all. Yami will double up. It's from Ramp. It's chaotic. It's a brawl. It's a biff. And there's only one man left. Frozen wonders where his team's just gone. Bomb is the only positive of this conversation. So far back was not spotted. Frozen the loose piece. Has a minute to work his magic. Or will he let it go? Being cornered by Stairs Push. Playing to contain as he's just going to lead through into Bro. And Bro will finish it off. 11 rounds for Astralis on their map choice. Coming up next, Nuke. And the third, if required, will be Mirage. And as Alex was saying at the start of the cast, Astralis are obviously the best team in the world. Yeah, HLTV just hasn't caught up yet. What with this being their debut. Yeah, the steel helmet was a warm-up. Yeah, simply a warm-up. You can't stop a team that's having fun. Put that on a poster. 12, looking likely for Astralis. Faze have not been able to... Invest with any rifles. The Tech Nines, they're out mid. They've got control. The Vice addressing red. Stairs still operating on an MP9. Five T smokes up at the same time. All five thrown out. Ready to jive. What have we got? Device. Getting tested on Red Room. And this can be a tough one if they get past his angle. Oh. It will clear. I think Bro's coming to be part of this. Oh, okay. This works. Oh, they've got a flash though. Timing. Oh, turns it. Oh, and Bro loses his rifle empty-handed. Device needs to hit some deeks here. And he only gets the one. This is problematic. That's a valuable frag. Sounds under a lot of pressure. Yeah, not anymore. He's not. Gets one, gets away. Oh, even spots the leg of Brokey. Drops Cheeky bit of him. ankle. But not ready for this angle. Oh, how did he not go down there? Robs has missed his deagle shot. Now Brokey's going to go down. It's still a plant. Is there a round to be had? Rops only a deagle and a Kevlar vest to his name. One between the eyes from Stair. Well handled from Astralis considering how that started. Well, you also need to reflect on the first half. They managed five, so they had the pistol with the conversion. And then it all kind of simmered out, right? There were six consecutive from FaZe. It looked like they were back in business, baby. One before we went to the halftime break from Astralis to renew the confidence. A pistol that Stair had to get three big kills on. And now they've limited phase to just one round thus far on their T campaign on Ancient. Admirable. Impressive. Genuinely. And good contributions. Stown with 19, 14 for Stair. Device with 13. You have to put the clutch to his name. Yabby's gotten himself up to 12. And Bro, the supportive element with eight. Whistles one past the ear of the aggressive CTs there. It was Yavi gets a second chance at life. Yeah, can't do much with that flashbang, but... Slips into cave regardless, putting all of mid responsibility on two devices shoulders. This could be one hell of a convincing scoreline if they can just convert immediately. But FaZe tend to be hard to put away. They have a lot of utility saved for late to FaZe. 
Starting to spring that into action Ooh. and spam down from Stell. Oh, he's so naughty with it. Two of them now, below or at half health. Two of the players with most of the U2. Oh, even more, even more from Stown. Come on in, Rain, the water's warm. Yeah, I wouldn't go anywhere near that. He seems hot. Turns the flash, device will peek through, finds Carrigan, and now you've got an AWP locking down the bomb with support. He's got another, takes down Frozen, Brokey next victim, Stown aggresses, and it's nice from Rain, but it's all for naught unless Robs can come up clutch with 30 seconds and the bomb under CT rule. Astralis for a clean close on this CT side. Just one blemish on their defensive record. No chance, Robs. 15. 15, he's a dead man walking. Astralis take map one. How can that not breed confidence? Both in the players, in the fandom. Astralis rebuilt. Oh, there we go. A lot hey of there. yelling there at the end of that game, I can assure you, but it was all coming from the side of Astralis. They've net this this opening map victory of this series, which is, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it was unexpected, but, well, was it? That's the big question. You can let us know your answer to that by using hashtag IEM over on your favorite social mediums. Now, 13 to 7, speaking for itself, where's FaZe? Where's FaZe? Yeah, I know oh. they just walked by, were they? Yeah, well, they just walked by. They're rather probably having a little bit mm -hmm. of a huddle between maps. The problem is it took them a while to wake up on both these halves, right? When you go down 05, 15, I think that's a, a main story. But I think we should focus more on Astralis and what they did right. We, we didn't really know what to do after this Steel Helmet performance, but now I feel like I it's mean, a little bit more of the same, just this time around, more legitimate. You would say that as the guy who did predict Astralis to win this game. And Actually. to be fair, I'll give you some credit, but in saying that, again, it is only the one map, so we've got to sort of <laughs> right. just, yeah, you know, let's just settle down. I know you haven't fired up just No, no, yet, it's but, okay, but uh, I'm also under control now. I'm not going to celebrate too much. It's just a map. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, Wait like, it's, it. it's, it's two maps of Ancient, right? We haven't seen anything else from them at this event so far, so we've got to keep that in mind as well. But what we did get to see was pretty good. Uh, I mean, obviously, again, Katie and having a fairly solid performance in there uh, with the AWP, but uh, Stown, the one to really touch on, I think. And yeah. uh, if he's going well, then things are going to go well for Astralis over the course of the day, I imagine. Some good looks here from Astralis. Some also some looks that we can take at, right? Yank, uh, wow. That's me. Wow, That's I, almost me, Yanko. I almost did the impossible here. I almost called you Yanko. Say was washed.
There we go. That's Yanko. So tell me about this round. Round 16, yes. We're talking about important rounds being won by Astralis, and that right here is a key moment. We see uh, the financials a bit complicated, an AWP and a rifle, that's it. But Device plays it really well, finds the first kill. And then what I really like about this moment here is how Stone is going to use the Chaos, but at the very right time to strike. Second kill from Device from the Donut, and that's when Stone crosses the smoke. He knows there's a bit of Chaos, double kill, and they win this. That resets the entire half. This is the, the last round that they would lose, would it be uh, for Astralis, but they won it. They put phase in their in their place and also in for, for context as well prior to this round is a very frustrating loss for Astralis winning this put them right back on track and even in that 1v1 we're looking at it, just a slight misstep there from Rops because I mean you even heard Sponge say it he played it pretty damn and well also he was having a very good game like yeah. they going to consideration Rops was having a banger of a game and if you stone to go up against him look I thought I thought it was going to be the recipe for success actually for FaZe I thought it was going to be the quintessential FaZe game you know a bit of a slow start you're going okay where's FaZe and then boom all of a sudden one clutch here one clutch there and we're off to the races but we did get one clutch, we didn't get the second, and then all of a sudden things kind of turned back in the other direction. So you do have to, again, give that credit over to Astralis because it, mm. wasn't, it wasn't as if this was necessarily made easy for them. There was some pieces of the puzzle falling into place for FaZe, so got to give some uh, some props to Astralis off the back of that. Yeah, and I, I really love the attitude they displayed on the CT side. Like, you know, when we talk about, oh, they have little pressure here, they can just embrace the situation, I really feel like they embodied this idea, like a lot of pushes as well. Yeah. The first gun round, we have that double push coming in from A main. Unfortunately, they lose the round to that Carrigan. Great move when he crosses the smoke, but they keep on going with it. They keep on going with an idea every gun round they play. Uh, the last round is also like a pincer move on the B house where y Yabi is basically just full sending it from cave. That That's how you make the best out of these situations here, where you, there's no pressure on you. Just, you know what, seize the moment. Carpet DM, my friends. Exactly what they did. It's carpet DM. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, that's not bad. I, I do... Uh Definitely agree with the sentiment that Astralis constricting on that CT side. Like there were there were some real choke points right there that were really kind of mopped up. Let's take a look at round eleven though uh, to stop the waffling. And maybe they heard about what Astralis was doing, or rather Phase was doing to them in the first half, because that's exactly what Phase did. Uh, they reclaimed control over their defensive half beautifully, and here focus on the control that Phase has all over the map. Astralis had an idea early on to maybe poke around the A side, which is completely left uh, to its own demise by Phase. But we see how deep. The utility is being put down, and it's 120. By the way, that smoke, that's that's a specific set of utility. Uh, you can have a look at it on my YouTube channel. Just kidding, I don't have one. Ow. Pressure, I, just, <laughs> I don't have one. Here we have the pressure from the A side, but what really matters is that by 50 second phase is still very deeply and firmly into the middle. Brokey with the help of Frozen, they punish Astralis, then they put down the util. It's 48 seconds on the clock when that util goes down, and you have the little bit of a pincer move. It's the alligator, as I like to call it, and there you have it. Device is going to try his best to put the clutch together but it doesn't matter. It's 13 seconds left. FaZe have won it. Chess me. I mean, it was, it was actually almost a very winnable round for Device. You there, had like. me until chess me. <laughs> Go on, Dor what did I, do oh, well, I was going to say, I mean, if Device hits that shot there, right there, he actually is on for that clutch, but uh, unfortunately not. So we would have done a different segment. Then, it about wasn't device in the stars. 100%. <sighs> Okay, get him out of here. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> chess mate, bud. Uh, all things considered, for FaZe, you know, this is starting down 0-1 in the series. Like, there's no sugarcoating that uh, from the face side. Wow, you hitting us with the hard truth, aren't uh, you? Yeah, I was trying to, yeah. Yeah, listen, losing, I think the ancient one was a, a bit of a specific scenario in the video because Astralis had already shown us quality and they were definitely in known territory. You toss that over to Nuke now. You're talking about complicated rotations, protocols that are going to have to come up basically on the fly, a map that FaZe picks very, very often. So, no, I, I think if you're FaZe, there's some uh, bright news in the weather forecast. Yeah, I think so. And in fact, we're going to hear some of that FaZe side. Perhaps they give us a little insight as to what happened here on the map one of the series. Just made. So I had an opportunity to ask Neo about the view, if they actually expect there's going to be ancient, the pick of Astralis, and he said that, yeah, when it comes to overall, like, playing against a new team, you can't really predict the maps. It could have been maybe overpass, could have been ancient. Yesterday, Astralis did play ancient, and also Neo said that, like, recently, like, FaZe was kind of struggling, so it kind of made quite a lot of sense. Also, yesterday, Astralis, they did play an ancient, but we barely saw the T side, so it was kind of a mystery. Thank you, Heku. Yeah, from the phase side, Neo speaking his parts, and we do turn our attention to Nuke. Astralis CT sided start, uh, phase pick, phase like the map. 
Yeah, they that, do. that's an understatement, I think. Yeah, they're very, very happy with this map. So, I mean, look, they're looking cool, calm and collected. The banana's going in nice and easy, which is always what you want to see. So, very happy days as far as FaZe is concerned. What better spot in the series could you be than down 0 and 1 as FaZe? I don't think they're the kind of team that gets rustled all that much. I almost think some teams love that idea. They love starting 0-1 for some reason, oh, yeah. unbeknownst to me. I wish I could tell you. Uh, Nuke here, this should be a rally back in the other direction. Yeah, 100%. I think, I think it goes phase uh, everywhere you look at it. I also think that they're an extremely hard team to predict on the map because of the amount of news they've played and how the different looks they can put on. I don't really think you can watch, like, you can watch 10 demos of the phase T side and it, you have a different look almost every single time. That's like, they have a portfolio that's very complicated uh, to see coming. So I, I really think it would be an incredible earthquake if they were to lose Nuke to this device lineup, to this device-led Astralis. I think we're looking at map three and we want all the maps, we want all the rounds. Yeah, and we, we might actually just get that. Uh, turning our attention to Nuke here a little bit, Jordan, what's your take uh, at least for where to place this one now that we have Astralis up one in a series? I mean, here's the opportunity, I guess, for Astralis to do what Liquid was able to do yesterday, right? They come in as a bit of a question mark. We're not too sure what they're going to bring to the table. They're up one and zero in the series. And if they can now win the series, then that starts to answer and maybe silence some of the critics. I don't know if they've necessarily had such a critical reception as maybe what Team Liquid did have over the last month or so. But now uh, we're starting to see Device in his element a little bit as the IGL. And if he's able to get a win here over phase, then that's the first big scalp and that's the first step forward for Astralis in this new era. It'd be quite a reference. I'm just looking forward to seeing the positions on the CT side for Astralis. It's going to tell us more. Again, Stair Bro enabling uh, the heroic duo. We're going to have to see how. Yeah, I almost it, said it, but it, I don't say it. Almost. And almost only counts in what, Maniac? Horseshoes and hand grenades. Thank you for that. We're going to be going to a quick break. We're going to come back. And we've got, uh, well, we've got the second map of this series between Astralis and FaZe. Again, the winner going to where they want to be. The playoffs. Hello to our viewers out there. Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of counter strike. Up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris three flick on oh. oh, and Mickey one by one sets no way. He wants to oh. Oh, my God. Oh, he does it. Smokes, you see a double smokes in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL, this is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
Ni howdy, folks. We're back for map two. FaZe versus Astralis. The first map convincing Astralis. A map to the good. The desk has broken it down and set the scene. And now I'm here with Chatty B to indulge in some more Counter-Strike goodness. Fist bumps exchange device the IGL. Two Danish IGLs clashing in the server today here in IAM Cheng. Can I try again? IEM Chengdu. Nice. I always say second time's the charm. Yeah. I'm just, I know I'm saying Chengdu wrong, but I don't want to say it even more wrong. I think replace the E with a U in your mind. Chengdu. Chengdu. That sounds good to you? Yeah, I think, let's, uh, look, we're always going to give it our best. So the question is, do we Cheng... No, no, I can't. Do we Chengdu? Chengdu we need a third map. Well, got there. if we're looking Chung, at a Chung. real test yeah. for device, it is the chessboard of Nuke. Mm. So as far as... Op uh, Carrying in with the P250. Yeah, and their rotations have been, on Ancient at least, incredibly good. Looking, they bring the fight and are punished for it. Down goes the Julies. Down goes that Kevlar. Down was packing a punch in the previous map. Yeah, good scalp to take early. And now, bro, he's not over-rotated. He's sticking around. They're actually not going to expect a second here. Not going to be ready for this one. Especially a third. His device as well. So the bomb's going down lower, but the fights are all happening up here in lobby. Frozen, trying to take down Stair. He's been cut out of the pack. They all have to come in through ramp. This is a tough retake. Bomb down, probably about 35 or so seconds left. Yeah, they've got one into dark, though. So different elevations now. And yeah, they weren't expecting Brokey. So he eventually converts. He is going to get run down by device here. Running out of bullets. One left. I have to opt for the reload. And with the loss of Carrigan, this gets awkward. Four. Just like that from Stair. Four. That's the CT pistol on Ancient, he had three. Now four on the CT pistol on Nuke. That was after losing the opening kill off the back of the flash. Frozen playing anti-flash. They get down to lower for free, essentially. And they drop that. How has he done that? Well, when I was talking to Device, he definitely has high praise for Stare as an individual. And I think he was happy to see them get an opportunity to put it on display. Yeah, that's another 4v5 conversion. Insane. Oi. Well, the bomb did go down. Uh, that's going to be three from three pistols for Astralis in the series thus far. It does mean FaZe can vie in with a bite. That's going to be a frustrating round to lose. Three Galils, a Deagle. He's got an orb. Oh, he does because of the four kills. So Stair dropped him in AWP. And that's a hookup. No wonder he loves him. He's got his plug. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good have fallen to the scout of Carrigan there. Bullet did connect. And Stan thinks twice about re-peaking that. It's device good for one onto Brokey. Oh, and rain cut down as well. Just a good spam from Stan. Solid. This this force buy is already melted. Frozen's across, but Yabby's already down here. Yeah, and I don't fancy Frozen's chances. Carrigan's going to be dead in the side of the head. Oh. All five staying alive. The vibes are so pristine right now for Astralis. Like, this is always a, a terrifying prospect when your opponent is feeling so switched on, so synergized. Everyone's working together. The comms are rolling, they're flowing. I think this is one of the elements of Counter-Strike that is the hardest to demonstrate. Clearly, when they're in a good mood, it's, we can just show you on the yeah. cams and you can hear. Look, there you go. Yeah. There, there's a prime example. But communication is something that, you know, when you hear from teams in post-game interviews, oh, our comms were flowing, yeah. or the mood in a team, right? Because it's, it's a team game, so it's about the personalities in the squad and the 100%. way that you're functioning, the way that you're communicating, the tone of the voice you use to communicate to your teammates. The, all of these details are not things that we can show you while the game is live, or at all, no, a lot of the time. But, we, but everyone can kind of understand and empathize through their own experiences and, you know, outside of game as well. It's, it's human beings, it's human relationships. You're right, but it tends to go one of the most overlooked things. People just 100%. expect, oh, it's five good players. Why that's can't because, they shoot? That's because they're just kind of tuning into the stream and, and you kind of separate yourself from the humanity of it yes. all. Just like they do with us, Alex. Yeah, well, everyone, anything like that. It's just uh, something you've got on your television. It's not real human beings with mouse and keyboards in a... Entertainers. ...venue. That's Woo. a little bit of a slip up, but... Ooh, a missed shot from device means this 4v4 is only going to last a moment longer. Carrigan's gone down. Rops is trying to punish... Oh, and it catches a perfect timing there. Just a tech nine. <laughs> Looks a bit silly. Well, the bomb is lower, but so, again, is Yabby. I said that in the previous. The rotations have been on point so far. 
There's been, always been someone down there with the bomb. I I think, like, remember how poorly Yabby and Stan were doing in the Blame Earth iteration of this team? Yeah. They must... Well, the bomb went down. That's not bad. Nice. They must be so happy to be able to... Well, oh, I think... Oh, 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 oh. I think that's a contributing factor to the vibes being so high. You know, it's like you've just broken up with your ex and your boys have taken you out to the pub and you, they're kind of reminding you that, like, it's going to be okay. Like, you're going to live your best life now. Everything's going to be fine. This is the part where they say we hated her the whole time. Yeah, everyone kind of, like, voices their their concerns cool. about, you know, things that they didn't say before. Yeah, and they, you knew that they couldn't say it during the relationship because yeah. what if you stayed with her? Then Absolutely. you'd end up, they, they'd ruin the friendship. Yeah. But you you wanted to tell them. Yeah. And people would say you're not a real homie unless you tell but. You Sometimes also have you gotta to let people make their, their own mistakes. Yeah. yeah, you know they've made that choice. You don't want to. You don't want to be kind of too critical when they're all loved up. Yeah, it's a tightrope of life. It is, you know. And right now, life is flowing in one direction, and it's up for Astralis. Life is flowing up, as we say, as we say in the business. How flow can you go? And how slow can phase? Go. They are trying to cross. They have been Molotov to delay. That flash tells Stan he can hold on to this HG for a moment longer. And right. it was too deep. Didn't quite get that one right. So he can half and puff, but he won't blow that wall down. There's a nice demonstration. And and they, yeah, and Second they baited out two HGs. Now we can go. Do they commit, though? Because it is quite a clear indicator that there's four p people previously outside Yard. Even though they're across, and yeah, it's indicated that they're there, Astralis still have to do something about it. And at the moment, they haven't responded. That is interesting. Like calling the bluff, or...? Well, the standard procedure is to take lobby space. But I, maybe they're worried about the return, backup secret. Lobby's in squeak, but no still one's lower. lower. Where's the ramp situation? It's going to be bro. Here he comes. A bit late now, actually. Um, pushing lobby. Your ops is there to catch it. Wow, that's a passive hold. Oh, timing. So fortunate for bro. Oh, he's got himself into a power position. Now device can arrive to support. He's going to draw fire. It's a freebie for bro. Can really? Another Astralis round the dink. Brokey 2 HP. He lives on. Power position for character around this smoke, but he didn't see the walk up. Stairs actually managed to get a bit full, further forward than they might expect. Broke is taking the bomb upper. Yeah, he's heard this. Evan side not completely covered. He's exposed to main. Yeah, Brokey will go down. It's huge from Robs. Wow. Just by parking him on T roof, they've managed to get a bomb down top. Stairs still alive, and so is Device. This could be good from Device. Oh, no one better from Robs. Stunning shooting. He's been fragging good this series. Don't let the result uh, obscure that fact. And now it puts Stare into a 1v2. It's so far, so good from him. 5-0, and zero, and he wants to keep that sheet clean. If he saves, they can buy an extra round. Bro's the only one without the finances, so Stare can drop him a gun and all good in the hood because of the loss bonus. Someone's told him that, and you can see the immediate reaction. Well, he's worked it out for himself. Yeah, interesting round. Uh, FaZe finding some resistance lower, still able to reroute up the vents. So the space that Rops was holding onto on T-Roof and Frozen was on top of main, that was the bailout. They pulled the ripcord. They found a path of, l l well, not least resistance, but less yeah, resistance. With shots like this. And the bomb went down with about eight seconds to spare. So Crispy from Mr. Cool. There was grounds for it to go incredibly wrong with Brokey's plant spot as well with the main player. Yeah. Being there, like it really could have gone wrong. And thankfully, the bomb went down and Rops was hitting some bangers. Well, all up on either side of the server now. All right, they're off the start. Standard procedures in yard. Across his rain. No wall of smoke, so he'll just be establishing red control. It's device with aggression. Rops cut out of the equation, and now rain with a white screen just goes brave and brazenly down secret. Oh, Brokey stalled. Oh, is he peeking around this? He's edging, he's fragging, gets one, will go down afterwards, and that's a wide one from Rain. Great find. Taking down Device on his early rotation. Stair second guessing event descent. Aiding the vent, yeah, that would be crazy to go down knowing a player already has so much space. They have to go in the lobby. That's the bomb. And now he's lost Frozen. Carrigan's gonna get hunted. He has to hit this shot. He saves himself, he saves the round. Well, Carrigan expects more. Understandably so. Stair will fill the void that Yabby left. Rain has been able to. Make his way back up the secret stairs. Okay, two veterans in the uh, mid-round here. Against two of the younger names. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. 
That was someone's that phone, was but someone's that was behind phone. the curtain. Okay, that wasn't was ours. That was, was not no ours. Zeus's. Bro. Down. Nice find from Rain. And now they start to pick up the pace, but Stare is here. And Stare manages the first. That's a good idea as to where Carrigan is. He throws out the molly, immediately trying to pivot to lower. And Stare ahead of this. I have to go vent, so not advisable to go fast. Let Carrigan get into the side as he starts planning to take the space. Ooh, loud descent, stampeding forward to double doors, and Carrigan just closes the door. Stare will open him up again. Swings through, isolates, and decimates. That's a fourth round for Astralis. A cool on one side of the server and having a tantrum on the other. Before, that one person that's trying to open up Twitter to tweet me to say decimate actually means just chopping it into 10. It sounded right in the moment. I understand it doesn't mean what I think it means. It just means to chop into 10. Uh, yeah, so Carrigan's frustrated and understandably so. Stair played that to absolute perfection. Look at the energy from Astralis right now. Are you looking up decimate? Actually, there's two definitions. Yeah, well, it's only Bardolf who's going to be after you, mate. The Don't pedants worry about it. can't even pedant me. Yeah. Kill, destroy, or remove a large portion of. Mate, the English language is a bloody yeah. mystery. But then historically, it meant kill one in every ten. Well, there's ten players From in the, the server. From the mutinous Roman legion. There's ten players in the server. Yeah, one of ten. Yeah. Decimated. <laughs> Sorry for that. Got a little distracted. Uh, I'm back, and so are Astralis. Back to their winning ways, as it were. Hey! As it were. Winning ways, the likes of which we've never seen. I wonder if they'll head to... Oh, I don't even know. No, no, I don't even no. know. Believe it that. Where's that Utah gone? Why have FaZe got no nades? This round has just begun. Two smokes, two flash challenge. Chengdu edition, Chengdu edition. The fact they have a buy, obviously facilitated by that Carrigan plant, so it was always going to be slightly yeah, touch and go. Maybe a Galil and an extra couple of smokes. Wow, well, this is phase. They like the firepower. Okay, I'm going to be very inter interested to see if they can make this work. I mean, they know better than me. So they've gone for looks like a locker smoke as well as a main smoke. So they're going to be trying to get more across to take these fights at range. Oh, Yabby's taking down the squeaky play. Down goes Device, though. That's a misstep. Rain will punish. Frozen. Trying to hold lobby aggression. Yabby walking through the smoke. Not ready for Frozen. A quick adjustment from him. But another push. Relentless aggression from the Danes. He's onto his pistol. Bro owns him. Three on three. Broke, he hears the retreat. He knows that Bro trying to return to it. What? He's ready for it. Threaded. He's gaming. Carrigan's planting. Yeah, he'll try and secure another buy. Save plant from Bro. If he gets another one. Bro! Bro! Nearly. 2v2. Planted for rain. Oh, it's not planted for rain. He just has to nail this shot. He has to nail this shot. And he hasn't. Stare will convert, and it's another Astralis round. Who do you give your brownie points to there? Stare with a double, nine and zero right now. Bro for converting after whiffing initially on the ramp push, yep. but then making good on two kills. Some positives for him. I think something that also needs to be discussed is with, the, with Astralis's change of roster, there's also a lot of unknown. So the, the prep is heavier on one side than the other. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. And we know how prep heavy Counter Strike is at the moment. The desk was also talking about the post major hangover of FaZe. Yeah. Right. So coming into this probably depleted on energy and using their playbook from the major, going up against a new opponent, essentially, with a new in game leader that they have to prepare for. In and Matsu said, you know, he feels that honeymoon is, is maybe a little bit of an overused term, fair enough. But a team who is uh fresh faced and yeah. bushy tailed. Well, absolutely. And incredibly motivated, as we discussed, you know that Gotivated with devices, the in-game leader. Yeah, I definitely trust his calls. That's the thing. You have players around you that all would idolize you. Yeah. Maybe not as a leader, sure, but definitely your word. And you're an orper. You're used to calling your own shots, right? You're just doing it for the rest of the squad. Well, that's the thing as well, because Yabby and Stown know how to play around the orping in-game leader. There's an opener for Carrigan. Stown down. Okay, Faze. Let's see if these T rounds can start racking up now, because you have. Already pushed up ramp. Device silently posts onto the angle. And it's, oh, wow. Bro came up from ramp to clear it. You should play for his life now. Oh, he's getting run down. 
He's managed to get away. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, but he has some support from the vent player. Rain. He's been sold out. Control. Yeah, he has been. Nabby. Oh my god, there's flanks on flanks. This is tough. Nice work from Bro. He'll take one down. Rain will trade. Now Yabby should activate. Yabby, oof, just about gets the first, but I think it's a tall order for the rest. Back to top. Yeah, but he's already ahead of that. Oh, he's, he's heard that. Nice work. I spoke too soon. Way. Oh, 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 Yabby. He's cooking up trouble. The silent descent ahead of the play. Brokey planning open to the doors if he gets this right. It's a one on one. Oh, <laughs> that's sick from Yabby. Carrigan's going to be so tilted if he gets this. Oh, gosh, in 15 seconds. What do you do? You've got a plant, but you're planting open for single. And Yabby, this is insanity. What a clutch from Yabby. A thinking man's clutch fakes out the Carrigan. And it's a sick for Astralis. No wonder there's all smiles. That's a tilter. Yabby is everywhere. Oh, I can't imagine what broke he's, you know, that uh, he's, he's lower? Question mark? Question mark? So he first... So he kills Rain, fakes it out with the flash, right? They start rotating to the top. He's noisy coming up the ladder. He's able to get out of the vent, start the exchange. Oh. Carrigan's scared, has to give up the space. Back down the vent <laughs> silently. Brokey thinks he's top, rotates in, starts to plant. Doors swing open, body goes down, bomb drop. Carrigan scoops that up, safe plant, right into the rotation of Yabby. Every single one of those, he was just ahead of the play. Ahead of the play, and then finally, ahead of the play. And FaZe are going to go again. Get trucked. They're going to go again. They know that the buy for Astralis is constantly just a little bit light on. It's never looking perfect. Because when you look at this stretch of rounds, the last three, at most Astralis have had two players survive. One survive, two survive, one survive, right? So it is yeah. really light yeah. on. So they're going to keep buying. This is not the full investment, however. They are going to get a Galil in the hands of Carrigan to pistol upgrades for the rest, so there's still a threat to deal with. Oh, great nade from Device. So if you're Astralis in this round, you want to keep as many alive as you can. If you phase, get the bomb down again and take away as many rifles as you can. Device is already down here. Oh, he's clean with it. Nice with it. Can't control the spray into the second. Frozen, the important frag. Bro's coming down, MP9. Can't. Here we go. Do they get it down? We can only swing on them maybe as they throw that util. Doesn't go for it. Carrigan might step a little toe out of line. Yep, beautiful from Bro. Found by Frozen. Still grounds for disruption. That nade could find Frozen. Bang. Square on his jaw and Yabby puts a bullet into Brokey. Seven and one. I think both teams are going to be happy with how that round unfolded. Phase obviously only half buying. Now with the planet, it's going to be a very beautiful looking purchase. But the gap is what Astralis are happy with. And they kept three alive. So there are drops available for Bro and Device. Bro might not have to function with a bloody MP9 for once. One thing I wanted to bring up is I don't know if we've seen any top hits. It's all been kind of yard centric and ramp. There has not been anything kind of remote. I think I saw Rops try and get out squeaky once and it was immediately shut down yeah it was i think yabby was ready for that and then the, yeah the late pivot through vents to top was it the might only be, other time it might have to be later if they don't win this one because you'd still want to try and function like a traditional round you still yeah. want to do the smoke walls and force the rotation but again i, I oh there we, we go. go jinx that was short-lived yeah. and it looks like they are starting to set up for something more top centric Bro to clear yard and well he's done exactly that. Safe to clear. I used to know that radio command off by heart. <laughs> or not, or not, Rain. Just by lingering towards the barrels has gotten himself a man advantage for phase. This is a compulsory round if they want to remain competitive. And it's gonna be stound to claw it back. You wanna now just start heading in towards A, but you're not sure exactly what device has gotten off to. Stout worrying about ramp, stare to tuck in towards top and has to win this fight. Carrigan has breached a way in. Oh, blind is a bad, beautiful flash. Carrigan set for success, phase for their second T round. And device should probably just look to save. You can start to see themselves, maybe just maybe notching five rounds in this first half on their map choice phase. It all starts with this one. Uh, so the smoke, just catching a glimpse there of Yabby. 
But the in-game leader stepping up. Two for Carrigan, leading the way in the frag charts for his team alongside of Rops. And the two of them in combination have done enough. Device over towards the back box at ramp. Another valuable save. Like Ooh. in both of the rounds phase of one, Astralis have managed to kind of still be generate a full buy. We're going to have a technical timeout. Yabby's just uh, vacated the server for a moment. Ah, okay. So bear with us. Yeah, I think it's something that's interesting to be explored and, and, and why I'm very happy that the majors are being shifted to the last event of the season. Mm. Because right now we find ourselves in an event where there's exciting storylines. Liquid, you know, are they going to be able to redeem themselves after a miserable start to the year? That same conversation for Astralis, right? Both teams investing in these new rosters, spending a lot of money, and then big names, ones that you'd expect to be at the major, weren't. Australia, with FlyQuest, aka Greyhound previously, had this team constantly taking up that space, but never really finding any damage, and now essentially being put on notice uh, by losing their org, and then they're finding a new one, and with Dexter, it's about time they put on some good Counter-Strike, right? Yeah. So it's a different scales. The first two are ones that we really need to be having a conversation about in World Counter-Strike. The other is great regionally, and we're at a regional event. Yeah. So that's kind of nice from, from that angle. But what you were going to say is that it's... You put know, us in a position because of where this is after the major where certain teams are coming in a hangover exactly right so for phase you were just in a major grand final a grand final where you were favored to win over an rv right you had already beaten your biggest opponent of spirit within that quarter final that was the tussle that was the revenge that you were looking for from katowice where you got your asses handed to you and then you go into a final against navi who were playing some good team-based counter-strike but their star rifler with a 0.88 rating right and they're still able to maul you in the final with bit showing why he was brought in the team just to play inferno some great calling from Alexi, but th that team's not here. So FaZe come in, you go, well, they're the grand finalists of the major. They should be one of the favorites. No Vitality, no Na'Vi, no yep. Spirit. And yeah. FaZe are here and they go, well, we had one day of practice. We're still emotionally distraught from a major loss. Carrigan could have three in the bloody cabinet if it wasn't for Cloud9 and now Na'Vi. These are echoing and rattling around your head. You keep making it to the grand finals, but you're not winning all of them. And now you're sitting here going up against Astralis, who only can really go up from and, where they found themselves. And you compound all of that with this black box of not knowing what their setups are, not knowing anything about this new look Astralis. You know, before it was really quite simple. You kind of, you were like, oh, it's a blame F team. So you kind of knew what to expect. Now it's not, it's something else. And you've got a, a whole new kettle of fish to contend with. There is definitely an advantage there. And I, I like that you raised that point. This is a team that have put in two boot camps over the major period. Right. right, so yeah, they really wanted the to, to step. They really wanted to step into this event or their next event, regardless of whatever that was going to be, on the right foot. And so far, so good. Uh, they've won Ancient twice. I still helmet yesterday. I don't even think we should talk about that result. It's such a like that is literally them getting warm to the environment. But a win on Ancient over Phase, you can get excited about that. But you also need to make sure you weigh and measure it for what it is in the context overall. Now, in this tournament, awesome. Yes. Sick. Yeah. If I'm an Astralis fan, I'm getting excited for them in Chengdu and maybe even the future. A win here over FaZe on Nuke in a 2-0 fashion, that's great. They're locked into the playoffs. Mission accomplished. And then anything is going to be possible for the remainder of this event because you look at the teams that we would then have in the four, four of the top six teams we're going to have. Liquid, Potentially Astralis, Maus, another opportunity on the stage. This is going to be a smaller stage, so maybe we get to see a better format of them. And they need to get the reps in as a younger team. And VP. Yeah, I mean, I had VP winning the whole event in my uh, outlandish prediction. Oh, you you had to a... Astralis now, no, well, the best had, team in the world. You had Astralis. Yep. But it's going to be cool to see VP beating the best team in the world in the finals. Ah, okay. I don't know if that's possible, though, because they meet in this... No, no, it, Actually, is, possible it is possible because they'll be on the other side of the, side of the bracket. bracket. One will be Jinx. in the semi, one will be in the quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's the storyline. That's the narrative. Best team in the world taken down by VP. But what about my... I have a story. Go on. Okay. Oh. You're standing up for this one, folks. Just so strap in. Danish Counter-Strike. Oh, okay. Heroic had taken the mantle over Astralis, the previous kings. Yeah. Seeds of doubt were sown in the Astralis camp. Knives were drawn. Katie and stabbed in the back. Blood over the heroic altar of best Danish team. Astralis wanting to return to the tippy top of that throne. Cadian on a plane to America, a new home, a new land, a new chance to continue that legacy. His soldiers strong, brave, seasoned not on the same page, not starting the year on the right foot, 
They needed time. They needed to come together. Astralis. They have their pieces. They spent their money. But money is not everything. The team had no joy. No love. They needed to remove the thorn in their side. The boulder pushed away to allow for a new dawn. Bro. The young gun. The son of Danish Counter-Strike steps afoot with the leader that always was device to return Astralis to the tippy top. One side of the bracket, Cadian looking for revenge against Down and Yabby. The knife still lodged in their back. Astralis looking to return to the top of the throne. The grand final of IEM Chengdu 2024 seems the meat for destiny to settle the score. <laughs> you, I mean, take a bow, bro. Take a bloody bow. You got me amped. I'm hyped. I, it's, it's written. And so it is written. Poetry, bro. All off the dome. Yeah. All off the dome. It's like sl Counter-Strike slam poetry. Yeah, yeah. Bloody talented geezer, you. It's the only thing I really know. Yeah, well, you've, understandably, you've put, you've got, you put your life and soul into this one and it's, uh, it's paying dividend. Dig you a hole or I can sing you a song. Well, right now, you're singing. And so are we. We're actually in a bit of a hole, actually. Here is I was trying to fill. No, that, well, you did yeah, a great job. I was trying to fill. Thank you for that. Because uh, it looks like Yabby is loading up the game. Perfect. Bring back Novid. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened to Novid? What happened to Novid, man? That's a tweet. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're right. I never I never tweet. That's a good tweet. I'm having that one. I'll retweet it. Could you? Thank yeah, you. I'll amplify I need to, the signal. I need to, yeah. I need to get back on the Twitter sphere. But you know, there's there's other cool parts that could happen in this story as well. Right? We could get Heroic versus Astralis. We could, like, right now we've got Carrigan versus Device. So, that you know, there's more to the Danish royalty. The headphones are on. Did you tweet it? I did. Oh, nice. I went for bring back Novid. Simple. To the point. Yeah. People love it. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's almost as... Uh, serious of a campaign is bring back right hand or right hand zero <laughs> bring back right hand yeah uh, yeah okay the left hand model but with the command is right hand yeah I was a big left hand uh, model user but I've, I've gotten over it you know no one's worried about Bob anymore as well uh, Bob's dead we got over Bob R.I.P. Bob we've got into a tactical folks so let me put my casting hat back on Are you keeping that? Yeah. You don't see it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> lucky, lucky you don't see it. No, it's actually a really good job you don't. Uh, let's get this one started. So, then, uh, to get everybody back Could on you? the page, yeah, go. do your job. Picked up the round. Carrigan getting those two kills in towards the top site. Uh, device saved the silenced M4. Then Yabby said, I'm out. And uh, we just had a lengthy. What did he say? I'm out. Okay, yeah. At a lengthy tech. Uh, so, we will just be holding on to the silenced M4 or device. There'll be light investments around that. And, uh, well, we'll likely see a gun round to follow up. Now, what can device get done? Crosses to red pole. Polus, of course. Do you think we... Let's, can we let Rush tell the story of this round? Yeah, no, I think... Rush and Jay. Visual storytelling yep. between the two of you. Yep. And we'll raid it after. Yeah. All right. Didn't like that. Would have liked the context cam on the I thought, smokes. Where's J Raz? Like yeah, he's involved sure. in this, isn't he? Rush is kind of stealing everything. Nice catch, Rush. They might win this. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit awkward. We haven't been casting this whole thing. Yeah, we should have really been casting that. But that's okay. That was an eco win, wasn't it? It was. Oh, damn it. And there was two Zeus kills. Yeah, but I'll be, tell you what. Everyone that was watching understood what was happening. Yeah, thanks to our incredible such observing. Such good team. observing. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. The fact that you got all of that towards the end there, Rush, I think you can give yourself a firm pat on the back. And there's some extra context for you. It didn't even need us, did it? 
No, but I mean, it would have probably been slightly more palatable and exciting. But anyone that w plays Counter-Strike or watches Counter-Strike can appreciate that for what it was. Yeah. We're not necessary. Well, hold up wait, a second. Wait, wait a second. Obviously, we're, ne we're, we're necessary. Please. All right. It's a good sign, they we're not we're not getting sent home just yet. <laughs> oh, that was a nice context cam, you see that? Jay Rizzle. What's that smoke achieve? Gonna oh, it's gonna he's go ahead. Yeah, he's gonna give it a go. He's found Frozen, isolating the top main player. It's rain onto device, however. And now Stout is scary, but Carrigan sharp. Nails an important shot for the V3. Ooh, Bro's like already out here. So he abandoned ramp? This is important, though, because yeah. like, they might want to try and find their way around towards heaven knowing device is dead. So that AWP in the dirt, but oh, the barrel could be spotted on main. Yabby needs to be quite careful how he pivots. He doesn't have to take next contact. He's fine as he is, no? Well, that's the thing. He would see them cross to Bro's line of sight first, I'd assume. Yeah, so you're actually fine as a setup. You've got Stair holding your back. <gasps> Bro! Gets it, Yabby. gets it away. Now Yabby can catch him walking. Oh, the setup is so good. Ahead of the play again are Astralis, the world's best team. FaZe Clan, of course. Don't top up. Oh, so oh. oh. <laughs> well handled. Well reacted to by Brokey and Robs. They'll pull a third out of the hat. A four feels compulsory. Likely considering, if you take a look, the buy taking shape. MP9s, Deagles, not the whole hog from Astralis. Terrorists win. Felt like it definitely could have been Astralis's round. That even had the opportunity for a 10 to 2 half. Now, phase four is more than workable. Astralis have had some good moments. This is where Device found himself with the saved M4. And this is the only invested M4. Util is going to be one of the bigger issues for the Danes. Nade a bit deep. Oh, Yabby, is he going to find Robs? They're kissing. No, he's dipping. Wait, didn't he see something? Well, didn't we see something on Robs' screen? Like a leg? Yeah, Robs. It seems unaware. He's actually going to dip back into Squeak. They still haven't managed to find a catch, and Carrigan's, Carrigan's ratted the smoke. Oh, he's found a huge gap. Step, jump scare. Carrigan has found an oh. opening kill, and he's actually worming his way towards Unbreakable. Device has caught a whiff. He's going to be Stown to deal with it. He's parving. Staying out of the line of sight of Device. Yeah, and Stown. Oh, he's going to hear that. Yeah. Yoink. Yo, yo, yo. Stown. Stown's got Carrigan dead to rights, I think. And with Device on to rain. This round, this compulsory round is slipping through their fingers. Is Stout going through? He's bringing the fight behind the smoke, finding the angle. Rob should be pre-aiming, no bullets! But it's still Yabby on the ladder. Good for another. Device onto Brokey. I can't quite believe it. Astralis with four alive. Frozen's alone. He's in trouble. The round is gone. On the ladder, no less. Spray to rub salt into the wound. Leave him alone. They're already dead. Phase three, Astralis nine. What a hell of a performance here from Astralis. New team smell. Hey Future Pros, taking outside with no smokes can be daunting. So let's look at the bent elbow smoke wall, which you can achieve for one spot. To throw the smoke wall, line up with this floor marking. Beg your teammates to drop a couple of smokes at your feet. Then aim in the middle of this lamp and jump through your smoke. For the next, use the same lineup and W jump through the smoke. You can do this without a bind, but I highly recommend making a W jump throw bind. There is plenty of information on this out there. 
for the less smoke aim below the lamp about halfway from it and the wire below. Then W jump throw also. Just like that you will have a wall that will cover off main along with the warehouse. Don't cross the secret wide as heaven will still be able to spot you but for taking space these smokes are fantastic. Cloud9 awaits in the loser bracket for the loser of this match right here, right now. FaZe Clan taking on Astralis, a best of three for the playoffs. The Danes, one map to the good and a bloody good first half on the CT side of Nuke. Nine to three is the score. We flip sides and I think Astralis are going to do a top rush. A HE from Stair, a smoke to main from Yabby and a flash from Device to entry on in. Okay. Well, I think you might be onto something, Chatty B. Nade on the door, that's for sure. And out to top, into Brokey. He gets two, but it's down and stare. Making it potent. It's a 1v1 at 1 minute 37. It's a 1v1 device down the vent with the bomb. Let's see how Rops can handle this one. The sound cue of the door will facilitate Rops' quick descent loudly. Stampeding through the vents. Device to close the door. Reposition for the fight. Tucking in has cover. Robs and Device, how do you play this one? Oh, cool. good flash. Turned by Device, he doesn't progress or push, so he's still trapped behind the door here. Dick just jiggling out, trying to catch that first bullet accuracy. Not hitting his shots, his Device, three, two, goes for a cheeky reload right under Robs' face and hits it. Astralis will take the pistol and FaZe are in jeopardy now as Astralis look to sail into the playoffs. Beautiful scenes from Device, just dancing with him. I can't believe he even had time for that reload yeah, man, right that's... in front of his face. Good shots from Stown on the way in. Brokey looked like he had sold them out with the dual Berettas. That's a vice, keeping it cool. And grabbing the double digits. FaZe, this is the same situation they found themselves in the major grand final on Inferno where they had a miserable first half and then they just had to force by on the CT side. Horrible. Yeah, no fun. No fun at Whoa. all. Not to be. 5-7's <laughs> actually going to draw first blood. Carrigan. Ace him with the 20 bullets yeah, down I'm the vent. And he's fragging. Down, actually, they've gone down secret, so Carrigan, he's going to have a lot on his plate. He's pulled another out of the hat. He's top fragging. Yeah, which usually I like to think is a sign that FaZe are going to be on their A game. In the sense that Carrigan's calls will be. But you do need to see the individuals who are supposed to be packing a punch, punching. Missed the last two on that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. That's rhythm rhythmically satisfying, but it makes sense. Three Galils versus this higgledy piggledy buy. This is a clear for step. It's an important one. Single door is fine, and Device has just been able to get a smoke. So they can do this standard play that we see coming out, right? Single door comes open, smoke lands. It creates an avenue of assault. One player can path underneath it and head up towards ramp. The others can make it back sight. It's like you played this game before. Yeah. 
Calm down. They're in strong positions. And they've got the weapons for the job. They certainly oh, do. Device has just pivoted back into what could be his demise. If he tucks in towards the Tetris box... He gets it. Now it gets awkward for FaZe. They have to win this round. They put all their pennies into this, and it's falling apart. Frozen from ramp is empty-handed, and they have to get out. They're already running away. They concede an 11th. Just like that. Despite all of that hard work from Carrigan. They'll leave with two weapons, but it's a Galil, it's an MP9, and it's an 11th for Astralis. It's like the firepower of FaZe is letting Carrigan down today. For oh. real. So... The fact that they just bowed them, so it was a clutch on the pistol, and then that was also a two-man disadvantage that they were able to win, and it, this is how it started. Carrigan doing all the work. Yeah. Speaking to Carrigan as well ahead of this uh, tournament, one of the insights that he was making clear is that he's actually expecting more from his uh, from his stars. He should do. He's got some of the heaviest hitters in the game. Yeah, and they're not quite hitting. They're not quite connecting. Well... Behind the Galil and the MP9, Carrigan's brought into a scout. I guess he bought himself that honor with the, the SMG kill. And Oi! <laughs> he's gaming. Yeah, he's hitting. Oh, spotted the red boost as well. He might even do some more damage. Puts device on notice. Carrigan doing everything he can for the boys. Yabby. Found Brokey and cleared out lobby. This, despite Carrigan's hard work, it's kind of a nice summary of where we're at right now with FaZe. And FaZe didn't all in force, so they yeah. will be able to buy next round, sure. But still, number advantages, at least for a second. You blink and you miss it. It feels like it's already fallen apart. It's all on Robs. We need to see more from him. It's a smoke available to block as well. So if he gets one and can get the smoke out of his hands, might be able to corral them elsewhere. Yabby looking for an avenue. Now, they can always return from secret, but knowing that Carrigan's scout is in play, that's always a little bit more scary. So he's aware of that possibility as well. So as Yabby waltzes on in, literally, very cautious. Understandably so against the lighter weapons. Good timing from Frozen. Manages to move Yabby from the picture, and it's a well timed push from Bro and Device that puts it all onto Rob's. Yeah, God, Device broke the vent. And it's just staring at him. What's Rob supposed to do? Device will take it. It's 12 to 3, folks. This is not a competitive affair. This is Astralis just waltzing all over our major grand finalists. Oh, I remember we had that conversation on the desk yesterday where Yanko was talking about last time I was in China and he was the coach of FaZe Clan and how they got owned in that semi final. Yeah. A lifetime ago. But you know, you, you, you spoke to. Uh, Spoke to Device about leadership and his choices, and he said, just wait and see. Judge us by our performance. Judge us, judge us by our results. And so far, the results here in Chengdu, most definitely convincing. Well, FaZe only have two smokes left, and we get a minute 35 on the clock. This looks like a well-rounded roster. Cooking, motivated, synergy, high. Brokey being escorted into an aggress on lobby. Rops alongside. Bro's tasked with dealing with this. He's got the angle for the AWP, though. Like, he's actually holding the perfect angle. Now falls further away. As Util starts to land outside, will this spur Brokey forward? Good restraint right now from the Danes. And this is where Bro is about to be tested. Brokey misses his shot. Frozen and Carrigan ready from this top site. Molly's going to force Carrigan off. Or no, yeah, Frozen, excuse me. It's the one to go down. They may overlook Carrigan and they will. Needs a multi. It's Carrigan again with huge impact combined with the cherry on top of Rain. They survive the night. More required. A whole lot more. They can drop. It's all good. So FaZe will be able to make sure everybody has a rifle. But talking of rifles, what can Astralis get for their money? Device, actually. 17 kills. Brings out his weapon of choice. So still a threatening round for Astralis to finish this dominantly. They lose this. The conversation of a phase comeback can begin. But if Device gets an odd challenge, right? if uh, Rain is not expecting this, 
Oh! <laughs> oh! The stagnates onto Karakin. He's just being outplayed, outgamed. Well, he's the one who's putting out the most punch, Alex. 14 yeah, kills from the in game leader. Now he has to sit back the and watch. Star player. So, boys, can you stand up? I'll take one of your PCs. Good grief. Just feels like they can't step a foot wrong. Every move they make is rewarded. You know how many times you throw that nade and no one's home? Never mind. It's first time. They can do a smoke wall. They can even do it impromptu. Yeah. Frozen could get a good timing on this. Oh, oh, oh. He's going to have to get out of there now. He had the jump on them, and he's the one walking away with 11 points of health. Yeah, that's gone horribly wrong. Well, they backed off from Yard. I think the dink onto Frozen they thought would send him sailing, and it has. He's gone all the way back towards ramp. So they're really operating under the assumption that lower is potentially lost. In the meantime, they've got full lobby. Everyone in lobby. God, it's a lot of work for Brokey here. Out squeaky, looking at aim map. Just take some jewels, flash the CT vent and go. Here they come. Clean with it. Oh, yummy. He's sending them straight to the Shadow Realm. An Astralis win imminent. Frozen the dink. It's still ringing in his ears. 11 HP. And stands ready. It's 13, baby. Astralis locked in. Absolutely dominant on map two. The playoffs secured. And a convincing opening arrival. The first is just a taste. But this one, this is a result against FaZe. This is one they can take home. Fans can digest. And so can the Org, feeling like they're taking steps in the right direction now. This is exactly what you're looking for when you make a change like this. So it puts confidence in the decisions that were made. The investment in Stown and Yabby, they looked good today. Both individuals putting their individual form on show, but a team that looked cohesive. It was a well put together game. Had some good ideas. It wasn't just, uh, you know, running in. It was actually proper Counter-Strike. Counter that's strike. exactly what you can expect to see from the Danes. On the other side, the post-major hangover, Carrigan. Not going to be happy with that one at all, but still get a chance to fight another day. They drop down towards the lower bracket. They will take on Cloud9. Brokey looking shell-shocked. Exasperated. I mean, especially when you go from feeling so helpless very recently, and now you come in, you know, you're not, you're not feeling 100%. You can't really put out 100% of what you know you're capable of. And Astralis, they are there kicking ass, taking names, and taking it convincingly as well. This is definitely going to be a, an interesting one to keep tabs on. How good can Astralis look? How long can they hold on to this here in Chengdu? Will it continue this way? Let's find out how they're feeling with an interview. And we're going to be getting that. I can assure you very much, Machine, we are all amped to talk to Device. I can, I can tell you that much at the very minimum. But yeah, a lot of question marks. One of those being, will this be an undefeated IGL streak for the ages, Maniac? And it does continue. It does continue undefeated. Indeed, Astralis march onto the playoffs, and we have one of the, if not the hero, joining us right now. The man of the hour, I think they're calling him. Or Deve. Can we call you Deve? Or yeah, that... that's fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Hey, man, congratulations. Looks like Astralis made it to the playoffs. Thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, sure looks like it, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yesterday was a little bit more of a, a warm up game, but today, yeah, we faced the best team in the world. Or. Maybe it's now, I don't know. But yeah, we're really happy with the performance and really lived up to a lot of the things we wanted to do when we came here. Um, we had a lot of practice and we have a lot of new stuff. So I think it's hard for some of the teams to play the maps against us because they don't know our style yet. So I think we managed to pull that off and use that in our favor. Do you know your style yet? I think so. I think <laughs> I just, so. It begs the question. It might change, right? But yeah, I think yeah. I think so. Yeah. Hey, listen. Obviously, your transition to an IGL is is a hot topic for everybody, and this is the perfect beginning. You could not dream of anything better. Okay. But I just wanted to ask you: Was this idea ever in your mind in the past? For how long have you been considering this idea? Was it a reaction to the last few months? Because it it shocked us a little bit, and now we have the occasion to hear from you straight. I mean, yeah, I thought about it for sure. I think. The idea maybe started when PlayMeth became the in-game leader. And yeah, I thought that maybe it would be something for me as well. I think throughout the years I've helped all my in-game leaders a lot and the coaches with the prep and stuff. So it's quite natural. I think that with PlayMeth, as I also have said a little bit, I think that I found out what my style kind of wasn't. So I started thinking a little bit about how I wanted to play CS. So yeah, I think it started mostly there, but, but yeah. Um, 
I think, as I said, I've said it as a lot of times, I think I called a lot of CT sites throughout my career, maybe all CT sites on all maps, but T site is different and it's fun. And you say you've been used to be a voice in your team. And I'm sure you have helped a lot of yeah. your leaders over the years. Now, does that help you tell your teammates what you need for you? Because it's a brand new experience. I'm sure you need to tell them how much they need to contribute, how they need to help you out. Is that something that you, you can already tell them? Yeah, for sure. I think it's also very map dependent. Um, but the two guys that played in Heroic, um, they, they are really good at playing like mid rounds and helping mid rounds. I think that from there, I, I just want a lot of like early games and uh, how do you say it? like he, his opinion on how to control his side of the map and yeah i think yeah they're really good at it so it's also a bit easy and as i said we had a lot of practice so a lot of time to discuss and um, talk about expectations and stuff so yeah i think that we have a really good rhythm and obviously sometimes it it shifts and the hardest part is calling when you don't have the momentum mm -hmm. i think it's quite easy when you have the momentum Today playing, was good then, huh? Yeah, it was a pretty yeah, yeah. good day. I think that, yeah, when FaZe got five in a row, it's always hard to like, because, yeah, it's hard because you don't know what the next move is going to be. So you have to create some context and how what you want to call. And yeah, I think that I could have done a little bit better in, in that half, but yeah, that's how it is. I mean, we should talk about expectations going forward as well for you guys. Obviously, things have looked fantastic so far, but how is it actually feeling in the server for you and for the team? Are you feeling like everything is actually going to plan? It doesn't really seem like, at least from the outside, that there has been any difficulties so far. And I imagine you will be running into some at some point throughout this event. So you're feeling good at the moment, but what are we thinking going forward? I mean, now we have a less pressured game, I think, for the quarter semi game. But, but yeah, for sure. I, we're taking it as a learning experience as well. We want to see how far we can push it with without having any officials together. But for sure, we also know that we can do, like achieve really good things and, and go as far as the limit. As the limit. Yeah, as, yep. as you say in English, yeah. So I, I don't think too much about it. One game at a time. Now we have VP and really excited to face them. Also, for me, it's totally new. Every time I play a new in-game leader and try to understand their way of thinking and stuff like that. So. It was the first time with Kerrigan today as well, and yeah, it's always going to be like learning here in the beginning for me, trying to manipulate the map and understand how they want to play the map, and yeah. So that's my task, and it's going to be fun versus VP, yeah. And so far, so good here, Working. at least. You know, like right now, undefeated IGL, and that's, you know, you can't really yeah. go against that grain. Hey, look, we're going to take a look real quick at our Air Force AIM High player yeah. of the match. It's your new teammate, Stan. Tell us a little about him. Oh, he's crazy. I mean, like, <laughs> um, the nuke, nuke was insane some of the kills he was getting some of the timings he was getting i think that when he kind of like gets into the groove where he can actually play fluid and on his intuition i think he's he's really really good and yeah you just saw that in throughout the entire map today and and also a lot of good entries and and stuff like that so yeah i think he can do everything help with the calling and play pistols and and yeah so so a really great game for him but for me the entire team stood out i think there were so many different situations where Bro got some really important kills on the nuke, CT side anchoring the ramp and same with Javi and, and Stair with the clutches on nuke as well. So I think we had it going for us today as well. Yeah, definitely a team effort. You mentioned the, the heroic duo joining you guys. One of the criticism from the outside was that they didn't really deliver on the promises that we had in the past. But I have a feeling and I would like your opinion on it. I have a feeling that with Bro now, it enables them a whole lot to be in this comfortable position. Is that something that you guys have talked about or do you even agree on it? For and sure. did you, have you talked about it? For sure, I mean like bringing in a hard anchor like Bro who is like not dependent on too much uh, resources. Uh, it's it's easier for them to play the natural roles that they've played for a long time, but also having an anchor like they had in Shush who could just play his bomb side and they can play around in the map and do the moves. And yeah, I think it helped them a lot. And also just moving in into them like to the situations and roles they had before is just makes sense and yeah it, it's helped a lot and i think that they are just like really really good i tell them every time i think my entire team is, is really good and we just have to to show the people what we are capable of nice. so you know on the, on the more human side let me ask you know you've come in here now as an igl yeah really quickly biggest challenge you got so far oh, so far i think is not working too much. I think there's always something you can do in this role. And yeah, I think that that's my hardest mission, maybe to try to balance things also with the stress and stuff I've like suffered from a little bit before. So that for me, the hardest task is to try to not do too much and yeah, and also let it be a process and not let like want everything to happen instantly.
Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, which is not what we have right now. Gentlemen, thank you very much, especially you down on the end. We're going to go to a quick break. We're going to come back. Elimination on the damn card. So don't go anywhere. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris, three flick, oh, the biggie one by one set, no way. He wants to... Oh, my God! Oh, my God. does it? All right, I'm here with Shush of Heroic Fame. What comes to mind first with A on Anubis? Um, I mean, there's not really that many aggressive things to do, but I think if you have like a good spawn, like the best spawn, then you could do an aggressive peek where you like go here and you throw a flash up here. So it bounces, so you will jump through it out here. So it blinds like everything. The, the problem with Anubis uh, as CT is that if you don't have the best one, it's pretty much free to get here as a T. So they can always be close. Well, they usually like throw, throw the mollies to take control here. So you kind of have to stop them sometimes. But it also depends on a lot of things. Mm. Because you can get this smoke from uh, one of the B players. So if you have this smoke, you can kind of just play a reactionary with, with your uh, grenades. So you're just holding here or listening. So if you hear something outside, uh, you hear this molly, for example, they, they throw something in here. Then you can wait a few seconds, and then you throw something back. If it's more defensive, I would either say you can play behind side, uh, play here for like the longer uh, duels, but it also if, it depends if you have a teammate mm. around mid that can help you with some kind of flashes, like in front, if you get the fight. But if you want like even more defensive, then these duels are really good as well, where around here. And if they get too close, a smoke like this or just a random smoke you can play around is pretty good as well. When you're pushing A, there's so many places that you have to worry about. You gotta yeah. worry about T-stairs, you gotta worry if they're in the water, you gotta worry if they're up towards rugs. So is this, when you're going aggressive, is it just like a gamble? You're like, shit, I, I have to hope that they're not in all these positions? I mean, it is kind of a gamble. I mean, it, it depends on the communication from our teammates. If we hear, for example, there's two here, and it's around one minute and you hear them close here and we don't have any info in mid and we can't, can't push B as well, then you kind of have to take a gamble if you don't have time to rotate. Then I think it is fine to push out here, but they can be hiding behind here, they can hide behind here, 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 behind here as well. <laughs> but it is, if it's late in the round, there's a low chance it will be here and here at least. If yeah. you were gonna throw like some early block utility what do you think is the strongest to throw just to make sure that they're not going to take A in the first 15, 20 seconds of the round? I think uh, a good molly uh, that I usually throw. If I would. Uh, just had to make sure. C. Yeah. It's like a molly outside that kind of blocks so they can't take it fast. Yeah. And then uh, you still have your molly outside and then you can play close. You can even block here as well, like right after the molly. Sure. Now is when things start to get quite spicy. And by that, I don't mean the noodles down at catering right now. I'm talking about the elimination matchup that we have on hand. We're looking at Furia v Heroic. And one of these teams is not going any further here in China. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Intel Extreme Masters. That's hashtag IEM for short. Um, and of course, I'm here with Maniac and Elfish Guide. Walk you into what is going to be spicy. 
Yeah, it's a harsh matchup. Quite honestly, to consider Fury and Heroic are fighting for survival here in Chengdu, uh, and either teams making such an early exit would have to face severe criticism. Of course, for Fury, it's warranted for about eight months, whereas for Heroic, it's about uh, a coming back to reality, I would say, after a fairy tale in Katowice. Yeah, look, I think both teams probably a little bit disappointed even to be here in this conversation this evening because, again, Heroic, they would have felt they should have probably got that win against Liquid given the storylines going into that one and then who knows what happens in the upper bracket obviously going further forward. But particularly yesterday evening's match between Furia and Maus, uh, I think for Furia, you really have to say they, they did miss a bit of a trick and now the, Game. the question is going to become how big of an impact is that actually going to have on their tournament because missing out on that one round that if they would have won it would have sealed the deal having them go through to playoffs might actually now be the round that begins their demise as far as getting eliminated before even making it deeper in the tournament. Let's put Heroic under that microscope. Let's talk about it the here and now. Maniac, Ooh. when you look at this Heroic lineup, what are the things that are jumping out off the page that you're buying into to make yourself a believer? Uh, no, I think Tessis has a very strong argument, at least here. Uh, and I'm going to temper that statement a little bit. I do feel like, you know, we have this like group stage merchant sort of vibe. I don't think that's the case for him. I just think it's a low pressure match merchant. Like whenever there's not a whole lot of pressure, he about to style on you and he is capable of delivering incredible performances. He's got a no F given type counter strike that really, really pays off. And here you can take a little bit of a look. And that's when I'm talking about pressure and the sort of negative correlation with it. RMR, extremely pressurized environment. All of the players being very vocal about it sort of disappears. Opening stage, you can take a deep breath. You've made it to the major and he's, he's out there styling on you. Then suddenly it's the elimination stage. Pressure is high. Performance drops down, and finally we're here in China. Noodles are here, and he styles on them again. So see, it's Hold always that. pressure, performance, pressure, performance. Did you make that graph? Maybe I did. Man, the smart individual. Right, just trying to bring some content. You Who know? would have known? No, you've nailed that. I think that you, you've adequately, excuse me, adequately painted that picture. That yes, now would probably be the time to step up and do what you were brought here to do. Yeah, I think fantastic stuff from him in particular yesterday evening uh, against 9Z. That was, I, I guess, the talking point for you, right? Where he goes into that series, goes plus 18 or something like that. Destroyed and, them. And destroyed them. And to be fair, like, it's not exactly the biggest name team that you're going up against. But, you know, you kind of got to be getting these uh, these results under your belt. You, you can only beat the teams that are in front of you. So yeah. uh, it's a good little runway coming into this matchup. Which is exactly where our runway takes us. And I don't mean we're going to be taking flight. I do mean that we're going to be hearing from Tessas. I have Tessas here from Heroic by my side. Let's start like with the easy one. How is the team feeling? I think the team is feeling pretty good. Now we beat the 92 series yesterday. Maybe it's not the strongest opponent, but at least we felt like we played kind of good mentally, or like we, we were there mentally at least, and uh, managed to play some good uh, CS on Mirage in the end. Uh, so I think we are coming pretty confident into, into today. Overall, like, the performance was pretty good, but now the hard question, because like, if we're looking specifically at the stats, for you, sometimes like, when there's kind of, like, no pressure matches, like, you're performing so good, and whenever like, it really counts, like, it feels like the numbers could have been higher. Can you maybe explain that? I don't think it's uh, completely true. I think uh, in some cases uh, I do play better, but, uh, but I, I don't think you can say that. I think it has been the big, big games in the big tournaments and big games. So it's not uh, completely fair to say, but yes, of course I have bad games and that's just how it is. I think in my role especially, I think it's uh, one of the most, uh, like on T side, it's, uh, it's a role where you can have a lot of inconsistency because like you're taking map control and sometimes the opponent is just having good anti strat against you and you're just playing to kind of like destroy you and then it's really tough uh, tough for me and some other games I just I, I just go out and feel it like yesterday for example. And sometimes I guess like also Nico is also kind of trying to find that consistency and it more depends not on the match but like from a map to a map. Today he's going to play against Fallen maybe like also like his legend, does it put like any kind of pressure? No, I think I think Nicolas is uh, pretty cool with everything. Uh, he's ice cold, and I know he can play really good. And I just hope he he will show us. He has some struggles with a, a little bit of sickness depart, uh, yesterday and today, but I know he will give 100% of what he has, and that's going to be enough for today. All right, then let's see the 100% of your. Work. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Maniac, you made that cool graphic. So uh, yeah, now what? I mean, it's a good rebel, rebel from Tess. Let's address it for half a second. He's talking about the role and how it can be sometimes complicated in hard matches. I, I know that. I know he's got a point. But what I do point out is that his style of Counter-Strike, whenever things are easy, is very snowball -y. It's like one duel, one into not backing up. No, 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 no. Plus W, straight in your face. 
double duel, triple duel. And sometimes whenever he's got a hard time, he doesn't really find this in between where you find your kill and then you play safe. He always full sends it and he doesn't have this sort of nuance that's needed for high, high games. So that's why I'm talking about the, like nice, easy games. He smashes. But then when you have a bit of a trouble, it's a bit more complicated. It gets a little bit more dicey, if you would. And especially if we turn our attention to the AWPs within this matchup. So let's yeah. do that, Jordan. Uh, and when we talk about AWPs, we're looking at Nico does or Nico doesn't. I don't know. It depends what day we get heroic. Uh, and then we look at Fall on the other side and what we got from him yesterday. Glimpses. Yeah, I, I like that you brought that up because I think there was even a little bit of that in that conversation uh, with Heku. Uh, Nico does. He seems to be a little bit slow at the moment. Hasn't really quite come into his own at the uh, event here in Chengdu just yet. Maybe some sickness involved. Obviously, that's the first we're kind of hearing about it. So fair enough. You can say that that is, I guess, a reasonable excuse. But as far as excuses go, it's something that, you know, it, it's okay to have that issue on day one. I don't know if it's necessarily okay to now have that issue on day two when you're facing elimination and you need to be stepping up against this guy right here, Fallen. Had a pretty good night last night. I was actually pretty happy with what I saw. I think he's been kind of copping a little bit of flack lately. You know, there's conversations around how he's going individually, but coming into this roster, I don't know what I necessarily expected, but at least what I saw yesterday from Fallen, consistency was there. He was hitting those shots more often than not, and he was getting some pretty impactful rounds out there as well. So, uh, tick in my book for Furia is actually the AWP matchup tonight. I mean, listen, this this head-to-head -head is damning. Yeah, rough to, rough it, to look it, at. it is rough to look at. And I have to say, on shape, based only, yeah, Fallen probably has his number figured out right now. And and he goes even a step further. You can always talk about like the hybrid nature of Nikodos and how financially speaking, as a leader, it's great. It means sometimes he can play his five rifle. Okay, yada yada yada. I buy that. But there also needs to be some reliability in your sniper in order for you to call around it. And you have to realize, you're Kixen, you're trying to make sense of these pieces now, it's been a few months that you're together, you're, you're trying to find certainties. You're trying to find, pr like, round, defined rounds that will net you wins. Right. And what if your sniper is like, on a good day, maybe I'm a rifle, uh, maybe I'm a sniper. That's really complicated for a leader to put together a game plan when you don't have that reliable nature. And there's so much at stake there too, right? I mean, you brought an AWP, there's a financial investment. We're talking about so many different ways that this could spiral out of control when you kind of put that emphasis on the AWP. Yesterday, we got glimpses of a double op from the, the side of Furia, which was kind of nice to watch. But also would be nice to watch is seeing Nerds show up uh, in spades for the side of Heroic and at least uh, Caserato, I have to say, for Fury as well. Yeah, it's funny that we have like these parallel matchups, right? We talk about that AWP matchup, and that's one thing. But I think there's also there's this, this Star Rifler matchup that we kind of need to talk about. In the case of both of those guys, maybe, again, not having the greatest of days yesterday. Sleeping, yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't awful necessarily. I thought Nerds, he kind of kind of got the ball rolling a little bit in that second uh, matchup, but Kay Serato definitely went missing uh, yesterday in that game against Maus, and had he been at his usual output, I think there's no doubt you'd have to look at Furia and say they might have actually walked away with a win there. It might have been a 2-0, and zero. so uh, again, what are the circumstances behind Kay Serato going missing? We're not too sure, but if he can show up today, well, that's when it's going to be required because this is the elimination match and you absolutely can't be leaving anything on the table now. This is a player that could probably change what this team looks like in the server today. Yeah. <laughs> if, at, at what point if. do you have enough? When do you know, have man. enough? Uh, with the cake or? No, what? with your kiss, uh, rather, with that team. Like, listen, the man True. has been trying to do that. The man's been deadlifting for about four years now. <laughs> like, you see, he could squat more than Mac made if he was out there. No problem. He's been doing it in the Fury jersey. Surely at some point you run out of steam. And I don't know if we hit that, that page yet. It would be very sad if he was to just fade away. I don't think that's the case. I don't wish for it to be the case. But when we compare Case Router to a Nerds, it's a completely different story. Like, Nerds is supposed to be on absolute sky high right now. New team, rookie of the year 2023, everything to prove, everything on the line. And if this project doesn't really see a huge success, at least individually guarantee that you're going to be in the pop line to be a sought after rifles whatsoever. So for him, it's much more complicated. For this man, I, I don't even, if I were him, well, I never was as good as he is, but I know what it is to be in a team uh, and be like, come on, that. man, like, listen, how much do I have to do? That was yeah. when I was playing 1.6 Switzerland. <laughs> that was roughly 35 years ago, but that's okay. It's, it feels oh, wow. just like yesterday. I also played the same game. Hey, uh, when we look at these two teams, obviously we go into a best of three, we go into a veto, uh, and maps that we're probably not going to see, if I had to really guess, Inferno Anubis. That's a pretty easy one to take away, right? I think that's pretty reasonable, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as far as what maps we are going to see, I mean, I think there's definitely a, a nuke that could potentially get floated in here by Furia. Wouldn't be too surprised to see maybe a Mirage out from Heroic. Yeah, that's a, that's a go-to for them. Uh, we see the Ancient pick from mm. Heroic. There we go. And that's the nuke that you were calling about. Uh, although, I, I do think it can be a little bit tricky, but then, again, Heroic, nuke, a very protocol-heavy map on the CT side. I, I can understand why 
why they would go there. Uh, I still think that they're, uh, the mana we have on our screen right now, I think the T-side of Furia is a little too art dependent for my money in terms of what he can do when he's having a good game, which happens every now and then, suddenly everything makes sense. But when not, I truly feel like the fabric, like the purest Counter-Strike they play isn't exactly stellar. Like it's. I, I, there's not a whole lot of refined elements to it. It's more so based on like gimmicks and tricks that's gonna create a little bit of space. And then once you give uh, these experienced guys that way into the round, they can know how to close it. But when that's not the case, like it looks a little bit flat. Yeah, Overpass has that third map as well coming through for Furia. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think as far as the choice between Mirage and Overpass is concerned, you definitely want to be leaning away from Mirage when you're going up against Heroic. But uh, not, a, not a huge amount of scalps from Furia on Overpass. So some question marks there for me. I mean, there is the, maybe the conversation had from the Furious side too, having played it yesterday. I mean, we're talking about recent footage. So any sort of, if you were waiting the outcome of last night's matchup, i.e. perhaps heroic, they had footage to go back and look at. I see, but that's what's cool. If you're Furia, last match, it just blurred all the lines. Like, no one knows what to make out of that game. I was watching it, I fell asleep during map one, woke up during map two, I thought I was in a time warp. I thought it had been six months past, and the map was still playing, the game was still playing. It was a mind-blowing experience. I think that's called jet lag. <laughs> that's exactly what happened to me. I heard some talk about a jet lag being a transformer in the broadcast, which I I don't know, I'm still trying to wrap my oh, head I'm around I'm actually that. on board with that. I thought that was a great show. It's, it's an interesting concept, but it would be the ultimate final boss, I think, of all the Transformer series. Hey, so we've got just a few seconds left, guys. I want to know where your hat lies in this one, and uh, pretty quickly. Well, I, I got to stick with Heroic. I yeah. got to go with Heroic on that one. I agree. I think Heroic's probably the one for me as well. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be a clean 2-0, but I think they've got the dub here comfortably. Okay. Nothing clean about this game. Nothing clean. So we're expecting Scrappy all the way through. Oh, definitely. It should be Scrappy all the way through, minus some of the context that we gave you before we went into this matchup, which is some people need to show up, and if they do, this is what we're going to get, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it looks like we're about ready to get in the game. I do believe we are ready to get in the game in just a moment's notice. So let me just just go ahead and get it out Inflection there. of voice, just, you know, that's what we do. Just let me just get it out there right now. If you're sitting there in Twitch chat and you're wondering, like, hey, yeah, you know, what can I do? How can I, how can I get them to notice me right here in Twitch chat? All you really got to do is try using the hashtag or get yourself banned in Twitch chat. No one's ever going to see what you have to say ever again. Now, nonetheless, gentlemen, this one does paint itself. We do have Furia. We do have Heroic. And we have two gentlemen fresh, fr and I mean fresh, from the major grand final. I mean, these guys, Wait. the respect that you need to put Damn. on their name, put some respect on it. They must be good. It's Harry and Hugo. Ooh. God damn, what an introduction. Everyone's been bowing to us here, Harry, and uh, mainly the other talent. We appreciate it, of course, as we get into what is, surprisingly enough, an elimination matchup between Furia and Heroic. Furia fumbled the bag yesterday, and Heroics have but butted heads with Brazilian teams, not just at the Major, but also falling to a Liquid from the America's side to open up here in Chengdu. Uh, it, I, it's safe to say, for me, if Heroic loses this game, it's disappointing, but I think Furia are already pissed off off that they're in this lower bracket, Harry. They had it against Maus yesterday. They could not close, and now one of these teams must go home. Yeah, pressure is uh, is really on now. It's do or die for both Furia and Heroic. And as you say, for a Furia squad that were one round away from playoffs. That's crazy. It's crazy to even imagine we're playoffs. here. Thus far, I've been waiting for Keiserato to get activated. Yeah, where he was, is he? He was, he was yesterday man he was gone that was him sleeping snoring that's yeah. what that was uh so fury are going to start over on the ct side one of their go-to's is usually two mid three b but they've tried to vary that up and that's because heroic and pissed around to like some of these a main control plays k serato is going to be in the right place at the right time oh the big man with the big guns as well he's got two of them shadows give it away k serato takes one with him and almost drops all the nades shush still standing they don't have to commit here. They've been blocked by the Furious Smoke, and in fact, three players in the site. So Heroic call it off. Nothing wrong with that. They will utilize one of their smokes to fake out. But it is exactly that, leaving Nikodos in the corner. P250 armor and round the world for Heroic. Yeah, but this could all get complicated because of Fallen. I really like it. This guy does stick to his guns in terms of holding down these key positions. You saw it the other day in uh, in the BO3 that they played there. He's always the last to leave, and he's taken a lot of ground down here towards B. He's going to be one step ahead of Heroic as they look to go late into lane. Oh, the crouch saves Kixon's life, and Fallen gets back to the site. They're going to have to rely on the lurk here. Nikodos has heard steps. Cello won't overplay it, and he calls for support. Now they can rotate B. Heroic don't know it. Either which way, they're ending up in the stack. Waiting to throw this execute. 
Smoke, Molly, Flash, they've got it all, but they're running into the entirety of Furia here, the B site ahead of the Molotov. Fallen wins his, and they are falling like flies. These duelies tapping faces right now for Furia. It's just Kixon. What can Ian be expected to do here, man? Furia have got him pinned in, and so Yuri will be the one to walk that over the line. But a great round from Fallen, very much the, the, the key to Furia picking that one up. He, uh, he refused to budge after getting aggressive. Everyone else might have up and left. They leave Fallen there, and he's more than capable in that position. But just lock it down with the dual Berettas. And I think Fallen's a pretty interesting guy to look at as we head into uh, to this series. Currently, top-rated player for Furia uh, in, in Chengdu, which is kind of sick. We've had some fantastic games out of Fallen. Yeah. And look at this, man. It's even reflected in how he's playing this round. Just stick it on the dual Berettas. Right place, right time again for him. Sending it. Saving that money. At least on art. We'll see who the AWPer is today. Had Cello wheeled it on Mirage yesterday due to position. Actually worked really well. Him and Fallen barely missed an AWP shot. And like we opened this game up with, if you're looking at Furia, you expect Kesarat to, to perform and well they'll need him today or they will be surely losing yeah I mean you know he was kind of the the sleeper piece across the mouse series where they where they ended up being one round away and he kind of got switched back on towards the end of that bo3 but it was just too late in the game this round isn't meant to be very exciting and so it's not. Yuri will keep everything in check. Got to say, it's good that we're getting a nice look at a Yuri right now. Uh, second highest rated player for Furia, by the way, just in behind Fallen. And uh, oftentimes on Ancient, he's one of the one of the very key integral pieces to Furia's success. It's kind of him and Kay Serato who are going to be looking to, to do the big damage here. And if Fallen's able to keep up the appearance he's shown across Chengdu so far, then that gets very exciting. Heroic, though, let's talk them as now they bring out their, their first gun round here. Thus far, you've seen a lot of this attempt to take away the A control since the pistol. But now heading into their first rifle round, they instead go trying to snipe out the lane. And they're also working mid with Nerds. Often the guy given a bit more freedom to go and roam on his lonesome. He's going to be entrusted with that mid control. Oh, completely blocked out of lane. Yuri decides to make a move and they can re-smoke safely. So Heroic have to just stall out this entire round. No, it's just misses that timing up top. And Art, oh, this is a really nice angle supplemented by the cover on ramp. He can play a headshot position, drops a re-smoke and doesn't give Nerds the kill before it blooms. So nice and safe play for Furia in this round, buying a lot of time. Heroic feel like B has numbers, they head elsewhere. Okay, Serato has his molly ready. He's going to play for info, shadow, step, anything. He'll drop that molly. If Heroic force their way through it, they surely lose the first player. It's a bit of a fake out right now. Kicks and selling it. Fallen gets aggressive in the middle. And Kesarato is about to find everything. He's just blocked them as well. Kicks and kind of just needs kills to loosen this round. Furia have Kesarato in the right place. And he's just going to sit here waiting. Doesn't want to play his hand too soon. Getting out with one is enough for Serato. Fallen was here to help out after getting aggressive over in mid earlier on. But won't go swinging early. Instead, he's going to wait for the rest of Fury to move in. Oh. And now his teammates are here. Tess has kind of fumbled this jump up, so they should be aware of it. But a nice shot from Nerds. It's this backstab from Art that the round is now riding on the tail of. Oh, the oh. flick, the miss for Art. Nerds gets back into safety, and Tessas has a very powerful position. He goes flying in, picks the wrong target. Nerds now needs to hit some heads. He needs an ace to win this round, and Art falls as well. Shallow low. He can't find the kill, and Furia just about squeaked this round out. Oh, my goodness. Three kills from Cello. Very, very close for Nerds. And that jump off for Tessas, that was the kicker. If he could have killed the low player and set Nerds up for the round, but he gets nothing from what felt like a guaranteed kill in that position. Good damage from Kesarato. Overall, a well-contained Fury around, given the shots we can see Nerds is hitting there. But that's also a good sign that Nerds has maybe switched on today. Because going cold in that important game against Payne at the Major, 
potentially cost Heroic a top eight spot. They were, to me at least, a sleeper team to sneak into the playoffs. Unable to do so. Aggressive setup again for Fury. The flash is dodged too late. Yuri makes it work. Fallen's alone in middle, but there's no punishment. And man, the way that Fallen is just kind of roaming on this AWP, he's, uh, he's coming into this feeling very confident is Fallen. Meanwhile, over towards the ramp Ooh. side, Yuri. Okay. <laughs> oh, never mind, Cello. See ya. Going to be the one to do it. And for Heroic, this gets really awkward now. They've kind of gone out, they've looked for anything across the map and every single kill has come up in favor of Furia. With the bulk of the kills happening over towards B, it should be pretty easy for Art to piece together that that's where Heroic were looking to end up. And even though you still have Nerds with this hero Galil floating around mid, Fallen's not going to overextend and give away a kill here. So Nerds will have to go looking for it. Oh, Fallen. That's fine. He doesn't get punished for his missed shot. Smoke comes down and Sides are blocked. Heroic are going to regroup back at B. It's contact play right now, and Cello deals with it very well. All these Furia players switched on at the moment. It may be early days, but good signs for the Brazilians. Cello does overcommit in through the Molotov, but luckily Art is still here to stop that bomb from planting. Nerds now again requiring an ace clutch. I don't think this one's reasonable. They hear that nade hit, and they just hold this crossfire. There is no way to get this off of kills. 13 seconds, Nerds prioritizing fight. He needs to stick. And they're going to start swinging him together. Nerds, oh, what are you making th of this round? No way they're going to let you plant. Fate comes through. And Art even gets the frag at the end. Well handled for Furia. Again, for the most part, not over committing. No, I think that's one of the one of the things with this Furia, right? We've certainly seen them lose some horrific I, rounds. I would say unlosable rounds yeah, <laughs> sure. through through lack of a better term. But I think, you know, if one thing is apparent from when you watch them lose those sorts of moments, it's like they're, they're trying to evolve and make better decisions there. And that round is almost an example of it. I think sometimes the passiveness does betray them. And when it does, it always looks kind of silly. But those are rounds in the past where Furia would have like thrown it the other way, right? They would have gotten too aggressive and given too many fights over. Yeah. You're seeing the team try and adapt. Nurse is banking on that, right? He's he's going for kills at seven seconds. You know, he's hoping all three players face him, but Furia aren't going to make that mistake. Nerds goes for an earlier play, but they break the window smoke and they kill him on heaven. So already Furia, a man up. And I love these passive setups. Again, just playing the back lines of the map. When they have these advantages, they reface A main, they take some control. Yeah, this is actually a really nice, you know, kind of well-timed double push. The, the one gap is Kicksan over towards Donut, who could make things more interesting, especially if he catches R in retreat here. They'll hear him all right. That might force this bomb to come late through middle. The question is, Keserato's timing, great spam. If Keserato flanks mid right now, this bomb is locked in at B. It can't rotate round, and this timing is very awkward right now. Oh, what a shot! Shush nails him! Fallen will respond in the site, but they already have Kixon who heard Art leave earlier and Heroic have got that space. Shush gets the credit for hitting the shot, but it's Kixan who provides that info. When you hear Art running away like that, you know that that means that they've pushed main. They've collected the info. He's not just going to up and leave the A site on the back of nothing. And so that's actually like a very, very nice little bit of tidbit that Kixan's been able to pass on just from hearing the rotate. And that pieces together around for Heroic. You might look at that and think, oh, Shush, he's so spatially aware. It's like, no, that that entire call comes from Kixan over in Donut and the little tidbits of info he picks up. Fallen still not missing. It's only exits, but he is feeling fresh today. And yesterday, as you said, highest rated player for Furia. Shush is going to get out. Nice spam kill on B as well. You love getting those. But Kixon's position still wins them the round, accompanied by some nice shots from Shush. Heroic on the board, about time. Yeah, I think, I think that round is just such an awesome example of where, like... Sometimes it's not about the kills you take, it's just like the info and the ones that you actually let get away, right? That's That was like the, the mastermind plan behind the round. 
Oh, they again want a late pot mid. They double smoke the double molly and they fight beside it. Now it's got to be very cautious. That's Fallen getting aggressive in A main, punished for once. I mean, fair enough, right? He's kind of had to just watch as that last round went by. So with the game he's having, with the tournament he's having, he wanted to be involved early, but ends up getting fed to the Wolves. Now this kill from Art should do enough to like slow down this play through main, but it's not going to ease that pressure entirely. They're still going to wait with the bomb on Nikodos and instead give that, that pressure now to these players in Donut. Ooh. Art's able to hold the line, and he's doing a good job right now, is Art. Ugly spacing. Nerds goes through, but Kixon was not ready to trade, and even those main players now are a little stuck in the mud. Kixon's going to break the smoke, almost catching Art, but he didn't know there was a second player, and that info now transpired. A minute on the clock, and the flank is coming in. Kixon's timing is crucial, but Cello absolutely rips his head off, and sure... They get a man on the boost, but it's not like Furia are giving away anything in this round. Two on four. Great active flank for Cello. And this round is once again controlled by Furia, who lock the back door. You're even getting aggressive here, but I hope he doesn't go any further than this. He doesn't necessarily have to. He can wait till the time's really low at this point. They do kind of have to just commit to the A play. And so Yuri moving in now. It's on a good timing. He's going to catch the bomb as it tries to cross in. And Vitesse says he's got to check every angle all at once. He's got 15 seconds left to work with as he grabs this bomb, but this round should be unwinnable. Oh, and the perfect molly. That's on the only position he could plant safely as well. And they're not giving him the kills. Yuri can just end this round right now. Deny it with a swing. And Furia take yet another. The comms are looking delicious right now. Heroic feel like they're stuck. Like they can't move. Walking in quicksand. Each foot sinking faster than the last. And they're having to call a timeout as well. This is a really good looking Fury. I, I'm not even going to say that I'm jumping the gun on this at six rounds deep. It feels like a different team. No, not at all. And I think, you know, this has been a change that you've been noticing more and more with, with how Art's trying to put the pieces together in this Fury squad. It's no longer based around K Serato having some crazy game and them getting away with like some, oh, yeah. some wild aggression. Like K Serato has been. He's in the server as well. Yeah, he is here, right? But, but everyone else. Hasn't really had to do anything. And no, I think even even with how they play a lot of these moments where, the, where you know, they get like a 3v2, 4v2, they try to take the safest possible option. And they, those were not phrases that you used to attribute to Furia. And like we say, sometimes it lets them down. And I think that comes from somewhat still growing into this new, the new way of looking at the game. But it's clear that they've been evolving. However, Heroic now are going to try and pick up the pace. Fast A play. And Sakei Serato's got to hold the line. He will. Oh, he does. He mauls them. Molly, nade, spray. Not surviving that one. Through the smoke, into the coffin, as K Serato kills them all. Four on the A side. We said he wasn't in the server. Well, he just connected Artenum the IP and Furia 6-1 up. That was a half buy for Heroic. They can sustain the loss, but it only builds into this dominant game for Furia right now on their map pick. Heroic's map pick, that is. Dear, oh dear. I mean, you know, that's the other thing. If, uh, if Chengdu's taught us anything, it's that everyone quite likes a bit of Ancient. And uh, Fury are no exceptions to that. Ooh. Okay, Serato being cheeky this time. And, oh, the nade's deep, so they won't even f uh, figure it out. They won't work him out. Oh, it's aggressive. There is a punish. It's a one for one. An opportunity presented. Yuri spams Tessez. Oh, dear. Just when you think Heroic are in with a chance, they want to go through this mid smoke. They might be in trouble. That's a deeper nade. It's not a problem. They still have info up on Heaven. But Fury sit back and relax. 4v3. Kicks and risks it through the smoke and cello. He is not missing. It's easy to say that for almost every Fury player, but cello, as soon as he's been given this AK, it has been clinical kills. Okay, Serato saw one. Does he go for it? No. He leaves it. Fallen's got the cross. Peek on your orbs. Contact if there's anything left. And Nerds again in another unwinnable round. 
Now, what do you even expect him to do here, right? Even if he, even if right now he gets both kills over towards B, the bomb still dropped outside of the B doors, so he would have to go all the way back and get it. This one is uh, shaping up to be a done deal. Oh, and you know, I mean, yeah. even even in this round, right up until now, we've actually seen Furia. Early on, they were fairly active over towards A, right? You had rounds where, like, Keiserato was getting aggressive there. You had that one round that Heroic actually got on the board where him and Art kind of double pushed, and then they they, they game the, the, the rotate and the info that they've heard. But this one, this is like a, another one of the standard Furia openings with two starting over towards mid. They leave A empty. They have three players over towards B, and they fight for that lane control with the option to have the mid players jump up. And, you know, that's like one of the pretty standard moves you can look to do on the CT side, but it's when Furia employ it that's important, right? Right? They bring it in right as Heroic try to go back to taking this B lane control. And so in terms of having the read over the flow of the game right now, Fury are certainly winning in that department, and they know they are. And that's why I think we see this Heroic tag timeout come through now. Yeah, they, they've got to try and talk this over. They know they're getting out red. It's not like these rounds are coming down to close scenarios or, or crazy clutches out of Fury. Heroic are barely getting close. And the one round they did was thanks to Kixan and his ability to like react to the info that he's getting. Yeah. But they haven't had any more chances like that since that point. It's not even just that they aren't winning the duels, which is certainly a factor, but they're not even getting into, like you say, these positions where you could you could argue Heroic could or should have won a round, you know, three V three or a post plant. Like their belly, they're getting every split, one half is getting blocked and the other half is getting massacred. So it's not looking easy for Heroic, and this is turning to be a very quick first half here. If they can't materialize soon, Nerds with a saved AK around the pistols. Again, they break the window smoke, but look at Art go, he is gunning! He is running and he finds that solo AK in middle. Dear, oh dear, no one to grab that back. Art will overcommit. Won't be the first nor the last time you hear that, but still, Fury are comfortable. Four on four. Heroic going for the B-pop. It does work for an entry. Yuri, got to be careful. They're inside of the site. Getting baited in by Keiserato, who will get one. Yuri on the cross. Nika does. Hits Deegs. And now it's up to Bad. Fallen, who falls as well. Nika does. Does him dirty with four on the Deagle. I mean, one of the discussions the desk were having coming into this was that head-to-head -head between Nikodos and Fallen. And one of the strengths of Nikodos is his nature of, it, you know, he can show up with the other guns. He can show up with the lesser guns. He's not an orper He's who needs that big green. <laughs> He's not and an orper. <laughs> bro, he does it with the Deeg there. Yeah. That's like the one metric in which, you know, he can look to beat Fallen in this matchup. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Take him off the orb. If it works, it works. He might have fallen put to the test yet again. Nerds, oh, he looks into that flash as he turns. So it's up to Kixon instead on the front line. Honestly, I want Kixon first. Let Nerds trade out. Nerds has been a lot of these uncomfortable positions on his own in the late round. He will be stuck up red. This is positionally strong for Heroic. They have control, but again, Furia, double punch. Two players coming into clear. He needs one at least. To Thin the herd, but dead to art immediately. Nikodos forced to fire off. And again, they've cleared middle. Look at the active move for Furia. Two players from A checking out mid. Now they can stack B. Heroic are blocked in. The mid rounding here from Fury has just been perfect yeah. across the game. And like even, even this round now, the way that they group and they deal with that lurk in red, knowing that they've got essentially a 2v1 there is great. And at this point, they've pieced together where the round is ending up. Three strong over towards the back lines, and you still have this active mid lurk coming in. So for Heroic now, it's all about trying to claim something out of the oh. chaos, and they've done a good job of that. Shush, oh, doubling up what? and smoke spam connecting from Tessez. Fury had all the right ideas here, but Heroic have brawled their way to success. It's the Danes winning rounds right now for Heroic. Some things never change. Okay, Serato, there's a chance here, pushing Nikodos back. Uncomfortable, he hits his headshot. That should not have been a way in for Heroic, but nice double entry from Shush on long side and even the smoke spam to kick it off and get Heroic in this half at the end. They have now broken the money of Furia and the option to potentially go 7-5. Well, that doesn't sound too bad given how this game began. Have to see if they can materialize it, though. 
Yeah, I mean, for, for Fury here, the, the worrying note is like they've been in these positions across the tournament already where like things are initially looking good and then suddenly a half gets sour as they kind of go down the stretch. I think sometimes that's not helped by the purchasing decisions of this team who still are trying to to fine-tune that like idea that Art has of trying to maximize damage in these low-money situations. So a timeout called through now for Fury, and I can tell you that Art has already gone for his signature oh, yeah. purchase, the, the, the SMG and armor. If you play MP9 every round, you can buy every round. It's a decent philosophy, actually. And so what this kind of means for Fury now is <laughs> they've got they've got this investment here where they're going to be having that, that saved AWP, but... If they lose it, if they come up short, then they, they essentially have this buy again, right? Down yeah. near, down uh, down into the last round of the half. Minus the orb. Well, Could you be. know, pending pending a save. Yeah, yeah, we'll put yeah. a pin in that one. Uh, I want to see Fallen get involved here. These are the rounds where you, you know, if you've got the big gun, you need to put it to use. You can't just play the back lines. Fallen's had a couple of opening pick attempts. Actually, they've been punished. But uh, let's see if he's in the right place this time. Oh. The Lurk Smoke, as well as this mid smoke, is lobbed in. They're going up the ramp. Waiting this Molly. Yuri's coming down the ramp through the double Molotov. What a madman. How is he still alive? He won't even get out. Tucked in the corner with a pistol. Tessis walks in unbeknownst to him. He will survive. Cello knows. One shot ought to do it. Tessis trying to back up, and the support is here on that smoke fade. Cello is in trouble. Can he escape? My oh my. Shush in the window, gone in an instant, and that's armed Caserato. Never a good sign for Heroic. Now that's just kind of unshackled himself from this two-man setup that Heroic were left with over towards B. He's having to go all the way back around and clear out any potential aggro, but he does that, and now he's able to join back up with them and grab this bomb. So Heroic will regroup and attempt this one together. Hoping that maybe Nerts running all the way through mid has is, is been heard by Furia and they've adjusted on the back of that as it looks like they do just want to double pump this util back into the B site after all. On Molly as well. It's not going to clear too much, but Kesarata still has his line. If Cello can stay tucked, all oh, the timing. Orb spots him. Now it's all Kesarato. Two players on the cross. He's going to give it up. He's got a flash for default. Awaiting Fallen on a long rotation. Just trying to keep the pressure on. He could spam that bomb right now, but he'll go for the kill instead. And Nerds takes him down. Oh, oh. that's a chance. Or V or, but not V or per. Fallen downgrades. The call has been made. Tessus is low. Creeping and crawling, but Tess says awaiting, and he will only hit the leg. <laughs> Fallen oh, no. saves the day for Furia on the broken by. That is such a cheeky round. Fallen is smiling oh, away as well. He knows. That hurts. Gets legged with the orb, but he thinks to himself, that's why I put mine away, my yeah. friend. Oh, man, that is crazy. And all that hinges on Nerds, who's trying to, like, trying to play the long game, trying to reroute so he can go and clear out the lane and play around this bomb later in the round. But him backing up that far puts him in the, in the firing line of the orb. Well, that just saves the half of Yurik. It now goes from potentially decent T-side for Heroic uh, to, to domination for Furia if they can now close this round. 9-3 is a stark difference. Oh, they, they managed to get the AWP, but Art's been given it. And so this is because Fallen and Caserato want to come in again with this double A push. They wanted to do it early off of spawn, so that's likely why you see Art getting to don the AWP here and now. Fallen's in such a dirty angle as well, tucked in main, so that position is off limits for Heroic. Luckily enough, they're 4B anyway, but into Art's AW. Dodges flash, Molly will land, and Art luckily smoked by his teammate out. Fallen, oh, he saw him. He couldn't get the shot off in time. He's going to go for the flank. Ring around the rosy. Fallen. Oh, wait. He's not even going for the kill. He wants the glory. He wants the round. He lets Shush into the site. Kesarato will take that mantle. Now Fallen knows he has a flank. A flank they cannot even consider. And he'll line up the shot to Nerds as long as he wants. Takes that kill. What a cheeky play. Shush is in the A site, but he's got the rotation cut off. The thing that's interesting is Shush thinks he's in a great position, one that isn't known about, but they do know about oh. him. Still, Kesarato seems to discount, uh, discount it for a second there.
And so that kill gets given over. That's a bit of a head scratcher. As long as Fallen cuts off rotation, Heroic know they have to go B right now. And to be fair, they have the advantage. 3v2 on the B site. Fallen's flank timing is everything. And he's going to be so paranoid about red, about where Shush has gone. This bomb walks into the bomb site. 20 seconds left. Furia are playing the retake. Yeah, we've seen this betray them before. Oh. It was a chance bit of smoke spam last time. This time they're a man down, and so Heroic aren't even feeling that pressure to have to spam the smokes. They just set themselves up in the post plant now. One man over in cave, shush late over towards middle as well. Heroic have got layers of defense around this bomb. Yeah, Shush is lost to the wind, but it doesn't even matter. Furia, they're the paranoid ones right now, and no kills are being given over. Great grenade. They swing with it, and this half saved somewhat by Heroic in the dying stages. Fallen, nothing he can do here, surely, as Nikodos locks it in, and Heroic wake up. Is it too late? That's the question. We'll find out in the second half. Furia instill the fear in Heroic, and this Danish core need to be our heroes, baby. They need to take our pain away, because four rounds on the T side of their map pick is certainly nothing to gloat about. This may be screaming inevitable elimination if Heroic don't wake up ASAP. Swapping over to the CT side now, and Furia full control, full nades.
One of the most standard openings for Heroic is uh, is to leave this A site empty. And at most, usually they only have one player here. In this <laughs> round, it's Tessas and Sofuria attempt oh to play God. against that by going fast paced in through A main. Heroic have him? to start scrambling bodies over because that util is already coming down. Well, Smoke actually blocks the site as well. That's great CT Smoke. Nerds actually can't play through it. He's just got to swing outside of the smoke into the open cello. Nails another headshot. There are so many grenades right now and they are coming flying in high impact damage in the temple a re-smoke furia this one is crippling they have blocked every path with a triple smoke on this a site this is a fantastic pistol round for furia and cello bringing us the kills to boot how the hell do heroic get back in they'll come crawling through furia not giving them an inch Kicks and trying to clear big box. They're in the middle of the site. The tap comes through. Right now, the fear is there. Fury don't know whether it's a stick. They confirm it. Now, full stick. Five seconds. They're on the bomb. They might win this round, but denied by Caserato in main. As Fury comes swinging in the final second, they save their souls. Nine to four. And this is like a different Fury. I don't know. It's, it's only one map, but the, some of the cores... Some of the moves on the CT side. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you say it's one map, but this is something that, like, you even would have noticed at the major is that. And don't get me wrong, I don't think Fury's major run was anything to marvel no. at, but but I think it was in the early stages of a team that are like trying to evolve. I don't think that Art has necessarily been burying his head in the sand since a lot of the criticism that's been lapped onto this team, and I think. They're trying to be a, a far more tactical squad across the board with a bit more variety to their play. Yeah, and then every now and then just throw in a full B rush and just remind your opponents what you're up against. It has worked. One for one on the captain, two and 13. And Fury just get that bomb planted, so heroic. How the hell can you win this without a kit? Shush comes running down the ramp. 5-7 may be able to chew through Fallen here, but... There's no guarantees, and the round really rests on this kill. And it looks like Heroic are just kind of playing yeah. to contain, right? Like, trying to maximize damage. Sure, we're not going to win the round anymore, but we can get out of it with some SMGs, maybe a rifle or two. And at bare minimum, we can try and make sure it hurts for Furia. Even though they win the round, let's make it as expensive as possible and then run it back with this sort of, you know, saved by this little purchase up in the next. And they're, they're looking dead. good to do that right now. Yeah. It is a full mow down of everyone from Furia. And so now where this gets interesting, especially with the scoreline we have, is do Heroic try and capitalize on that? Do they put money in again? That's the big question Whoa. right now. It's risking the entire game on it the is. buy. It is. It's high risk. It's high reward. But these are the kind of the most fun situations for us to watch. Most brutal to have to play. Yeah. But I think when you get all five dead, you do want to try and capitalize on that. And so we have a kind of half in, half out for Heroic, where they've got the hero gun for Tessas, scout on Nikodos, and then enough money on everyone else to keep bringing guns out. Oh, full set mid. The rifle is gone immediately. Cello with a very small violin for Tessas's M4. I'll just go back to B. They've seen three here. They know they exited Donut. So as far as Fury are concerned, the sooner they go B, the better. Kaser Auto will control Cave with the MAC-10. They can just block it and walk up the ramp. Kickson's got to make his call, his decision. He's going to fight the ramp. Uh, well, he'll never fight the ramp. He just gets full spam by Fallen. Scout connects. This is too late, though. Damage won't save you here. Fury have got long control. They will finish the job. And they will find every kill in this B bomb site, just just saving for Tessez. And he was waiting to do that from the moment Tessez died in mid. He just sat in Donut waiting to go get that M4. Everyone else for Heroic kind of lent into the rotate, but as you see, it's too late in the round. So Fury, a nice response to losing everyone in your anti-eco, keeping a flawless round now and denying that hero gun any impact. Does feel done, really. Sure, I like the heroic at least. They put something in that round to capitalize and they can still fall by. So, no, I mean, there, there's they still, have a chance. Yeah, there, there is still some level of hope for heroic, but, you know, at least from the, all the way this game is Exactly, gone. yeah. Like, like the, heroic the kind have never of, been in this game. No, and what I was going to say is, like, I realized as I was talking through that first half, everything I'm kind of saying is really from Fury's POV, but I think that's because it was very much heroic reacting to what Fury are bringing to the table as opposed to the other way around, right? Fury very much have the, 
the, the, the, the momentum of this game behind them. Kind of like Fury played two T sides in a way, right? Like, sure, heroic first half were on the offense, but they never got to execute. They never got to make a play. No, they've kind of been at the whim and mercy of Fury throughout a lot of this. Yeah. And and that's awkward, even for Kickstarter, like trying to trying to come up with calls. It's like, well, you've never really felt like you've been in control at any point of this game. What's your call? Survive. And good luck. Thank goodness that Molotov burns on the smoke. Tessa's got to be careful, but he's got some support here. And Cave, the boost up is a lovely call. But are they ready for another man? They should be. Come running through that smoke. They've swapped positions. Nurtz has gone back to middle instead. Cello, nice entry yet again. And while the nade will end him, it won't stop the inevitable. That is this bomb plant. Furia on the edge of map point. And they even have a late lurker who won't be required. So it seems two guns have been heard. A re-smoke comes in. Furia, we all know where this one's going. Yeah, Heroic have to know as well. You don't want to risk everything in a 3v4 like this with so little time left. They're still Ooh. hoping that something could connect on their way out, but it is their way out. They're leaving. They're done. They're writing this one off. And look at Keserato, who is waiting to catch a mid player. Now he can hunt them on A, so even Art come gunning. He'll take one more. And okay, Furia, 12 rounds to the four of Heroic on Heroic's map pick. We have Nuke up next. Nuke. Furia beat Mouse on Nuke yesterday. There were no sleepers on that map. So that is a little disastrous for Heroic, who I think we had high expectations of, especially when you come in with the caveat of like, ah, this team could have probably done better at the Major than they did, but don't worry. They're a team for maybe this season that we can watch, make some runs. Well, this is elimination, folks. This is going home at the bottom of Group A. And it might be heroic with a whimper today. Oh, a little awkward for Yuri, but Hart's there to trade it. This is brutal. Attempt at mid aggression in this one for heroic, but it's a last ditch kind of desperate effort here as they pressure the lane. And Fury are waiting. They are waiting to reply to this. They're going to pincer in on Art, who's looking to hold the line solo. His teammates are a little late from the doors, and this util coming out means that Heroic know where the last few players are for Fury. Oh, that's a nice catch, at least. Caserato going to try cross that bomb to B. They can spam. He's going through the smoke. Easy 1v1. Nurt is right here. He should know. Can't be far away. Nurt has realized that Caserato is yet to cross. Tucked in the corner. Nurt goes hunting. Caserato, one bullet, one kill. And this map is done, but Nurt is crawling in. Great work to finally win a round on this CT side for Heroic. They've been fighting. They've been chipping. But they'll finally convert. Yeah, that's a real sigh of relief moment for Heroic. It's kept them in this game. And I think critically as well, like Nurtz, he was the one who jumped up into heaven in that first gum round, and he just actually elected to not even fight. Like, that's the level of oppression they're feeling from Furia. This one, he kind of believes in his read of the game. He believes in his ability to take that in the 1v1 and doesn't want to give Caserato the room. And that's exactly what he needed to do. There was no room there to, to play that. I don't want to say scared, but play it safe. You kind of needed to believe. Yeah that you knew what Caserato was doing. Go for the kill. And so at least Nurtz closes that one out, but Heroic have got a very long way to go before this gets exciting. Mm. And they've got a very informed Fury to break through. There's seven rounds between these teams right now. And even just looking at how Heroic played that round, they were playing Fury's game. They were getting very aggressive towards B, coming through Cave, mid-taking, just trying to swing for the fences. It's a very tight round nonetheless. Nothing that Heroic can celebrate. There's going to be an exchange over here in mid. Nurtz always likes to get stuck in for this mid control. And he will be given the room to do so. It looked like Art was going to try play through it. So once again, you have Nurtz surviving the cross to get up into heavens. And this is going to culminate in a lane crunch here for Heroic. As once again, they try to take away this lane control. Well, the smoke and the flash, Cello knows it's coming. He preemptively turns. He still loses the battle. Oh, stuck out on the wood. Yuri gets one, but he knows that multiple players are surrounding him at the B site. And Nikodos has actually beat him through cave. So Yuri got to be careful here. He might catch Tessas instead. Shot rallies off. Nikodos gets closer. They're going to double push him together. 
Flash goes in. Yuri, good spray, but it's not more than one. 2v3 now. They're out A, but they've lost the bomb. And that bomb is well under the control of Heroic here. Are they really going to leave Art? He's going around the world. 50 seconds. This round now rests solely on Caserato. Art is the backup plan. If Caserato fails, it doesn't matter what Art does. And if he steps in that water, Shush will get an audio cue. The only way this gets interesting is if K. Serato wins this fight, right? Because Art's working. still trying to sell the idea that they might go A, but Heroic have got the bomb. K. Serato winning that fight does make this a lot more interesting, though. Art coming in on the backstab. He's been committed to flanking B since K. Serato went for the bomb, oh. and he gets away with the kill. They at this lose. point, they've got the bomb at their feet. They don't know it. But Heroic aren't here watching it. Shush is holding for a cross. There is a chance to fight him, but he doesn't need to take yeah, this peek. He's won. He's won. So he ducks out of there. Fury are so scared. They don't know where <laughs> Shush is. And so they never even attempt to go get the bomb back. That's it's like that, annoying. It's like that first half Damn. round. Yeah. Like, that could have been so much, Hugo. That could have been everything. Fury were full paranoid. Even after Keserata kills Kicks, and I guess you're expecting them to kind of be sitting on the bomb. Like, Shush is roaming. And even though Fury get two kills on the extremities, they're so far away. I can't believe Art is throwing his util on A, trying to bait Heroic into rotating into A. But they would never do that. They obviously have the bomb. You've walked through A. They obviously have the bomb. The right? only way I can give them is like with how hard they pressured Yuri. Maybe Fury, I think they don't have the bomb. Oh, none of this matters because this game's probably over. Fury, a double rush, A main, double kill. And Gung Ho into the A side. Break the smoke, but Furia aren't even crossing yet. They're doing their triple smoke exec. Oh, Nikodos edging, but... Well... This one might fall by the wayside. Tessus has managed to creep out. But Fury don't need to worry about this bomb plant. They wouldn't need to oh, worry about the flank. Down. And Fallen's in with the shot in the back. Deny the plant all you want. It was a fake. It was a farce. And it was Fury coming up first in this series. First map locked in. We've got New Cup next. And right now, Heroic are just rounds away from elimination in China. Snapping a boss bubbles, I think it's how creators see of a creator's be perceived as fly, you're whipping right, but off ID, you're broken cheap. I need an electric bike to bend this food, to bend these rules, get these tools, cause haters drool, they're watching me. Haters discretion and vice. Oh me, oh my, I just want to survive and to see under darkness. Furia find the pace to put Heroic right in their place. That's right, map one, it seems as though Furia struck gold, and by that I mean everything just seemingly going their way. The scoreline is indicative of that, and so is me telling you that you're watching the Intel Extreme Masters.
uh, right here in the right now in an elimination matchup. This is a very, very high stakes game for both of these teams. So thanks for joining us on this journey. But 13-6 is Uno. not the heroic we wanted to start with. No, uh, yeah. stern faces. Uh, I think the camera shots are very telling when you look at the heroic, considering this was their map pick and the first half they put together was very lackluster, very poor. Um, I think Kixen, and I'm not going to harp on him just individually because, of course, he had a laughable scoreline. That's not what I want to talk about. It's just you could see he was in way too deep. Like He couldn't figure out solutions. It must have been a very frustrating game as an IGL to try and put together because once Furia got the lead on the CT side, they started being proactive. They started looking, seeking for that free map control, constricting the map on you. And then you could really see an absolute nightmare for Kixen. Yeah, no one really got rolling at all for Heroic, which was, I guess, part of the problem, right? You, you would at least in a lot of cases want to say, okay, we've got one guy who we can kind of rely on to make some kind of impact, hopefully get him involved early. But it didn't really feel like there was anyone doing that for Heroic. And certainly on the other side of the coin for Furia, you sort of had no shortage of options of individuals that were stepping up. And fair. Yeah, and the big problem now is obviously they've lost their map pick. So we're kind of getting into uncharted territory now for Heroic, where they've lost map one and they're going into their opponent's map choice and things are not looking very good for their health here in Chengdu. Yeah, it is looking like it's coming to an abrupt halt almost. I mean, we, we isolated and kind of said who we needed to step up within both sides of this camp. And I think it goes without saying that one side definitely did that over in Furia. We saw a lot of action from K Serato today. Mm. I mean, everybody on Furious yeah, side really had moments. Art definitely. Yuri had some great holds as well. Uh, and the problem is, if we're talking about Case Rider and Nerds as the superstars that sort of had to waken up, then Nerds had another quiet one. And it goes beyond just the fragging output. His entry kills not being found. He's 0 for 4, which means never any space created on the map. And even beyond that point, I do wonder who's the second voice for Heroic currently. And, and what I'm talking about is a situation where you're not winning rounds. You have to dig deep into the playbook. You have to find sort of a weak space or a hole in defense and you have to have someone being that second voice and I'm not sure who that is. He definitely delivered Kaike really on the mic for that map and it's great to see him back. Yeah, it is. These numbers speak uh, volumes as to what we got yesterday. And again, the impact is felt across the board, Jordan. Yeah, look, I mean, it is only the one map, though, so obviously we're not prepared to go ahead and just say, okay, he's back, you know, like, let's get it going. We're ready to go. But um, yeah, certainly good stuff from him there on map uh, number one, so hopefully he can keep it rolling. And great stuff. Great looks from the side of Furia. So let's give credit where credit is due by isolating a pistol round. Yeah, you liked and that one. I did. You, you I did. wanted you know, to talk about it. Well, there was, you know, there was a lot of effort that went into this, Maniac, and we've got to give the, the flowers. <laughs> and what is quite impressive as well is that Furia don't really lose composure after the opening from Tess. That's what I really like. They still put down the utility they have to. The spacing is good here. You see how they manage to be careful about the lines that are dangerous to them. We know the USP can find some pingles, but they don't really give away any kills. The smoke is great. The flash pushes the defense as well. And once they have the advantage, that's where the experience comes in. Experience not for Cello, just walking right on that one there. <laughs> but then the clutch is still very well played here. I don't really know what's going on. That's a bit of a oopsie situation right there. But Kesevaro strikes in. I, again, after suffering the opening loss, opening death, still stayed very composed, good piss around, that one's for you. Yeah, it was very calculated, right? They knew where exactly where they wanted to take these fights, and you could see that as evident, you know, uh, as the round played out, though, there was a really sticky, weird situation with the defuse. I mean, it's a good it's a good example as well of why you want to have a P250 in that piss around as well as the T side, right? Those two opening picks actually come from Cello, and, you know, you don't necessarily have that stopping power with the Glock at range, especially, and it P250. does give you the opportunity to uh, break down the doors against the USP, so, yeah, nice little pick up it's beautiful yeah. weapon radio mm. yeah it is um i do struggle with trying to not buy it on pistol rounds as well so it's, i just uh, learn a few utility you and just then you can do shots. it if, if you, you know shots, smokes you're good worth. yep yeah you know that's how it works I, I just have teammates that sometimes buy deagles on pistol rounds and we're gonna leave that one right there uh, i'm not here to bash on any of them i'm not gonna name them out eric uh cody <laughs> anyway uh yeah so let's do this let's go ahead and check in with what's going on in between these maps right now with heku I had an opportunity to talk to Saul from Heroic about the upcoming map, which is going to be Nuke. Because Furia yesterday played against Mouse on this map, and I asked, like, if they manage to maybe see something that they can use against Furia. And he said, like, yeah, we do have a, a, a game plan, but we also had that game plan on Ancient, and, you know, like, the things that happen, happen. So, like, let's see what's going to happen on Nuke. Well, let's do that, Heku. Mm. She brings up a very valid point that Heroic need to show face on Nuke. Yeah, what is it like? Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. That's exactly what happened on this first map. That's 100% what happened on this first map. So let's let's dive into what is a Heroic CT-sided start on Nuke. Is there something that they can garner from that just out of the gate? 
I mean, they got to come in with confidence, don't they? I mean, it is a CT side of map, so there is that to sort of run away with. But it's been a bit of an up and down map for them of late. So I don't know what that confidence I don't think they have, is really looking like. I don't like. think they have any confidence. I well, think that's, that's, what my, I that's my issue right it. now. It is, it is my issue. Um, it, it feels like on short term, they're in a very troublesome period. Uh, that pretty much started in the second overtime of the complexity game in Copenhagen. Feel like the Very storm, specific. like the turbulence has started here. And from this moment on, the captain hasn't turned out the seat bail signs. <laughs> There's no serving. Nobody's giving you a soda. You have to stay in your seat. It's very complicated for them. And they don't really have the body of work prior to that to help them work back into it. So you overly rely on individuals to kind of drag you over the finish line, give you sort of momentum. And we haven't really shown that quite yet. So I can understand why Kickstarter is struggling right now. And I don't think it's going to get any easier on Nuke against Furia. Oh, you'd have to imagine it's going to get more difficult, right? This is Furia's map pick. They've got a couple of big scalps on that map as well in recent times. So it's no doubt that they have been working hard on this map. They're going to be feeling comfortable going into it. They know what they need to do. They made a bit of a mistake yesterday by uh, letting that series against Maus get away from them. And now they have an opportunity to kind of run it back and, and make amends for it. And it's sort of the same type of situation. So you really want to see Furia learn from the mistakes that they had yesterday and come into the day and lock this one down clean as a whistle. You're talking a little bit about heroic finding that confidence. Now, I mean, if you're heroic, you're also trying to dismount the fury of confidence that you just got off of map one. Yeah, what is really complicated sometimes is that you have to manufacture plays that make you feel confident, but you have to play them as if you were confident. And that's where the snake kind of eats his own tail, right? It's really complicated to play with confidence. You know, you got to fake it until you make it. And that's usually oh, okay, a line yeah. that's really hard to walk in Counter-Strike. And I think Nerds and Nikodos are the two players that have to have to do it the most. Tess and Shush are a bit more stable and their roles and rounds are a bit more, this is how it's going to work, this is where you're going to be, and this is your sort of uh, route to follow. Whereas Nerds and Nikodos have to be creators. They have to be creative. And that usually comes with confidence. When you don't have it, it sucks. And that's not necessarily something you want to do on the fly either, but uh, such is the game that we have in front of us. I mean, it's what you got to do, right? This is you now being backed into a corner, so the chips are down for Heroic, and you've basically got to make the magic happen right here, right now. I mean, T-side pistol on Nuke, you can still get a lot of work done. There are a lot of options on the T-side of Nuke, so hopefully they've got some in the back of their mind that they can really get rolling early. And it is the kind of map that, you know, you can start to snowball, you can make things work, so... They I should mean, start City, right? They should start City. That's Furious Map pick. City. That's Heroic City, City sorry. Yeah, yeah so, okay, then no, we'll throw fine. that one in the bin, but I mean, that's maybe a, a conversation that we can have on the behalf of Furia, say, if they're feeling confident, if they're feeling good after Ancient, which no doubt they should be, especially after what we saw there on T-side, I mean, they could come out really hot here and uh, that'll be problems for Heroic, who, yeah, struggled maybe on that CT side. And for as much as we, we say words like confidence, right, you know, th these might seem like sweeping statements at a certain point but what really happens here is if you're a professional you're in the game you're in the server you're ready to play you've got to wipe that last map away I mean, I don't, I don't think you do. I mean, if you're Furia, obviously there's a little bit of confidence coming from that one, but what's important is to know what mindset your opponent will be in. And if I'm Fallen right now, if I'm the Furia guys, you know that they will try to make plays against you. You know they're going to try to reclaim the control that you kind of took away from them on Ancient. So what you do, you be a little patient. You make sure to punish any kind of these moves. If you punish the first attempt at being brave from Heroic and you're Furia, you punch your Tio. That's it. It's done. Oof. Just stop doing all these cartwheels and stuff with these headphones on. It's dangerous. Anyway, yeah, we go to Nuke. It's Heroic starting on the CT side. Furia looking to shut them down and stay alive. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. That's hashtag I am, baby. At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. You see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. <laughs> This is a major! Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
Furia get their flowers after taking Heroic down on Ancient. We now go to a bit of a Furia staple. It's Nuke now, and this is one where the Furia squad are incredibly well versed. kixan has got his work cut out for him, trying to decipher what's happening in this pistol round. And I can see from Furia's util, they've already come through with a uh, full bounty. And usually when they've got this much util and they've got this uh, Molotov on Fallen, this is actually indicative of an upper play for the Furia squad. They've shown a real tendency to take outside to try and work ramp. So this is something for Furia where they might blindside Heroic going for this top site exec. Oh, Cello again, just like Ancient, opening with a blinding P250 headshot. And just like that, the star of Heroic eclipsed. That's topical. That is very topical. Yeah. I looked at it. Looked great with my bare eyes. Yeah, your bare eyes. Can't see now, of course. No, I yeah. cast by feeling. And um, sound. Yeah. But look, you can see Heroic. We're trying to play around this tendency for Fury to try and go for the yard control and ramp by having Nikodos drop down lower right at the start of the round. That's going to leave him out of position now that this top site play is coming in. So Fury trying to game the info that Heroic might have had access to in this Ooh. pistol. Nice position for Kixon. They don't clear it as well and drawn into the back of the site where Tessez has his way with them. 
He's got to get that reload off, but no punishment with Kixon up above. Can they find either of these players? Nikodos reveals himself from the bench. Kixon reposition, and Art uses that smoke very well to slide in. Back of the site, but for how long is Tessez? As Nikodos is ro rotating round the world, back to outside. They're covering vent. Bomb will get stuck. Fallen able to reposition, and Nikodos, this one slips through his fingers. What a great mid round for Furia. Slowing down after the pick. Still ending with an exec. Fallen is on a bit of a long rotation here, but Nikodos can't win this. He's got to get the instant kill on the hut player. Only now realizing where he is. No one's backside, buddy. Tap comes in, but Fallen is the insurance policy guaranteed to win this round. And there is simply no time. Furia yet again take that pistol round. I think that's all three in the series. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they actually always come into these games with some very nice calls in the pistols. And don't get me wrong, we've seen Furia lose some horrible rounds versus pistols. But, Even uh, yesterday yeah, on this know, map. They, they they very much are, you know, trying to try trying a big bulk of ideas. And certainly but surely, I think they're piecing together a pretty gnarly playbook here. Even in that round, good awareness that Nikodos might have gone for this ramp drop. That's something he does a lot in these CT starts for, for Heroic on this map. So good awareness across the board from Furia. And uh, a nice way for them to continue riding the momentum of that dominant win back on Ancient. Force up now for Heroic. As they they, they kind of need to contest early on, right? You don't want Fury to go from strength to strength to open up this map. So they're hoping that this little force by dropping a couple of players down early, that's going to be enough to disrupt things. And a good understanding of how Fury like to abuse this vent control. There's something you're going to note with Fury's nuke a lot. Especially with Art in the team. Kind of goes without saying. If there yeah. was ever a candidate to try run down the vent, it's that guy. Um, but even now, you know, Heroic being set up like this means they're a little bit faster to try and deal with this yard control. And it leaves them options here. Furia, though, aren't going to look to play through secret by the looks of things. Oh, maybe they will. They're going to creep up behind these. And they walk close. Are so ready for a main split. But instead, they will attempt to cross out in the yard. And Nikodos and Tessez, as mentioned, they've been waiting down here since the start of the round. So Heroic, two players down lower already. Ah, something that Furia shouldn't be ready for. Nikodos Deagle, we saw it last map. What else has he got? Swinging off Tessez's contact. SMP9 wiggles. There it is. Nikodos. Oh, he falls immediately. Cello will help them out a little bit with a team kill, but it's not going to cost Furia too much. They've got that B site. And as long as they're confident after the double kill, this should be the bomb plant. No one's covering Vent right now as the only gap. But either way, Heroic aren't brazen enough to come flying down that ladder. They will just be looking to save their second round by Furia Convert. And we've yet to see the Heroic that we expected to show up today. They would leave this event if they fall here with only a win to 9Z, a disappointing debut against Liquid. And fall into a Furia that we did not expect to make this lower bracket run, but certainly have a shot. G2, Limvision, the other two teams in the lower bracket of Group A. So on paper, Furia G2. Potentially a spicy game. That'll be tomorrow. Yeah, I think someone that we that we really have to keep an eye on throughout this one is going to be Nerds, right? Because it was a little underwhelming for him to open on this CT side. He's going to be paramount, especially with what Furia like to do over towards the yard. That's where he's going to find himself in these rounds. And so he can't afford to have like another kind of quieter game. You know, like you know what Nerds is capable of. You know the ceiling this guy is able to hit. And he hasn't he hasn't delivered that, that, that thus far in this series. So I, I really hope we get a big Nerds game here. In fact, he's, he's going to have to have a big game if, uh, if Heroic want to keep the dream alive. Staring elimination dead in the face. That's his drop down early. You're already finding himself down towards lower. But Furia, this time they are going for that kind of outer control round. They walk through these wider smokes that they drop in. 
And now they have all this control over towards Garage. Art especially loves a adventure over on this side of the map, and this time he's got teammates with him. Oh, kicks and backing up means he doesn't have this cross. He won't see them make it to hell. Sure, Nikodos is here, but it's a USP. Can't expect a double think easily. Let's see how he fares. They're actually checking him on the climb up, so Nikodos giving it away. One dink. Yuri doesn't need to commit to this. He's got Cello to help out from the heavens. And they're wrapping this top side right now. Nikodos is really delaying the inevitable. Not on the reload. Tessis comes flying up. Okay, this round gets interesting, but not for long. Put down in an instant, and they are clearing this A site. Info to a player behind the silos. It's just a CT vent from Kixon comes clearing, but low health. And Shush is not long for this round either. Well done for Furia, converting a little claustrophobic eco round for Heroic. I mean, those ones can get out of control, right? That's why Furia approach it like it's a rifle round. They don't jump the gun thinking, hey, we're only up against those kind of saved pistols and armor, that SMG. It's a, it's a composed round for Furia. Composed is the word of the day, I think, for Fury. They've been very composed across this series. And while you talked about sometimes playing too passive in these weird, like, man advantage situations, it's panned out perfectly today. Heroic have never been able to get a foot in this game. So can they, on the CT side of Nuke, in the first gun round, make a statement? Nika does with the AWP outside. It's a fantastic position to cover this red cross right now. Are there smokes coming? No, just dry swing. Nice shot. Fallen. Oh, he's going to get hounded down and somehow hits that flake forward. No way. They drop in and save his life. This should not be a winnable round in what is now a two versus three for Furia. Cortez is creeping down lower, but Furia getting further and further forward. Yeah, Kicksand's taken away all this lobby space as well. And with Fallen still waiting out in the yard with the bomb on his back, the, the, the timing here hinges on both how deep does Kicksand want to go. It makes a lot of sense for him to just stay at the back of lobby and deny that ability for the bomb to come back around. And so he's probably never going to meet Fallen in the yard. Instead, it looks like Art was that next guy trying to make a move. But he's, he's scared about climbing up heaven. And a good reason, when you see Nikodar zorping from back there over towards CT, you know that Nertz has been freed up to go and play over towards Heaven, over towards this top site. And so they are expecting resistance here. So he decides against that climb up into the Heavens. And now they look to come in through main. Oh, the smoke is nice, but the shots are better. Nertz nails them to the wall as they line up and Heroic get it done. About time. Starting early in this game, very important. They got blown out of the water in the first half of Ancient. Yeah, and I th you know, that's going to be really important. Like, the moment you, you see the Furia have that ability to keep bringing out orbs on someone like Fallen, it does just change the way the game plays. You want to try and make life harder for Art. You want to try and make life harder for the Furia squad. They can't have it easy. And so getting on the board early, that's going to start to restrict this T-side money, and that's going to start to remove options from the playbook of the Furia squad. They're not just going to roll over and die, though. This is, uh, this is a very good map for Furia, and they are full of ideas here. So once again, they're going to go back to Yard, this time with the smokes. They learned about that AWP in the last round, and so they didn't want to leave it to chance this time. But Nikodar's getting away with the spam, and an early drop from Nertz on that rotate again finds himself down at lower now. Right time, right place for Nertz to stand and deliver. Oh, this is awkward. The flash before the door pop. Everything's getting... Uh shaken up by nerds with two kills on top crossfire was lovely there for heroic ample ro times to rotate after furious start running down secret and that was just a bit of an ugly explosion for furia more like it for heroic oh god missing the vent that was going on all day yesterday for art and for caserato happens to the best of us okay we have, oh, where to go? Fallen with the scout. Art drops it over, or Kestrata does rather. This is reassuring though for Heroic, man. This is what they needed. And it's a nice start from both Nikodos and Nertz in this kind of tandem rotate setup over towards outside. This time they are both roaming the yard together. And with only the scout to worry about, 
Poland's hoping hoping that he's given a fight early here at some of these longer angles, some of these longer ranges, but Heroic aren't really feeling that pressure, especially with a second player to, to help you in every one of these fights, right? You can kind of wait till the pistols close in, but no. Poland, he tried his hand at the second. That's at least let the pistols cross, and now they're going to look to try and wrap Nerds out in the garage. Easily done, should be with them fours from range. Arts grab the gun, but he can't get the kill. Shush with three. Armless Fury they just get turned into mincemeat. And Heroic level the score, three all. If Orton has another half a second, I just know he hits that scout headshot on Nerds. He's so good with this gun. Fury are now feeling the burn, calling their timeout, the first of the series. As Heroic have woken up on Nuke, as they'll need to, to avoid a devastating 0-2 elimination in this game. And a swift flight back home. This is their second most played map. Certainly got the experience on it. We saw them a couple of times at the Major. Not much to write home about there on Nuke. Yeah, I mean, the, the map picks in this series are kind of a similar state for both teams, right? When Heroic pick into to Ancient, sure, it's a map that they've looked really good on, but it's also a map that Furia have loads of reps on. And it's like the same can be said about Nuke, but the other way around, right? It might be Furia's best, and it might be one that Heroic have certainly had some, some pitfalls on, but it is a map they have a lot of reps on. And so both teams are going to be coming into this with a lot of ideas as to how they can approach it. Oh, Nico Dots outside aggressive. That's what I like to see. He's got to go really far forward thanks to that Molotov. Spam puts the fear in him, but he'll make it behind red. And there's no more util to get him out of this position outside either. Nice spam. Yuri's moving through these smokes, trying to get into a better position. He can play later from main now. Nico Dots still owns outside, but any further forward, and he will be in trouble. They try and battle kicks him with a spam. Meanwhile, double ramp setup. Tessis knows he's coming. Sees a shadow, makes it easy. Shush is ready. There's no way Fury can win this ramp fight with such, such a setup, but they do turn away outside, and there's Yuri activating from behind main. Third supporting member at ramp, and none of them required. It's all Tessis. Getting it done with a double, and Nika Doz finishes the job. That's the round that takes the lead for Heroic, and I think that's the nicest feeling round this team has played yet. I mean, there were some serious gambles taken there. Heroic start two over towards ramp, and then everyone else is out in yard. That means the only a site player you have is Kixan in main. There was no one else, no one backside, no one rafters, no one heaven. And where did Furia go? Ramp and outside. And that is exactly what Heroic were poised for. That's like the first round in this whole series where Kixan feels like he's actually ahead of the calls that Furia are making. Oh, deep door molly, and they were trying to pop through as well. Case Rotos has been forced forward, but a counter Volaton on the T side has made his life easy. They've got to come through this smoke and try and stop this. As the T's in Golf A, not for long. Shush with a lovely mow down. As he pops through that smoke and Nertz is even supporting as well. You're not getting down this vent. Oh, Fallen! Blistering shot. 2v2. He won't drop down B. There are guns to get. There's an open A site and there's a plant perhaps. Fallen goes for the full stick. Expects respect and gets exactly that. Heroic group together. Taking their time and doing it silently as well. I mean, you don't want to go from the high-flying success of that last round of falling down now versus the Tech Nines. Flashing themselves in. Nikodos tries to drop on into Ooh. the site, but it's Tessez taking first contact. All eyes on Yuri as he tries to muster up the courage to win this 1v2. Oh. Him and Tessez touching each other in the smoke. Yuri doesn't fight yet, but tries to connect on the spam, and he just falls shy of it. Nikodos sticking oh. that defuse. Best decision he ever made. Ooh. A very close round, but one that Yuri is sadly not able to provide, and for Heroic, they breathe a collective sigh of relief. Now, after Shush does this, the round doesn't get away from them. What a play for Shush, pushing through that smoke with no flash as well. Such a dangerous move, but makes it look very easy. It's that awkward reposition out main, jumping out through the smoke in the 2v1 that puts Fury in a rough spot, and lovely work! 
Oh, he unscopes. He might be dead, but his job is done. Double through the door for Nikodos. Fury needs to stay away from Squeaky. They are getting turned into mincemeat here. Four on two. Dixon, he commits and he wins another fight. Heroic playing very aggressive right now and it's working wonderfully. Nerds will put a bow on it and Heroic finally have a reason to cheer. Six to three now on the CT side. Uh, yeah, I mean, th this is this is a, a beautiful CT side being put forward from Heroic. And, you know, the, the kind of big question was, could they bounce back after being dealt such a, a rough hand on that previous map? But we're seeing all these pieces working beautifully and in, and in tandem with one another for the Heroic squad. The the dynamicism that's brought forward from Nertz and Nikodos with them swapping out positions over towards the yard. You're always left guessing where that AWP is going to end up. Nertz is developing a lot of confidence to go for these plays, and Kicksand's come alive. He's a whole different player to the one that you were yeah. up against over on Ancient. He was and that cool. feels like it's reflecting in like his read of the game as well, right? Like The reason why he's getting away with these kills is he's pushing Lobby on good timings at the right moments. And so now Heroic could still get tested in this round. They were aggressive into the Lobby. They were aggressive on the Yard. And that's great for denying Fury a space, but it means you're slower to rotate. And so right now, it's only Nikodos down at lower. He's in a great position. They're holding the door, ready to pop in with a flash. What a play for Furia. And they catch him completely blinded. Nurse has cleared the lobby, and that's freed up Kixon to drop back down. But still, Furia have control, and they're taking more space. Ramp is now there as Kixon can't stop this bomb, surely, with the smoke in his face. A second too late. Shush making a play with that smoke. He's got a bit of room, bit of cover. Shadow getting shot in the back. Can't pick a target. And Fallen can't get back into safety or out of position. Nerds is nerding out right now. And nine kills on him. Another multi-kill as Heroic get a yet another retake. This time on B. Very mobile is Nerds. He's outside pushes. You really don't know about them, but most of them, but they are losing a lot of control. And very even, aggressive retake. Yeah, yeah, you know, even even what you just said there about them kind of losing this control outside, those aren't normally problems Fury you encounter. Usually outside is where this team can find a lot of success. And so the fact that that's kind of being removed from their wheelhouse now and going the way of Heroic, that is a big red flag for Fury. Uh, Ramp does feel like the only way they're getting in, right? Like this outside control from Nikodos and Nerds is scary enough. When they've gone squeaky door, they're getting absolutely slammed shut. So Ramp gap, probably your best bet. Man, even even that is is a hard one to guess. Thanks to this kind of synergy that you've got between Nerds and Nikodos and this AWP finding itself in that rotate position, you you never know where it's going to end up. And it's not uncommon for Nikodos to start over towards CT or up in the heavens. And when that happens, you know, usually ramp is kind of a bit of a one-two punch with that AWP rotating in slightly later. It kind of feels like you, you need to get the info on where this AWP is and then react accordingly. But they might get given the opener here. Tess says gets aggressive in through ramp, and now they learn the orbs in main. At this point, I would kind of love for Fury to try and seize this ramp control. Oh, again, Nerds it just keeps walking it dry outside. There's the ramp pop as a result, but it's still a one for one. Shush, not bad. Nikodos must respect it. Hold for a deep angle instead. Fallen. It's all a fake. They don't take the ramp room. They go back and reclear lobby. Are they really looking to go outside, or are they just trying to contain Nerds, who has reset himself down lower? Okay, Serato considers that backstab, but this is just wasting time for Furia. At least it pulls the wall over Heroic's eyes as well. They have no info outside. They don't know how deep Furia, in theory, could be. And Fallen just wants Kixon to step into his crosshair here at CT Vent. That would make his life very easy. Good shot. Okay, Serato finishes the job, and now Upper is open for business. Nikodos dropping in. Nurse is not a factor in this round. He is not a part of it. It's just this AWP to worry about. If they try and drop down the vents, Ooh. then Nurse very much has his chance to play. Oh my go. god, no one's looking at it. But it's it's crazy to go up. No one goes up the vent here. No one calls their bluff like that. Lost the AWP. They don't even know where Nikodos has gotten to. Fury, this was looking good for a moment. But now there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of uncertainty in this round. They've just got to plant. They just so got to plant weird. and hope that eventually one of these two players turns up. Orbs come hunting. Patient game. 
And up the vent flies Nika Doz. Nice shot, tag, fall and finishes Nerds. And Nika Doz is saving at the end of the half for that final round, that final hurrah. I mean, they have max money. He could literally die, it wouldn't make a difference. You could buy five orbs. That's what his team are telling him. Just go for it. At least play for stats here, because Furia have guaranteed a fourth round. Fallen's orb on Nuke continues to be a terrifying prospect. And Nika Doz will die to the bomb. There it is. Yeah, Fury oh. desperately needed that. They needed to break through, and they yeah. found their solution, right? They, they kind of problem-solved on the fly. When they saw Nerds getting aggressive out in the yard, when they heard that orb fire off, and then you get gifted this kill over towards ramp, it kind of exposed too much of a, a vulnerability for Heroic. A lot was given away on those three different peaks all across the map, even though the success level varied across the board. It gave them enough to actually adjust on the fly and take some real estate for a change. Finally, it was them in the driving seat of a round. And so now we see Fallen trying to shut down that route for the AWP to pick main early. Back to back rounds, he's done that. I'm so surprised to see him willing to take that challenge with the nades heroic have thrown through door, the mollies, the AWP. They've used everything. They've never lost that fight, but Fallen again scopes it, hoping for the best. Sephiria just saw them lob a smoke over towards the door, and you wouldn't be doing that if your AWP was posted up main looking for a peek. So I wonder if they try to play around the idea that Nikodos is elsewhere. Yeah, They're going to go smokes. looking out in towards the yard and with the util down. They will have that route to cross. Nikodos is going to try to blow this open. AWP gets involved, Ooh. and Art's on the receiving end of it. And as is often the case, it's not just Nikodos here out in the yard. There's Nerds as well as that left-hand punch. Out of Heroic. No wonder Furia have stayed away from Yard on this T side. It's been absolutely shut. No parking. Okay, Serato. Inside of that door smoke, and Nikodos is ready to drop vent at a moment's notice. He can get a shot and then fall down the ladder. This is going to be an easy kill for Nikodos, you want to think. Cello's coming in for the two-man play. Oh, he's seen it. Easy done for Nika Dos. He can come back up. He's feeling confident. He's cooking with gas right now. Oh, Wallbang connects. Careful, buddy. 20 seconds, though. Furia falling flat on their face at the end of the half. They go gunning for the vent. Cello gets that entry, but no bomb, no chance. It's eight rounds for Heroic. They are making a recovery on Furia's map pick of all places, trying to survive another night in Chengdu.
Latest reports read that we indeed have a game after all. Hiroki hit a play on New because they were only rounds away from elimination. Furia now have to perform the comeback, the Heimlich on their CT side. What say you, Harry? Are we done in two or do we need overpass? Uh, I mean, it, it's a tricky one to answer, man. Furia, their CT side is no slouch and... I think so much of it now is just going to hinge on, I'm feeling like they can bring themselves back into this game, and that all starts with this pistol round right here and now, but fast top side play oh, out of Heroic, right. and they immediately find success. Oh, the struggle here, Ouch. and it's going to continue just the one and done. Fallen's backstab looking to fall on deaf ears, but Careful. he's recovered it somewhat. Nice. Now they know about him. Oh. 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 <laughs> That's the thing about the Julies. You can never be sure. You can never be sure whether he's going to get none or six. You know, he could kill everyone. Those guns hit hard and they hit fast. This is starting to get a little rough, man, if uh, if you're a Furia fan. Great news, though, if you're into Heroic. Let's talk about what we've seen from these guys so far. Ancient was was very, very flat, and, and and they were almost entirely playing around the whim of Furia, whereas the moment we get onto Nuke here, it's clear they come in with ideas, with a game plan. They might not have found success in the pistol, but the moment those rifles came out, it was it was a whole different story for, uh, for Heroic. When I look at this squad, I feel like I, I never really have to talk about Tessas and Shush because they're so stable, they're so dependable. Yeah. The kind of unknown quantities in this squad is Nerts and Nikodos. Nerds, you're always curious what form you're going to get out of him if he's able to kind of hit those high heights that we've seen because he's had a few strugglesome games. And Nikodos is that other man who sometimes can fly under the radar, but you've seen him dominate games on the AWP. And I think for these two, they've been the focal point for me. Their ability to play with each other out in the yard was paramount to the success of Heroic CT side. Felt like it gave Kixan a lot more to work with. And I think we've finally seen him take control of the cooling in this matchup. Fury are now the ones playing from behind they're playing catch up they're playing around what heroic bring to the board and i think it gets a little bit harder here uh, now that they've lost the pistol they're going to be playing with their backs against the wall the entire time on the furious side they're like one rifle round away from having this game snatched out of their hands and it's made even harder by the fact that heroic are a pretty defaulty team for the most part right like they, they start the pistol there not going slow through the lobby it is like a real knockout blow the a site exec but as the guns come out, you'll see them just kind of sit with it in a good few of these rounds back in the lobby, wait and reaction gauge. Or sometimes you'll have Nerts lurking over towards there. Uh, a real menace when he's in his element on the lurk. Do we have another rush? Straight to ramp. AC play and the MP7 of Nerts rips the head off one. It will follow up and this right. is an easy ante. You, you cackle to yourself there. Like that's... That's our, Art's whole bread and butter is like going for that sort of buy in these rounds and you just rushed it aside so casually. And Kixan went from barely being able to get a kill on that first map got three. to now landing beautiful little transfers in that one round. He gets more kills than he, or the same kills as he did on all of Ancient. Love that yes. for him. Love that for him. Happy chappy. And heroic. I mean, this is it. Win this gun round. You've basically locked in overpass. And this game resets all again. Felt like a destiny for Furia to knock them out after such a dominant blow in that uh, opener. Also, I'm going to say, I feel bad for Fallen. You guys were playing out of his mind all yeah. across Chengdu. Even now, he's like the only guy in double digits for Furia. Shooting for the stars, but now it's Yuri and Keiserato both going quiet. Oh, what a flash. The full blind in main. Thank goodness is a back garage player to provide a trade, but it doesn't matter when they still cross secret so free and they do it silently. His nerds on his lurk, yeah. right? Down through the vent already. So even as Furia would have tried to react and try to scramble players down to the lower side, Nerds is waiting in the vent with an SMG ready to go, ready to deny one of the available paths to that rotate. Just a, a very well put together T side in that first rifle round. The call is decisive. They drop down onto main. They blindside out as that first man to fall. And from there, it just goes from strength to strength for heroic. So a very different looking team. Whatever was said in between maps, my God, say that to each other every time. I don't know what they did. But it's clear they came into this with a vision for how they wanted to disrupt what has been a very good map to Furia as of late. Weirdly enough, their only loss being two Lin Vision, and we all remember that one. 
Although we try not to. Yeah, yeah, we do try to forget it. But as you said, coming into this, they even took down Mouse on this map the other day, did Fury, right? They're not to be underestimated on Noob. That was yeah. wrong. It's not like the go-to map of the Mouse team by a long margin, but Mouse are a very good squad. Very hard squad to put away, as Fury learned. Despite their best efforts with that 10 2 comeback. Had a couple of those long ones back in this tournament already. FlyQuest gave it a go earlier. Well, VP gave it a go. FlyQuest closed that map. They still lost the series. But in, also, just nice to see the Aussies actually look like a cohesive unit. More on that later. They've got to make that lower run much ado. Much do these two teams as well, rather. Got a rush up upper, a little delayed, but players get caught off guard with some well-placed flashes. Double entry, Caserato saving the day, but not enough. Two will not do in this scenario, and we've got Yuri and Fallen against the inevitable heroic. Resmoked in main, Fallen has to go big mode. That's really the only way back in, and that molly makes it very difficult. Yuri should delay this till Fallen's ready. And there's a re-smoke. Snade could be good, though, in the open. Oh, he can't get the shot off. Fallen trades, 1v2. Got to go flying high out of the heavens. Molly lands, and Fallen's decision is made for him. Save as Heroic take map point on Furious pick. Or do they? Yes. Ah, uh, now they do. Run! I mean... No, no kit. The, the pace, the pace set forward from Heroic throughout this T side has been blistering. They want to try and capitalize on a Furia they can tell is like stun locked by their heroic uh, by their heroic squad's performance on this map, and they've done exactly that, right? Furia in that round there had util, they had stuff to throw in and to try and slow this down, but it, instead of any of that, they're kind of sitting around with their nades out, and Heroic have just hit them with. A, a blistering pace time after time. So much so that Furia looks silly at the end of that round, right? Yeah. But it's just the explode out through heart. There's barely anything. It's just this A main smoke lobbed in. I think one flash lobbed in through the skylights. And Furia aren't expecting that. They're thinking that they're going to have these rounds where it's like Nertz is slowly. Oh, look at him. He's slowly walking through the lobby. Oh, will he get someone? No, he won't. Like, how exciting. But instead, Heroic are coming at them. Like a, like a team that were always meant to win this map. They yeah. are playing with no respect for Furia right now. I was going to say, complete disrespect. All game, all map, in and out of the server. Fallen, good position. He hits his. This guy's still got it, man. Looks as good as he did out of the box. Oh, <laughs> lucky he missed that, to be honest. There's a molly deeper anyway. <gasps> oh, the leg. Fallen built diff. Again, we got this deep flash. Get, oh, it's a smoke rather going to get that main cut off. It's Yuri alone outside right now. He's got almost nothing around him. Molotov pushes him out. Kickson still falls before. And Yuri just trying to buy time. Buy one more. He cannot. Four on three. They could go searching lobby right now. That could be a... Good solution for Furia. They've lost a lot of control. They're going to give a bit of room to Shush, right? They know the real estate this guy's got right now. And this is one of those rounds where Nertz is lurking back in the lobby. And so if Shush is able to gain some real estate over towards heaven, they have a very scary A pinch taking place to Heroic. Furia, they desperately need to maintain this heaven control. Problem for Art is he feels a bit silly just sitting here and holding it, right? Like he knows the outside's been lost. So he has to pay the respect to this position. But he's constantly going to have that voice in the back of his head, especially if Nerds is able to take some contact here, that he might need to help the top site. He might need to be available to lend a helping hand. So he tries to get ahead of this by swinging out and taking the info out in the yard. Nerds falls. And Furia look to deal with this A pincer. It's only Nikodos left in the 1v2. An impossible clutch for 10 seconds. They don't bite on the fake. Now he has to stick if he wants this round. And Art just comes flying. It's a good play. But he needs to get this kill immediately. Oh, almost misses his chance. Oh, let, allows Nika Dodds to get a shot off. But still Furia find the round. And the run down there, that's nice. You know Nika Dodds has to stick. If he fakes, you win. If he sticks, as long as you get that kill off quick. All crisis averted for Furia. Nice control for Art on that heaven slide. Good, good read of the situation from Art across the board in that round, right? Uh, 
well aware. I mean, hell, like this guy, Art loves, Art loves rapping heaven. You know, he knows what they're trying to do when outside's been lost for that long. And I like that he just takes the initiative before they can get everyone ready. He goes and fights the player in heaven. That is still a risky move, right? You have to highlight it. That's not one without room to go horribly wrong for Furia. But he wins the fight, and so he kind of dismantles their ability to collapse onto the A site as a result. Oh, Fallen doing it again. He's back outside, back to his old tricks. Tucked in in secret with a surprise. A nasty one at that. Heroic are going to cross late. Do they check it? Do they molly it even? Do they even believe that Fallen would do this two rounds in a row? No one's ever done something twice, right? Oh, on the fly smokes. Evan oh. Tess says this time gets his revenge. They don't even need to cross down lower. They're doubling back outside into Cello, who just avoids Tessa's fading that smoke. Nika Doz with a close clear. They want to get this top hit, but they've lost two men in the process. Cello spinning, turning on a dime. Dealt with by Kixon, who's on for a clutch. Three kills from the captain. The bomb comes down, and Art is not armed for this one. He is late to the party. Climbing up the ladder allows Kixon to disappear into the lobby. Can I get a whiff? Can he get a spot? I think he just did. He's going to drop in, got a kick, got a flash, got everything he needs but the kill, and he's just going to tap it. Kixon, as he bites, well, it doesn't matter. Art nails him to a post, and Furia live to fight one more round. Another close clutch up on the A site. Yeah, both coming from Art as well, who uh, plays that one very, very well within the confines of what he's dealt with. The fact that he gets that spot of kicks out moving back through the hut is the whole reason he's able to win it. He plays with the knowledge of exactly where kicks out is going to peak that from. And so his positioning is, uh, is keen to deal with it. Timeout called in for Heroic. They can feel that the game is changing slightly and they want to capitalize right now where they still have plenty of chances. No one's worried yet. No one's stressed. There's no pressure building Yeah, Fury would never pull Heroic. a game all the way back hey. only to lose it. They would never do that, Harry. We've not seen that. Hey, hey, hey. We have seen that. Here oh, here. yeah, yesterday. I they were one round away. You remember? One, we were there. One round away from playoffs. Hey, this is, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not an easy lower bracket. Need I say so? Just by pointing at the score, but also G2 waiting down here as well. They got mouths to feed. 12 to 6. Furia back to back, close clutches on A. They need something convincing. One of the things that's nice about this still for Heroic, even though like two rounds have gone the way of Furia, they've been very expensive. They've been very costly for the Furia squad. So you don't have to worry about things like that orb in Fallen's hands oh my just God. yet. Art just rush lobby, but completely whiffed. And this game is over. Wrap it up, folks. Overpass is waiting. Furia just get knocked out. Art took his spawn. He had Nerds looking the wrong way. Nerds just flicked back and headshot him. So that is awkward. Fury make a call. It doesn't quite work out. And they pay the price. The price is a third map. The price is potentially elimination. Fallen's position given away. And his ramp rush is given Tessa's information as well. They're out upper. Keserato getting crept upon here. Nerds, a knockout blow. One shot, can't connect it. Keserato stands tall. Fallen gets spotted, but he takes one more with him. That's a bomb loose. Nikodos shows the AWP outside. There's a Heaven player. Fallen might find him. Fallen oh! finds him. 2v5 down to a 2v2. Fury, not another clutch up. Not another impossible round. Dink is done. Can Keserato finish what him and Fallen started? Fallen's been so clean across this whole map, across this whole event. But now it rests in Keserato, the struggling furious star. As he creeps oh. out, Nikodos gets rid of him. And Heroic will live to fight another day, another map, and another chance to be the ones eliminating Furia.
You guys, you, get, you smell that? Something like, it's like Heroic's cooking in here. Ooh. Oh my goodness, who would have saw it coming? That's right, we look at Heroic, 13-6. That means the series has gone back the opposite way, which Ooh. does lead us into a third and final map of Overpass. Don't worry, we'll be getting into that nitty gritty here sooner rather than later. My name's Trace, alongside of me is gonna be Mathieu, and then Jordan over to his left as well. 13-6, Heroic showing up a lot better here in space. Yeah, the roar from Nurse at the very end, I think is super telling, not only Reaction as a team, a reaction individually, right? A guy who put a whole lot of pressure and scrutiny towards, and he answered on Nuke. He did what we wanted from him, you know, multi-kills, aggression, proactivity. Nah, that was the nerds that we wanted to. That was the star. Yeah, very decisive stuff. I mean, 13-6, uh, you can't really be complaining about that all that much. And then, obviously, we had our questions. Where is Nerds? Well, he has arrived now, 19-9 and nine on that map. And Here. a lot of multi-kills, a lot of impact coming through from him as well. It felt as though Heroic really needed someone to get the ball rolling. It hasn't necessarily been uh, anything too fantastic in this event so far from Heroic, but this is the Heroic that we wanted to see, and we're starting to get a bit of an insight as to what they can actually bring here in China, and hopefully they're going to be able to continue to do that throughout this series. I love this highlight reel we got right here from Nerds as well. Some of the kills on the CT side where he was way, way far the CT line, way far the defense line, if you will, deep into the T side, twice under side of finding kills, going for the kill. This is where he's actually activated. You know, he's not he's not like the stable, off-angle kind of guy. He's the, I walk into the duel, I create my duel, and get him home. Yeah, you could control the fight if you mm -hmm. kind of dictate where it is, right? Speaking of which, round 15 might be evidence of that. Oh my god, talk about a team that plays with speed. Heroic, T-side here, they did figure out a whole lot of different ways, and that strategy in itself tells exactly that. Talk about being bamboozled if you're a Furia. <laughs> we see here Tessus, he talked about his role and how complicated it can be sometimes to entry. He gives his whole life to find an opening, but that opening throws such a wrench that Yuri loses track of the attack. He literally runs blindsided into a smoke with three players is waiting for him behind and you can see heroic here with the speed knew how to throw fear off the scent knew how to surprise them and that was a quick round decided in a matter of 15 seconds 20 seconds and all of the rounds from heroic had the same flavor they had momentum they had speed and honestly fear can keep up great yeah, it really just felt like Furia kind of got a little bit lost on this map, right? I mean, it is their map choice and they only get the six rounds on it. Nothing felt like it got going for them at all. I mean, the individuals that we were talking about on the previous map as well kind of fell off a little bit. Art living by the sword, dying by the sword. And in this case, he's uh, unfortunately not really able to deliver on nukes. So, uh, you know, you looked at you know, who's going to step up, who's going to keep the ball rolling. And there wasn't really anyone doing that aside from Fallen, but he, again, wasn't really doing enough. Yeah, there were some rough moments there to watch Art kind of run around on Nuke. And we, I mean, there was a time where he was running around on Nuke doing whatever he wanted. But sometimes here, you got to scratch your head a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the last round, like this 5v2 that take. turns into a 1v2. That might be a one example. Very, very strange situations. Yeah, listen, it's a little bit scrappy. I think this the kind of strike that we were expecting. Um, maybe not from Furia, but from Ori, you can understand that some rounds are a little bit crazy, crazy. But okay, now, so what happened here? Let's just address ooh, ooh. the elephant in the room. A very strong words coming out of Art, out there, colleagues from HLTV interview, he talks about, you know what? Some people, maybe the desk, talk a little bit of bullshit. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. The answer happens on the server. Well. Should we have a look at what happens on the server? Should we have a look know, at Maniac. the results? I feel like you're cooking here too. Listen, if the writing's on the wall, then that's what happens on the server, right? So I have a few problems with that quote. First one is, I don't think you have the legwork to back it up. I don't think you get the result to back it up. You can't have this attitude if these are the results. Secundo, it's been a long time since you guys have been playing with this roster. You've had time to figure out said problems. And then third, what are the problems? Why don't you let us in a little bit? If we're waffling BS at the desk, which I'm open to the idea, Enlighten us. Enlighten us a little bit. Like, what, what are we missing? What is it that we are truly and completely missing? How can we be so off the mark? Is it, it's been so complicated for so long. Like, do I need to go to an ophthalmologist, have an eye test done? Do I need to do that? I don't think so. I mean, if you can see that screen, you're probably pretty good if I had to guess. Uh, but yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from. And I'm going to stop you right there because the, his name is Maniac. That's M-A-N-I-A-C, Maniac. And those are his thoughts and not explicitly all of ours. However, we do get to hear from the coaches here to check in. Gary's got some words for us. I had an opportunity to talk to Gary about like, the current map. It was Nuke, and he said that like, unfortunately they didn't get as many rounds as they expected on the T side. Maybe if they got a little bit more, it would work out, but like, unfortunately they were just dying a bit too early in the rounds. Uh, yesterday we saw from Heroic that they were not that successful at defending, unlike today, but it all comes to the third map, so it's going to be a long series. Yes, indeed, Heku. That is why we're going to pivot now to Overpass. Um, and in doing so, let's kind of take everything that we've gotten into the series up to this point. It is an elimination game. You're going to put it all out there at this point. So let's think about some of the confines here, Jordan, of, of what Overpass could constitute. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? I think when you go back and look at the history, it's kind of hard to really get a great grasp of Furia on this map in the last few months. They did have that loss to Ecstatic, which is kind of weighing on my mind a little bit. I think Heroic are kind of finally starting to power up a little bit in this series as well. If we get Nerds at his peak performance and if we get Nikodos in particular maybe starting to find his feet as well on this map, CT side, I think that's where things could potentially start to fall apart for Furia. I wonder if they're just running out of steam a little bit here in IEM Chengdu. Hmm. It was a late night for them last night. They had a lot of maps, uh, sorry, a lot of maps and obviously a lot of rounds played against Maus and they're kind of in that same situation again today now against Heroic who seem like they're you know, faring a little bit better in that respect. If you're going to take sniper, uh, talk snipers rather, sorry, I think this is where we circle back to our Nikodos v Fallen situation. Okay. And I don't think I've seen enough to change my mind as of to who's got the upper hand here. I don't disagree. Fallen definitely uh, is putting a, a great performance in this event in general, but today once again, and uh, Overpass has always been a map where no matter how strugglesome his fall might have been, he might just, you know, roll back, roll back the ages, roll it back and have these great performances. So I trust in him a whole lot on this map. Uh, do you, Grandmaster Trace, possess the oh, knowledge no. oh, oh, oh. of who's starting on what side um, on this said map of Overpass? Maybe someone from production can chirp in, your, can chirp in your ear? Uh, uh, there is a knife round there. there I, I, that's how these things are decided. I, maybe I thought Sorry, maybe I that's you. happening already, you know? No, we saw them cool, walk man. back in front it's of cool. us. Well, um, I'm going to have to wait and sit on that information. I feel like it's going to be extremely telling. The reason I say that is that what I've shown you guys on Nuke, like the pace from Heroic and like the crazy play style, it's not really fitting to Overpass. Like it's really hard to play that unless you want to hit that B fast monster. Yeah. You have to accept a slower pace, but it's a bit more um, skirmishy in a way. And I, I don't know if that fits them right it's now. It's a very CT sided map as well at the moment, right, isn't it, is. it? So it's one of those things where if you do get to start on that CT side, you can put yourself in a great spot. But then again, there's like that double edged sword where maybe you lose the T side pistol or lose to the T side pistol and things kind of snowball out of control. You only, only need like three or four rounds on T side of this map to feel comfortable. So so let's let's just break it down Barney style. I, as can, I, feel, like I can feel like you have an information. Like I just, I just don't have that information for you yet. <laughs> Damn. But I do want to know, like now that we have arrived at map three, who you got uh, you gonna stick to your guns what did I, I said here we got the very beginning right oh I no like it's the one you called did. the astralis yeah, yeah i called okay. the astralis one i'm not gonna take credit here uh, no we I, did say heroic we definitely said yeah heroic. fine i was gonna try and uh, weasel my way out <laughs> he kind of burned myself on that one i was gonna say furia but now yeah oh okay can I, and I, I can turn my coat right? i'm allowed to do that yeah, yeah it's very swiss of you very Swiss. No, no, we we don't do well, that. Not we stay. Don't like, choose. Right in the middle. I exactly. cannot be Swiss on the desk. I would get fired immediately. 
Okay. I can say, you know, if they play well, maybe they win. But if they play bad, maybe they lose. <laughs> Joe, that's not bad. I have heard analysis just like that at one point. But some people get not here. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's call it where it is. I think we've more than established the fact that we need to overpass between these two teams to find out who's going to be staying alive here in Chengdu. That's right. It is heroic. It is Furia. And it's overpass standing between them. It's the Intel Extreme Masters, y'all. We'll be right back. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL, this is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. The party won't stop. It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead this late in the game?
They started this series a little sleepy, but Heroic have well and truly entered the server as they pick up a dominant win on Furious map pick. Both games going 13-6 so far. This one's for elimination at the bottom of Group A. Loser of Overpass goes home. Yeah, and uh, for Furia here on our screens, a team that were one round away from playoffs just yesterday versus Maus. This is not ever where they wanted to end up. A decider map now versus a heroic that have woken up, spearheaded really by a fantastic performance from the captain, but also Rising Star Nerds getting switched back online after a very strugglesome start to the series. The, the star pieces are emerging for Heroic, whereas for Furia, we still have yet to see K Serato in that world beating form, really across the entire event. Last map was quiet for Cello and Yuri as well. It's only been fallen as that consistent piece of this team. Triple Julies. My oh my. I do like these. K Serato's got a crazy flash for B. And now it has a smoke. Thank you, Jakey. We've got everything lined up, ready for this B rush, but it is going to be Heroic taking middle, showing face, and going back perhaps to this B setup where Nerds waits. So the more patient Fury are, the better this will pay off. Have you seen this crazy new run boost orb strat on Overpass, Harry? No. No, okay, I'll show you later. Oh, actually, yes, I yeah. have. I have, I have. I wonder if we'll see that today. It's pretty out. The Olaf boost 2.0. Oh, yeah. Maybe. A man can dream. But Heroic, they got to make it a reality here. Walking through that B monster into this flash smoke setup. Cello, what you got? These flashes from Keiserato better be incredible. They better be like the best flashes I've ever seen because he's going to have to lob these in now and hope that this sets up his teammates Lovely. for success. Cello with one. That's enough to tip the scales in Furia's favor. But he will get tapped out oh. shortly after and rotating in a little later is Keiserato. Oh, clean. Trades his teammate down in pit. They're fighting from short, but these Julies don't have the range on them. And Tessa's actually beaten out to low T's inside of the site here. The info should be clear to Furia. That bomb taking a lot of space, but nowhere near the plant. It's actually Furia who back up. Heroic will not feel comfortable to plant here, but they've got to do it. Ten seconds. Someone's got to stick that bomb and provide cover. Now it's denied. They can just rush this. Unwinnable for Tessez. No matter what he does, he's done. He's dead. He is dusted as Furia sweep it under the fridge. Save that for later. Yeah, fantastic that works out. The, the one thing I was worried about, right, is you have Case Serato lining up the flashes for those B-site players. In a way, you know, leaving yourselves 2-1-2 two -two like that, it kind of makes you a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And at least the flashes are, are really sound to yeah. get Cello the kill. And then Case Serato comes in and finally kind of lives up to the hype with a big 3K. You're going to see him in that sort of rotate position. He'll be the first to leave that site. He'll be the first to rotate back down as well. So, you know, he's at least at home playing over towards CT at the back rail, but here's the push in towards this B site, and it's quick, it's fast. This time, there's no flashes. Oh, a pacey round, but that smoke is a real problem. It gives Nurse nowhere to go but gray screen. Cello down in the water gets a double, and they're going to keep trying to push the issue here. It's not going to get any better. Cello patient, kicks and reloading, and ooh, some steps made, but Tech Nines are not going to win this one out here. Okay, Ard gets a bit hungry, but there's Cello finishing what he started. And Nika does Deagle, we've seen it once a series before. It would need to be even better now. Surely not. Surely not. Shadow, and a shot off, but they can swing with him. He finds a kill, but Furia find the round. Yeah, they play it very safe. They're ready to trade and swing off of one another. You've got a lot of angles there to worry about if you're Nikodos and Fury don't make life easy for him. They're not keen on feeding that Deagle, as you've said. You've already seen what it's capable of. Heroic tried their hand at an up-tempo play and awards that B-site, but that round was with some investment. Means they're going to have another low Econ 1 here. They buy up a hero gun on Tessez. That's dropped over by Captain Kicksan. And so a chance for him to keep the pressure on, make this round expensive. And I tell you what, like... Oh, hello. He's just... Is he Probably readjusting? Fine. He's just, just readjusting. readjusting. Yeah. He's yeah. just having a bit of a... You know, if you're going to have the hero gun, your headset wants to be on your head properly. So that's what that he's is, doing there. Yeah, bare minimum. Um, there is... Okay, I do have one slight worry about this round. Go as on. crazy as that is. Go but on. Fallen's only running dualies. Not a problem. If the AK gets dropped 
and you're up against largely armorless opponents, that is not an issue. If Tessez is able to open the round and then you get a gun in the hands of Shush, suddenly I'm actually very paranoid about this round. So let's see the mileage that Tessez gets out of this hero AK. Oh, Yuri skirted pass for now. And there's the gun drop that you're worried about. Fallen can play late on long. It's up to Yuri to snuff this one out. Pistol gone. The rifle gets past Tessa's V Fallen. He is low. I mean, the Julies can win this fight, but Kixon holding for the aggressive flank, and the bomb is dropped. He won't be ready for combat. It's only a Glock. No way. He sticks the reload in the open. Fallen falls. Can't beat out that AK after all. And Yuri somehow just trying to hold on to this bomb. They're coming from the site as well. This is not a safe situation. The Glock's done damage. The AK can't even finish. 2v2. How are we in this mess? Fury should still win it in the long run. They've got the armor behind their guns. But anything is possible now with Nerds. As he creeps up closer, that's going to be favorable for Art, right? But he's worried about a lot. It's Art on default. Thankfully, the aim punch will wreck Nerds. And so just Nikodos left. He's going to go running in. Kind of just wants to die here. Ooh, no. This is the plan. No time. By, by half a second. Where's the M4? Can he get it? Yeah. By half a second, Harry. That hurts, but it's only the uh, eco for heroic. It's not the end of the world. Oh, I knew there was a reason to be worried. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? They won the round. All under control. Oh, it was close, wasn't That's it? That's how they planned it. I don't know. Yuri gets away way too much there. Multi kill lives for so long against Nerds. And yeah, the aim punch made all the difference on that M4 there. Okay. Heroic. They've chipped at the economy. Can they break down this wall of Fury on the best CT side in the game? Little boost. Yeah, I think the job gets way easier for Heroic if Nerds is able to bring to the table what he did on Nuke. And I think that map is going to be important for having him feel warmed up and capable in these situations, right? Because you're going to notice him playing the extremities a lot, in particular down here towards B. If he's able to get away with kills and keep the pressure on, that makes life far easier for the rest of the gang over on the other end of the map. And so right now, they kind of fan out early. They take that control over towards mid. They put the pressure on. And what's that, what that does is it kind of forces, rotates back up towards upper. Fallen doesn't want to hang around as he's getting flashed off the angles. And so the info gets cut off a little bit here for Furia. And they're having to react to what they've heard earlier in the round. That leaves them with just two players down here on B, right as Heroic are moving in. Smoke is such a problem to get through on this site. Heroic have a lot of space, but they can't get a plant. They need these kills first. Got to jump over the barrel. Smoke missed jump for Shush. It's getting a bit pandemonium in the site. Cello has done a lot of damage. There's still a man unknown about inside of the smoke. Art finally reveals himself, and Nikodos has to get this kill now. He does. Clinical shot, break, and a tag from the AWP. It's an alternative plant. Fallen goes out into the open. Does he know? Yes, he does, but Nikodos has the shot. The AWP can't can't finish what it started, and Nikodos unleashes the beast in the B site. He's a rifler. That is just brutal. And for Nikodos, real snappy in these clutch moments, yeah. man. He gave it a go with the Deagle in the last round. This time, shows up with his M4. And that was like the one metric he looked to really best fallen in is his ability when, when he's not got that, that, that big gun in hand. He still finds his impact. He still finds his way. For fallen, who's been consistent for Furia across this entire event, that is such an unfortunate miss yeah. at the worst possible times. And I say miss, he still hit the shot. It's just the leg. And so a heartbreaking way for it to go if you're Furia. You're kind of your, your dependable veteran player just lets one get skirted on through from Heroic, and suddenly that's put some real wind in their sails here. A chance to recover, because the pistol round on, on overpass, especially since we moved into MR12, man, it's so valuable. Getting those those three, uh, four, sorry, three, three or two rounds on the back of the pistol is just unreal. It's almost all your work done on the T side right there. Meanwhile, Heroic, it is going to be a grind, but it's helped out massively if they brush this force by a side. Suddenly, they get their freebies here and now. The damage they did in that Hero AK round is on your screens now. Only two M4s. Yuri alone with his on top site. 
Heroic look like they want to blast into B, but not before they sell a bit of a fake on A. And these double entries, that's going to pull everyone out of position here for Furia. They start shuffling, revealing their positions. Bomb might still go into them, but it's not a worry. They're getting picked apart. The rifles are gone. Okay, Serato does retrieve it, but there's the nade, perfectly timed, and it opens everything up for Nika Dodds, who has some laser aim right now. Art's taken the position, but 15 seconds. Unless things get really weird, the bomb is already A, though. So he's just fighting for survival at this point. Nika Dodds will not let it happen. Another solid round from the Dane. That's heroic. Find a second. Bit by bit, building into this T side. Now there's a freebie, Harry. We love a freebie. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and the thing that's scary is when, when Nikodos looking this good, and, you know, we've seen some fantastic Nikodos overpass rounds in the past. In the same moment that Fallen has had a couple of missteps, is having a bit of a slower start, is on the back foot economically, so he's not going to get to bring that AWP out anytime soon. It, it's like the, the perfect storm for Heroic to, to do something miraculous here on overpass. The one certainty for Furia is now uncertain. And so suddenly you move into like a, a very scary world for the Furia squad. They're gonna group up over towards the connector. But there's not much to get excited about in this round. This might just be a shush mow down. He hears all these footsteps. All eight of them, it's like a spider's coming his way. And he's got the glass out, puts them under it. Then what? Paper under the glass, Harry? Spider got out. Oh, Terrifying. Dear. Worst case scenario. Oh, oh, ah! oh, God. Oh, God. They're everywhere. It's venomous. Those legs feel weird when they walk on your skin. Furia skirting around the map, but they won't have the sight. And a confident plant. Heroic know they have the room, and they catch out on the jump up. So, okay, Serato saving Armorless. And Heroic saving their bacon for later, presumably. This has been a very good start for the Heroic squad. Uh, you know, it, it looked, it always looks scary when the T side doesn't find their way in in the pistol. And so this lets you breathe a huge sigh of relief. As you say, you just have to think back to that hero gun round. And it was all the damage found there that they've been able to capitalize on here and now. And so already this is going to cause problems for Furia. Not just because the scoreline is equal and Heroic are looking threatening and switched on and very active all across the map. But as we were just touching on, you're, you're going to be lacking a few key pieces here. You won't have an AWP to play with. Mm. Kei Serato could drop one over, but then he would be Glass, and you never want that. Glass M4 just doesn't exist. So he's got to reinvest. As a result, no AWP for Fallen in their return to rifles, that's going to be put off now for a good few rounds. And so you need to find a way in. You have to slow Heroic down. Because we saw what happens, right, on both maps, really. Like, when one team kind of gets to play from the front and they're the ones setting the pace, you're always left playing catch-up. And that's that's a very stressful spot to be in. You saw Ard's kind of individual oh. form hit the deck a little bit on that previous map. Oh, my God. Ah. Catch on the jump, almost connected. The wall bang was nice, and it continues to be. Eight stack on pillar and barrel, nothing. Fury can now retake those positions. Post nade. I want to see if Fury play with the same confidence they displayed on the city side of Ancient, some of the space they took, some of the aggressive moves. There are options to do that on overpass. We haven't seen any water control yet. Walking up on the top site, Heroic. Rotating out of connector and they're into a triple stack now. So Kesarato is going to be that guy playing the rotate between either site, right? And you can kind of tell Furious read of the round based on where he finds himself. Right now, the fact that he's going back down to B means they're getting a little more paranoid about that. They still have this forwards toilet control, but they haven't seen anything from it yet. And so this actually leaves that third player just a little ways away Can't as be. Heroic are poising for this A hit. Yeah. But Fallen is looking to make amends, looking to make up for it. Throwing an execute, but they haven't even cleared toilets. They have no idea that two players were here the entire time. And all of that info was so apparent for Furia. They finally pounce on their prey. 2v4 now in 15 seconds. This is a save. Undecided, but confirmed. 
Oh, that's a disastrous kill for Nurt as well. So they get rid of the... Or they get the Orb, rather, into the next. That's something here for Heroic. But Furia, yeah, completely unperturbed. Even while Heroic are throwing that A execute ready to go, Case Rotto still the third man at B because Furia think there's no way everyone is here in toilets. They haven't even checked it. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that rotate comes down to, like, Keiserato just kind of surplus the requirement over on upper. They already have such deep control. I don't think they were ever envisioning a world where Heroic are full execing into that side of the map without having even one player yeah. take a cursory glance in towards the bathroom. It's, I mean, it goes both ways, because Heroic, it's 40 seconds. They think there's no way Furious still are so deep in the in the map at 40 seconds. You'd expect the rifles to be on bomb site. So, Forlun making a risky move. Nade on the smoke. He sees a lot of players there, and he even picks Tessas out of the picture. Fantastic way to open the round for Furia, coming in with a play. I think they needed over the monster as well to get that smoke play. And another boost, Furia, tricky. You've got to be very careful with this. Be silent. Jump together. Ooh, and he saw it. Doesn't matter. Art still gets away with the kill. Furia, very lucky to be alive right now. With these two plays they make, they have two kills to show for it. And now they can sit back and relax, let Heroic rot. I think, uh, you know, for, for Fallen, one of the things I really like, and actually this is a case for a lot of the Brazilian teams, even the ones that like we saw go on runs at the Major, uh, I think they're all quite ahead of the curve in blowing the smokes open and get this yeah. AWP involved. You'll see them do it all the time on Furious side to, to bring Fallen into the fold, to open up angles that Heroic are already kind of mentally writing off. And that AWP being on the other side as opposed to an M4 is just like a, a, a world ender. Oh, that's awkward for Art. I can't believe he recommits <laughs> into the fight. That is madness. But not punished for it. And a non-starter of a round for Heroic. Furia are able to, to lock them out before the round even really begins, right? Starts with that AWP peak, blowing the smoke open, and then the triple boost to knock out another man. And from that moment on, the round was essentially over for Heroic. So a very dominant one for Furia to put on the board. And they're slowly but surely breaking free of the money problems. Ooh, okay. Punish this time. Nice play from Kicks into Jiggle. Stops that player pushing him as soon as they do. And Heroic save a couple of guns. But yeah, Furia, I love the decisions being made. Like you said, that nade combo made very nice. That's a great play. Don't know how Art oh, gets away with that kill on the boost. Yeah, I mean, you'll you'll see it on like every map they play. They, they are always nading smokes open for Fallen. And fair enough. Yeah. You know, without good, he's looked. <laughs> fair play. I'd give him every nade he asked for. Heroic with a timeout. Still early in this game. Still time to recover this half. Get a couple more. Because while a 9 3 is winnable, it's not where they want to sit as, in theory, favorites to this series. Although they didn't show it in the first map. They certainly did on Nuke. Yeah, Furia also aren't slouches on the T side. I think when you go look at the numbers on that, it's like really inflated because they had that one game versus Koi back at the Major, which I'm sure you'll remember where they went wild on the T side, but Koi were a bit... Uh, Koi were very underwhelming. Yeah. But still, even in their other oh. matchups here, they've always been good for a, a very healthy T side of Furia. Rocky got an early pop B in this round. And this time it's only Cello here. He's got Arta barrels, but... Shallow's the first line of defense. Removing back in is art. Oh, now we're cooking. Two man set up on the monster hold. Flash may not even get art either if it goes over the top. Let's see what he's got for us through the smoke. That's dangerous. They're going to pay the price. Do you really want to commit? You've just seen two monster and heroic have nothing to show for this round. They have one flash remaining. They've used everything. And this has gone from bad to worse. Smoke spam has to connect. Furia are not giving them the entry. And this is just a, a round gone wrong right now for Heroic. In the meantime, over on A, Fallen is sat in a very comfy position for himself, right? Up on top of dice, he can just take a, a free shot here downrange and then drop off behind the dice box and kind of go through the motions on that AWP. 
with only one flash on Nikodos, they're going to have to save that for when they actually try to move into the site. And so as a result, he gets a shot off for Frida's Fallen. Now, hanging around up here is kind of wild. But at the same time, it's the last thing Heroic are expecting. That flash will come out sooner now that they've learned about the AWP. But the fact you had to pay the price of losing a player to even get that flash off is a big problem for Heroic. Fallen's got this on lock. Yuri's allowed them to cross, and he's going to shoot them in the back here from Toilets. Out he pops with the closing kills. And Caserato to assist Fury are perfect. As soon as Fallen makes that call, he sees him get out Toilet. He just doesn't reswing. Make sure Long is locked down. And Heroic don't know it, but there's an enemy right behind them. Yeah, I feel like some desperate calls being made. Kicks are walking through the monster smoke. Fallen only missed on that one round that Nikodos took him out on the B site. Otherwise, he's been a bit of a rock. I'm sure that round had implications. It led to Heroic getting their three, but that may be all they leave with. Yeah, I, I feel like that attempt to walk through the smoke, while it looks crazy, it's more like trying to play around a bit of a tendency for Furia, which is to have cello over at barrels and art usually floating around over towards short. Like, you're going to see that a hell of a lot. I mean, they're even doing it in this round right here. And that's often because K Serato is then allowed to roam a little bit more around the map with those two guys playing a bit more locked into specific spots. So they're like trying to abuse the idea that no one from Furia is holding that smoke at Monster. They're just hoping the smoke acts like a wall. Of course, that wasn't the case. And so Heroic are made to look kind of silly. Easily done on the anti. Yuri will escape. They're going to try and chase him down, but he has so much room to run. They don't know which way he's gone. And there's the cover. Don't kill your teammate, Art. Luckily, it's under control. Bomb loose. Running out monster. There's no hero in this round, nor in this half for Heroic. Maybe you could argue Nikodos with that clutch round, but not today. 7-3. to three. Furia making a statement on the CT side, the best place to be on overpass, but it's all temperamental. Yeah, it, it, it's a very well put together CT side, and you, you can only deal with the side you've got in front of you, and at least Furia are really sticking the landing in that regard. It's all coming together beautifully. They've had good crossfire set up, great map control getting taken whenever they try to go for it, even that round there, serving as a kind of key example of that. You're going down connector into a crossfire from the back of Con and the short push. And Sephiria keep it very mobile again here, right? This time it's Fallen taking that AWP down into the connector. Oh, this wallbang has done a lot again onto Nikodos, this time only with a rifle. No way they go for the boost. There's not even three players here. They're just going for the jumping info shot. T-Flash actually blocks them there. Now Nerds knows what's up, but no one to capitalize. No one to run out monster now, huh? That's when you want that. It's always the way, isn't it? Like when, when Heroic do review this game, they're going to see the one round that they went for that monster aggro was the one round that Fury had multiple monster, eyes yeah. on it. This is the exact reason. Like, you know, we've seen it every round since. This is why Heroic have attempted that. They're scared of falling on top side as well. Oh, that's a risky play. More wall bangs. And is this a real rotate? He runs most of the way. We'll ignore that nade. Smoke comes in. Loads of util for Heroic. They can double pump this. They're trying to fake out right now. Gauge. Figure out what util Furia have left. But triple upper with no T's nearby means that Heroic may have found the way in. They may have found the gap. A big multi kill may be required from Furia. Art starts strong. He's going to flash himself back in for more as well. Nade is good, but Art, does he want to fight for this one? Not hiding out any longer. Kicks and hunts him down. Cello locked out back of the CT side. Caserato breaks a smoke. And while the bomb gets planted, we finally have a real retake round for Furia. There's still a man up. It's not going to be easy for Heroic to hold on. Not at all, but when you're T-side overpass, you know it's never going to be easy. Someone's got to make a hero play. Tessas and Shush trying to throw their names into that hat, but with Shush dead, 
we look to Tessez over at short with Kicksand kind of pulling the attention in. Tessez eventually going to be able to fall on back out of there and just play around the bomb. So right now, Kicksand and Tessez look to walk it over the line for Keiserato. He's already running. Dude, I don't know what Keiserato is doing in that round. He's heaven. He's not. He's barely facing. He's barely fighting. I don't know if he's holding for a maybe flank, but no one was really getting anything going. They had a a four v two. Tessez taps out Fallen in Heaven, and everyone just gets scared. No one wants to make a play. No one wants to push in. They can just group up and chase, but I felt so neutered from Furia. That's a kill that ended it, felt like. They just get stuck in CT Graffiti. Great round for Heroic, but felt like a wasted opportunity for Furia in a four on two. And hey, if Aurora get five at the end of the half. Yeah, that's a very well recovered it. half, right? Yeah. Especially when you don't win the pistol. If you're able to get out with five rounds on your T side, you are, you are more than happy with that. Heroic go back to this, this slow looking default early on. They hold for any mid aggro. Trying to see if Furia throw that in right at the end of the half. Fury won't oblige them though, and instead throw in this boost once more to collect the info that B is clear. So funny they do it with an org as well. Like you see, you used to see Astralis do this with an MP9, because you could jump shot and it's actually really accurate, but he's just going for info. Look how All deep in. they've got. Same position he's always in. Oh, Have they? Heroic learned their lesson? Or will they once more offer up and pay tribute to that fallen AWP? The orb demands a sacrifice, Harry. It demands blood. It maybe even demands the scout of Nikodos, but that's on long. And Furia sat back with three strong on this site. Nikodos needs a jump in case Arato. Gets a wiggle, gets a jiggle. 20 seconds, it's all becoming clear. Rotates can start to move up because Fallen's hit his first shot. Nerds the front line down in an instant and flashes keep the pressure on. That allows Keserado to succeed. Bomb inside of the smoke, absolutely hoping and praying that this will go down. They will. 2v3, hunting kills and Kicks is still surviving. Last bullet headshot upgrades to the AWP and somehow still surviving this round. This is a mess. How he gets. Last round here, Furia must attempt it. It's down to the gunfights. Two scopes on this T side. Kicks in perfect angle for his kill. How has he saved this round? The captain has put them in his backpack and carried them across the finish line. There doesn't seem to be time. Are oh, chasing down these two players, but Kixon's toying with him, and it's done. Heroic, just enough at the end of their T side. It felt dire, but five will do.
Furia and Heroic delivering us a bloody brawl here on Overpass. It's like these two teams are fighting for their life, and that's because they are. Elimination here at the bottom of Group A, and no one wants to go home, especially not these two teams who feel like they shouldn't even be here. Furia were around from the playoffs against Maus, and Heroic never even got started after having to face the new Liquid on LAN. But we can only have one winner. Heroic swap over. Just about enough at the end of their T side. They now sit on the defense. Furia, a hard half, but they've been good for it so far. Yeah, I mean, this one gets into a bit of coin flip territory now as 7-5, right? Those extra few rounds that were put up down the stretch, the two right at the end for Heroic, have given them a real fighting chance here. For Furia, this pistol is paramount. We always say T side rounds on overpass, man. That's rarer than bloody... Something that's really rare, the dodo, right? So dead now, of course. Yeah, dead now, of course. And so the Furious Squad, if they can, if they can find success in a pistol round, that does a lot of the legwork for them here. That lays a lot of worries to rest. But it's far from a certainty. They've got their eyes set on the A player. Good bounty of util to try and get in. Two smokes, Molotov as well. You can try and cut off the angle over towards the dumpster. You can cut the rotates through the bank. So those will come out now. More util to follow, and this now signals to Heroic the play that's taking shape. The rotate's already starting to come up from lower. Oh, yeah, he reconsiders. He takes Art's head off on that long lurk. Flank coming in as well. It's uncomfortable for Furia. Plant is really the new goal at this point. Get that money for later. Oh, two kills out of nowhere through the smoke. Flank does activate Nurse. Shoots Keserato right back through the mist. And Yuri, just trying to get closer, gets cut down Fuck from the flank. Guys. Let's keep going. That is a really nice look in the defense from Heroic, right? When they see the mid site smoke get lobbed over, the one that kind of cuts the site in two, when it's coupled with the, the dumpster smoke like that, you want to try and play through the truck. You want to try and wrap around and get in the site so you're fighting up close with the Glocks. You're kind of cutting down Heroic as they're trying to thin the herd. But Fury never make it that far. Some well-placed shots as they're moving out through the toilets, and, and suddenly their goose is cooked before they've even made it into the site. Things go from bad to worse when they lose that player over towards long as well and so the the kind of big hope for furia of winning the pistol and having that do a lot of the work in this game is now out the window and this becomes a real uphill battle that lead that they have is about to disappear Ooh. confident display on the antico heroic come gunning for the goods and everyone wants a piece of the action seven apiece so, you know, you go ahead and take a full eco there, which, by the way, rarity for a Furious squad. Admittedly, kind of map dependent on that one. You a don't want a Mac 10 yeah. either on art here. So they'll come through with all the guns, but it still has some limitations going for this first rifle run. You won't get Fallen on his AWP, yeah. which is where he did his best work. It's fair, but also you want to maximize your gun rounds, T-side overpass. You know, this game could disappear very quickly for Furia on this half, and you don't need the AWP super early because Heroic is still going to be running SMGs. They're going to be making plays. So, Fury just sitting with full AKs and a Galil to allow Util on Fallen. Or oh, run boost over the Molly as well. Tess says, we're already seeing Heroic take more control on their CT side than Fury ever did on B short. But that will help. Spamming out Shush on that monster smoke. Tess still has full water. It's only a minor detail, but if Shush was able to get one kill in this round, they would have had an AWP in the next with a Heroic. Regardless, you know, win or lose is what I'm saying. So Kixon needs two kills. Yeah, right? Let's see if he's good for it. Tess is getting crawled upon through Connector. Oh, the timing, but still a potent position. He hears him coming, and they don't clear him. Oh, but there's one more where that came from. No escape in Fallen's grasp. Down in Monster, kicks and dies. No two for you. For Furia now, they're like, let's just not mess this up, right? We, we've kind of struggled in these 4v2 type rounds. So let's just take it nice and low and slow and go group over towards Monster. Fallen's given a tiny bit more freedom to go and hold the flank, but now he's going to move in. Smoke off heaven. There we go, that's yeah, the one. That's Smoke the off up, heaven. Yeah. You forgot it there. And Furia go moving in. Heroic aren't down on B. They haven't gambled here. They both grouped over on the top site. 
And spam. even though Nikodos moves in, it's all hinging on spam. And if that doesn't connect, it's well worth the save if you're heroic. Even letting Art plant the bomb there on 10 health and 10 seconds feels terrifying. He's very low, but yeah, no nade. So it's uh, all good. Well, Furia, a big early gun round to field on the T side. And they get all AKs out as well, so. And yeah, much akin to how this first half started, right? If you remember there, it was a uh, similar story with Furia on their CT side being the ones to pick up the pistol. And if you recall, that was when Heroic actually then matched them and went on a three-round streak of their own. It started in a similar fashion to this. The one difference was that Heroic did a lot of damage in the second and third rounds since that pistol, right? Here, Furia haven't done that. And so their work's not over yet. They've got another rifle round that they've got to try and crack through before they break Heroic's money, so they don't get any freebies yet. For them to embark on a streak here is harder than what Heroic had to do in the first half. But it's far from impossible. Once again, they're going to start off heavy down here towards B. And actually, they completely up and leave Connector even. They are just grouping to get out over towards Short. And Potess has to fall off the boost right then. That could be a disaster. Oh, he didn't even see how many players got this close. Furia look like they just want to explode on this B-bomb site right now. Got a CT Molotov and players running through that monster smoke as well. They're very blind, heroic. Shallo gets a double entry. Great shots, but Kixon still stands down in the pit, trying to buy time. Molly, Cello cannot commit through it. And that bomb gets dropped as a break comes through. Nika Doz smashes their face in. And Yuri has to pull out a clutch from absolutely nowhere. Nikodos does light himself up with a fire. And the flank is closing in. Yuri doesn't know, but Nertz is here to close the gate on this round. 8-8. Eight, eight. Heroic survive. Trading rounds of Fury, trading blows. As that double entry was lovely, but Nikodos changes the game. Yeah, I did. What a what a great round from Nikodos, and also Kixan, right? Like these two have been so paramount to the success of Heroic from the second map onwards. But in both maps now, Kixan has found himself up top of the board, and that's from having an absolute stinker of an opener over on Ancient. Well, he took that personally, and he is now leading by example. He's saying, Heroic, this is what I need from you. This is what I want from you. See what I'm doing? Can you guys do that? Nerds, meanwhile, he's been kind of quiet. Oh. And this round, it's just the one and done over in Connector. Furia will take that trade. Yeah. We can arm Cello as, as well. Fallen alone with the bomb. Case okay, Rata comes along to help. Fallen looks for a long kill. Kixon's giving away nothing right now. Oh, that's a bloody good peek. Okay, Serato, no trade today. Kixon is on the ball, blows that orb out the round. And he has another fight at long available. Art He's looking for that orb, I think, but he can't find it. The grenade blew it somewhere. Where? He's messing around. Meanwhile, Kixon's closing the gap. Wow. <laughs> that is not... Oh, there's the orb. I found it, Art. Perfect nade. Yeah. Dude, what a crazy, like, just as we're singing his praises, Kixan is, is like, entering a whole new realm right now. It, it's crazy. I mean, Furia do make it a little easier for him, I have to say, right? This swing from Fallen, fine, like, you get caught by the tree player. Keiserato's a little delayed, and, and, you know, I feel like when you have someone pinned in behind the tree, it is a very limiting position, right? Like, to get away with a multi-kill, if you're not just spraying, and that's kind of why Keiserato slows it for just a second, but you feel like you should have been faster there, trying to, to make up for Fallen shortcoming. Oh, Nurse has heard this. He's in a hot pocket right now. They're running him down from two sides. Oh, he survives. Three kills. And he's got support as well, but Nerds knows the Ecos are his. He's here for the ace, and he'll take it. Fantastic round to just stem the bleeding of Furious Eco. Even that's a nightmare, man. Nerds was like the one, the one weak star that you had.
The one way in was the Nerds, who's meant to be the uh, kind of hard carry player of Heroic. He was having a very, very quiet game. Not the first time you've seen it, but you deliver him a little ace, you'd be surprised what a tiny bit of confidence can do to a man like Nerds. Only up against the pistol, sure, but it's a perfect sequence out of him. And Sephiria, they call in a pause now, recognizing that this really is getting away from them. And that they're running out of time to change that. Right, they're all in on this round. They have fallen with an AWP. He's got his weapon of choice. They've got full util for everyone else. But if they don't stop this, if they don't have something to show for it right here, right now, Heroic are on their way to that finish line. And all Furia can do is watch. Watch from the stands as Heroic get to keep battling through Chengdu. Furia will be watching that from the plane home. So this is where they have to stake their claim to overpass. They've got to deliver. It'd be alongside another string of disappointing results from Furia, which is such a shame to say, considering how close that Miles game was, how close his team were to the playoffs. This round decides so much for the Brazilians. And Heroic, unbeknownst to Caserato, are on tippity top side. Checking for this short player, trying to find a five on four. They've gambled heavy, leaving Nikodos alone without an orb, but not a problem so far. Fury have a lot of ground to uh, close before they are a threat to this solo A-man. You can feel the weight of this round on Fury, right? And they felt like one of the missteps for them on Nuke was taking too many risks in the early round, constantly kind of playing from the back foot. And so in this round, no one wants to be that first man to fall. It's very slow. They're waiting to see if Heroic were going to give, uh, give anything up at the start on any sort of aggressive peak. And when that doesn't happen, Furia now look to take a bit of space. Ake Execute is going to keep four players down lower, but that means Furia are now on the clock. They need to go or it's so clear. That bomb's been spotted with the first jiggle. Everyone can start rotating now. It's still only Nikodos for a moment. That smoke is a problem. Covers up his vision entirely. Nikodos wants this opening kill. 15 seconds. Molly comes flying in. It hits the smoke. It's a disastrous execute for Fu Furia. And they fall one by one as the bomb is lost on long. So is any hope of winning this round. Tessas makes it so in the smoke. And Caserato left alone. It's heroic. 11 first. Two rounds away from eliminating the Brazilians here in Chengdu. Just when it, you felt like that fake did enough, that miss smoke. Smoke looked good, if, if anything, to land on truck to block that view. But then the Molotov extinguished gives Nika Dos everything he needs. And surely Fury go back to B now, right? That's like, that was their one way in. That's where they've had a few close rounds, a few good goes at it. But oh. they even missed the short molly. It's not perfect. Won't come to matter as Heroic don't try to take that space away. This one's feeling inevitable on the eco, just exploding through the monster smoke. We've got ample players here. Okay, Serato has to win this, but he can't even get an entry kill. Pistols. Oh, I love that kicks and what a play. And they're looking for the gun again. Oh, gets caught fumbling with his fingers, looking at the ground, spray through the smoke. Great head on kicks and shoulders, does not give them anything. He knew that was a saved gun, and Furia have nothing else. I think this is one of the coolest like individual recoveries I've seen in a hot minute. Kicksan on the, on this journey that he's yeah. embarked across Three across kills, the series. Map one. Yeah. And getting out called, out maneuvered, out read by Furia on that first map. And it's like he went away from that. And entirely, you know, reinvented the narrative for him across the, the remainder of this series. Even the even how he's been around these guns, taking them away from Fury. It's been phenomenal to watch. Hey, maybe there's something here. They've got a gun. They've got the bomb in the sight. A little fake comes through to force some spray. Low ammo forces the pistol. Kixon's uncomfortable. There's the Tech-9. Team kill from the nade. Suddenly, Heroic are wondering what's going wrong. Great Molotov, but I think the plant will come in just in time. It might cost Yuri's life, but it's worth it in the long run. Nikodos has to save the day. He gets his single kill. 
Nerds moving in from short. They've lost track of Cello at Monster, who has Nerds locked in on this cross. Nerds hits his shot, and Fallen has only a Tech 9, but it might be enough. 1v1 from the captain of, or ex captain of Fury, of Fallen, just trying to save this map, save this series, save Chengdu for the Brazilians. He's backed up into the pit, and Nerds is coming in hot to close. Oh. Fallen somehow puts this oh. round together. And Furia lived to fight another. That is unbelievable. Just as you were going to write Furia off, just as he thought it was done, Fallen keeps them in it. And, and Nikodos, admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Disaster for Heroic. How has that happened? That was the game right there. Yeah, that is, that is a colossal misstep. Oh, and sometimes TKs don't matter. Sometimes you can write them off, but that one has huge implications. You've given Fury a, a means to an end here, and still there, there are ways away from accomplishing that goal. But that's one that sits in your head. If you're Nikodos, that moment can either make or break you now. Either you try extra hard and you really want to do right by Kicksan after the game he's called, after the game he's played, or now you're kind of second guessing everything you do you feel like you've let the team down at the end of a round like that i hope they just brush it off and go again the timeout was immediate after they lose that round they know that's kind of a Ooh. an unforgivable one to give away a tilter that's what that is can fury propel off of an eco win a 3v5 without a rifle to show for it great grenade on the boost as well yuri even slides past it Unbelievable. Fury, I have to make the most of this. Double toilet set up, and Fury are looking for control of this site. So, Nikodos wanted a chance to redeem himself. This could be his round to do it. Or is this all a fake from Furia? They, li they leave Keserato outside of B. They're going to go back and look to join him here. Yuri sits pretty down in connector. This is nice. They've got Heroic scared. They've got them right where they want them. Kixon's holding long right now to ensure this toilet setup stays stable at 45 seconds. Taking Don't a lot of resources over on upper, right? Like just to maintain that toilet's play. And so this B site is oh, now perfect. under defended. Oh, it's perfect. That Molotov will slow it down. That might buy some time for Kixon to get in position. Tessez trying to block with the smoke, trying to buy a few seconds. It does fall a little limp and he gets shot through it anyway. So forget about it. Furia might have forced a save here. A five on three with no one in the bomb site. Unless Nikodos' Molly can play bomb denial. I don't see a way. The Heroic can win this round. They must be thinking about economy in the back of their heads. Smoke on the molly. And Furia have done it. A flawless 10th round. Fallen's clutch was not for naught. They add another to the board. Oh dear, Heroic. Oh mm. dear. Now look, at least getting out with three. They, they still yeah. have some takeoff room sure. here, right? Sure. Not quite at the end of the runway but yet. But you can feel this game yeah, has changed. Yeah, yeah, we can all feel it. And I think if you're Furia, you don't look a, a gift horse in the mouth on this one, right? You acknowledge that you were handed a bit of a blinder. Thanks to Fallen. Stepping up with the Tech 9. Thanks to a miss nade from Nikodos, or I guess just an early nade from Nikodos. You've been gifted a potential way back in. And so the vibe seems a little better, right? Fallen and Art talking to one another about yeah. how they can approach this round, how they can salvage this game. Sure, they're just saying, well, guys, we've got, you know, we've got this opportunity. Let's do the most of it. We have Heroic a little shaken. We have Ooh. the money to justify. Nikodos had a spawn here, but I'm curious if what he's going to do with it. No. Looks like nothing. He was gunning it up through mid. Instead, it's Util coming out. Looking like they want to try and get Nerts involved. He's the guy taking these fights out through middle. But he spots nothing on that jiggle. That will send him away and out of there. It goes both ways. You know, no one wants to be that first domino to fall. Even on CT side, you have, you're so favored. 
if you play that rotate and you you just as long as you're gambling well not even gambling but making the right call to have that third player on the correct bomb site you're so favored to stop a 3v5 so heroic just trying to play those late rounds again burn the clock against furia who the minimark have loads of nades they can afford to throw a couple of bits in get some molotovs out of heroic make sure there's nothing left for the late game do their due diligence. They will eventually reset. This bomb is still on Fallen, but it has to come back to B. That's the game plan here for Furia. Triple setup from the start. It's nice. It's not double monster. But it does allow for trades. Going back for nades? Yeah. Even more where that came from. Sands made a bowler move here. He's yeah. kept all his util into the closing segments of the round. And considering there were flashes coming through the monster tunnel, that actually took real restraint to not trigger that earlier on when Keserato was trying to fake this. Nice entry from Keserato about time. And they will be a bit brutal, but Fury still have the 5v4. 20 seconds. Great Molotov in from Heaven's side. Kixon trying to get back into position inside of the smoke yet again. He's lost his teammate. He is the sole bastion of hope inside of this site. Keserato won't last. The bomb gets dropped. They've got to stick it. Can they get there in time? Nurse is spamming the wrong position. Pistol out. Trying to find that killing blow, but the bomb is planted. 2v1. Nika does stuck up top, and can he do it again? They need him now more than ever. Right below it's cello not a position you'd expect Nikodos is looking around desperately but a re-swing can come in it's not required cello closes it and furia find even ground 11 apiece against heroic a backbreaker a money breaker they can only buy on three and that was so close for nerds so close on the pistol spam but a millisecond too late. Yeah, that B-site hold just crumbles around Kicksan, around Nerds. And Keserato's been quiet. He's not really had a lot of impact in this game, but that entry, I'll be that five on four, was a requirement for Furia. The thing that's so scary about how you lose that round if you're heroic was you had util. You had a fourth player quick in rotation yeah. down onto that B site. It's not like Furia caught you in the wrong place like they did in the previous round, right? This time, you had everything where it was supposed to be. You'd maintained util to throw in at the final like 15 seconds of the round and it still wasn't enough. You're up against a whole different beast now. And with Heroic putting all their money into this round, if they come up short, Furia are teed up for the victory. It's heartbreak, whoever loses here. Whatever fashion it could be. A well-fought battle from both teams, but we must say goodbye to someone. Boost up, unnoticed, fallen resets through connector. He's allowed Yuri to get aggressive. And again, it feels like Fury, they throw a couple of nades in middle. They poise A, but it's always going to end back lower. Does Yuri have the spot? Tessis is locked into a corner right now. Yuri's come gunning for him. He doesn't clear it, but the flick back is perfection. And the flash certainly makes it easy. Five on four for Furia. They're going to look to regroup. They got all the util to get them into this B site. There's a re-smoke just lobbed over from... Oh, uh, it's a gamble. The top of A. To Heroic, no, it's B. done. They're playing, for, they're playing for overtime. They're just hoping that Furia come A. But that block smoke is not going to stop them. No, but that's a lot of re-smokes at Monster. That's the idea here, right? They've just re-smoked Monster three times in a row. They're trying no. to give the illusion that Heroic have done this gamble down towards B. Oh, this no. is a very smart round for Heroic that has fully manipulated what Furia wanted to do. And now they're going to play right into this stack. Nikodos opens for Furia. They have been handled. They have been corrupted by the mind of Kicksan on the other side, and this util funnels them into the stack. Furia will not know it, but they were just manipulated in the most insane way. Oh my goodness, what a call. What a call. That looked like they were throwing in the towel. 
but it brought Furia right into their home. He rotated up and they were just dropping Nikodov's smokes over at Dumpster, and he threw them on timings that, that would never make sense if you were trying to defend B, but it's just to give that illusion. There's lots of us here. Fury have no map control. They just run up connect, and they just sprint into A, thinking they have room, they have a timing, they have a gap, and everyone's there. Three players are on top side in an instant. The AWP nails one. And again, Keiserato, it just has to be said, how many rounds is everyone dead? He's not even peeking. He swings after time. He's stuck. Sure, he's dead either way, but so many rounds where he's in 1v4s that can't be won. And Furia, oh, after the mouse calamity, after the near comeback from 10-2 down, they got match point, they got playoff point, they fall into the lower bracket in the third map. And now this, if they lose here, that's going to be horrifically painful. One round from playoffs, and now maybe one round from surviving elimination. And Fury are shook. Like, you could see it when we cut back to them after that round. They, they can't believe they just gave that one away. They're going to group up over here in middle. Nikodos trying to give oh. Fallen a taste of his own medicine. And the question on the desk was, Fallen is a better AWPer, surely. But in this last round of play, that kill may be the only one that matters. Right now, Nikodos is trying to drag Heroic over that finish line. Missed shot. Cello gets closer. The orb has been secured by Art. It will have to be the secondary of Furia to set the record straight. Nerds gets aggressive. Kicks and can supplement him with Util. He can block the other side. Furia funneled back into this site. Thirty seconds left as they're still poising for this hit, but Nertz is making moves right now, trying to disrupt, and he will get away with it. Just the one and done, but that's enough to pull Heroic, an extra man, back up into defense of this top site. Kicksat now makes the call. It is going to be A. This time, there's no trickery, there's no doubt, and the rest of Heroic are still a ways away. He's just got to get one from the back of the site. There's 10 seconds. This bomb has to be stuck. Keiserato trying to get it down. Art has the swing angle, but they come out on the other side. And that is it, folks. Furia eliminated in Chengdu. Nothing Art can do. And the clock expires with players still standing. Heroic somehow shut this game down in the final moments. The last couple of punches and Furia a knockout blow. They were around from playoffs against Maus, and now they go home empty-handed. Yeah, this was a tournament of a single round difference for Furia, not once, but twice over. Could have dodged elimination today, could have made it to playoffs yesterday, but instead they're going home. Coulda, shoulda, won't. And it continues. A lackluster string of results for this Furious squad. We said it yesterday, but a year since this team was last in the playoffs of a big event, Chengdu is another one that they leave with sad looks on their faces. And for Heroic, what a story of redemption from Kicksad. He is the guy I want to home in on. He is the guy I attribute so much of this to. Not just a top performer on both the maps that they win, but a recovery in terms of the calling as well. A, a masterclass across the board to salvage this for Heroic after a dire start. The guy had three kills on the first map of this series, and he goes on to be the most important piece that Heroic have. Kixen here by my side. Obviously, right now, everyone, like, everyone is thinking about that round, and you probably know what I'm talking about. The score is 11-11, you guys might not have the best buy, and all of a sudden, somehow, you sell the idea like, to Fury that they need to go A. Like, this, who exactly came up with this idea? Uh, it was me. No, it was not him. He told me to go B, but I trusted my call. I called to go A because I had a feeling they would go A. And we kept blocking Monster with a lot of utils, so I expected them to just react A, and it was a great call. I'm glad that everyone trusted the call and it won us the round. It was, like, because like we were looking at it, we were like, okay, maybe they're playing for overtime, maybe they're like saving for, like, to try to go to 12-12, but in, in the end, 
yeah, Fury managed to get it. But I did talk to Saw between like the maps, and uh, when uh, I talked to him after the after the first map, he said like, yeah, like you know, like we had a plan and didn't really uh, go how we wanted it. Can you maybe a bit elaborate what exactly did not go in the first map? Yeah, I think we had a good game plan, but uh, we tried to focus too much on them. So before the game, we were just saying they do this, they do that, but we didn't really focus too much on ourselves and I think that made us lose the first map. I don't think we played well at all. We didn't do our things because we were too focused too much on them. And after the after the first map we said that we should just play our game and don't care too much about them and it helped us a lot on both Nook and uh, our bus. And that means that your next opponent is going to be G2. That is not an easy team to battle. Do you already have maybe like some sort of preparations ready potentially for the next upcoming match? Yeah, we already played them twice, I think in the last month or two, so we kind of know what to expect from them. But uh, one or two months, maybe it's maybe a lot of time in CS. We still need to to play good, to check what they're doing, because it's easy to change a lot of stuff in space of two months. So we'll just try to play our game again and check what they're doing and hopefully win. Sounds good. Thank you very much. And one more time, congratulations. Yeah, big ol' sigh of relief there from the Heroic Squad. You know, you look at this overpass game, you start thinking about just how damn close this is. Last five seconds, kicks and says, you know what, nah, we, we're done with that. Yeah, man, so many tight moments, so many clutch rounds. Even in that first half, you can kind of draw that storyline all the way through the game that if one round would have gone a different way, it's like that ripple effect, butterfly effect, whatever you want to call it. It could have been a completely different storyline. End of the day, though, it is 13-11, and it's Heroic that go through. And I love the way that Harry put it right at the end of the cast there. It was really down to the millimeters for Furia at this event. But unfortunately, they miss out not only yesterday by one round, but today now as well. Could have been a very different story for them. But alas, another pretty early exit. On the plus side, what a reference series from Kixon. Reference on multiple accounts. First of all, individually bounced back from map one, abysmal. It was highlighted by the cast as well. And then he map kills. two, map three, he was incredible. Mm. As a leader, being able to adjust on the pendulum of, hey, we start this series way too much focusing on the opponent. We lose track of our own game. How do we adjust to that? They do it from map two to three. And then on that overpass, aim high, rightfully so, because, oh my God, not only does he dig them out of the hole they were in on the T side, finding the last two ever so important rounds, but on the CT side, I can point to multiple iterations, multiple occasions where on the knife's edge, Fuya were about to break the B side and Kixon did exactly what he needed to stay alive, got the kill, used the utility, gave time to, for Nikodos to come and help him out. He was an absolute hero, no pun intended. This one's for him, reference. Yeah, but I mean, it's not even just the individual plays that it's coming down to. I mean, we saw in the interview there that Heku was talking about that 11-11 round as well, the calls coming through for Kixon. And I know you, Maniac, in particular, have been quite positive about him as an individual and as a, as a leader. So you must have been very happy with what you saw. Uh, from from this game. Yeah, again, I mean, not only is a, a young roster together, but he as a leader, he's also in, let's say, first year, year and a half of great level, grand level Counter-Strike. You have to have a sort of set of cojones to say, listen, this is my call. Yep. Like, you guys might not trust me right now, but there's in 30 seconds moment. left. Yeah, I'm going to stay A. And these are moments where leaders have to make a claim on how they want to address the last few seconds. He made it. That paid off. He's going to sleep well tonight. Hopefully, jet lag doesn't hit too hard. They stuck the landing. I think it's probably, you know, just in theme with our Air Force aim high yeah. player. But, oh, yeah, I, it, it's it's um, it's a rough go out of for Fury because it, it was so damn close, right? And both nights, oh. you know, I want to find the positivity there too, Maniac, just to kind of counterbalance what we had. Um, but at the same time, yes, it is another L. Oh, listen, we, we have to be fair. There have been events where we were very harsh on Furia because the quality of the Counter-Strike was very detrimental. I don't think that's the case here. I think it's a much more frustrating loss for Furia because very obviously there were multiple moments where things could have gone differently. The game against Mouse you covered yesterday is a great example very here close. as well. It's a matter of milliseconds literally on the last few rounds. So I'm not going to be as harsh as I maybe would like to be, considering my frustration towards that lineup. Yeah, there was a, there was a space here. There was a right to dream, and unfortunately turned into a nightmare. That just falls short. That is the name of competition at the end of the day, which ultimately does lead us to say goodbye to Furia and Chengdu. Unfortunately, Art, this is where the journey ends for Furia. Probably we should maybe like address the situation that happened on like the last map at the score like at 11-11. Do you have like a, maybe a Kavid or maybe like some kind of miscommunication, like or you someone had like a feeling that there's actually like a stack on A that you were about like to enter the A side when there's like basically like almost the whole team there? It's the 11-11 around we were going B and we run towards connector tray, 
so basically, they were just spamming smokes on b the B side, like uh, in the monster, like, and then you end up going, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, I don't think they smoked monster in the last second, so there was a smoke sitting there for the last minutes, and we thought it was going to be a B stack, so we tried to get the A player lurking and just run away, but uh, I think they stacked A, I'm not sure. And when it comes like, to like this series in like overall, like were you planning that like you'll most likely go to all three maps, or like, you were kind of hoping that you'll be able to close the like, second map and just be done with the day? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we had a shot on overpass as well. I think second map uh, nuke, we lost some key rounds on the T side, and we managed to make make only four rounds, I guess. And we lost pistol on CT, which is really hard to come back from. And I think after the first gun round, we just lost it. It was just uh, went through the overpass. And overpass was close. I think we lost uh, uh, some lead on city side. We could have a very good city side. We lost uh, three rounds, gun rounds, which was one v uh, two v one, four v three, and also one four v three, four v two as well. So I think these key rounds make the all the difference when you go to the city side. We are like scrambling for rounds, and we even managed to get 11-11, But it's a tough side. It definitely is a f tough side. Uh, you will now have like a little bit of time until like the next tournament. What's going to be the main focus? What you will try to like improve in? Yeah, I do think we need to be more aware of the situations we are playing. Uh, we got some very good advantages on every uh, games we played, and we could have finished uh, a lot of maps. We had a lead on Vertigo, we made a comeback. It, it could be 2-0, uh, the match that we lost third map. And also today, we also could have a way better lead on overpass and he lost some key rounds uh, playing advantage. So I do think we need to reset our minds and be more aware of those situations because they cost some very important rounds that are key to scramble the economy and just have a lead on the favorite side. When it comes to the fans, obviously right now maybe they're a bit sad, but I'm sure like, there's so many people that are like supporting the team. Is there maybe anything you would want to tell them? You can do it in Portuguese. Yeah, it's better. É, rapaziada, foi difícil, a gente tentou o máximo possível, entregamos alguns rounds bestas, é, no geral fizemos boas partidas, é, vacilamos alguns rounds, é, mas é isso aí, mano, infelizmente não deu pra gente, caímos mais cedo aqui na Xingdu, mas tem mais campeonato pela frente e a gente vai com certeza trabalhar mais pra não acontecer de novo o que aconteceu aqui. Valeu. Muito obrigado. Obrigado. Yeah, you know, commiserations over there for the side of Furia, um, but yes, they are eliminated uh, from IEM, at least at this point, right? You know, they'll get opportunities down the road, but for, you know, this run, that is pretty much how it goes. And they're not the only ones we're going to be saying goodbye to, so. No, we've said goodbye yeah. to a bunch of teams already. Yeah, three Chinese teams, unfortunately, as well. I mean, that's the that's mm. the hard part for me. Big fan of Asia CS, and unfortunately, none of them could make it happen at this event, so. Yeah, I mean, here's the whole list, right? But for me, focusing on Tai Lu, Steel Helmet, Lin Vision, I feel like it was wishful thinking One to imagine... One is not like the other, though. No, to be fair, but I, I, do, <laughs> I do feel like it was wishful thinking to imagine that any one of those three could have made it through to the playoffs, but it was kind of the dream. It's the same dream that we have down under when we're in IEM Sydney and we want to see, for example, Greyhound, aka now FlyQuest, in the arena. It just seems like such a, a high bar to hit, but... I mean, yeah. Lin Vision did put up a great honorable fight, fight against you. Yeah. Like we yeah. were following it with the right eye of the right eye, the mm. right part of the right eye, you know, in the green room, like kind of looking like this. And it was a great game as well. Honestly, it went down to the wire. A couple of situations on Inferno as well on the A side. Um, a bit of disappointment as it well. It really has felt like it's the event of so close. I was ready to dream for Lin Vision. I was yeah, ready. I bet the same for Fly I could Quest, see it coming. Same for Furia. Like there's so many. Oh, I get it. I get what you're going with. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. I just... I mean, look, I tell you what. One thing you have to figure out about me is um, these things just go whoosh, straight over. Hey, the man. drier, the better. Uh, yeah, let's exactly. try a new one then. Let's try a brand new one. Positivity. Okay. I know we're known for that sometimes. So in this notion, we'll talk about the teams that did advance so far, mm -hmm. the ones that do get to fight a little bit longer here in Chengdu. And I'm talking yeah. about the likes of Liquid, Mao's VP, Astralis. Holy smokes! Astralis made to the playoffs. What the freak? Yeah. I mean, would these have been the four teams that you would have chosen going into the event? I don't. Don't know that they necessarily would have been for me. I mean, I, I could probably get on board with Mouse and VP. I think they were definitely yeah. oh, up come there. Come on, man! I knew Liquid had this in the bag. They I had a right where they would wanted say that. them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a bit of a sellout. I mean, but listen, for Liquid sorry. and Astralis, it was really about the hunger. I feel like I so agree. much to prove, so yep. much to to want mm. here mm. in Chengdu, and it, it worked out well for VP. Vindication as well. We all know what happened. Copenhagen was a bit complicated as well. So it's awkward, doesn't it? Very, very much awkward. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad for them to have success here. Yeah, and we can actually just leave the awkwardness right there. Compartment. 
finalized somewhere far away from us right now. Let's take a look uh, at least as what's going to be going on tomorrow because elimination Ooh. does not stop. Check this out. FaZe Clan v. Cloud9, Game 1, Stream A. Bye-bye to somebody. Oh, that's a three-course meal with wine pairing right there. That's yeah. a big one. Was that like a nice white or a nice red or what do you oh, think? That would depend on the dish, obviously. Okay, fair enough. Okay, FlyQuest trying to get their feet wet yet again. And I know that Jordan would love to talk about them until the cows come home. But luckily that we have no cows here. So Astralis VP, yes, another matchup that's going to determine where you find yourself within the playoff bracket of things here. Yeah. Um, the only you see this one go? The, Astralis the, VP. Oh, uh, ooh, that is an interesting mm -hmm. prospect, isn't it? I... Look, I want to be a bit of a dreamer, you know. I feel like maybe you're rubbing off on me a little bit. I do want to see, I want to see Liquid. I want to see Astralis doing well. So I'm, it's, I'm see, keen. That's yeah. what I do to people. I'm trying yeah. to be positive, a dreamer, I'm trying to yeah. you romantic. Know, who is that? You hold on to your dreamer, <laughs> and I'll just meme her. Um, just kidding, that was terrible. Let's get out of here for the day, though. We are going to call it on that notion. Uh, I do believe we've had enough Counter-Strike for one day, or perhaps we haven't. Go ahead and queue up. You might even find Harry and Hugo, because Lord knows they're going to be in the server after this. We're going to go to a very, very long break, meaning we're done for the day. We'll see you tomorrow. Hashtag I am. Good night, everybody. This ain't new to me Since the age of 22 I've been using it Like it's fuel to level up Like it's champagne in my cup Like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams There's a vision in my mind It's consuming me Take my confidence combined with opportunity Mix it up with unity Soon to be the greatest of my generation Operation Victory Fight or fly We will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! A lot of fights, big dreams met with bigger lies. It ain't what it seems from the outside. On my downfall, they pray. Will I surrender or will I betray? Given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins? I never complain, I boss up and do it. If there's a battle, I find my way through it. If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it. Cause what is a blessing depends on you view it. The fruits of my labor are in abundance. Indispensable, I'm not redundant. Incomprehensible the way I've done it. When the struggle pushes me, I'll shove it. I rise above it. Fight or fly, we will stay. Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite!
It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead hey. this late in the game? Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris, three flick, no. oh, they're making one by one, sex, no way. He wants to... Oh, 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 oh,